Mike, die ersten zwei Spiele? Oder? Gerne. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning here live from Berlin and no, welcome ready. to the first match of today which is going to be Barcelona versus Zurich, Barcelona, Spanish champion in blue, Zurich okay, in play. white. Six players. <laughs> and uh, as promised, we have uh, a new colleague here today, say good morning. My favorite man from the north. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, and off we go. And immediately Barcelona taking possession of the ball, going straight for the Zurich basket. Going straight for the Zurich basket. Zurich comfortably playing safely for now. But Barcelona, yeah, good block already. Bringing players in, getting close. Being locked up, pulled to the surface. Mm. 
Free throw, right. wide. Sounds good. Ball out of bounds. All right, free throw. Free throw for Zurich. Would be much clearer stream here. Uh, this is, I just turned it down. All right. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. All right, Thierry tried, tried from possession, free throw, tried to get into the corner, but easily taken up by Barcelona. F clear path to the goal, does even have a second player, but good job by the defender trying to lock it up. Pass now to the corner. Has free space underneath the goalkeeper. Good effort by the forwards, but the exchange of goalkeeper successful. Barcelona hungry for that first goal. As soon as they won the ball back, almost all the players were diving and uh, committing to the counter attack. Yeah, still block being set. Players still moving in. Yeah, team was Zurich's had a good defense so far. Everyone's yep. committed, diving. Solid defense by them so far. Uh, back in possession of the ball. Ooh, has to pass Ooh. backwards. Intercepted by Barcelona. Could go immediately for the basket, but called off by the ref. Free throw wide. Holding. This is the point for my headset. Hmm. All right, Zurich free throw. Being locked up. Uh, scrum on the surface, Siri coming out ahead, but fail pass and straight up to Barcelona player immediately initiating a fast break. Scared now, prepping in the close corner of the pool. Thomas multitasking here with some documents as he commentates. Easy peasy early in the morning. <coughs> My mental is also back. I changed after 14 hours of streaming yesterday. <coughs> All right, Siri, bit of a risky move. Barcelona is really fortunate hard. You can tell that. They know that they're the favorites here and they want to... Uh, Absolutely, yeah, they want to get ahead. <coughs> and it's interesting because they have played such a fantastic game yesterday as well against um, Ecomares where they scored, I think, two times. So, really cool to see them. They scored two times against Ecomares. Check. Oh, no, they nearly scored two times, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> They had two really good chances <laughs> against Ekamaris, where they already had the ball halfway in the goal, so... It's the commentator's it memory. Counts, it counts, yeah. <laughs> My, the commentator brain is uh, still a bit mushy after uh, the entirety of yesterday. I think this pool really suits the Barcelona game, because mm -hmm. they're a very good team. Um, but what generally lets them down in those uh, bigger tournaments, played in the bigger pools, is that they um, they usually are a solid team of ten players, and they kind of struggle for those like last two, three, uh, four players. So we have a small pool like this. They generally perform a little bit better. Call off by the ref. Wide. <coughs> Fast break. Of Free throw. Broken up. Attacking the head. All back in possession for Zuri. Five minutes played. Who are the referees for this, this match? All right, so in the water we have for the game Jürgen Mutta, Esteban, and Peter Tenefos. So Zurich really struggling to hold on to the ball. Barcelona with a solid four checking. See them over and over 
Freaking. Getting, ooh, oh, basket was still in the way. Oh, good steal from Barcelona here. Can they bring the ball to the one above the goal? Goalkeeper though now back in position. Player though looking on the uh, side of the pool. Ooh, ball that? dropping down. Uh, that was just a drop, Behind I guess. Basket. Yeah. We need the other the good camera angle on this one there. Now Zurich trying to get down and they're fighting really bound here against Barcelona here. It's such a strong showing gesture, but it's also the early early bird games in the morning. Maybe the Zurich guys are just more the early bird teams, whereas Barcelona is more late night crew. Uh, yeah, that sounds like it. definitely Possible. a cultural advantage. <laughs> now opening, defender back in position. Now Barcelona bringing four guys. Trying, oh, Ooh. pass would have been good. Didn't connect properly. Yes, yes. By the forwards of Zurich, trying to get the ball back. Though Barcelona won't have it, still in possession. No. Rodriguez trying to move in. They're doing a lot of swimming, but they, they lack a little bit of manpower close to the goal to set up proper plays. It's and all those moments, I think it's just coordination and yeah. a little bit of luck as well. Yeah. I mean, it really sucks when you have four people around the goal and then one bad pass. Just, yeah. you know, you're killing a lot of air <laughs> for the whole team. It's a bit of a missed pass into the hands of the defender. Maybe deflected a little bit, we didn't see properly. But we can see Barcelona immediately forechecking from the first moment on, not giving them any centimeter. Sorito with good effort of just pushing them into their own half, forcing them back to their own goal. But yeah, Alamo Barcelona to get the ball back, and you can see them immediately going off for a good swim. Nice Ooh, pass, nice pass yeah. on the Oh, yeah, he, need, he needs to get close to the goal afterwards to be able to receive pass. And now, good, yeah. good positioning. Number seven, Leonardo Artega with the with solid chance from the middle of the pool. Just couldn't connect with the goalkeeper. Ball dropping down, goalkeeper's in position. Pass moving to left. You need somebody else in the corner. Yeah, the, the idea was fantastic, but the player wasn't there to receive it. Open, go oh, open goal, but snatched away. Well done by the goalie or defender. He's Swooping in at the game. last second. Has to pass backwards, always uh, an uncomfortable situation if you have to pass oh, backwards nice. while you, your opposing team is forechecking heavily. Yeah. But 38 seconds to go until halftime. So getting scored on right before halftime is usually the worst because you don't get a chance for immediate equalization and you have to wait, sit for all the halftime, soak on it, <laughs> dwell on it. Little thoughts poison <laughs> yeah. your brain. With the real tilt in mind. No, Suri is going to play the time down, I guess. Try to have one attack right in front of, uh, right, right before the halftime break, but Defender in position. Good opportunity though for them to move in once and maybe get a lucky punch. Good strike. There we go. Half time break. All right, first game of the day, the early bird special here at the Champions Cup. Everybody who's ever played it loves the early games. Eight o'clock in the morning in the pool, warming up at 7.30. It's the best thing you can do. <sighs> Your whole body is fully aligned. <laughs> what time do you usually get up? Oh, I usually get up at eight. <laughs> so uh, I am one of those early bird specialists when it comes to underwater rugby <laughs> matches in the morning. Uh, they, they, they are my absolute worst. But especially during tournaments like the Champions Cup, uh, if I get the chance uh, as a player and don't have any late night games, like at uh, latest at 
hopefully eight or, or seven, then um, I try to go to bed as early as possible and, and get up at around six so that I have a lot of time before the game to get in a good breakfast and then I'll have a little bit of a fast between uh, the first game uh, and warm up so that I'm already more or less awake and I might consume uh, unhealthy amounts of caffeine in the meantime. <laughs> So if you've ever wondered about <coughs> Thomas's morning routine, it that, is uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. It is basically <laughs> a liter of coffee straight and pumped, straight pumped into my veins. You sound like one of those uh, YouTube influencers. Uh, oh, I begin. Yeah, yeah, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best morning routine ever. You take a cold shower for about 15 <laughs> minutes, then I do five minutes of meditation, right? And journaling. And, and, and yoga, of course, and yodeling, yeah, in Austria. Yeah, I get right into my garden to piss off my neighbors. And uh, yeah, then a liter of caffeine and you're good to go for the day. And this is what you do at four o'clock in the morning, of course. No, back into the game. Uh, Zurich versus Barcelona. Barcelona, the way more pressing team in this game. They had uh, some good opportunities on the Zurich goal, but Zurich doing a really good job defending. Um, and it's quite interesting to see how the teams compare because Zurich had a uh, hefty game against uh, Flippers yesterday where Flippers, uh, they had really good showing in the, f in the first half, but then Flipper overpowered them throughout the rest of the game. Um, Barcelona had an incredible game against um, Ecomades where they uh, even s played offensively and had uh, good attacks throughout the entire game. Nearly scored twice, uh, could have gone for a 2-1 uh, follow-up goal um, and was rather close. So uh, quite interesting to see those teams uh, go ahead up against each other in this early bird matchup. I think the smaller pool also, um, I guess, okay. evens up the playing field. Already ready to go. Yeah. So six players. One thing that the small pool really does for you is it helps your team coordinate and stick closer together. A a big factor for um, I'd say non the the uh, non elite group of teams here who are not competing for the title often is um, spacing in the pool and how they position themselves and leaving too much space between players pass is not being precise enough and it was it was especially visible in uh, Montreal during the world mm -hmm. championship oh the ball just dropping down <laughs> he, di he dives out the defender oh. in the first place going back what in he stayed there <coughs> now he had to go up for air he was in a perfect position to yeah. score himself could have just gone in oh. so a small pool can do wonders if your team is struggling with coordination a bit uh, to just bring you naturally closer together Just chops it in to his teammate. Very good. And then good execution from number 23, Daniel Garcia. Well done. Good assist by two of his teammates, just bringing the ball around. And it's those type of plays where you have two, three players positioned and you can just quickly move the ball once around the entire basket, giving your teammates this one and a half seconds of scoring opportunities that you so rarely get uh, if there's a stable defense available for uh, especially top teams. That passing <coughs> around goal really reminded me of uh, what some of the top Colombian teams do. Rotate the ball as quickly as possible around the opponent's basket. Ooh, just two goalkeepers and no defender. That is a, oh, oh yeah. That was a fantastic oh. player. Colombo? No, it was not. Goal. 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 Goal blue number. <laughs> it was two backs and no one. Defender. Well, I mean, back was up near where the goalie would be. And two backs, one cup. And, and, and um. time out for the white team. And now there's a time out for Zurich. And time out, white team. I don't want to approach the game. So, do you think in the uh, in half time there, the Barcelona team probably had a talk with each other about 
how we're going to score this week's yeah. goal. Um, I think they, pa yeah. A lot more passing, less grinding. Yeah. So, um, especially for Barcelona in uh, late latter minutes, we've seen that they only struggled to get their team coordinated enough to have a solid two-wave attack. They managed the first wave and then they, they removed the defender, even the defender, but then uh, the defender could replace and uh, the defense was stable again. So the breaking point is to remove the second wave or as we've seen before, to rotate the ball quickly enough around the basket that you outplay the second wave. You have such a hefty first wave that you potentially draw both forwards down. Um, <coughs> I think there was a big uh, noticeable difference in uh, how they were trying to score the first half. They were Time out over. Going there, fighting against the defense, grinding, trying to grind away into the goal, whereas uh, they came out um, hot in the second half and uh, you know, lots of really good passes around the goal. Mm -hmm. A lot less grinding. I don't mean the kind of grinding you do in a club. Zurich's going to try and seize the initiative and join the attack ball. Great Barcelona's, great Barcelona's defense, Barcelona's defense, Barcelona's defense. It has been really solid yesterday even against the top teams here in the tournament, <coughs> contending for the title. Out of bounds? No. no. Free throw, white, the was out of holding. It was out of bounds, my dear referee. Any more interesting comments to us? Anyone no, else it's, just, it's just Chucky giving us <laughs> a <laughs> oh, early hello, morning. Good morning. Early morning, welcome from the hotel because she's allowed to sleep in a little bit. Other than our guys who are already warming up. All right, scrum on the surface, Barcelona coming out ahead. No serious player position underneath. Yet again at the goal, good positioning by the Barcelona. There's two more players, a good block. Can he move the ball to the left? There we go. Yeah. That has to be. But defender with a good arm just gets a last yeah, just penalty. Yeah. I'd like actually like a review because the, the, the defender the just had a hand wrapped around Blue team. and was pressing the ball carrier down. So the goal was wedging. Push, 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 which is legitimate. Yeah. So I'd really love to see if there's actually a, a shoulder in the basket or a legit move here. Maybe holding the basket? Maybe, okay, maybe ready? They, they call it because he had some kind of uh, okay. momentum. Okay, without the white team taking the, the timeout. Time out. This is Colombo. Number 19, Jose Miguel Castro. Go! Captain. Barcelona. Blue number 19, yes. Cool. So we have 3 0 now for Barcelona. And uh, I think at this point in time, with five minutes to go, being the mostly defensive team throughout this game. It is pretty much a, a loss taken for Zurich right now. It sounds like Thomas wants to make another bet. <laughs> he wants to do a little bit more drinking on there. Number three. <sighs> Tech guys luring us away from the gameplay. And we're missing the 3-1 goal by Suri. Oh, okay. But there we have the number three. Kind of replay. It's one of those classic moments where you, your team wins the ball back and then uh, you don't quite yep. make it uh, into a counter-attack and then you lose the ball again. Yep. If you get the ball at your own goal, put your pins into the wall and <laughs> swim 
and like you've never swam before. Can we also say that was a little bit of the commentator's curse? Yeah, of course, <laughs> always. Commentator's curse is absolutely real. Yesterday I was so often describing the situation and it turned around immediately and right against me just to prove me wrong. Okay, that's it. Zurich can do one more. Uh, Zurich now found their momentum potentially. I mean really sometimes it can be really easy to play well when you're a few goals <coughs> behind because in a way you've got like <laughs> it's a weird way of saying it, but you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If you're behind, usually if you if you if you haven't really if there is a thing that you, you don't really give up mentally, but you have uh, you don't have this uh, tension of um, I have to play for a tie, and there is. Yeah, there is, there's only something to gain and nothing to lose anymore. And this quite often really loosens you up as a team and makes you play better because I mean also you're not as anxious anymore as a team and uh, you you al allow yourself to take some risks that you usually want to do. Yeah, I mean, when you're 3-0 down, you don't yeah. have to worry as much about you know, getting back in time yeah. to defend your own goal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yet again, a good attack onto the goalkeeper. And there we go, defender. <laughs> Not able no. to intervene. No. Number 18. From John Milligan. What was, <coughs> <laughs> what was the back doing there? He was just looking at the ball. <laughs> yeah. He had pulled right in front of his face, but he didn't reach for it. <laughs> I think that's a bit of a mistake there. I guess there's a bit of a gap of experience between the two players on the same team. All right, there we go. Trying to attack Barcelona basket. Let's see if they can get another one in. You can see the way that they just don't have the same um, uh, awareness of where the players are compared yeah. to the Barcelona team, and they're much slower to pass the ball yeah, around the Barcelona. <coughs> but in defense, they've been quite solid yeah. up until the last five five minutes or so. Let's see. Let's see. Move forward, play to left. Good. Can chain move, can they move the chain? Go. <coughs> Going in immediately. One against four. Ah, the second defender got into place, but he he, he used the move that I nice really oh. that I really like is to get an arm underneath the back of the defender and then just shoving him up a little bit and pushing yourself forward underneath the defender and then creating a lot of space for yourself. It's a classic big guy move. If you have to leverage, if you have to wait, you just casually use your arm like a forklift and shove a lighter defender up or, and get him flying. <laughs> Casual jerk move. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be some advantage of being a big guy, right? <laughs> All right, our first game of the day, 4-0 for for Barcelona versus yeah, Zurich. Oh, for one, so I'm so sorry. For one, of course, uh, we're seeing the ball from Zurich here. Oh, that was a nice throw. Okay, got the penalty goal. Well executed by the captain. The defender even got a hand onto the ball, but the captain could wrestle it away. And then with the 1-0 moving in. Nicely and with the goalkeeper. <laughs> Is that Spanish in the background? Uh, could be anything. Uh, I guess Danish. Oh, no, it's okay. Czech. It's Czech. All right. So now the stakes are raised because now in black we already see uh, the club from Vienna getting ready to play against Bratislava, a team that Vienna knows really, really well because they usually come in the summer to practice with us uh, in our outdoor pools. Because we have really nice pools in Vienna and we have a lot of pool time. So if you think it, well, it would be a great thing to study somewhere abroad, come to Vienna. <laughs> Take everything Thomas says with a grain of salt. There is no grain of salt. <laughs> it, it act, this is actually the truth. 
matter of fact, we have. <laughs> what did you say Vienna was also really well known for? Being the Be uh, being, being the most livable city in the world, while also being the, uh, voted the most unfriendly city in the world. But <laughs> uh, one thing that uh, me as a Viennese person, uh, I like to always say, Vienna is just honest. <laughs> at eight o'clock, at eight o'clock in the morning on a Monday, nobody is happy, right? Everyone just looks at you. Everybody is like miserable. They think you're a piece and of in shit. Vienna, <laughs> people show you. They show you their personal misery, and they give you this salty feeling of it's a Monday. And in other cities, people blatantly lie into your face. It's Monday. It's no, it's not. The weekend is over. We have to go for the grind again. Get our grind mentality on for our nine to five jobs. <laughs> no. So sounds yeah. like paradise. They had, no, Vienna is ac it's actually it's a really nice city. So having a little the opportunity to uh, advertise our city here a little bit in more or less uh, positive fashion. Do you have a, an international team? I mean, a team with international players. Uh, anybody who comes to Vienna can play for <laughs> us. So. Uh, we had we had some uh, some international players in Vienna who like, were studying here or coming from other countries. Here. Okay, apart from Jackie, who else? From apart the from the internationals that we have, who yeah. else? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> now we had um, we had people from Norway, people from Finland, uh, Hungary, uh, Germans. Yeah, even they, if it doesn't feel that international, we have three Germans, four Germans playing for Vienna right now. Okay. So. And it's okay, so both Vienna and Bratislava, the two teams that are about to play against each other now, they yep. both play in the Czech League. But Vienna plays in the first division, and I'm guessing Bratislava yep. plays in the so second division. So uh, as long as there is a first division, because it does depends on the amount of teams that persist, participate. Um, yeah, they. I think they even played in the first league last time, just uh, by sheer effort of themselves. One so minute. <laughs> one minute. But we'll see how they go against each other. I know the last game Vienna played in Prague a couple two weeks ago. They beat Bratislava quite significantly. Mm. So we'll see how this match will end up today. I saw the uh, Bratislava Czech game uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and um, I was impressed by how Bratislava played. They seem to be a much more uh, stronger developed team compared to the uh, the Slovakian team. All teams Graz ready. In 2019. Uh, they're basically the same, but with the kids of the players now playing. Yeah. yeah. Action is in the pool, guys. There we go. All right, off we go. Vienna coming away with the ball in the middle of the pool. But Slavado heavily fighting for it. And already going for the Bratislava basket. From above immediately. And Pell. Not that much support there. Okay, got there. Shun is the goalkeeper. There we go. Ball going a bit left and right. Ooh, back into the hands of the goalie. Oh, dangerous yeah. pass there. Vienna loves those early bird matches, I can tell you that. <laughs> <coughs> but it's also something that uh, we've been talking about yesterday. A lot of teams in Vienna for Vienna it's the same. We have practice late at night, so we have practice at 8 o'clock in the evening. That's not so right. we're, so we are comparatively. <laughs> uh, we practice at 8 So we are very, we're very used to playing late in the night, but not early in the morning. Where some teams have Saturday, Sunday practices early in the morning, so they're they are used to playing uh, early, in the early, early on the weekends. Is that why Vienna <coughs> always gets sick during uh, tournaments? Probably. <laughs> Maybe it's just oh. the climate. But good effort now, Vienna pressing here uh, on the Slovakian uh, basket, but Slovakia doing very well. <laughs> you can see them swarming three, four, five players That's all the time. Reminds me of the first uh, four or five minutes of the last game. We have uh, yeah. one team that's a little bit more dominant, and uh, you know, in the first three, four minutes, they're just really going in there, trying to grind their way into uh, yeah. an early lead. And we'll see if the grinding mentality is paying off. Or good effort to get in. 
Ah, player doesn't stay down. <coughs> That's one of those dangerous situations where she had ball and that you can very clearly tell from her body language that the only thing she wanted to do was to pass the ball. Yeah. And then as a four checker, it's yeah, very it easy to... Didn't want to take responsibility, but now two players underneath the basket. Can they push up? Ooh, this could it be is nine title, usually one of the good top, one of the top scorers here for the team. Sadly also a little bit blue ridden. Yeah, no oh. reason. Oh, the idea was great. Coming in again. <laughs> See them trying to bring the ball back into the open corner. Reason again, getting possession back of the ball. Tanzman, Pell, Pell trying to move in, getting locked up. And Bratislava is doing a good job just pulling them upwards, removing them from underneath the basket. And they've done some really well for about three and a half minutes now. <coughs> Because when you're sitting in the commentators or side of the pool, those 10 minutes are so short. Yeah. But depending on how the how the flow of the game state is, it's also really short. It also does feel really short in the pool if there's mm. a lot of action and you have a lot of uh, time. If you, okay, let's make it simple. If you're defending for 10 minutes straight, <laughs> it feels like flipping ages. But if you're playing up front and you have the ball, it feels like nothing because you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> It's a turkey shoot. But I think it's it's quite funny because uh, the last game they played, Vienna had a mixed team of uh, about six men and six women, and they beat them by I think seven zero, so quite significantly. And as soon as they have more manpower, and uh, some of them think we can just simply overpower them, they stop playing smart. <laughs> 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 now going in again. They have a great opportunity here to move in from the side. Need somebody to pass to. The players waiting under the basket, taking up space. One underneath the ball, actually good setup. If the ball is dropping down, it could just ah, goal goal on the way. Pass to the middle, possible. Can they bring the ball in? <laughs> they're waiting. Oh, they're just optimistic. waiting. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah finally. <coughs> oh, the amount of time it took for the ball to reach. <laughs> The guy <laughs> on the basket. One, huh? one. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> the curse of being the commentator watching a game like this. But it's true. When your own team is playing, especially. Time out. I don't think there's ever out. been a time where I've stolen the uh, opponent's goal and the ball got to me in under 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm usually one of those guys because I play goalkeeper and I usually come from very far back because ball is of course exchange for a lot of teams exchange uh, quite far back uh, up to the middle of the pool um, especially you have to play very securely um, you have a really nice overview of whatever yeah. everything that is going on uh, in the entire field so it's very funny for me because I'm so used to having this good vision of the playing area and yeah. knowing pretty much exactly what's going on the entire time. So I can come in and position myself really well. Um, so it's really baffling for me when players are not playing my roles like a forward who is always kind of just going zigzag up and down, and yeah. who's potentially not even knowing where he yeah. himself <laughs> is at <laughs> some point in time. So how didn't how didn't you see that? It was so so obvious. It was like, Dude, I was going back and forth, up and down, up and down. Like, yeah, you were chilling in the middle and just watching the entire field. But you've yeah. also been there where you've yeah. stolen the opponent's goal, and yeah. it Ready? looks like everyone in your team has to touch the ball before they realize where you are. All right, back into the game. Vatslava received the ball after a 1 0 score, and we'll see. And already coming in with two people, pass to the left, can push up, defender has his hands on the ball, can move out. Kind of locked up in the wrong corner. Yeah, she moved close to the sideline. Yeah, they don't want to keep up. Yeah, just pull him out. That should be pulled out of bounds. Yeah, that should be it. Shoving somebody out of the out of the playing area is one of the easiest ways to get the ball back. 
Blue free throw. Just out free bounds. Bounds. Blue if somebody's free trying throw. to just lock up the ball, push him out, get it back, free throw, off you go. <coughs> Actually, what you said before, um, everybody has to touch the ball before it goes <laughs> into the basket. That is a really good exercise um, in uh, just in practice to have your team learn to rotate the ball properly rather than just swoop in and have one really good player yeah. um, do a solo ball on, on a semi empty basket. Right, please going in, dash. Try to force it. Ball dropped into the middle of the pool. Oh, a really sloppy pass into the arms of an opponent. The funny thing is, as much as Vienna knows their opponent Ooh. really well, so do they. <laughs> <laughs> and they really know who to take care of. Yeah, yeah you can see like Matthias Nautov coming in, being swamped by three players immediately. It makes a big difference when you know uh, the opponents. Like yeah. You know sort of them almost by, by face. Again, oh! You know who's the threat, who's uh, you know, the fast swimmer, who's going to be the uh, drop down into the corner. Scorer. He's not trying to come in. But Slovakia also changed up their tactics a bit. They have different goalkeepers now, and they put the players they had on, on goal duty into defense. So, interesting. Yeah, you can tell some of the shift. goalies here don't seem as comfortable on the goal, but. <laughs> see over and over again is that they just try to lock the ball up yeah. <coughs> and they really have to take care of uh, players just trying to scrum the game away. Are you talking about Vienna or talking about Bratislava? Bratislava. And now they try to move forward for the first time being shoved out of bounds. We have one and a half minutes no free throw. Oh, it's a white free throw, interesting. It's blue free throw. Oh, yeah. Just the from the top side of the yeah. No, that, 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 that does make more sense. Out of bounds. Blue free throw. Out of bounds. There we go. Uh, this, this is such a such an awkward situation. Watch your teammates. Thomas is trying to resist the temptation to shit on his teammates. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Now I really do. <laughs> By the way, that's my roommate for the weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you if you just have swam half a meter more, you could have just put put, put it, it in, in rather yeah. than toss it in. I mean, the temptation is always real when you see an open goal. You don't know how long it's going to be open for. The guy behind us, Bratish Lava, is doing a really good job um, neutralizing whatever Vienna is trying to do here, even if what they're trying to do is uh, not very much coordinated. But I surely hope that during halftime they will have a good talk Half -time. about what is going on in the pool here right now. There's a big unit there. Uh, that's that's my roommate guy. <laughs> okay. Shout okay. out, shout out to Akos. I can understand why you wouldn't want to shit on him. The man who sawed down an entire forest tonight. <laughs> Snowy boy. Oh, is that what you mean? <laughs> you no, know, it's it's quite interesting because, as I said, uh, they had a confrontation two weeks ago in Prague during the Czech League. Pretty much the same pool as here, same size, same depth. Wait, you said a confrontation, do you mean? Yeah, they played play against each other. Oh, okay, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> not, <laughs> no the, not the Viennese guys, no, no, no. 
Slovakian guys and Viennese guys, they really like each other. They know each other so well. I feel like the Slovakians are playing this game. Um, yeah, like you said, they're, you know, uh, holding the ball in and um, getting locked up all the time. Like, I don't think that's going to work against a team of, uh, of big guys like the Indiana team. Because uh, they seem to be losing the ball whenever they get locked up. So, yeah, I, don't know. I think for them, what they need to do is just to uh, pass the ball like, <laughs> before they get locked up. I mean, yep. it's easier said than done, but, you know, some teams play very mobile. They keep the ball out and they just yep. pass it all the time. Other teams <coughs> hold it very close to the chest. The thing is, what, from what I see so far, is they always bring two or three players to lock up the first player they, yep. they see to neutralize whatever is going on. And personal point of view would be just have two or three quick passes left and right, force the others and stay down those three, four, five seconds longer, and yep. save your energy in the beginning, and then swoop in together and try just try to circle the ball around the basket, go for those kind of plays. I love sitting in the commentator's chair, giving free advice. Morning, white number <laughs> 78. Wedging with the shoulder. Does right. it We've seen an exchange, but Tiers Lointafel is out now. From Katz Fluid is going to come in. No exchanges for Bratislava from what I've seen so far. How many young players do they have from the Bratislava? Uh, I think four. Okay. Yeah. Like, they are, they are uh, some of the sons of the the players in right. the team. And a few girls or daughters as well? Uh, no. no. Men's only team so far. Is it? Yeah. One time out per game. Sometimes it's hard to tell with the jerseys. All right. Ball Even there's ready. an overlay. Who's going for the ball in the middle? Uh, might be Peter Maracek. Or no, Jan Kinderman usually one of those. Let's see what they will bring in the first few seconds of the game. Kinderman. That was interesting. Only two players down in the water. Yeah, Jan Kinderman was going for the ball. Yeah, for the seven. Have some background noise here. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just inside. Alright. Players are playing themselves there a little bit. We had a change in uh, Austria. Yeah. Oh, good opportunity. Of Slovakia coming in. After you lost. <laughs> After I lost. I mean. So, for those listening at home, uh, last night I was watching one of the games. Um, which one was it again? It was, it was uh, Sweden versus Vienna. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you, want me, you want more honest opinion? Um, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about yesterday's game, but if they played, Vienna played like they played against Sweden yesterday, it would be an entirely different game. Because they played really well against the Swedish team. They got taken, uh, got caught on the wrong foot mm. twice. And that Imola struck. I mean, sometimes it takes, when you play a better team, it can kind of bring out yeah. uh, some better qualities in your own play. Yeah, absolutely. You see. Let's see how they will fare. I mean, they just want. They just don't just want to win this game one zero and then leave it like that. They want to have one two good. Yeah. Good opportunities as well. You can see Bratislava just swarming their own basket. Yeah, there we go. Good opportunity. Okay. 
Friendly ball coming through oh. from the left side. Jano Bovisna to Akash <coughs> Brass let them get a wave of three or four you know, at the goal. Yeah, see, Andre Scott, yeah, he's surely one of, the, one of the dangerous, most dangerous players they have on the Brass level team, one of the strongest players they have as well. Yeah, Heinz Fluid was the, was the goal scorer. 27. <coughs> 27 for Vienna. Ball being just juggled back and forth. Uh, creating some opportunities for themselves. Trying to set up a bit of a game plan. Five minutes played, second half, second game of the day. I think Vienna's a little bit impatient to get the ball back. They're not having yeah. the full yeah. defense in place. Got a call for the tech ref. Blue free throw. Blue free throw. I, I surely have guessed it is against the game if they're <laughs> fighting, they fighting their own corner. But apparently not. <laughs> Setting up the game plan. So we had coming in again, player already waiting. Hands with number 27. Very nice. Yeah, good opportunity out. there. No. <laughs> <sighs> not gonna come, I'm not going to commentate on that. What do you think of the uh, old sit on the goal like it's a toilet tactic? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a bit of a dump tactic. We're going to have a little bit of talk with the player about this afterwards as well. <laughs> um, now, what I wanted to say, number 27, Hans Fubit, who came in and scored the second goal in Austria. Um, he's one of the oldest veterans we have. He's about 60 years old and he's been playing since the 80s. Well, yeah. Yeah. when it was still the Masters Cup. And he actually got a second place with Vienna, especially South Vienna had uh, on the Masters Cup. Wow, that's close. Nice. Do you know who they lost to? Um, uh, I think it was. Uh, I don't want to say it because it's still too fresh. Uh, I think it was they had a. Trifecta at the top, and Austria beat Germany, but uh, Germany beat Scandinavia, and Scandinavia beat Austria, and uh, goal difference made the difference in the game first. Wow. And uh, Sweden, past Scandinavia, it was Sweden back then. <laughs> do you mean the country or the city? <laughs> I mean the county. The county of Scandinavia. <coughs> <coughs> All right, Vienna moving in again. Players underneath, Gekodesh waiting to receive the ball, but two defenders down. Couldn't get the ball properly underneath the goalie. Goalie. Still trying. Yeah. That's a bad one. What the difference between the game they had played against uh, against Budweiser yesterday? Where they 
showed a really different gameplay like, compared to Vienna here. The kind of already clubbing to the rivalry, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in again from above. That looks like a goal. No? No, I think he got his hands on. Last second defense here again by Nam Raid. Lubomir Schuster. One and a half minutes to go. <laughs> Back on the surface of the Vienna corner. Playing it safe, not committing too many people to try and get the ball out. Okay, this might be the last can attack. The ball is Andres Pell, trying to come in from above. Does have help again, Hans Rubert coming with him. Waiting underneath, but oh, ball snatched away, and now we have one more fast break. a little bit of timing and awareness. Mm. Let's call it a warm-up game. Winners are when you put it in the bag. Yankee the man trying to get one for oh. on his arm. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> dropped ball. Ball just dropped down inside the goal. I think I think this this is a uh, perfectly sums up the game. Uh, in total, one second Just left. Missed opportunities. <laughs> Off we go. Let's let's put this game in the bag. Hello, <laughs> game. Close the bag and never oh, here open. We go. Never open this bag up again. Yeah. Yeah. Nice goal by Hans Rubert. He's one of the top scorers. Sixty over years old, you said. I think he's older actually. Wow. And um, he's one of the overall top scorers of the NL of all time. Wow. There's been a time when. Um, when the only tactic Viennese had is Heinz was waiting underneath the basket <laughs> and you just saw two arms sticking out <laughs> underneath the defender and you knew if he gets the ball, <laughs> it's a ball. All right, second game of the day. Done for today and we have a lot more coming up. The next game surely going to be on. one of the bangers of today's Ekomares versus Flipper and I think this is one of the Deciding game, <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and keep the ball. They're very good at uh, defending out in the open space because they're playing big pools the always. So, so they're used to that. So, get the ball and get around the goal, and let's Amazing. see how they do there. And regarding your squad, everyone is ready, everyone is fit, or you have any like uh, players that you cannot use today? No, everybody's fit. That's good to know. So, we're looking forward to the game. Echo Mars versus Flipper. Thank you. Hi, so with me is uh, Mikael Rasmussen from uh, um, Flipper from Copenhagen. Um, so you had a tough start yesterday with a 2 0 loss versus Alisson, but now playing against Eko Maris. What is your prediction for the game? I think it's going to be pretty equal. Uh, they play fast, so we have to stop it. We have to get the ball and we have to make pressure. I haven't seen them uh, get any pressure around the goal, so let's see how they do when we uh, start pushing. So, what will be the plan? Do you believe, though, what we saw just from the game yesterday, Ekomar? So, they're very fast playing around and they're just trying, of course, like bringing a lot of passes around the baskets. What do you believe might be the best chances for you, of course, to, to get scoring against them? Uh, get the ball first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and keep the ball. 
they're very good at uh, defending out in the open space because they play in big pools always, so, so they're used to that. So get the ball and get around the goal. And let's Amazing. see how they do there. And regarding your squad, everyone is ready, everyone is fit, or you have any like uh, players that you cannot use today? No, everybody's fit. That's good to know. So we're looking forward to the game. Echo Mars versus Flipper. Thank you. That's good, eh? Okay, guys. White ready. Blue. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next game. Eko Masas versus Flipper. And this is surely one of the most exciting games of today. Two top tier teams, Flipper coming from the second seed in the group, trying to, to move up. Eko Mares, first seed of the E group. We'll see what they can bring against the Danish champion. Actually, the Flippers really want to move ahead here, We're going into the finals. And now is their time to shine. Last chance for them to move up into the winner's bracket. Already, already showing off strong wave first attacks. You can see them extremely aggressively playing around the ball. Ekomara is though coming out ahead with the ball. After the scrum, immediately they're taken away again by the player. Ooh, a miss pass. Trying to swoop in. Call by the ref. Free throw for Flipper. Shoving out the basket. White free throw. So Flipper again in possession of the ball. Three players underneath the basket. Ecomaresto having enough players in position. 
Oh, good pass to the backside of the goalkeeper. Can he execute? Bra well saved by the goalie and the forward coming into the last point in time. Good first opportunity for Flipper. Well played by them. And now Ekumares. Surely for the first time. Getting. Oh, ball snatched away. Even nearly such a way. Got, got a hold off. Hector Escobar. Now Flipper back defending. No defender. No goalkeeper in position initially. But three forwards blocking the space up. Coming in from above, Ekumares. And we know from yesterday, number two, their favorite scorer. Hold it down, Flipper back in possession. Matson trying to move it over the middle. Ref a little bit in the way. Yet again, I think it was an attack. Wide yeah, free throw. Attacking the head. Wide free throw. By an Ecomodus player. Flipper staying in possession of the ball. Now trying to set up a gameplay in the closed corner. Drawing the forwards out, but forwards doing a good job already being <coughs> on the ball. Need somebody to pass to underneath him. Players waiting. Trisit Bolo coming in from the right. Oh, God. Tried to pass it to the left, though. Intercepted, blocked a little bit. Ball now. Kaas keeping it safe in the middle. And this is a very open game to him. Oh, good pull on the goalkeeper. Lifting him up, but fo forwards back him rest. Clearing for the teammates. Holding blue three free throw. Holding. Holding blue free throw. White free throw. White free throw. Yes. Free throw for choking. You see, it's a very tight and tough game. Physical game played by Comares versus the Flippers. The Colombian representative in blue, the Danish in white. Denmark losing against Olesson yesterday 2-0 after having a very strong first half. And Olesson took over the game in the second half and now Flipper being the more dominating team so far in these first minutes but taken away again. Oh, good attack from behind. Now, Ekomares coming in. How's the intensity been, Thomas? Really physical game so far. Ekomar has been a bit on the back foot now. They have set their eyes on the Danish basket Ooh. for the first time. Denmark so far doing a really good job uh, getting the ball back and moving back into the Ekomar's half. Flippers, very strong attacks. One really solid chance. Oh, now again. Oh. Defender not in place initially. Player, two players moving on the same side. Ball though being locked up by the defender. A good effort by him to clear the scene. Called by the ref. Let's see. 
Ooh, looks like a team Maybe effort. tough physical game, a lot of uh, like choking and attacking the head so far right. by Ikumata. Free throw. So this game, game not going according to their game plan, and we can see it getting rough very soon into the early half. Two and a half minutes to go. Three players of Lipper being positioned very, very well. Need Patient. Oh, oh, good block. Can he, can he move up? Goalkeeper, though. Oh, well done. Number 27 coming in from behind. Mario Valencia with the save for his goalkeeper. Out of bounds. Yet again, Flipper in possession of the ball. Been very patient, those two players. Really. Mm -hmm. Good setup, ball. block in the middle, defender blocked away. Ball being passed to the other side of the basket. Standard game pattern underwater rugby. Underwater rugby 1.0, so to say. Sometimes it's about doing the uh, basics. Yeah, doing the good. Executing well. the basics well. You see a play. Oh, I tried to toss it under the defender. Defender though moved into the corner. Blocked the path properly. Now coming in again, two players from the left. <laughs> one without the ball tried to create some space there tried to maintain possession of the position but a little bit of going back and forth between the defender and him ball now back in the middle of the pool one and a half minutes to go and Ekumar is here under a lot of pressure by Flipper and surely their game plan really revolving around getting a very fast uh, counter attack against this Flipper team oh you already looked like the commentator because it's weird again <laughs> And uh, we'll see if Flipper can maintain their momentum. One minute to go, trying to move in, being locked up by the forward. Ooh, good attack coming nice. in from above now. Can he bring the ball underneath the basket? Players waiting on both sides. Ooh, Neeson to the left, patiently waiting. Can he receive the ball? Call by the ref again. Shoving. Holding. This time it Blue is free throw. against Flipper. So Ekumara is getting a chance here at the end of the first half. 40 seconds to go. Would you say there's been any uh, close calls on either side? In terms of, uh, of opportunities or in terms of goals? Uh, goals. Yeah, Flipper had three really good chances so far. Now Ekamara is moving in. Ekamara is here, surely the, Ooh, the team that has to be more, this, more defensive and uh, Flipper seizing the physicality and um, using the, the strength of their players to their advantage. I mean, in a way, when it comes to experience, uh, that favors Flipper because they've played against Colombian teams. Yeah. Um, so Ekamara is so far time. never been to the Champions Cup, yeah. at least not in the last two decades. Probably never played in Europe, most of the players. And um, yeah, so they know they don't do not know European mm. teams at all, compared to the Orcas who've played against them uh, a lot of times now. Can we say with any confidence that Ikimaras is the first Colombian men's team besides the Orcas that's played the Champions Cup? Um, uh, I don't know for the entirety of Champions Cup, to be honest. <laughs> it's always the a entire <laughs> history of Champions <laughs> Cup. But for the latest 10 years, uh, as long as I've attended this tournament, yeah. um, Orcas has been the main representative. And. Um, also, years before, I think 2010, Colombia took the title on the female side. Uh, it was on the female side, though. So, <coughs> could have been once uh, in between, but for the later time that I know, the Orcas have been the dominating Colombian it team. It's always hard to uh, make any calls about this is a first for yeah. World Champions Cup, just because <laughs> it's such an old tournament. Yeah. Goes back to the dark ages, or to the good times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if there's any um, <coughs> major changes in how the two teams play in the second half. Yeah, I think we see uh, one or two players exchange for the Ikamaras. I mean, Flipper seems to be talking quite intensely amongst themselves, but Ikamaras, they're just chilled. So I, I doubt they're going to change the way they play. Yeah, I think they, they heavily rely on the strategy they had so far, yeah. getting a good fast break in, have your one, two uh, superb scorers underneath the basket. Then you never have, you can never count out Hector Escobar. <laughs> so, should we check the comments? Can you read Spanish? 
<laughs> we need someone more qualified. Um, I do guess, though, that a majority of Spanish comments might be in favor of the Colombian representative. <laughs> what do you think about me? <laughs> I can understand Barbos and I can understand yeah. Colombia. <laughs> so I think this sums up uh, the comments uh, yeah. in the chat section right now. I can also understand emojis. <laughs> um, we had a legitimate question from someone asking what happens if there's a tie. What happens if, if there's a tie? There will be a good old penalty shootout. No okay. game will end in a tie. No extra on time. Champions Cup. There is like no overtime. Um, so it's just good old one on one. Sometimes I, sometimes I feel like overtime <laughs> can actually be quicker than penalty shootouts. Last and 15 it's only seconds. One on one penalty shootout. So the, first, right. the first time, the first penalty, oh, wow. you miss, you're out. That is basically. rough. All right, so three seconds to go, half-time break over. I think Flipper will maintain its game plan. Ooh. <laughs> Flipper, they were the team who were talking the most during the half-time break, so maybe they'll change something up. Yeah, I think they maybe talk about how to get in a little bit better, get the ball quicker to whoever is positioned properly under the basket. But in terms of their game plan, they have solid players. They know what they want to do. They have the fundamentals to do so. It's just now execute whatever you want to do in a good mm -hmm. fashion. And um, then you're pretty much good to go. Don't give up, give up too much defensively. So first and foremost, you want to have a solid and stable defense. You want to have your forwards in position. Oh, oh good, uh, good attempt. Moving in. Oh, goalkeeper's exchange. They were a risky move there. I can mark the with the basket. No, good effort by the goalie to get, get properly in time. Pippen now forward, stolen the bat, stolen the ball away. And now uh, I think Matson moving on. Good patience by him, not tossing the ball immediately, giving it up to his opponents. Two players waiting to intercept, now uh, Flipper waiting in the corner to the wall, will move to the closed side. And something that we've seen um, over the latter days, and I don't know if this is something that uh, Canadian steward teams do more often, they, they start out if they have a fast break to go to the open side of the basket, because right. players are not jumping immediately, so the open side of the basket yeah. is usually the safe side for the first attack wave you have, and then you move to the closed side, because then right. the players are starting to exchange. So also for the younger teams out there, first attack, if you're coming straight from your side and also the opponent has to swim back, you can go straight to the open side and then you move to the other side and force the team to move around. But now, back into the game, Mekomara is trying to force something onto the flipper basket. That ball snatched away in midair. Flipper do look more confident when yeah. it uh, comes to possession around the... Oh, it's commentator's curse. <laughs> Bobby, you did it again, you did it again, but now <laughs> flipper back in possession. Defender not in place initially, we see two, three players. Oh, oh. Good, good effort, oh, good attempt, number 24. The Batman, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> for Denmark. Not even hiding his identity. So. That's interesting. That was, yeah, that was an interesting call because he was shoving the player without the ball, but the ball yeah. was out of bounds <laughs> yeah. beforehand. So I'm kind of interested to see. But then the ball touched yeah. an Eagle Maris player once it was Wide already out of bounds throw. on his back. <laughs> yeah, Wide basically it's deep possession. <laughs> this is a high-level referee question. Yeah. Next-gen tactics. Flipper right. fighting for the ball in the middle of the pool, locked up for a moment by Eagle Maris player. Very chill when they're in the corner. We've lost the screen. Move in again. And the cars. And we've seen over and over again Flipper trying to just force. Oh, that player was not happy. He got kicked in the face. Yeah. Flipper trying to force as many Ikumaru's player down with the first attack wave and then send two, three players in to yeah. have one big guy yeah. just do as much damage as possible. Oh no, good opportunity for for Flipper here. Ball being able to be placed Ooh. down, goalkeeper not in position initially. One hand is underneath the back of the goalkeeper. 
and he's fighting for his position now has to move out Ekumatos forward though getting possession of the ball though being attacked immediately in the corners knuckle and mask floating around the pool Negard in the middle of the pool trying to receive the ball underneath the basket now being locked up being pulled up with Rasmussen that's called wow. by the ref now that was a very physical <laughs> 30 seconds I think it's again a free throw and the quick execution, Wide having one throw. player underneath the basket, stealing away uh, the space. Funnily enough, the ref uh, was sending him into the middle of the pool, even though the infringement was... Um, Time out! Two, two, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good call by Ekumaris, if it's an Ekumaris call. That was a lot of pressure yeah. in a very short yeah. period of time. Having, having your, your yeah. um, defender's position stolen away, same yeah. with uh, if, if the goal's position is stolen away from the free throw, if you have a timeout, take a timeout, otherwise yeah. you're creating so much pressure on your team. Wow, that definitely went up a gear. Well, Krefeld already warming up outside as well. So Flipper, I think, um, they, they, they have opted for the grindy game plan thus far. Being the more physical team, done really well so far of disrupting the eco defense who's always had to come in at the last point in time last second yes. we can see them yeah keep going keep going we're gonna are get they, them are they a bigger team flipper have yeah, you seen them yeah side they're, 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 they're more physical okay. team, yeah the danes compared to each other they all look normal <laughs> but then if you see <laughs> yeah. the, if you stand next to them in person and um, they're all about my size which is yeah. 190 and uh, all above or a lot of them above 100 kilograms so because that's the thing I noticed about the Orcas when I first started watching rugby 10 years ago. Um, they were very good, but they were s always smaller than European teams. Yeah. But then something happened in the last like five years. They all yeah. <laughs> got giants. They found protein. Yeah. Um, or some other white powder that helps. I don't know. Call the ref again. All right. This time in favor for Ekomares that was attacking underneath. Um, it's time for pulling at the basket without ball. It's not affecting the screen. We just have some uh, screen issues here in the couple days box. Okay. So right. Ikemar is really having so trouble yeah. getting through to the flip oh, basket. But that, oh, ooh, that was a. <laughs> And especially Hector Escobar getting the ball in this position. Seen wreak so much havoc already in this tournament as well during the first days. Oh, the ball oh, to the back side. Go. Good opportunity here for Ekamaras. The first actual opportunity for Ekamaras. And it's one of those key situations when you get the ball as a defending team and you can't move it away from your basket properly and you lose it in the process. One of the most dangerous situations your team can be in, your defense in a bit of a disarray and then maybe out of sync, somebody exchanging, you have an open basket, maybe a goalkeeper uh, on the basket. And coming in again from the left. You can see only two Danish forwards, oh. but one staying down, the back not of opening up a gap. Really good, well. good, well done by him. <laughs> again, Nick the rest about trying to Great space for himself. Oh, oh pass, trying pass. to pass his team into the middle of the pool. Now, fast break opportunity, but oh, yet again, Ekumaras. Again, the call by the ref. Something. Hey, joking. Okay. White free throw. That is an it's interesting free White throw. Free throw. Yeah. They are having space to swing forward. Yeah, and, they, uh, they missed the advantage there. Yeah, that is surely, in my opinion, an advantage call. But Flipper with the fast execution of the free throw. Straight up going for it. See play already on the left side, being positioned underneath the basket. Still a tie game, 0-0. Zero, zero. Cars coming in and Flipper surely wants to finish this game in the regular game time. You want to get this win uh, under the belt. Been such a, scoring so much to, throughout the entire game, but being so close to scoring. Coming in again, I think it's Rasmussen on the back. The basket the basket a little bit is always a bit of an issue <laughs> if you're swimming in with your 100, 110 kilograms. I think the basket's uh, designed for mere mortals. 
not for Vikings. <laughs> Not for, not for chunky boys. Yeah. Bring, bring on the chunky boy baskets. Right now, two and a half minutes to go. Ekonvarez being the pressing team now, trying to create something in the Danish half. You can see the Danish forwards lurking in between. I think that the, the, the play style is very similar to the national team play style of Denmark, where they have the forwards very close to their own basket. Yeah. And they're just trying to they have big guys defending, let them come in, and then last second when they come in and the ball is a bit insecure, just yeah. go for them and rip the ball out and try to get a fast break. Have also your fast defenders uh, break out with them. It doesn't work. Well, Ike Maris, they're not in much of a hurry to score this goal. They're just. Yeah, and there we go. Defender with the ball has to move out, being attacked immediately by two Ikemaru's players. But the goal, Ooh, the goal so is moving up. Yeah, this is the situation I was talking about. Yeah. No goalkeeper in position, and uh, this might as well backfire heavily onto your team. One minute to go. Batman trying to yep, push the Ikemaru's player out. Interesting. Who, who had possession of the ball in this situation? Oh, Ikemaru's player was pushing the flipper play out, and then he took right the ball before he went out. <laughs> yeah. Right free that's, throw. That, that's, that's the meta game. Just give him the ball last <laughs> second yeah. and shove him out. Yeah. You swim with him to the side of the pool, <laughs> drop the ball, and shove the, shove the opponent. Next level right plays. Team. It's almost like bullfighting. Right team, the time red out. <laughs> ha! Called an ambulance. Not for me. <laughs> This is exciting. One minute left. Now Flipper took a timeout. Very smart of them to not let the clock, clock run down and uh, have this 30 seconds, 37 seconds to go. I think it's fair to say that Flipper has been the most dominant team in this yeah, game. Absolutely. So it's going to suck for them if this goes to penalties. And then, I mean, once it goes to penalties, we have to It's 50 50. Yeah, usually. Usually during penalties, um, especially on a level like this, uh, if you have superb goalkeepers who can defend for the proper 45 seconds under full duress, this Last really, 15 really, seconds. Does, really does give you a heavy advantage. We don't just need one of them, we need like a in, this, in, this, in this case, you just need one of them. Make it still go two, but it's three, three or four rounds. Yeah, yeah, but still, if you have one really good goalkeeper who, you, who defends 95% <laughs> of his penalties. <laughs> All right, Clipper sending everybody in. Oh, but well, losing the ball in the approach, during the approach. And now Ekumar surely want to lock up this ball. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Oh, oh now about Flipper ripped out. Can they bring a ball forward? 21 seconds to go. Pass to the middle of the pool. Damn it. Oh, the ball stripped away, and now they have the fast break opportunity. 15 seconds to go. Do they have a defender back in position? Hector Escobar is trying to get anything set up, and you can see all the Ekomars now swarming forward, but Denmark back in possession of the ball, and I think four seconds he will lock it, lock it up now. This will Shoot. be a penalty. End of the game. Fighter game and the first game that is gonna get two overtime and in this case penalties which is gonna give us beer for um, which is gonna yeah well I mean you don't do you know the rules already no so uh, if the commentators have to work overtime we need overtime compensation and um, <laughs> it will be paid out in beers on Sunday at the Champions Cup party the commentators are looking very mu for much forward to your contribution to our uh, successful evening <laughs> Um, Every team I'm should not, play I'm penalties. Yeah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> not only will it prolong the tournament for about two hours, but then again, I will not survive Sunday. What's the currency? Is it one yeah. beer every 10 minutes? One beer per overtime, I'd say. That's fair. But what's the overtime currency? What's the overtime unit? One, one beer per one overtime. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, one one beer not beer measured overtime, in minute. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, it's uh, going to be fatal. <laughs> Um, this I will be very interesting. I wonder if the teams yeah. were prepared yeah. with an order of how they're gonna, of who's gonna take the uh, penalty yeah. before. Yeah. Oh, that's have have new rulings. Please yeah. come right. to Captain. The they should actually have to provide a list uh, prior to the games. I'm not sure. 
if uh, the Champions Cup as a open tournament, uh, not 100% CMS rules, uh, yep. does. Um, but even that CMS rule where you provide the list before the tournament, that's a very interesting way to do it because you don't know what's going to happen during the game. Yeah, not spill Some teams also opt uh, to uh, exchange right before penalties to have players on the bench who are fresh, maybe have a goalkeeper on the bench right. um, who is super fresh just for a situation like this. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Referees explaining the rules of yeah. the penalty to the team captains. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone Start seems to agree. Hopefully there will be no uh, sources of confusion here. Yeah. I believe, uh, was it Estevanga? That was the first time we had this rule applied to a CMS tournament. Penalty rules so, right? at the yeah. European Championships yeah. last year, and it was creating a lot of <laughs> it <confusion. was> <laughs> havoc. <coughs> Who will be first? So, so, number blue usually gets awarded Nine. first uh, attempt, Attacking. and white being the team playing up, 14 has to defending first, which is a um, bit of an advantage being able to score first to the other team has, all the has to pull up and has to ultimately score as well. So we see Hector Escobar versus Mikel Rasmussen on the first attempt. And we see, see Mikel. Oh, that, that was a kick. That, that was a kick. Like kick. Then again, both teams. Yep, there we go. Nice. Hector Escobar. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> little shout out to the audience. We appreciate that. Go. Number 97. <laughs> 97. For the Ecomares. Now, is it the Hector Escobar that's also playing? White team, team, number two, he's attacking. He's the only player who's not an Orca, right? I, I don't know. As far number as I 10, know. defending. Could be likely. All right, and now Flipper has to score. Simon Schaefer and Juan Manuel Escobar <laughs> defending. I think the uh, our chat's blowing up. Chat is blowing up. We see cool. you, Colombian oh, yeah. supporters. We hear you. And we think we can understand you. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Simon Schaefer going for the one on one. Ooh, yeah, he's got a good position out to the goalkeeper. Just oh. has to lift him up. Oh, yeah, the goalie, though. Very mobile. Good. And he might get an attack on the head call against it. The goalie twisting and turning. I think he just has to grab his hip properly yeah. and then just pull him up. Oh, patient, patience, patience. Oh. Ball drop. 15 seconds to go. Simon Jeff has, has to get the ball. There's no way the goalie has the air for this. Uh, oh. I actually think he has. But yeah, good effort by Simon Jeff. Uh, wow, that was. That was closer no. than uh, he would love it to be, but the goalkeeper what being so an amazing mobile. effort. But also, gotta give props to Simon Schaefer for being patient and yeah. not see. That is one of the biggest rookie mistakes yeah. during the penalties. A lot of goalkeepers will motion in a way okay, that gives you security Number to toss two, the, ball and the ball. And those goalkeepers are toying with you. I know it because <laughs> I am one of those goalkeepers because I don't want to spend the 45 seconds yeah. on me, so I'll give you yeah. the opportunity and I'll try to snatch okay. the ball away. But Ready? that was a Herculean effort from the goalkeeper. That was, yeah, superb defense from the goalie, but he's been twisting so much. It, but it now was so disciplined for him not to get that ball. Yeah. That was Alejandro Navia, well. the top scorer for Ecomares so far in this tournament, going one on one against number 13, Philip Mond. Philip Mond, like, oh, oh nice. strong push by Navia. Goal. <coughs> Number two. He's probably the biggest guy on the Ecomares team. Yeah, they have two jockey boys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Navi here so far. Philemon is not usually a goalkeeper, is he? Hmm? Philemon? Now, yeah. uh, white team uh, is not Matson. Uh, Matson, it was Matson. Number four. Did they swap jerseys? Or did we still have the wrong team list by now? We're not sure yet. Wait a second. Four. I don't think they're not sure either. And the time? Okay, ready? <laughs> I think they're just confusing themselves. Like I said, the Danish number system is very complicated. 
Oh, very kicky. Oh, oh no. This should, this should, yeah. Yeah, this should not be allowed. The ref, the ref actually, yeah, motion on the, on the, on the bumper. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough, though. It's a goal. It's good that they waited. They gave him a chance to score a goal. So yeah, but ev even, I mean, he's not allowed to score or, or defend for a long time. Yeah, now, yeah. But even under the circumstances, the kick in the face and the attack on the head actually should be sanctioned. But sometimes uh, what teams do, they try and get a, um, a strategic foul. So they foul on purpose. Yeah. So that forces the uh, player to do another penalty. All right, we've seen two penalties by each team as well, non defended so far. Ikumar has gotten very close to defense mm. on the penalty, and the new penalty ruling that the goalkeeper is not allowed to okay. move further away from the, the basket. Blue team attacking uh, 92. Intensified a little bit lately, Defender preventing him from. Nine, number nine. The ball. So, number nine. No. Sören Nielsen. Yeah, number nine. And, uh, Defending. Let's see. 27 yes, attacking What's 92. It? Yes, ready. Who's the, who the attacking player? It's 32. That would be Christian Salazar. It's 32. Good move by him, trying to get at least the defender. Defender though moving downwards. Now he's got a grip on the choke on the He's though using his leverage, his, his weight, push okay. him away. I don't think he stressed the defender enough there. See if he can. Usually, you want to try and stress the defender a little bit more before you go up for air, right? Yeah, but oh. he, he didn't have have a good proper angle anymore onto the goalkeeper. Now he can move up. Oh, Ooh, listen! He gets oh. a grip on the ball, and I think surely yeah. I mean, there's a mask lost as well in the process. What to say? And <laughs> the fin. He was Columbia a player losing everything in the process, but Flipper no, no. defending. Their third penalty, and now they have to score and to take away the game. Yeah, that's exactly what you said. The uh, goal scorer wasn't patient. There was yeah. a, a sliver of an opportunity, and yeah, he went for it yeah. right away. Number 24 attacking white team. Just enough gesture. Number 77 defending. The time. So we have Santiago Valencia. Okay, ready. And Frederick Anderberg attacking. We'll see what he can bring. Also interesting, I like to um, to mention a bit of difference in style approaching a penalty, especially in a short pool like this. Mm. It can be a real advantage for the attacker to just sprint to the goal yep. as fast as you can and try to get yep. underneath the defender. Because the, the way that you have uh, to the basket um, is very similar to the to the goalkeepers and the goalkeeper has to adjust himself in yep. the position a little bit of an attack on the head he's got a grip on the goalie yeah there we go it's patience by denmark it's a goal. and patience was rewarded and See, that's game over, for that's game over yeah. for Ecomares. they are now removed from contention for the first place in this tournament but that easily could have gone the other way as well. Like we yeah. saw, that was a really good defense attempt from Mika Mares. Yeah. If they um, had saved that, then the pressure would have been all on for Flipper. And we got to be honest, Flipper has been the more by dominant. far the more dominant yeah. pressing team during this game. And now we'll be moving to the next contention for top four. And it's going to be Olesund, who had a great Ooh. showing yesterday against Czech Puchovica. And I do have a bit of a favorite for this game, to be honest. <laughs> <coughs> and we go to Torsten. <laughs> Maybe see in line with Mario Scorre. <laughs> is the first for Eins, as well. yeah. Ready, go. So with me is Mario Scorre from Alessund. Yeah. So you're here the first time ever at the Champions Cup. How do you feel? Feel good. It's uh, fun to have a young team and uh, my old team from uh, where I started playing rugby in '88. So it's uh, fun to be here and uh, we just try to make the best of it. So you mentioned already you have a young team. So, so what is your secret? How did you bring all this player to the squad and making them so good? Well, we, we try to uh, build on our policy to have fun. And then you gather a lot of kids and try to have fun with them. And then they will develop. And you try to have focus on speed. And um, then it, will, it just evolves from that. Very good. What can we expect from you and your team now in the next match? High pressure, high speed. 
uh, and hopefully more goals than the other team. Great. So wish you all the success and then good luck. Thank you very much. So that was Marius Gore, who was just interviewed from Olsen by Torsten. Yeah. And uh, long time veteran for Norway yeah. as well. Thomas has we had a fun, fun talk with Marius uh, during the World Cup. And uh, Marius told us uh, how long he's been playing out of water rugby so far. And then Irvind, uh, the Norwegian national team coach and player, told us how long he's been playing out of water rugby as well. And both together combined have more experience than uh, playing, uh, more years of experience playing under water rugby than some entire teams being at the World Cup in Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> so just two players playing under water rugby since, let's say, the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly some entire countries. <laughs> if you yeah. add up all yeah. the underwater rugby players of the entire country. Shout out Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's absolutely insane how long they've been playing and how long they've been playing on such an incredible level. Yeah. And now he's playing with his home team, Olesund. And we'll see what they can bring to the table here against Budweis. I would say they are... Blue team ready? White team ready? They're objectively the favorites here. I mean, favorites to win, not necessarily emotional favorites. So we actually have Budweiss going up to an early start. Doesn't last long though. Quick winning the ball back by Orsund. And now? No, right they come in. But they're not going to go straight into the goal, or are they? We'll see how they approach this game. Yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see how aggressive they'll be. Yep, there we go. This is kind of yep. aggressive they bring to the table and I think the big guy who's been slimming down quite a bit <laughs> with number seven taking away the first score for his team. Evil Bjornemrem who switched club from Molde moved to Alessand and took his very young team except for Marius <laughs> to the Nationals and uh, took away the title from Molde and now representing Norway here at the Champions Cup. The Norwegian scene is really interesting at the moment because we have the top four teams all very, very close together. And it's really good for a country to have four oh. teams on a high level competing for a title. Absolutely. Because all those teams will try to uh, recruit youth, all those teams will try to stay competitive on a high level yeah. because and they have a chance to contend for a title. Uh, which uh, in progression does help out your country and your massively, yeah. so massively. They'll keep each other competitive. Yeah. And that's something that I think a lot of countries miss. Yeah, absolutely. You have a lot of countries where you know you have one really good team and then any serious player uh, who wants to play rugby at a high level moves to that team and then that means they don't have a good sparring partner. Yeah. But back to the game here, we have another attack by Olesson. They're going in one or two at a time, so they're not really kind of committing a uh, full wave. So, Budweiss. Just getting the ball over halfway. And they get the ball out, take it to the corner, pressure it into the corner. <laughs> Ready. Immediately. <laughs> he, he doesn't this, think he'll be defending for very long. I mean, the body language tells yeah. you so much about the expectation yeah, of your exactly. teammates and what he wants his teammates to do and what he not only expects but knows um, when he sees his teammates approaching yeah. a player. Um, immediately okay. putting your feet into the wall as a defender, switching up getting offensive and getting those two, three meters ahead for a fast break. Also, it's, it's a flex. <laughs> it's a flex as well. It psychs out the other team. And it doesn't cost you anything because you can easily move back into a yep. proper defender position uh, during the time your forwards 
And the penalty. Oh, there we go. Mm. Do you know what back it's out? Oscar Vick attacking, number 18. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I know my players. <laughs> now, defending number 15, Paul Krecha. Let's see what he can do against Oscar Vick coming in from above. Oscar Vick had a really strong tournament. Nice. He was he one of the top scorers at yeah. the Gold so Blue number 18. As well as okay. Also played really well during the World Cup, but showed off yesterday against top teams as well. And he's such a young player yeah. still, so. Like 23, 24, yeah. something like that. Having players like this on your team who are already playing at such a high level at such a young age is incredible to have in, in the long run. So he's got a good 20 more years of <laughs> straight up professional on the world rugby. He's probably already been belt. playing for like 15. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so. Take care of the young ones. <laughs> All right, advice. Again, moving into Alvesen's half, trying to play in the corner. <laughs> now, moving in on to the Alvesen basket, Baldo. I think he got the knee in the face there. Probably. Something a lot of players have to learn also to yeah. cross the thing out of water rugby is, um, especially if you come from a team that is not playing maybe as physically yeah. contending, um, as as much as as much as it hurts you, as much as it hurts you to move uh, onto the opponent's basket and approach the opponent's basket. Uh, as much you can hurt your opponent, basically, <laughs> they're approaching you. And uh, some players, especially young players, they play very respectfully. Yeah. Whereas, um, especially also during, during practice uh, at your own club, you have to get used to a certain level of physicality. And there we have yeah. this certain level of physicality. That was that was the physical that was that was just goal insane, yeah. number 18. Quick, just getting the ball, yeah. you can see the goalkeeper exchanging, he's receiving the ball, just turning around, bam. In. He must have been the gap between the shoulder and the neck. Do we have the other angle of the camera? So but yeah, split second split seconds plays like this that really make a difference for yeah. your team. I think what you were saying there, Thomas, is that you need to uh, develop a tolerance to violence, <laughs> basically. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. So we see the same thing over. All of a sudden, patiently waiting. Moving the defenders out. So on the Czech side, usually the two teams we see at Champions Cup uh, are Three Tom Brun yep. and Budweiser. Mm -hmm. And I think the last time we saw Three Tom Brun play, they were very competitive, like top six, seven. Um, but this Czech team doesn't look as strong. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, they beat Barcelona yesterday. Yeah. So oh really? Yeah. Wow. Move up to, um, to the upper bracket here. Yeah. So they're contending for top eight right okay. now. And um, they have a lot of young players with them as yeah. well. So it's not the old veteran team in Pugas that probably might have a bit more punch. Yeah. So they gave a lot of the young players the opportunity to play here in the Champions Cup, which I really appreciate. Yeah. It. And sometimes you have to ex do exactly it's that. An investment. Yeah. yeah. Step back to step forward. And um, so they, they're usually going head to head, and it's very fun thing. In that usually, if we have usually if we have a full if we have a full beaten we have a full beaten squad, a full beaten squad, uh, full squad, uh, Vienna, uh, Vienna is uh, quite often beating through the world. So it's a very good point. And again, we are usually struggling against Budweiser, 
and then sometimes uh, treating the road is uh, beating Putweis and uh, quite often when we got really, really close to winning the league for some weird reason those teams beat each other by the perfect score so <laughs> that Vienna is not getting <laughs> first in the league. <laughs> Sounds like what you were saying about um, Vienna coming second in the Champions Cup. Right here. I mean, that was during the Masters Cup era, so that's quite <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> but we have some old players who still are talking about the glory days. Right, all of on the game moving in. Closely to check basket, approaching. Weak waiting again. And we have a very fun story from back then when Austria was playing against Germany. It was Duisburg back then. And play of Duisburg was, was being interviewed. Oh, and, uh, after the, the game, they, they played against Vienna and they really struggled to play against Vienna. So, yeah, the Viennese, they, they slow down, they speed up, they slow down, they speed up. And then it was the following interview with Vienna, and uh, our kid was like, yeah, when we're out of breath, we play a little bit slower. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic. <Yeah. laughs> big brain thinking. <laughs> Just, yeah, big brain tactics. By <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, there we go. Play on his basket, but cannot can hold on to the ball properly. Ooh, Ooh nice. The corner. Oh, half time. Half time. 3-0 for Olison and... Uh, I gotta be honest, Alisson looks quite casual. <laughs> yeah, they're probably not. <coughs> Do you think they are putting the best lineup in here? Um, uh, they do, do have a full 50-man ro 50 roster, but um, as I've seen Evers playing, Morris is, gaining, so is playing, so they're taking it seriously. They might exchange now during the halftime. Mm. Maybe they also have some players who are a bit ill, um, who might not be playing um, in a game like this. Quite often comes down to who is available for a game. But usually, top teams like this, they will bring their A-tier squad. So, a yeah. new track. It's a serious game. This is a camp section. Our team. Divers from the land. Who is the Champions Cup here? The tech squad. Guys, uh, we go with the mic because mic. Right, there is a place to change. You see, uh, oh, and actually, uh, but the young guy, the owner, and the most great dogs. Kamarash, uh, Fish is Maliki. And uh, I was just going to be the best of this It's always very uh, young team. Five? What? It's always very distracting. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This game has been pretty much decided in the first half. Four both teams, so uh, they will now to give everybody the experience in this game, whereas I'm taking my recent days off fresh a little bit today. Seconds go on the halftime break. No fun fact: Per Solabaka is the brother of Gerardo Solabaka, who is the uh, who plays on the uh, women's national team, in the world, and uh, is the uh, wife in the of water. Eva. Eva. Yeah. White team ready. A bit of uh, underwater rugby. Instance. Blue team ready. Family business. That's where you move to. That's where you move to. Okay. So we have. Good advice winning the ball, snapping up really quickly, taking it to the goal. Oh, and they are swarming. 
Norwegian goal, trying to get some action there for themselves in the beginning. But we have Iver. Place. Winning ball being, ooh, being placed to the right. Player underneath the basket has an opportunity to score here, but now defender back in position, getting, pos getting possession of the ball. Always, you can see some players having a really fluid movements yeah. when they do so, knowing very well how they have to position. Yeah. And um, actually, the Colombian Samuel has been posting a very interesting video on Instagram as well. You can check his channel out. Uh, especially, Colombian workers have a lot of underwater rugby knowledge on their channel as well, um, where they did a um, university a study about um, player movement and flexibility yeah. and how this. Um, kind of affects uh, long longevity as a player in general, but also your uh, level of, uh, the kind of elite level of uh, play you can yeah. uh, approach uh, in the long run, and also the effect of your physical health in the long term. L let me guess, the results were that flexibility is good? Yeah, <laughs> of course. And um, yeah, and so it's a free study, you can read it free online. Mm. You can even post the link probably. Post in the comments. Them. I can post okay. links in the comments because it's blocked, but we can put it on Instagram as well. A nice little bit, a nice little bit of underwater rugby trivia. So just a shout out. Speaking of Instagram, shout out to one of our volunteers, uh, Annika, who is uh, doing most of our social media. Uh, but she is doing it from another city in Germany because uh, she's currently <laughs> sick and tested positive for COVID. She's got. The good old COVID. But she's still working hard and uh, covering as much as possible on the social media for this. And we have a very nice goal there from Olsen. Just casually pulling the goalie by the neck of the basket. Creating a gap. Goal, blue, in. number seven. Yeah. It actually looks like the goalie might have been pushed off. <laughs> on the other side by another player who didn't have the ball. <laughs> mm. Sloppy pass there. Instant counter attack by Orson. But strong four checking by the checks. And we have referee call there. Wide free throw. Holding. Wide free throw. Holding. Instantly full checked after the free throw, but they keep the ball. Now they try to get past the middle defense. Olsen's obviously playing like they're very dominant here. They're not committing too many people to defend. Rather, they're trying to win the ball back in the middle of the field, which creates a big issue for the Czechs to get close to the basket. And then take the ball and straight into counter attack one against two. The support is a little bit late. This is something that is very has been, that has been very um, significant for Norway throughout this entire tournament. But also during the last World Cup, they shifted from a more reliant on um, physicality play style to a more speed-oriented play style. Uh, Holding the young players that they have, Wide they have not as Holding. Um, as heavy Wide as young players. Yeah, they were still being very physically strong and very tough. And um, I've had a little bit of a talk with one of the Norwegian coaches and uh, we were talking about uh, the shift in play style. He was, he was saying like, yeah, we love it, that we love that we have a little bit of a new identity in the, in the field and we're playing a little bit differently and it's working yeah. out for us. 
but we have four years until the next World Cup, and let's see how many kilograms they can get <laughs> <laughs> during that period of time. So they surely want to have their, their players gain five or ten more kilograms, being around 90 kilograms, being really fast for us. I don't think 90 kilograms is enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it depends on if you're really fast. Yeah. I mean, they lost one key player, which was uh, boarding a Peterson. And not only was he heavy, but he had, you know, arms that were like tree trunks yep. and also very long. And there so we I go. Think Yet another super play ball being just carefully tossed to the right. Player being ready to receive it. As he pass Goal. into the Blue middle. Number 15. He's a little bit hidden 15. for the defender. Almost a trip pass. And the goalkeeper not in position properly. And there we go. Just it's very nice having there. these replays. They're really well done. Yeah. Sometimes I can see it would be really good to have um, a different angle in replay. If you have yeah. like play like this from the other side of the basket, to have a little bit more yeah. of a 45 degree angle on the replay. But um, or or a camera inside the goal. Or a cam the front cameras from the World Cup we were talking about it yesterday. They're giving a really good insight. On, um, what is going on from a player's perspective when they're approaching from the middle of the pool? So this yeah. is something that we really appreciate to have somewhere. We're also talking about maybe have a fixed 45 degree angle camera on the wall side where the yeah. referee is currently reassigning um, to have another um, angle of the game because so much of the game is happening yeah. in the closed corner. But I think you also need a goal cam, a cam looking up from the bottom of the goal. You can only see a ball dropping down then a hover No, no, you can, if you have a wide angle one, you can see yeah, you can everything see that happens right before as well. So you're up for plexiglass baskets. Yeah, fully see through. It doesn't even have to be fully see through. And then have a goal cam inside of them. Literally <laughs> just sink a GoPro at the bottom of the basket and that's good enough. again from the from the wall side it's That's incredible good. how much um, chaos one player on the Olsen team can create generally against yeah. two or three other players still hold the ball still get it out and it's also funny they committed four players on this play and they're still able to stop and approaching fast break immediately yeah white free throw so two minutes to go Olison against Jack Utschbisse. Score. Score gonna score. <laughs> nope, he's passing. But that wasn't his fault. <laughs> oh, he got there in the end. You can make a meme to score yeah. it, not to score it. <laughs> <laughs> Goal, blue question. number 11. Elf. Would be even more funny if he's Danish, but <laughs> <laughs> I think then again, he can't have it all. No. There was a Danish player whose name was, um, who used to have his name as Thor van Kamen Nielsen. Love but it. I was disappointed to find out that. I don't think Hammer is actually part of his name. I think that was just a little creative addition. So no, it's that, just that Thor Funk Oh! Oh, oh did we get a goal? Oh! Wow. That was a, a quick one oh, coming five. in from the ball. Uh, from right. Now pass. Well as goal change. No, 11. Goal change. Two left coming in. Push. Bam! There we go. Allison getting a bit too casual and good guys. Jack Puchovic here, stealing one away from Olesund. Tipsy was Yaroslav. Yaroslav Krekka. Or Krechka, I might say. He's going to go get a few free deers this Sunday. Wall of Fame. No, I think we've, we've talked about it yesterday as well. Um, if you are losing by a, let's say, rather significant margin, like yeah. in, in a game where you're down 6-0, play clock running through, this is not something you're going to come back from. Yeah. Especially if, if, if the non-team is playing so dominantly against you. But at the end of the day, um, switching up your game plan from we're going to do everything in our possible ways to defend whatever we yeah. can do to let's 
bring players forward Game and over. play offensively and try to create situations, try to practice a more offensive play style against a top team like this, and then creating a scoring opportunity. Even, here we go, one more time, we've seen the replay yep. of the Chase. Just casually yep. <laughs> pumping it in, casually on the water rugby. But there again, but I think one thing is that the top Norwegian teams, and even the top Swedish teams, they've never been... They've never had the best defense in some of these games where they're dominating on the team. They're you know, much more postured towards scoring as many goals as possible rather than keeping their defense particularly tight. Goal by number 11 for Marius Gigesat. Last one, props to him. And now we have moving into the next Hola. game. Hola. Well Hola. done by Alessund, taking away the game Hola. against Czech Portuguese, moving up into the top four. Six players in the water, please. And we have James Gavin. How do you feel? Uh, we feel times. very happy to be here. We are very grateful to have the chance to play against uh, some of the best team in the world. And yeah, we are doing our best to compete against them. We are pretty happy. Very cool. So um, yeah, since your game is uh, starting in two, literally in two minutes, do you want to greet someone? If you want, Just want to greet someone, say hello to someone. Yeah, I want to say hello to all the Paris team, which is uh, watching us, uh, the guys who are supporting. And uh, yeah, thank you. So good luck and uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Six players in the water, please. Six players. How many players are the white team? How many? Eleven. You only have solo tienen cuatro. What is that? Marta, Marta, rápido. Yep. All right. Going into the next Ready? game of the day. Ready? We have the Paris Titans and uh, Barcelona. Paris Barcelona Titans. yesterday shook up the scene when they uh, beat the team from Amaga. Really? Wow. Yep. Late in the evening. Hola. Just again, casual on the water rugby 1-0. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really tough fought game. They had superb opportunities against Amaga. Both teams had the scoring opportunities and then in the end Barcelona took away the victory with a beautiful goal. And now we'll see the newcomers, the Paris Titans, um, I think it's the last match of groups actually they are right. playing out right now. They, they are not in, um, they are not done with the preliminary, the women's yeah. side is not done with the preliminary round yet because they have five uh, teams per group. Mm. So this should be the last game of groups. And they really are newcomers, the Paris Titans, in uh, every sense of the word because not only is this their first Champions Cup, but I think this is, they've only been together as a women's team for maybe a year, half a year? I think, yeah, it's the first time they are they have played in championship for women as far right. as I, I know. Because yeah. it was always a mixed team. Yeah. Like we knew Bordeaux, who was here, all the ones who played mixed. Um, so France now having teams and playing a championship. Really nice to see the scene evolving around Europe. It's such a shame that a huge nation like France yeah. didn't pick up the sport yet, but... I mean, part of it is because they're uh, on the bottom hockey, so popular there. <laughs> yeah, because they're boring. <laughs> <laughs> no shade on, on the water hockey, actually. No yeah, shade. <laughs> no, but underwater hockey players are always much better playing uh, underwater rugby than rugby players playing hockey. I mean, I don't mean better, I mean, as in they're more open minded to doing that. So. Because out of bounds? Players are Blue nuts. Blue. <laughs> out of bounds. Out of bounds. I have physicality and it's not allowed in underwater hockey. All right. We're going into the game. Two minutes played. Barcelona being a bit more pressing team here, playing against the Paris Titans. Out of Paris Titans played a very solid tournament, especially for the first time. Show me the ball, please. At the Champions Cup, playing on this level, not having the international um, experience all the other teams have yeah. in this cup. And now we see Barcelona there was picking up a first score. Goal number the basket and opening eight. up a space. We can see a player just okay. blue opening up. Full space, goalkeeper cannot position properly. The pass underneath the defender. Holding, well no done. goal. Why free throw? <laughs> okay. No goal. 
No oh, goal. Holding, right. Okay. Holding on, onto the goal. No goal. I think the, Why the player who's uh, opened up the space also moved up. Right. And she's not allowed to move without controlling the ball. So a little bit of a trick that you can do is put the ball under her arm and lift her arm up with the ball. So she's officially eligible to move the other player. But then again, you can just toss the ball into the space that should, that should have been created there. So, pass Huggins getting a good intercept. Can they get the ball past the halfway mark? Is she getting support she needs underneath? Basma is very, they really like to wrestle and they're good at it too. So it's a good strategy for them. I mean, if, if you have the physicality to do so and yeah. if your players are in shape, then it is an absolute valid strategy to seek the one versus ones and win them uh, consecutively. That's also good. knowing that uh, your team is probably more enduring than mm. the other team, you, you can do it for a full, full game stretch of 20 minutes rather if your opponents yeah. probably can't Paris Titans nice steal of the ball there and again statue of Barcelona open basket Paris Titans have to swoop in goalkeeper just in time coming in it's in, in time is the positioning underneath the basket. Ooh, Ooh, should have stayed down a little bit now. Back. Good pass to the left. Can she shoulder in the basket? Oh, this <laughs> and it's a goal. Yeah. Very well done by her. But even though if this was a goal, this was a goal blue number um, 14. I mean, the, the goalkeeper had a really strange positioning on the basket, so she had to pull her up a little bit differently. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then again. Usually, I do not like when players are moving above the rim and trying to score and pull the goalkeeper up from above. I'd rather have them stay underneath yeah. and try to score from underneath. Use the floor as leverage. Because if you are, the thing is, if you're able to score, okay, everything is well and you're good to go. But if you're not able to score and you move above the yeah. rim, then you lose all the space that you've previously gained out of the bounds, basket. Why and if you have an out attempt, of you can place the ball and bring it back to the outside of the basket. Maybe have another attempt yeah. for a team. Give me the ball. It's much harder to pass when you're at the same level as the goalkeeper or higher. But now we have the free throw for the Paris, Paris Titans. Now in possession still, trying to keep it. In Barcelona's half, trying to go for a score here. Doing a bit of back and forth passing in front of the goal. Space. They're doing very well for a new team. Yeah, absolutely. Good passes. Yeah, and something there, there, something that we are not used to probably from seeing from rather new teams is they quite often lack a lot of coordination. They are yeah. usually scattered in space. Oh, ooh, nice goal! goal, goal, the goal the oh, yes, nicely done! Amazing goal! Basket from the stolen Titan. away. And yeah, this is what I was saying. They they don't look goal uh, number uncoordinated. 19. They look like they have planned. One they stick close 19. together. One. They are passing back and forth, and they create enough space and opportunity for themselves to just move in here and score yeah. against a team like Barcelona who beat Denmark yesterday that, in the afternoon. That was an so amazing goal. They're going to be playing that on replay on the Champs-Élysées tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done by the Paris Titans and we have about six minutes played here in the first half. And now Barcelona, maybe they have been... I think they probably underestimated the Paris Titans there. And maybe they've been woken up now <laughs> by the Paris oh yeah. Titans equalizing. We'll see how this game continues. Three and a half minutes to go. Very well done here by the Titans. Equalizing against Barcelona. I mean, your theory about uh, the Spanish team struggling with the morning games and doing better in the evening games is Second correct so far. <laughs> they beat Almaga no, last Second night. Mm -hmm. But now are struggling against the Paris Titans. But then again, Scandinavian teams should be used to playing in the dark, right? <laughs> yeah. Choking. I forgot the word. Right, Barcelona now coming in from above, trying to pull, put the ball onto the outside. And we've seen this over and over again yesterday, the tactic coming in, Go over the goal, the goal. Yep. passing the ball downwards to the other side. Oh, good attack onto the goalie. Goalie doing a good job though, defending it. initially. Nobody on the basket now. Players being pulled up. <laughs> They seem to be looking towards the referee. Was the recall by the ref? Maybe also the a little ref? bit. Also a little bit of a. Uh, Somebody present. 
of a let's call it also a rookie mistake is if there's a ref call yeah. at your own uh, basket and why you're not certain team if board. it's for or why? against you yeah. as a goalkeeper you stay on your basket yeah. until you're very sure that this is a free throw for <laughs> your team because otherwise the goal can might stop get stolen away faster than you can Both say oh teams, damn go to your size please go to your size i think it's going to be a referee ball here oh. is it really interesting uh, taking back free throw blue. Okay. To the size, please. Go to the size. Go to the size. Yeah, the rest are discussing. It's a white team ball. So white all team your team has to be on your side when you start. Okay? Ball. Yep. So both teams. It's a white team ball. Do we have any team ball. supporters in the chat here? So you, everyone can stay in their size, but they cannot pass the middle. Okay? Bonjour, Bonjour, mon ami, Whatever you want. Bonjour. Bonjour. We have Scrum on the surface. Most likely Barcelona will win the score because it's something they've shown that they're very good at. <laughs> Taking ball straight to the basket. Three players coming in. Can they get it past the back? Good job from the forward, number one. Intercepting there. Locking the ball up. Now can they get the ball out of their own half? Pushing it on the surface. It's three against one. I think that's still the player number one. Number one on the Paris team is Alejandra. And she still has the ball. And she actually wins it out, but there's no one underneath for her to pass it to. And then the Barcelona players gets it. Taking down a little bit of a mix up on the defenders, going down at the same time. Can Barcelona capitalize on this? Coming from above again, but gets the ball stolen. Also, number one. Number one seems to be one of the most experienced players on their team. I think the ball goes above the surface, and it's a referee call. Out of bounds. Blue free throw, out of bounds. Do you know many of the players on the Paris team? I have to be very honest. Um, since I have never commentated <laughs> on uh, a Paris team so far, okay. um, I do read most of the names for the first time. Definitely some key players that really stand out. is now doing a really good job. Seven seconds to go in the first half and they surely want to go into the, into the second half time with a tie. And there we go. Good stretch here by Barcelona in the last seconds of the first half. Trying to get ahead, but Paris Titans doing a fantastic drop the ball, drop job. The ball. Drop it. So, hello everybody. With me is Pavel from uh, the Boot Boys team. And um, yeah, you played the quarterfinal right now. You lost. 6-1, unfortunately, but one people would say like 6-1 is a high loss, other would say it's a win versus a team like Alisson. How do you see it? For us, it's definitely a win because uh, we played a quite nice game. For us, uh, I can uh, tell you our tactic, maybe, that uh, we try to defend a lot, but uh, then the uh, game uh, was to our luck, so we can open more and uh, sometimes hold it uh, in their corner. And uh, one goal that uh, Aurelia scored with great power. So it's uh, it's actually the first goal we scored uh, in history of our rugby against uh, Norway. Yeah. Okay, that's definitely a great success. And I would believe a lot of teams would want to ask you, what is the secret to score against Alisson, for example? What would you tell them? <laughs> Budweiser player who scored against Alisson. <coughs> Torsten Stachy is trying to get a little bit of knowledge on how to score against them, maybe a little bit of inside info. 
They can present two other teams facing the Norwegian champion in the future throughout the tournament. Nah, but for now we have the Paris Titans against Barcelona. One minute to go, one minute to go in the halftime break, and we have seen a superb game here from yeah. the Paris Titans so far, defending against the Spanish reigning champion. There's definitely been a lot more pressure from the Spanish side, but Paris Titans they managed to capitalize on a very, very good attack, um, and they read the game well and they uh, play well, have a solid defense. Just really making nothing easy for the Barcelona team. But we expect the Barcelona team to um, uh, really come back with uh, try and come back with a bit of vengeance in the second half. And let's see if the Paris team, um, who uh, is probably a lot more uh, inexperienced, um, let's see if they can uh, hold up a good defense and then uh, capitalize on any more opportunities. So, half time break over. And we're going to see what Six Paris players. can bring Six to players. the table. Yep. Ready? Ready? Ball ready? Oh, a little bit of a close up. First time in the tournament. <laughs> Both teams immediately going <laughs> at each other's throats in the middle of the pool. Wrapped up. Ball slowly drifting towards the side, but probably a little bit over the halfway line towards the Barcelona side. Fighting at the surface. Attacking the head. Blue free throw. Attacking the head. All right, so first Titans. Taking the head and Barcelona now getting back possession of the ball in the middle of the pool and we'll see if they will start approaching and attacking the Parisian basket. Oh, three players, one waiting up on the other side. Can he bring the ball? Oh, good oh, pass to the right nice. defender though. The back moves out position. Still available. Can the ball move to the left again? Just dropping it down. Well done here by Barcelona. Good wave of attacks. Defender though back in position. Player waited a little bit too long to yeah. drop the ball down to your teammate who was already so patiently waiting in a perfect scoring position. I think the Parisians, they don't have the strongest uh, lineup in terms of their backs, but the forwards are very good at coming down just in time to help with the defense. And timing, as a forward, timing is basically everything. Um, a forward who's just taking up space is <laughs> not, doing, not doing much in underwater rugby. Yeah. As a forward, you want to swoop in at the most likely last second, and as soon as uh, an opponent... Oh, oh, we have oh, the goalie off. Oh, basket, cover the basket, goalkeeper. cover the basket. Nice effort there by number nine. The goalie ne needs to move, yep. There we go. Every exchange. Number nine, Laura Cadenas. So close. Really saving that, saving that goal there. That was good. Barcelona took a little break. Oh, good, so good effort by the forward the coming in from above. It's a nice feeling when you get your whole forearm underneath mm. someone's head. Trying to create some separation and space. Playing a bit more in the middle of the pool in the out in the open. Ball picked up. That was a lot of pressure. Alexia Casario. Cycling around. 
on, looking for somebody to pass to. Just slowing the pace down. And he tried to bring the, the ball into the, the closed corner. And we can a little bit of a coordination problem going into the goal. Yeah, but we can see they know what they want to do. They want to have a player in the corner just pushing off and yep. then going into yep. the basket. Here we go. There we go. Tack. This is what they want to approach. Oh, oh, good. Being nice. underneath the goalkeeper. Does she get a grip onto the goalie? But the defender in position, but still holding onto the ball. Good job, Alejandra Valencia. Still in possession for oh. the Paris Titans. See Barcelona. They're not really committing to having a defender there the whole time. Really. Oh, oh another goal. The toss. <laughs> Paris. Goal number one. one. Did we get that on camera? One. We have we had an issue. Oh, a little bit of an, an issue. A glitch. Stream. Time out, blue team. And there's the time, time out by Barcelona. That's amazing. That. <laughs> that. Alejandra. Alejandra Arboleda Valencia oh, with the 2-1 getting ahead against Barcelona and the early morning curse. That was incredible. Yeah, it was a but really nice play by her. We saw her just swooping in, like the goalie not properly positioned. And you were just mentioning that the commentator curse as well, the defender not committed. And during the exchange, she just swooped in and bang. Scored. But that, that was the opposite of the commentator curse. That yeah, proved Barcelona. <laughs> no, <they didn't> curse. <laughs> it's always a curse for one team, no, Bobby. No, the common test curse is when you say something and then the opposite happens. <laughs> All right, but so France now with a lead up on Barcelona. 2-1, the Paris Titans in their first appearance. It's going to be very strange if Barcelona... I mean, they beat the Mark. Six players in the water. Paris beats, beats Barcelona. It's, it's going to be a very it's strange. It's Mexican standoff. <laughs> and um, I'm actually not sure if every game. Ready? No, the uh, Barcelona beat Amaga by one zero, and the Paris Titans scored mm. twice against Barcelona. So the goal difference uh, comes into play. Yeah. But I'm not sure how, if and how, I will have to look it up if um, Amaga already played. Um, played against uh, the Paris Titans, so might actually be the saving grace for Amaga if the Paris Titans beat Barcelona here. Yeah. Let's see the results for yesterday. There we go. Amaga, Paris Titans. Par Amaga won 4-0 against the Paris Titans, so wow. this yeah. will be in favor of <laughs> Amaga if the Paris Titans win here against Barcelona. So Barcelona now on the brink of extinction as well because oh, here they, you go. They are the goal differential is uh, in favor for yep. uh, Paris here in the direct confrontation, whereas uh, oh, um, now the we basket's stolen away and Barcelona stolen. has a good opportunity, but it has to move out. Scrum on the surface and we have four and a half minutes to go in the second half of the game. Paris Titans, the newcomers to the Champions Cup in white. Barcelona in blue. Last round of Ooh. last game of preliminary rounds for the female for the women. It's gonna be a long four minutes for both teams. Yeah, I mean, this game feels way longer than the last <laughs> check game already because they're in tight contention for who's gonna take it away, but yeah. Barcelona surely will try again coming in from above, trying to place the ball on the outside of the basket and they had good scoring opportunities. They weren't just just on the brink of executing two or three times, but it's just they had a very sloppy defense. Both the goalie the goalie wasn't on the goal properly and there was no defender in place. So they they got punished. Yeah. But they you know it's such a shame because they're so good at creating pressure on the Paris team. Yeah. But they haven't taken advantage of any of the opportunities whereas Paris have just executed as soon as and again Paris now a bit of dress. We can see Barcelona trying oh, to get pressure. The goalie oh, left the ball the goal. down. No goalie on the, the basket. Goalie. There we go. Let's go. The oh. equalizer for Barcelona. Boom. Number eight. Blue. This time, wow. Parisian goalkeeper Sorry, not in position, and they. So I don't leave the basket. 
yeah. ever as a goalkeeper. Aida Pero, number six. Pulling ahead for Barcelona. Okay, let's see if Barcelona gets the defense in check now. No, Paris Titans. They have smelled blood in this game, yeah. so they know they can score against this Barcelona defense. And Barcelona so far have been a bit sloppy, especially in, during the second goal. Number three doing a really good job there. Creating some chaos into the goal. Pressure. Yet again, oh. the same. She tried the Look. same thing again. And this is something that um, I'm usually very critical about when uh, players um, are lying on the basket and they are um, positioning their body like in a 90 degree angle into yeah. the, the middle of the pool. Yeah. Because your head is stuck on the wall yeah. and you're opening, a gap. opening up two gaps on each side of the shoulder. Yeah. So you have to lie in parallel, like you see here, on the basket and pull, push Un yourself. Unless you have a very flexible neck. Yeah. But even then, you want to have, you want to have the ability to put pressure exactly contrary to the players who are yeah. attacking you. And if you're just laying in, in a weird angle into okay, the middle do of we the have pool. A, do Very we have a counter-attack here from the Paris Titans? So Just Paris a pass. Trying to seize the momentum. They have to tie against Barcelona right now. They're definitely in... They could definitely score another goal. They've shown that they can take advantage of opportunities. Oh, another... <laughs> Another dangerous situation where the back is left. One minute. One minute to go in the second half. <laughs> Perry is trying to create opportunities for themselves. Oh, can they get to the ball first? They Ooh, get it. Good effort to move in. Perry. There's no back. There's no back. Can she pass the ball? Can she pass the ball downwards? No, but intercepted. Last second. Now moving up. Well done. Well done. Bye. Barcelona. 34 seconds left. Some very scrambled and serving. Barcelona, Barcelona is fine with the tie to move yeah. forward in the tournament. So it's Paris that has to win here to stay out of elimination. Paris is actually in a tough spot because they would have needed to win by at least four take away the goal differential yeah to move up a win by Paris would have been the biggest uh, <laughs> biggest upset for, yeah. for Amaga because <laughs> but that could have easily happened that could have easily <laughs> happened but now game over and Barcelona tying with the Paris Titans <laughs> tight game tight last game of groups really well done and uh, really well done by both teams, props to the Titans for the first time appearance here what a on the Champions Cup. Well done. Also shout out to friends and everybody, friends and family who've been watching, as well as Spain, all people around the globe who are watching us here rather early in the morning on a Saturday or late in the evening, depending wherever you are. Thanks for watching the Champions Cup and enjoying those incredible games. Penalty well, shootout! Game. Penalty 14 shootout! 14 hours of non-stop Please, one attacker, today. one defender. <laughs> today, every day. Penalty At least out. today and uh, again tomorrow until about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Blue. Three days of high-level underwater rugby. Please, attacker! Cup. And we've already had some really good games on the first uh, day and a half, day and a quarter. A couple of bangers in the group stages as well. And it's only going to get better when moving to, to elimination rounds where the teams are getting closer together and tied together. So. Are they doing? Yeah, they have to play penalty shootout. Por favor, todos salgan de la piscina. Everyone, please get out of the pool. So even in the group stages. On the playing area, only the attacker and only the defender. Wow. Thank you. Okay. Yet again, second beer for the commentators. <laughs> Off you go. Well done, Paris and Barcelona, for tying this game. Cheers. From the booth. Defender! Defender! White defender! So, maybe Please. for all those who do not know underwater rugby as well, penalties, it's a one versus one. You have 45 seconds. White uh, defender! As an Please! Attacker to score. Um, 
as a defender you're not allowed to leave uh, or move further away from the rim you have always have to be able to touch the rim of the of the basket otherwise number two is gonna who's gonna start if you move um here is the ref being a bit uh, please go ahead number 16 I think white paris thought they can get away with the tie and then the game is over yep. so they yeah to, they, they weren't sure um yeah, so you're not allowed to move forward away. And, uh, you have to basically defend for 45 seconds, and 45 seconds can uh, be quite a lot of time number? if there's another one, another person number 19. Uh, trying to basically murder you in the water. <laughs> can be a very long time. <laughs> All right, we'll see what they can bring during the first one. Defense, Mirto Apostolide. Can she come to and uh, good Ooh. defense for her initially moving nice. back onto the basket. Oh, they had a little bit of opening. Patiently pulled the ball back. Number 77, Ines De Gregorio. Snorkel lost, so. Is it the defense for the goalkeeper? It's the goalkeeper. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, she had to move up. She had to move up. There yeah. are three. Patience. Goal. Rewarded. Good discipline. Wide attacker, please. Number eight, blue defender. Let's we'll see. Blue. Number eight, Ocho. So coming in, number eight from uh, Barcelona, Bobby. I'd like you to pronounce that. Number name. three, <laughs> white. <laughs> a challenge for everybody else. Petr Kvitec. Get a bit, bit Petr I don't know why. Oh, it's this is the uh, this is the, the Norwegian. Norwegian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Giddy, we're having a little bit of fun with your name, but to be fair, it is just. It's the, the prize I get for trying to pronounce her names for a couple of games straight during <laughs> the World Championship. Did you actually ask her how it's pronounced? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh. Ooh. Okay. Good defense I think so time far. Time to go up. Nice. Goody holding strong, <laughs> just correcting her mask. And but we see she wants to go up 15 seconds yeah. to go. Daniela, very one smartly more defense, played. One more oh. defense left in the tank. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Oh. She got it. I think she got it. She got it. That's the defense. Oh, wow. Defense. Get a bit Petkovic. That was tough. Well done by her. You can, yeah, you you can, can tell she see wanted how to much go up. she wanted to go up. And, <laughs> and she fought for another 15 seconds. Yeah. And this is this is the, the where the experience comes yeah. into play. Where we don't just take the first attempt. You, you kind of yeah. uh, fop once, you pull it back, and you then you just toss it in. When, you when she moves her arms for the first time, you can time it. Yeah, as an attacker, you play. You have all the time in the world. Yep. So we're moving into the next game, and it's gonna be DUC Krefeld Stuck versus New Jersey Hammerheads from the United States of America. Oh wow, we really don't get a break here, do we? <laughs> we really don't get breaks here, but I am gonna be very honest. I have to take one, otherwise it's gonna be getting ugly here in the commentators booth in a while. So it's we'll be right smell. back. And we're gonna try to find our good old Thorsten Stanschuss. And we're back in a moment. Eins, zwei, drei. Hallo, wir sind hier zusammen mit Geram vom DOC Grefeld. Geram, der DOC Grefeld ist zum ersten Mal hier beim Champions Cup. Wie fühlst du dich? Das ist super, also es macht natürlich Spaß, gegen so eine krasse Konkurrenz hier zu spielen. Also wir sind auch super happy, dass wir es geschafft haben, dieses Jahr seit gefühlt Ewigkeiten Deutscher Meister zu werden. Und äh, haben natürlich mega Spaß hier. Das ist erstmal die, äh, die Devise, die uns der Mannschaftsführer auch mitgegeben hat. Wir kennen die Mannschaften natürlich so ein bisschen, dass wir das anderen Wettkämpfen, aber man weiß nie, dass das passiert. Wir sind alle super, super gut und auch gut drauf. Und ja, wir versuchen einfach unser bestes Blatt hier zu spielen. Ich habe gesehen, du hast parallel deinen Doktor gemacht. Wie kann man sich mit diesem ganzen privaten Stress auf so eine Meisterschaft überhaupt vorbereiten? Ja, mit viel Rückhalt von der Mannschaft, muss, muss man einfach sagen. Also ich äh, hätte natürlich deutlich mehr trainieren können dieses Jahr und habe die Kerntrainings mitgenommen, so gut wie es ging. Und ich bin echt happy, dass die Mannschaft es so verstanden hat und ich trotzdem mitmachen darf. Ja. Ihr spielt gleich gegen New Jersey Hammers. Was ist deine Erwartung von dem Spiel? Was, was, was denkst du, ähm, was werden wir sehen? Boah, das ist eine absolute Wildcard, also für mich persönlich. Und äh, ich glaube, keiner von uns wirklich hat gegen die mal gespielt. Also ich kann alles passieren. Ich glaube, die, die sind gut. Also die, jede Mannschaft hier. Aber wir konzentrieren uns eigentlich auf unser Spiel. Wir versuchen einfach unser Spiel durchzuziehen, damit wir bei jedem Gegner eigentlich auch happy aus dem Spiel rausgehen können. 
Willst du jemanden grüßen? Deine Chance. Äh, ja, meine Freundin, meine Eltern und alle, die mich kennen. Ja, viele Grüße. Viel Erfolg. Danke dir. Danke. Hello and welcome back to the game between Krefeld and New Jersey Hammerheads. We have, as expected, some hard attacks from the Hammerheads, sorry, from the uh, Krefeld team. They will come into this hard trying to score an early goal. Do we have any watchers from the USA in the chat? If so, please feel free to do some shout outs, write some supporting messages there. Although I can imagine <laughs> it's not the friendliest hour over there. Really solid defense so far, but now we have a good opportunity on the right side of the basket. Saved by fantastic work by both defenders and goalies. They now Hammerheads have got the ball back, but they are stuck on the surface, wrapped up. And the Germans really aren't giving an inch of ground here. They win the ball back in the middle and go straight into attacking again. Really intense physicality here. Slowing the pace down a little bit, keeping the ball mobile in the corner, back and forward. As soon as they get some free space, they're going to start building another wave. Really good active hunting from the New Jersey Hammerheads in defense. The forwards chasing down that ball, not giving the German attackers that many chances to uh, move around freely with the ball. Those forwards really making it hard for the German attackers to get the ball in near, close to the basket. Okay, now we have the classic German push off the corner wall attack into the goal. I think this is probably what a lot of the game is going to look like, to be honest. I think the Germans are going to keep putting a lot of pressure on the New Jersey goal and New Jersey's going to keep up a solid effort and it's just going to be a matter of when uh, they make a mistake. Here we go, first opportunity. Nice. Really good pass from the close side, gets the ball under the back, and a player swims in with momentum, 
pushes off the ground, creates a gap. Goal by number 68, Yannick Pieper. Hammerheads. Job ball. Not many players see it. Struggling to keep it. Now see if they can stabilize. German forwards playing incredibly aggressively. Extra reinforcements from the backs. I think that's a call for holding. So now the New Jersey Hammerheads will have another chance. See if they can get the ball closer to the goal and make any opportunities. But it looks like the German forwards will continue to put an immense amount of pressure. And the German Krefeld team has caught a timeout. Interesting to see what they'll be discussing. This will actually be good. It will give the New Jersey team a chance to catch the breath back so that they can actually put together a uh, try and put together a solid attack if they can get past the uh, very um, active forwards on the German side. We resume with four and a half minutes left of the game, of the first half of the game. New Jersey about to execute their free throw. German forwards spring right into action. Now they get a ball. They still can't get it close enough to the basket. You can see that. It's not just the forwards on the German team that are forechecking all the defense before they go out for air. They do in another five, six seconds. Putting an enormous amount of pressure, making it very hard to hold onto the ball. Now they have the ball back, and they on a counter attack. Pippa gets the ball out to the side. Not any support, but the German player on the side is having no trouble holding off. Three New Jersey players finally get some support, now they're going really strong for checking on the New Jersey side as well. Not making it easy for Krefeld to get past the halfway mark. But now they're taking the ball to the corner, the New Jersey defense is in place. Missing it back, Krefeld sees the opportunity, comes in hard, oh, gets the ball, picked off now. by New Jersey on the top. Trying to force himself basically into the goalkeeper, remove him entirely on somebody. You can see the forechecking of Krefeld now being really on point. Krefeld, the Krefeld forwards are the national team forwards for Champions yeah. So they are <laughs> currently, um, I think uh, they are game, they're playing three or four. Um, starting starting four checkers for Germany are right. cricket players. Yanni Pieper started at Ch World Champion Manuel Gassner, Martin Meskes are all starting yeah. for the national team. You can see the forwards are very active. Usually Philipp Kreisig is missing for Krefeld, who got injured. I thought so one of the Kreisig brothers. Yeah, yeah. Defender, defender. You can see is it Krefeld. Was the other one David Kreisig? Yeah. Uh, David Kay. is the goalkeeper, he's okay. here. And the uh, defender, uh, yeah. Philipp, is not here. Sadly, because he's a very stable player for Krefeld as well. Mm. Here we go. It's been a very physical yeah. game yeah, so far for Krefeld. This is New Jersey. This is how uh, I think uh, the USA has improved the most. They have matched the physicality yeah. 
of their opponents. And um, absolutely, oh, Yannick Pippa, oh, go. nice initiation and staying down there even for the pass. Good attempt by him moving in, giving up the ball to the other side yet again. Another player, Martin Masquez, coming in but cannot lift the goalkeeper up. Good effort by the goalie from the Hammerheads, defending. Against and Pippa again, he doesn't give up. He wants Ooh, to go for this. Gets the ball kicked off his hand. Coming in again. No goalie. Next wave goalie not in position yet. No one stole the goal Can yet. Can move in. Goalkeeper missing, but Jersey. If Thomas was in the water, he would have stolen the goal. <laughs> I steal your goal, goal any good morning <laughs> on any Saturday or Sunday. Mr. Steal your goal. Actually, not. I, I'm uh, one of those players who is not allowed. I'm usually the one who's bringing the ball to the basket. Right. Yep. I'm. As much as I'm not a workhorse in the middle of the pool because I hate swimming a lot, <laughs> I'm doing my fair share um, scoring or either bringing somebody the ball when I'm fit enough to play. But then again, back into the back into the game, we can see the, the basket moving a little bit, which is a quite an issue if you have those strong, forceful attacks. And the goalkeeper usually can still apply pressure because he's pushing. Oh, here we go. Back down, but Real yeah, very very good attack. Little. Goalkeeper though, back in position on the basket. Can it be removed? A little bit of a shoulder in the basket. Cut there. Will it be called? Well defended by the Hammerheads, but the attack is not over. Krefeld relentlessly coming in again. 21 seconds to go in the first half. Amazing work Krefeld by the so goalie far. there. And Krefeld does not want to finish this half with a 1-0 lead. But, oh, the ball taken away by the goalie. Now moving out into the hands. Penalty. Yeah, there's a penalty. They saw the shoulder. They were just playing the advantage. It's always nice also from the ref side if they're lifting up their yeah. hand, if they see something, so that also as a player you have the visual confirmation that... Yeah. Uh, what if what is going on it takes a lot of stress out of the game if you as a player feel that a referee is not seeing a foul yeah um, and then the game gets gets more heated up but first we have the penalty and then we have half time so the penalty usually the time clock is running out but a penalty right before half time yeah. will be fully executed it's the one thing that is uh, and it won't eat up into the, the time in the second half it won't eat into the time yep. in the second sure. half. Okay. You did the halftime break also, the clock will be reset, so the halftime starts yep. after the penalty. <coughs> so, it's going to be interesting to see okay. who's going to take. Uh, my guess is Mezquez or Gassner, let's see. I'm correct. Ah, she is 77, so Manuel Gassner. Okay. He's a very interesting player. He's uh, quite small compared to a lot of the other players, especially on the German team. And tiny compared to some of the players on the Norwegians and the Danish, but he's tiny in what uh, length. Yeah. <laughs> he packs the rest a punch. is uh, yeah. packing a punch. Okay, we need uh, visuals underwater. Can it's we switch to the. The is happening underwater, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, we oh, need in. Gassner. Good Good discipline. He's going to wait. Maybe it's going to get fair. Every no. day is biceps day for yeah. Manu Gassner. <laughs> well done by the defender. Yeah, very good job. Usually it's um, Philip Kreisig who is taking a penalty for uh, Krefeld. Nice. Um, Gassner there, good movement. Okay, three minutes break. Very nice use of the floor by Gassner. Yep. Well done by Krefeld. Now ticking up the scoreboard. 2 0 before the halftime break. Which should start now. So that's another three minutes. Penalty just extended to halftime. Yep. Which is a good thing for Krefeld, but not a good thing for. <laughs> For Keeping time. Hammerheads in this case because they got scored on. Do we get a BF yeah. for that? Uh, it's, like it's not really overtime yet, but we only made rules for for proper overtime on a tie, so gonna cut them some slack for this one. Is that interview? Hello, everybody. With me right now is Daniel Noyox, the captain of the USA team, New Jersey Hammerheads. Daniel, you had a very, very long journey. Is, does jet lag matter at this tournament? 
No, I don't think so. And we, our team arrived early, and we actually, most of us came on Tuesday or Wednesday. We had a couple of training games before. Jet lag is not, not an option. Like, we, we really fit here. Very cool. So, last year, there was a different team from the US there. So, what was the difference in the last season that you could win the championship? Even last season, it was like very close match in the finals against the Newark um, Sea Lions, which was a very good team. Um, this time, we just like put more effort in. We had um, really a lot of extra practices, a couple of things that we tried, conditioning. Um, we had a few new people who immigrated from um, to the U.S. from Colombia, so we had two new players. Um, so I think that made the difference. Um, and a little bit of luck, but um, I think we, we earned it. We did an amazing championship game in May, and now we're ready to rock the boat here. All right, so then good luck and further good games for you then. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Ten seconds. Okay, team ready. Hello, welcome right. back to the second half of the Crestfield versus Hammerheads game. Right, Hammerheads coming in hot during the first seconds of the game, trying to get something going on the Crefeld basket, but Crefeld not gonna have it, and now moving out to wreak some havoc on the Jersey Shores. Great show. <laughs> High quality content. Now uh, we've had an exchange on the Krefeld side. Um, Anna, Anaïs de Chamon came in for Miss Wafers. Nadia Wafers out. Anaïs de Chamon, former French player, moved to Germany. Wife of Martin Meskes. Now playing for Krefeld, also national team player yep. for Germany. And now we'll see what Krefeld can bring to the table. In the second half. Kofel very patiently setting up their attack. They have number 11 on Look the right side. The even <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Get me the ball, I want to score. She's been down there for a long time. She 20 she seconds. She has an incredible fitness standard. She's basically prototype on the world when <laughs> it comes to physical conditioning. Um, she's been playing with Vienna in the EuroLeague as well. Um, we had that tournament back in Finland. So and Vienna the was having some Krefeld players Let's with them. Back when we beat Malmö, oh, the good times. <laughs> I don't think Malmö remembers that. Oh, they remember. <laughs> they remember. <laughs> it's now a penalty. It appears to be so. Again, shoulder in the basket. Yeah. Yeah. And Gassner again. He's going for the hat trick this game, even if it is with penalties. Let's see. Did he score the first goal too? I, I'm not sure, not sure actually, but. Uh, oh nice. Wait, there we go. But nice he's, got, one. he's at least got two under his belt right now. Yeah. He certainly might want to go for a goal. Really well played from You can see him moving goal. in from above. Just, as you say, fluidly shoving the, the leg of the goalkeeper away. Yeah. Getting a grip of him. Then getting this underneath movement where you can just twist your body with a very fluid motion. And um, we have a, an interview, no one hears us. Why are they doing that during the penalty? Uh, 
about the uh, number of the goal the keeper when you have when you're running time or only when they have a uh, penalty shoot for Hand spread to go on the counter attack if they can get past the German four checking here. One man against two, instantly locked up by another German player. Now they're through. One against two. Is he going to go straight for the basket? Yes, he is. Gets under the goalie, but a forward comes down. He passes the boy out to the side. Back doesn't see it. Love that it was a dangerous Ooh, situation. Yeah, goalies exchange, but the forward, Meskes, just coming in and Locking up now, people going for the ball. The ref, the wires of the ref gear a little bit in the way, but now there's a call by the ref, and it's a free throw for Freyfeld. Yes, it's to our first goal was by Yannick Pieper, but Manuel Gastel set it up, so it's nearly a hat trick, <laughs> but not one yet, dear Manuel. But he surely has some minutes to get his hat trick under the belt. Manuel Gaston looks like an MMA fighter. Do you know how MMA fighters, like, you know, they're not that big, especially the ones in like some of those, you know, weight classes, the lower weight classes, but you know, they're built like a tank. Yeah. German word for this Kampfsau. It's combat pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's checked. And he's a very good on the water right player. He's coming in again to get his part of the game, Let's see if he can bring the ball back out. Still in control, pass to nice the right, a little bit broken out by the goalkeeper, but Pieper now coming in oh. underneath the goalie, Pieper with a good chance, goalie though, well no defended, support. blocked the attack from underneath, shifted his body a little bit, well done by the goalie, now Jersey coming out of their own half, Let's see Anais de Chamot on the basket, picking up the goal, first wave of attacks, uh, takes the board, to the left. In straight away. Jason now trying to push the oh. ball on the basket, but yet again, Lucas Mesquez defending. I mean, it's four checking almost all the way back to their end goal. Back. Basket stolen away actually Ooh. from Jersey. Craver trying to move in. Now back in position, goalkeeper. His referee call there. For holding. White timeout. Yeah. Good call probably. Basket stolen away twice. Yeah. So White People which are claiming who's making the calls. I mean, we have the top tier referees here for underwater rugby in this pool, all of them A grade international referees. And sometimes uh, watching the stream, you can't properly judge if the player is uh, somehow stuck in the basket. Also, it is not only the shoulder being completely um, locked under the rim, there is also a possibility to wedge yourself with the wall mm. and push yourself yeah. into the basket and using this kind of leverage to just lock yourself into the basket, which is also not allowed in other water rugby. The, so first, the first one, the first penalty, we saw the shoulder very clearly there and we kind of caught it even before the referees did. The second one, there was a little bit too much going on there. I didn't really spot it myself, but I think if you replay it, you should be able to see it. Okay, time. Then again, it's two referees on the water, and the sport is so fast and so physical, yeah. and the, the space is so tight. Sometimes refs make mistakes, and it can go either way. So, yeah. at the end of the day, everybody has been uh, who's been in the water has been up on either side of, of a referee call. So,
game we play. need uh, on the right yep. side of the pool. <laughs> there we go. Germany now trying to gain back possession. Forwards of Jersey did a good job, but Korea fell back in possession of the ball. Let's see if the Germans will make another big wave attack. Here we go. Oh, that pass was just a few up, centimeters too close. Now over the basket. No goalie. We'll keep in position initially. Called by the ref. Attack on the Attack head. On the head and there we go. Jersey now back in possession. Two and a half minutes to go. Three zero lead for Krefeld. Very fast execution of the free throw by the Hammerheads. Kicking. The ref. <laughs> One play out. Might be too yeah. many times, yeah. And the basket's stolen away. Okay. Timeout's time. Great build, I guess. We'll see what the ref call is. We don't really have a replay of the situation, I guess. Pretty sure the ref call was an uh, attack on the Hammerhead. Power play. Bit of a trigger warning. Yep. Ooh, ooh. Oh, th oh, that was oh, such that a missed opportunity. <laughs> and then he's the with a sneaky knee, knee kick there to block up the attack. Call by the ref again. Let's see what the calls this it's time. It's going to be another two minutes. <laughs> I've seen a bit of a, a knee in the player's face there. Yeah. We have to start the free ball because the clock was not working. So we right. have to stop it to get time running. I mean, the clock is running. Right. Yeah. Let's we'll see if he's going to reset it or not. No. <laughs> it may be reset for the deck refs, but maybe not for us on the screen here. Krefer wins the ball back. Gasner, one man team. Yeah, ball drops to the bottom. Jersey player gets it. Wasn't in a hurry to get to the goal. He saw that was a full defense there. Let's see if they're going to put some pressure, dial the pressure up for the rest of this power play. They should still have a minute and a half left. Being locked in the corner. Krefer trying to move forward. My players, we have four or five in the water right now. Is it a two yeah. not because we don't have a two-minute penalty on the clock. Is it just a warning? No, it was a two-minute penalty. So it's they should only have five players. Alright, so the game clock. Has actually been winding down okay. the entire time. No further time being issued, and I think with the three zero lead as well. Mm. But New Jersey Hammerheads having a very nice tournament here as well, and we've seen a lot of tight games. I mean, um, the Krefeld beat Malmö three um, zero. Krefeld played against Vienna three mm. zero. Now against the Hammerheads. So we're seeing that the, the field on the, in the middle of the pack, so to say, uh, has evened out mm -hmm. quite a bit and they are giving the top teams who are here for title contention uh, quite a bit of a, of a hard time than they've used to the last years before. And a lot of teams, of course, have been practicing and training a lot for the World Cup this yep. year in summer. And especially on the US men's side, we've seen a huge improvement uh, on, on their part and on their account. So well done by them throughout this tournament yeah there hasn't been too many games where the score is blown out past 10 absolutely not just one one or two maybe i think one or two yeah yeah hello everybody oh, hello everybody here with me is uh, andreas Begholz from sweden no, champion here. <laughs> um, yeah oh, uh, no, you. Um, yeah Malmö just arrived with 10 players what okay. happened yeah, we have some players who don't want to come. They are uh, old and tired. 
are green, they're all the time. So they're happy, but they played in the championship, right? Or have, also, have you also won the championship just yeah. with 10 players? No, no, we won the championship with 15 players. But, yeah, uh, they have played for many years and they prioritize uh, a lot of other things. Okay, okay. So we, we are sad and they are sad, but that's life. Okay, listen. Nevertheless, you're here with 10 and you're now in the quarterfinals versus the Finnish champion, Hesu. So, what do you say will be the key to get you out of it as a winner? Yeah, we have to play faster than the Finnish and uh, score more goals. <laughs> Very good, thanks for that. Coming up next, we have Hasu from Finland versus Malmö Twiton. What is Hasu? Hasu? Yeah. What is Hasu? It's a, it's a snack, isn't it? Are you sure? Could you pronounce it in fully for me? <laughs> oh, really? Hamelinen? Hamelinen Sumilaki? Fifth player. <laughs> it's also. Ready? All right. <laughs> Starting off. First half, Malmö Triton, first to the ball, Swedish champion versus Hemelini Sukudayat Hezu from Finland. Do you know which city Hezu is from? Sorry? Do you know the city Hezu is from or is it Hemelini Sukudayat? Hemelini is the city. Oh, it's a city, Hemelini city, right. Trying to put pressure onto the Ooh. Swedish basket immediately. It's always fun to see that Scandinavian teams play against each other because they know each other quite well, have played so often, they, the players know each other so well. I don't know. And it's always a bit of a, a mixture of curse and blessing. But the thing is, Scandinavian teams, we don't play each other as much as the German teams play each other or the teams in Central Europe because the distances in Scandinavia are so big. Yeah, but all of those players are national team players, so they have played each other on the national level quite often. Mm. I mean, Malmö Sweden... I think only Malmö about half the Malmö 95 team 95% yeah. of Malmö Sweden were on the national team this year, basically. And for Himmelina, I mean, they, they didn't, play in the, mm. didn't play the World Cup this year, but... Most of them are, are, are a lot of them Finnish players are veterans as well, so... Yeah, I mean, they definitely know each other through the years, but it's not like they see each other three or four not times a, a year. Not on a day to day basis. No, no. no. But also the teams that have been on the Champions Cup on and off each year. Yeah. <laughs> so. But it's always a close match between uh, the Finnish team at Champions Cup and the Swedish team. I don't think I've ever seen the score blow out by too much. It's always like one or two goals. But it seems like Hamelinen's off to a little bit of an early lead when it comes to possession. Yeah. I think Finland had a good performance yesterday as well. Who did they, they play? They seemed very physical. 
I have to look up who they have played out. Oh, here Kari. we go. Kalfal. 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 Number three ton. Getting his one versus Ooh. one underneath the goalkeeper. Oh, this could be. Oh, goalkeeper oh, even removed. Very close. Is it, is it in? Oh, no. Nope. Not yet. Oh, but no, yeah. There we go. Now we have it. Excellent. Edwin attack. Martin. Fantastic attack by Carl Falk and then good Goal support right from the players coming from behind, including ten. Edwin now and Andreas Barenholtz. Now I actually Goal don't feel so bad because Finland has scored, been scored on the same movie and it's <laughs> been scored really? yesterday. <laughs> Just a fast Goal. break, getting away and then having two players available. It was uh, Edwin and uh, Edwin Maladali again. So, Blue very ball. quick score Sorry. here for Malmö Triton against uh, Himmelina. stuck in the middle from a free throw not really moving very much but now we have some movement and it comes out and Malma Trion gets the ball oh, takes it to the corner good oh, strong four checking by Hamelina Malma missing some support when they need it Hamelina really playing physical now and they've been playing very physical on the world of rugby throughout the entire tournament. Yeah. They've been overpowering. A little bit like Flipper, I'd say a, a rather similar yeah. way of playing. Uh, very physically trying to overpower an opponent's defense by just forcing oh, meat <laughs> and body <laughs> onto, onto the defenders. Mortensen gets the ball knocked out of his hand. What? Back into... Around free throw Blue from the middle. Shucky. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, back in possession for uh, Finland. Which way are they pointing, the referees? It wasn't very clear. Okay. Blue. Here we go. Blue free throw. Hamilton coming in from the left. Here's blocking Forwards. away. Being locked up immediately. Forward sweeping in. Defense just taking it easy. But would there be any gaps? That's a very long bottom time there for the goalie. And then again, I think uh, Norman only has uh, they had a basket oh. stolen away, but yeah. he has a call by the ref on the surface. And Norman only has uh, 10 players. Yeah. I think that's a big risk, especially when they're doing such long bottom times. Timeout. Yeah. That's the time timeout. timeout. Yeah. Nice. Tactical timeout, good decision by Malmo. Basket stolen away. He was before. I he was before. Does uh, Hamelin end? Do they have a full team? Uh, 15? Yeah. yeah. I think so. They, uh, now they have uh, 12. 12. No, 13 players. 13. 13 players for Hamelin. So, also not an entire team, but only 10 players on the list for, for Malmo. So. Yeah. Bit more of a. No, I think uh, Hamelin has 12. If Malma has 10, they have two more. Okay. Should be 15 available. 15 seconds. Oh, so this is not a full list. Hamelin looks like they have some nice sponsors on their jerseys. Sponsors are always good. Is it are those the club jerseys or is it the Euroleague jerseys or, or Look those at the me. Finland jerseys from the I last? I think it's the Himalayan jerseys, which I guess they can use for Euroleague as well. Yeah, so yeah, true. Sure. It's Hazel. It's we have the Hazel. Yeah. Oh, that was a dangerous shoving, and they would go right yeah. back into the other direction. Why free throw? What free throw pushing? It, 
It'll be interesting to see if Malmo will continue trying to put on strong attacks. Yeah, I think Malmo we've seen so far to the tournament, um, their biggest strength has been very fast and speedy yep. attacks coming from the middle of the pool and going straight for the basket. Yeah, so but with, with 10 players, have they tried to like score early and then play a little bit more conservatively? Yeah. In the and they stay at their templates to have to preserve some energy. So yeah. a fast break play style and having a solid defense, even though def defending the entire time can be very tiring. Yeah. And what they have done is when they have the ball and they don't get those opportunities immediately, they try to circle the ball uh, in the closed corner, yeah. just trying to preserve as much air as possible and uh, luring your their opponents out. So classic uh, play style for this kind of situation. If you see yourself not having a full team, and they, they've been doing a really good job. Mm. And we'll see if they can progress into the top four, leading by one up against Emil in the Super Dayot. And I'm not sure, have we seen a team coming back from a deficit yet the Champions Cup this year? I don't think so, right? Oh, pretty much every team that's nice gotten, deal there. gotten ahead so far, so far has taken away the victory throughout this tournament. The Paris-Barcelona match was a very close one, though. Because they, they did didn't come back properly. No, they not properly. No, they did better than equalizing. They led. And, and they won it. No, they won there because they won penalties. Yeah, exactly. But Paris came from behind to lead. Yeah. And yeah, then, sure. Oh, very dangerous attack here. But... Down, but picked up. A little slack throw. Izzo. Oh, nice. And the marquee can't hold on to the ball. Been taken yes. away. Didn't put his fins into the wall and swam. Carl Falk takes the ball in. See Hazel be rather open with a defender is not being in position all the time and moving out a bit further. And there it is, the Swedish sneaky move trying to take away space under the basket. That's uh Carl Fanlund over there. He's got a very he's a goalie, but he has a very good bottom time. Yeah, I think Moa Trujan definitely sort of playing on a lower gear here, given that there's only one and a half minutes left, and they're probably pretty tired by now. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to wait till the yeah, I mean, uh, half time. They, they can tire out yeah. uh, Malmö as, uh, as much as they want to, because Holding. if they Blue just let throw. the ball Holding. suck around, have three, four players, yeah. just taking casual dips, going down, stay down there for four, five, six seconds, play the ball and run around. Ring around the rosy, I think it's quite the English term. We have a little bit of a different term in German for this type of, of play style. <coughs> Is it like a donkey metaphor? Uh, no. It's uh, <laughs> the only German metaphor I know is like uh, a Eserbrücke. Yeah, <laughs> that's a different one though. Different one though. Uh, no, it's Bauernwash, which means farmer's ass. <laughs> Poetic and not the donkey. The <laughs> <laughs> uh. Malmagoli looks like he wants to go up. Uh, with 20 seconds on the clock <laughs> and the ball being locked up. We're above the Malmö basket, but then I think Malmö has a little bit of a plan to let the clock wind down until yeah. halftime. But Hazel now with the last chance Ooh, to come in for a This is dangerous. We have a player on the dangerous. left waiting. Ball dropping down. Five seconds to no go. Can defend. he move in? Oh! That actually that ball was just <laughs> snatched away last second. It would have been an absolute uh, disaster for Malmö if they yeah. took a score here. Just two seconds before halftime. And I think we'll now be able to see if... Um, the intensity of the game is taking a toll on them. Just having 10 players versus a full team of Rixo or if, uh, Hizu, or if they can come back. <laughs> so, hi everybody, with me is Manuel Gassa from DOT Grebe. First of all, congrats for your quarterfinal win. How do you feel? Uh, thank you. Uh, very good. It was a nice match, and uh, we go well in, so we feel good. <laughs> you made both of the penalties, your two penalties were there to execute, you scored both. Are you the penalty man for Greyfeld or what does it mean? 
Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm the first one who will take the penalties and then Martin. And yeah, that was good practice for uh, uh, further of games where we have to uh, decide the games with penalties. So it was good practice for the next game. The next game you mentioned already will be versus Alisson in yeah. Germany. What do you think about it? Yeah, I guess it will be a tough game. They're very good, they're very uh, disciplined in their execution and they are fast players. So I guess it will be a good match. So, so I'm very excited for it. Fingers crossed and uh, thanks for the interview. Yeah, thank you too. One minute, <laughs> one minute. Both teams. One minute to go, half time Be break between Hamelin Sukodayat and uh, Marmetriton. Oh, Victor is back in the chat. The curse. <laughs> Not sure if you're doing something good for your Sticks team in the uh, water. after the World Cup. Should, maybe should have been boarding for the Finnish team. We'll see if the curse is striking again. A little bit of flashback to the World Championship. Shout out to Victor. Did you actually take your laps in your new laps around the cities yet or not? We'll hold you to it, Victor. We're still waiting for the stories. You ready? All right, halftime break over. Hemelin Sukutayat down by one. Malmö Twitter with the early lead in the game. Fast break by Malmö. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the Finnish team can come back with a with an equalizing score in this game against Malmö Triton, which is a little bit of a game of attrition. Because Malmö only having 10 players, but... Oh, there's a bit of, yeah, shoving, a lot, a bit more, quite a lot of shoving by the Malmö Triton player Blue who's free trying throw. to stay in mode position and Blue use the leverage. Free throw. Show the ball. Hazel now with a free throw, one minute played in the second half, nine minutes to go. And Hazel now trying to bring it on against Malmo. Good attempt from the right camp, push the ball underneath the defender. Now Malmo scrubbing up, Finnish player trying to pull them to the surface. Well done by them, neutralizing the situation as best as they can. Martila waiting to receive the ball underneath the bulk, not dropping down yet, ball locked up, I think a Malmö player has got a hold of it, yep, passing it forward now, Malmö now, Levin Persson trying to move forward but snatched away by Finland. Tommy Sommerlainen coming in, trying to push himself, force himself onto defenders. Veteran four. Emeline uh, trying to create an opening, but yet again being locked up by Malmö. And Malmö playing this neutralizing game so well so far. Just pulling the players away from their own basket. Trying to create those fast break opportunities for them. We have a little bit of a rivalry in the chat going on between a Swedish supporter and a uh, Finnish supporter. interesting to get some uh, statistics on the number of times uh, the Swedish team has played the Finnish team in Champions Cup and who's won how many times and <laughs> I think it could be quite even yeah especially through the ages yeah the call by the ref might be for punching we'll see what's going to be called on 
It was against, I think it's against the Swedish player. He punched the ball out. Player number 13. Stefan Portrogac. 18. Number 13. Blue team, 13. Blue team, 13. Two minutes. Mm. Penalty. No. Two minutes. Oh. Two minute penalty for a Finnish player. Two minutes, wow. That's was that for punching the ball? Maybe it's both. No, just again. Show the ball. Because I didn't see any infringement there from, from my point of view, but I guess it's Bobby here in the commentator booth. <coughs> Hello, Victor. So a little bit of a color from, from the chat, asking for more pictures from the mobile, mobile camera in the middle of the pool. Because the angle White, is a bit, a bit nicer. Strongly. So now, white free throw. That's the static camera, right? Yep. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's never any referees when we play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, grabbing oh. the basket there by the Malmo player. Yeah. It's a little sneaky, yeah. sneaky attempt. Oh, here's five players. Against Carl Falk. Carl Falk. Carl Falk loves a good wrestle. Oh, but he's actually using his brain for once and pushing the player out the, the side. Out of bounds. Good call. And eight seconds to go. On the time penalty, that, that went down rather quickly. Referee ball. Okay, so we didn't see who was, who was in possession properly, so for the referee ball. Mm. Referee ball. I mean, it looked clearly like the Hassu player was holding the ball right before they went out. A stop. Give me the ball. Well, it's, if it's going to be a referee ball, it should be from the middle of the pool, right? Not from yeah, the yeah. three meter. So. The pool. Ready? Let's see. There we go. I think referee ball is one of the funniest things in our world. We was like really dropping food to fish tank. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Session Bang holds. Trying to move hmm. in. It's interesting. I don't see Bang and Holtz kind of. Uh, he didn't have that much of an impact this game as much as he had probably in the, in the other games. Yeah. This season, uh, this tournament. Just holding back. <laughs> easy. Never. Easy, easy casual on all Never the show them your true power level. Yeah. Sensors might register over 9,000. Have you seen any uh, good Malmo attempts? Malmo so far um, very comfortable with the 1 0 lead and trying mm. to lure the Finnish players out who yeah. are now playing way more offensively, trying to get the ball back. Only having three and a half minutes left here in the second half to equalize. And now, in this positions like this, where you can just bring a quick pass. Oh, here we go. No, they're the not going in. Is, yeah. yeah. Melma's definitely trying to play down the time because normally nine out of ten times they would have gone in hard just then. Yeah. Then again, if you have the lead, you can play the option game yeah. and just opt out and uh, play, keep playing the corner when we mm. see Hezu here. This is no. going to piss off the Finns, though. Part of my language. <laughs> we, we like a good angry Finnish player. Yeah, you know that. Best way to piss off a Finnish team is if you call them uh, Swedes during the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> or you accidentally play the Swedish national anthem when it's their turn. Yeah, that, that would be... Uh, oh, oh, no, nice. Stolen away. Okay. Can I capitalize Ball on this? Ball down, but picked up by a Swedish player. Oh, uh, still very dangerous. He's gonna, is he going to steal the basket again? We need someone on the basket. <laughs> yeah, goalkeeper needs to go down. There we go. Okay. This is going to be... Blue free throw, blue attack throw. in the head. Blue free throw. Time out. Blue time out. Yeah, 
I think they Blue will bring, out. The, yeah, they bring the starting six in because it's basically the last Blue time they yeah. have defense. Okay. But that gives Momo a break. Yeah, I'm, I'm always a bit uncertain um, in a situation like this who is more profiting from yeah. the timeout. It does give the, give the defenders a minute to breathe. Yeah. But then having your most coordinated players uh, on offense being available is usually your best chance to score, no matter how well rested the defenders are. Because mm. but I felt like that was the only advantage the Finns uh, had over Malmo in this game that they had. Players, the oh yeah, the manpower, yeah. Yeah. Probably. And you, you saw a big difference between uh, the first five minutes and the second yeah. five minutes and of both halves. Yeah. And, yeah. Cool. and it comes down to it just in general the game of attrition overall but yeah. twenty seconds. Might have been an advantage. But then again, one minute timeout, I mean it's a lot of time to breathe, but then again Sweden will also probably bring the best six into the water as mm. well and see what Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, Victor, you're correct. Many Blue things in the water. Throw can confirm <laughs> I would say in the water it's uh, 18 24 no 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 it's 30 uh, yeah <laughs> can't math properly I'm not here to math I'm here to just talk and talking nonsense is what I do best and it's increasingly the longer the day gets. All right, two Finland, minutes. two minutes to go. Exciting trying to correct the minutes. defensive nuts that Malmö is presenting to them. I think we, what we're going to see is uh, two, one minute and 40 seconds of the ball being on the surface and then 15 seconds of attacks on the goal. Finland, yeah, trying getting back possession now, trying, yeah, they're, they're getting the fast break. And there we go, they even get a second scoring opportunity here. Oh. Uh, the ball being picked up by the goalkeeper. One and a half minutes to go, and now they will lock up or try to lock up the ball carrier over the finish goal as best as they can. And that was a very dangerous situation there. Yeah. But Finland did the only correct thing. Yeah. They brought everybody forward and yeah. only had a goalkeeper at the back to swoop in at the last second. Yeah, you need to know when to take those risks. You, you either lose by two or you score and equalize. Yeah. This, is, this is the, the rule. Call by the ref, free throw. Struggling. Blue, free throw. Blue free throw, and they have okay. to. Uh, One minute. Bastard move by Sweden <laughs> to toss the ball as far, back yeah. as far backwards as possible. Ah. Executing a free throw. A fast one, not on my watch. And now, Finland, for the last attempt to crack. The Swedish nut. Victor not being a curse surely is the difference. Number four, oh why? Yeah, because uh, the team that count. Victor goes for usually is the one that loses. Let's see. Blue three throw. Last attack. Oh. oh, nice. Sweet good ball. They're just going to hold on to it now. Yeah. Basically, it's going to turn into a massive power of Kladkaka. But Kaka. That's a word that only makes sense in, in <laughs> Swedish. And Number sounds, 14. Uh, attacking the head. White free throw. Yeah, but they don't care. Any, any free throw <laughs> against them is a good game thing. over. Now the game is over, even though they had two minute penalty here in the last minutes of the game. Well. So Malmo taking away the game from Finland. So, Malmö moving into the top four right now by beating Hezu, who is now only able to compete for the spots five to eight from this point on. So, either Victor has changed his luck or Leo Selehoff is the curse for Finland. <laughs> did, the curse, did the curse move over to Leo? Leo, we're not sure. But uh, your activity in the chat uh, might not be Finland's best luck. <laughs> Sorry to say. No, well played by both teams. Uh, fast score by Malmö has surely changed um, the dynamics of the of the game. Quite certainly, Malmö could play for time, which they, mm. if they didn't score this early, 
Shuli Kunan had to be more offensive and uh, I mean going for penalties in this case is, is as much as 50-50 as the, the yeah. game is and uh, if you rely on, on strong players to defend and, and fight during the penalty this is certainly also a tactic you can approach but didn't matter for Malmo because they scored early the same way they scored against Vienna uh, yesterday intercepted a fast break sprinting to the opponent's goal and then Merlang one in it was the same setup but it wasn't the same uh, hello everybody with me is uh, Andre from Bratislava um, and um, you're playing the next game versus Firenze what do you think about it I think it will be quite equal match and we hope so that we will win I mean it's uh, our last chance to win something on this tournament all right, so um, I guess it's the first time you've been here in the tournament. Have you been? With me is uh, Andre from Bratislava. Um, and um, you're playing the next game versus Firenze. What do you think about it? I think it will be quite equal match. And we hope so that we will win. I mean, it's uh, our last chance to win something on this tournament. All right. So um, I guess it's the first time you've been here in the tournament. Or have you been at the Champions Cup before? Not yes, last year, yes. Yes, Bratislava, we are here first time. First time. And what is your overall like experience about it? Do you think it was a good fit, great tournament, or we, we have like like five new players here, uh, which uh, are with us like for two years, and we are trying to show them how the tournament looks like, how are other teams uh, on which level and how they are playing, to, to especially the getting experience. Uh, we really okay. come here to teams ready. To, Absorb the experience to play in really tough games. I think it's very good uh, opponents. So, Six what players. was for you for the moment the most exciting match you played here? We are back. You have on the commentators bench Bobby and Thomas, both sponsored by Monster Energy Drinks. Not really. We are watching the game between Friends and Brass Live now. Friends in blue, Brass Live in white. It should be possibly quite an evenly matched game. What Look do you down. Think, Look down. I am very much interested as much as Andre Scott, who we saw in Free the throw. preliminary pre-game interview. Blue team. Who's going to take it away? Because um, Strangling. Bratislava did look really good today in the morning against Vienna. They had a very solid game. Firenze has been beaten by a lot of top teams yesterday. They had a really tough schedule. And uh, they had a really fun uh, meeting with uh, Flippers last night. So, um, I think this could be a very even game. Oh, and there we go. Oh, First oh, oh my he God. went for the tough spot. He, he keeps going he and tries to get the ball back. Andre Scott there as well. And uh, he's certainly one of those players who we should look out for when it comes to, to scoring for Bratislava. He's one of the most experienced players. Mm. He's a big guy yeah. as well. Or should I say a friendly giant? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so for everybody asking in the chat, um, the video upload for the later games of yesterday is uh, still continuing and they should be available in the, in the afternoon, but they are not available as of yet. The main reason being that um, I think YouTube only allows um, you to save live streams up to 12 hours, so there's a cut off there. Bratislava 
Mégis Piers Ferenc. And I'm sure you're going to be excited to see who's going to take the game away. Braslav seems to have the initiative so far. Yep. Friends are not having that much luck getting the ball back. But also Firenze having a solid defense so far and they had really good stretches defending against the top teams yesterday as well. But then they usually broke down in the long run. Um, when the opponents had a couple of waves coming in and the forwards weren't as present anymore. So but we'll see how they perform against a team like Bratislava, who usually will only have one or mm. maybe two waves uh, going for them. And then Ooh, oh, that, that was a close up, one. Yeah, trying to call for the punch through. But we saw a situation back then, about 30 sec seconds ago, where friends uh, won the ball back uh, and the guy took it to the side. But then the goalie in the back didn't really kind of come off the basket to support them. And it's, 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 I mean, you have to move out and support the teammates. Then again, if you are so afraid that you might lose the ball and get scored on, because you might be a young player having mm. the ball out there, an inexperienced player, or you're, you're just not as certain if you're able to move out, or you maybe are slightly out of breath already, um, opening up um, the defense and Getting scored on by losing the ball just right in front of your basket, oh, that's the worst feeling you, you can have. But I mean, it does. Oh, Gabri is also watching. Gabri, why aren't you here? <laughs> Old school friends player. There we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> went for the sneaky one. Yep. Using the momentum of opponents against it. But now, Fidente moving out. Tech room, we have a little bit of a mouse button in the middle of our screen. Could you remove it? Thank you very much. Um, so, Ferenc now in possession of the ball, but we see similar problems from both teams trying to have enough players uh, available for a for a solid attack. Now, no defender available for Bratislava. Could be a good opportunity to mm. for Ferenc to move in. And it also, this game is really a war for attrition. And yeah. Ah, ball snatched away from Dusan Wotanek. And now you see Andres got uh, moving forward. Passing with the left. I think it's actually his son who's been passing to. Right. Passing the torch. <coughs> or the ball. The back on the friends team is waiting for his replacement. There we go, we have a good opportunity here for, from Braslava. Coming in, three people all around the ball. Can't really tell who has the ball. Now they're grinding. There's and the ball score goes in. For Bratislava. Go. And they went for the grindy right game pad. Number it was the uh, 78. human bulldozer. The human centipede bulldozer. Jakob Lindner. And his brother, Michael Lindner. No, we missed the replay. Referee call probably attacking the neck. Free throw to Florenza. Free throw, blue team. Robert Glock on the deck. And we have right. a goal stolen almost, yes. Let's see here. Yuki Mutter, Tommy Epson, and uh, Petter Tenefos. And was Yuki Mutter on the deck. Sound attack, Robert. Robert Glock there. Holding. Similar voice. Holding. So, two and a half minutes to go. Bratislava leading up by one against Fierce Ferenc. 
Frenza not in much of a rush to attack. Oh, 15 yards in the jet. Good job after Joe Gabri. Yeah, Gabri, your team is missing you here in Berlin, obviously. Forwards on the Brass Love team doing a good job to keep the friends of players distracted, making it hard for them to coordinate any kind of attack. But I think the friends team kind of looks like they're playing like as if they're in the lead. <laughs> yeah, I think they, they're trying to get uh, the proper setup. Yeah. They want to have underwater, but then again, sometimes uh, you can't just get. Uh, a certain set of players underwater and uh, somebody has to take up the responsibility for the t for his teammates and just do it on his own but now there we go we have an attack Andrea Magini sorry trying to move in holding strong for Bratislava so far, defense, one minute to go. I think one of the problems is that they're only holding the ball in the corner, so that it makes it very easy for the back to so have their fins pulling in just one direction the whole time. They're not really moving the ball. Fender moving out. Mm. Oh. Risky pass on yeah. the surface, mm -hmm. needing to have a back and answer, but there's a call by the tech ref. Ball above the water, possibly. Balls, Maybe. Balls change. He went Roll. there and came up. Ooh. Mm. Two minutes. Two minute power, power play for. I would guess. Two minutes. minutes. I would guess against. Balls change. Yeah. Went there and came up. Seven players in the water. Two minutes. Bratislava. They already had a penalty like this twice yesterday, so they really have to get. Mm. For yeah, exchange error. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. coordination on point. Free throw. Blue team here. Two minutes. There we go. Ball instantly gets locked up by two Bratislava players. No one really coming to help the friends player. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty-six yeah. seconds to go in the first half. Yeah. You know what? I think rugby yeah. players really need to do a little bit of uh, jujitsu when it comes to like wrestling. <laughs> and because it's never, it's not something that any club really teaches. You just kind of do what you feel is right. <laughs> do a lot of bicep training. Really yeah. To go. <laughs> Half time with Braslav leading one zero. Hi, hi everybody. I'm here with Edwin from Malmö Triton, the Swedish champion. The team that won the, let's say, quarterfinal and made it to the semifinal with just 10 players. Yes. What do you think? Wow. Uh, it feels great. It feels great. It was a tough game and uh, evenly matched. The Finnish guys are very strong, so it feels good to win. Edwin is not only like playing with the team, but you also scored. Yes. Explain us, how did you make it? Uh, we came uh, three guys into the attack. And uh, I was able to uh, steal their basket, so when the ball dropped, I could just put it straight in. You even, you even, goal, but yeah. all you, goals count. you even had a time penalty against your team, but you still made it through. Then, was it like a, a, a team spirit, mentally or stamina? What was the secret? Yeah, we're we're all strong, evenly matched guys, and we really wanted to win, so we made the best of it. Very cool. So then, in the semi-final, you're gonna play against then Flipper. Yes. Also, at Scandinavian team. What do you think about that? It will be fun. We've played a lot against Flipper and we train with the guys uh, from time to time, so it will be a fun game. Very. So, congratulations for that and see you later.
Hello and welcome back to the stream. This is, uh, we're almost towards the end of the halftime break between uh, Friends and Bratislava, so we're going to enter the second half with Bratislava leaving 1-0. Uh, for those who are watching, we just had the interview between uh, Thorsten and uh, Edwin Mortensen from Malmö Triton, who just won the last game against Hasu uh, in a very close game, 1-0, and Edwin was the goal scorer of that game. Okay. We're we ready to start with yes. the second half. Sit down. One minute, 24 seconds left for him. Oh. So we're starting this half with a power play yeah. on the friend side. Um, so his friends has six players in the water. Six Embraer players. Slava has five uh, due to an exchange error on Braslava just before the end of the first half. So... We'll see how Bratislava will approach this game if they're casually sitting back, enjoying the view from their own basket and letting Firenze do whatever they want to do. Or, uh, oh, oh, such a shame that miss pass. <laughs> Number 17 pushes the player. It's like, go forward, do something. <laughs> you play. Yeah. Play okay. underwater rugby. Yeah, Fred's now trying to yes. in, trying to seize those last There we go. Come on, play. let's. Goalkeeper is in position though, trying to move the ball to the left, being pushed up above the basket. Uh, next wave coming in. One player waiting on the other side. Can receive the oh. ball, but taken away by risky, the goalie. Yeah, got the, can move forward and now getting the fast break opportunity. The Victor Bratovic, but doesn't want to go all the way through. Waits for his teammates. Ticking down the clock in, <laughs> in the middle of the pool. And that, come out, Fiance, <laughs> go get, get your ball if you want it. And now there are six players back in the water again. I hope they didn't make a mistake again. Oh, you can see the friends of defense. <laughs> They've had a goalie in the back there the yep. whole time, even though the ball was halfway down the pool. Yep. Even when they get the ball back, they don't really support each other. Yeah, I think they are there in a, a bit of a pickle if they want to leave the defense yeah. even more vulnerable. I mean, it's about learning to play with different gears in a team, you know, learning to have different setups in place and knowing that each gear has different risk tolerances. There we go, moving in from above, a strong attack. It's Andres got you. Tried to bring in the ball onto the Ferenza basket. Even still being Ooh. played above the basket. Still in possession for Bratislava. Bratislava, Jakob Lindner. Ball back out. Pancic. I mean, that's the thing. Like, there's so many players on the Bratislava team who they dare to go in, even one against two, one against three. Cause a little bit of chaos, hold on to and the ball. They also have been taking their time playing a lot of tournaments lately, coming mm. to practice in Vienna. And usually, when they come during the summer, they come as a, as a team. Yeah. Uh, trying to get to practice in against the Viennese team. Ooh, what was that pass? <laughs> <laughs> this call against the Vienna player. Holding, oh, yeah. looks serious. It's never a good sign when the referees yeah. kind of point to. <laughs> you don't know. You're bad. <laughs> Usually okay. when that happens, it's 50-50 chance. Warning, player number Warning. Warning four. Two minutes. Holding. Next That's time, morning. it's going to be two minutes. Holding. Free bright. Uh, white free throw. <laughs> free throw. Go, 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 go. Oh man, do energy drinks usually taste this sweet? It's Warning, number four. It still tastes like... <laughs> <laughs> and yes, they do. Medicine. The sweet taste of Monster Energy, the now unofficial <laughs> sponsor for the commentator's booth, will take you live, Monster Energy. Maybe they become the, the official underwater rugby sponsor. That would be a really fun thing. Yep. Or maybe they become the sponsor for our little project that might be coming up. Underwater monsters? Underwater monsters, yeah. <laughs> The 
unleash your underwater monster. are kind of the perfect sponsor because they're making so much money and have such a huge margin, margin on those carbonated sweet drinks. But do, uh, do underwater rugby players drink Monster? Do we drink energy drinks? I think it's very common. I don't see it they at tournaments. It all the time, Bobby. All <laughs> the time. It is the primary source of energy for all <laughs> underwater rugby players. We love having our heart rate yeah. right up there with a the horse. I think it depends on the dosage. <laughs> it's, always, it's always a question and, of dosage. And the method of injection. Yeah. Because I for sure am certain that there are a lot of uh, coffee junkies uh, on the other The Colombians, they love to drink coffee before rugby games. Yep. Yeah, I, I actually have to have the shot of Jens Dingel from the 2019 World Cup drinking espresso during the halftime break. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a flex. Shout out to Jens. We'd love to see you back in the underwater rugby circus soon enough if you're watching i miss your mid-game espresso and bold head this is well <laughs> all uh, the best for you and your family free throw all right blue team free throw for standing on the edge no no Bratislava time out tried to play blue down team. the clock as much as possible they are I think quite comfortable with their 1 0 lead, and they would like to extend it maybe if given a chance. But they put a little bit of pressure on Ferenc like a few minutes yeah. ago, but then since then it's really slowed down. Like they are comfortably holding the ball, and Ferenc not really kind of moving out of goal to try and get the ball back. And I think for them as well, it is a matter of do they have the right people up yeah. front to try something, or is it e actually too risky? to even try with uh, the setup you have at this point in time. So a little bit of a time on left, 17 seconds. Time out over. Continue. Ooh, player from Frenza trying to sprint over to steal away the basket. Good old tactics, but usually you don't want to go in the middle of the pool. You want to sneak away on the side of the pool. Frenza lost the ball during the free throw and now have to rest for it, but got it back. Right after a bit of a punch in the ball there. Now Firenze coming in at a timeout. Should have their best six players in the water available. Yeah, free throw, white team, standing on the edge. So, we have a bit of back and forth, but nothing dangerous there against the defense from Bratislava. Now getting the ball back in the middle of the pool. <coughs> free throw, having played enough players available, and now we will try to move forward. Maybe having good opportunity. And again, playing the ball back and forth. And now Pedenza trying to initiate the fast break. Got the ball back right in front of the basket. Now bring two players. One has to go up already. 
now try to set up a game plan in the corner again but we've seen them the entire game struggling a little bit to have enough players available underneath the basket in their opponent's half <coughs> and the always suffer a little bit from the curse white of team standing standing on the edge case, standing on the ledge you're not allowed white to stand team. on the ledge white team out you're not allowed to stand on the ledge Time out. carrying the ball you have to be able to support yourself in other rugby standing on the ledge is only allowed if you're not a ball carrier and uh, so the ball moving back over to Bratislava we took a time out here during those last two minutes of the game now and we'll see what they can do and bring during these last minutes of the game. Okay, time out over. Got to end. Free throw, white team. Just wait, wait. If they want to go for another score, or if they will try to contain their one zero lead, they will always be on risk of your opponent equalizing. Scrummed up on the surface, and the surface scrum always in favor of the team in the lead. And it's a positioning the player underneath the bulk. Maybe the ball might drop down now. Players got a hold of the ball. We got one minute left. Now Bratislava will try to take back possession of the ball, but now Ferenze. Trying to move forward, do they get the fast break opportunity? Going in, having a play available at the beginning of now, 50 seconds left for them to play in this. Second half, 40 seconds to go. So far, defense stable. So far, the slow of 30 seconds. And now, Brad Slava smartly scrumming on the surface, just trying to lock up the ball, not giving them an opportunity to move out. Ferenze, five seconds to go. Can they go for a lucky punch? No, they do not get time at the end of the game. And Bratislava takes away the game against Ferenze. One game they can win, as Andre Scott said, right before the game when I talked to him. They were aware of their ability to take away this game. They had a good chance, and then they had to wind down the clock which they did successfully. Well done by Bratislava. Good luck for Firenze. Hopefully we'll see them back stronger again next year. Certainly no one to play is missing from their squad. Their friends and family certainly watching in the chat. And uh, we'll be moving further to the next game of the day, game number 36. USZ Zürich versus UWRC Wien. Vienna versus Zurich. Vienna in white, Zurich in blue. 
and uh, this is also a bit of a do or die game. We're already in the knockout stages now, and now the teams are playing for contestion of their final results. Zurich and Vienna already eliminated from the brackets uh, one to eight, so they are playing for ninth uh, as the best spot they can reach. So we'll see what they can do during this tournament. Going head to head, have played each other quite a couple of times. We'll see what those two teams can bring. So, hallo zusammen, mit mir ist äh, Thorsten Lütke aus Vienna. Ähm, hallo Thorsten, ähm, ihr hättet jetzt einen, sag ich mal, gemischten Start. Ne? 1-3 habt ihr gespielt gegen Malmö, da war auch, glaube ich, ein bisschen mehr drin. Dann habt ihr gegen, ähm, glaube ich, Bratislava vorhin 2-0 gewonnen. Jetzt spielt ihr gegen Zürich. Wie ist so deine Einschätzung vom bisherigen Turnierverlauf? Die ersten Spiele waren Spiele, die wir nicht unbedingt gewinnen mussten, wo wir gut aussehen wollten. Das ist uns teilweise gelungen. Jetzt heute in den Zwischenrundenspielen geht es tatsächlich darum, nicht nur mitzuhalten. Ladies and gentlemen, hopping back into the next game, Zurich versus Vienna. Vienna and White and Zurich in blue. Vienna being the pressing team. Shout out to the tech crew. Switch up cam, please. Interview is already over. We are in the game. Now Vienna trying to give Zurich a hard time here on defense. Seen a solid game today in the early morning, Zurich against uh, Barcelona. So we'll see what Vienna can bring against the Zurich squad. Vienna already played against Bratislava today in the early morning. And we'll see if they have properly woken up yet or if uh, Zurich can upset the Viennese team. Zurich last year's. It was uh, rather close games against uh, Vienna, but never could never take away the win during the last year's Champions Cup. So we'll see what they can bring bring this year to Do the these table. two teams play with each other often? Uh, they are usually contending for uh, for the same uh, same seats, and uh, we're often quite often paired in the same group. Oh, but you're not playing in the same leagues. No, we're not playing in the same leagues now. So we know each other very well from the Champions Cup and from a couple of tournaments. Mm. Funny enough, they're actually not that close together, Vienna and Zurich. No. A uh, couple of kilometers in between. I mean, the countries are close together, but they both kind of have the opposite ends of the... Uh, then again, what is distance if you compare it to US American and Australian standards? I mean, there's distance, but then there's also distance with mountains in between. Okay, we have some initiative here from Zurich on the ball into the Vienna side for the first time. Yeah, we've seen them today in the Vienna. the defender moving out, mm. giving up space Ooh, there on the basket. <laughs> Someone needs to have a chat to that guy. Vienna now trying to get the ball out. Malacek for Vienna. Supported by Kindermann. Now Suri coming in from above. Trying to intercept the exchange of the goalkeeper, but well done by the forwards, stopping them above the basket. Two players coming on the surface. Goalies and backs doing well to play it safe. This is waiting, looking for the ball. Kinemann also. Now he 
he's, he's impatient. <laughs> he's impatient. <laughs> he wants the ball back and he gets it, but nobody. Oi, oh, dangerous. Manteuffel and he's trying okay. to move forward. Oh, it doesn't seem to play under that. Forward. Yes. Wiesner coming in, but three Zurich players already being back. Trying to stop the approach. And we can see Austria now trying to set up proper game plan here in the close corner. Zurich so doing a good job so far, neutralizing the Austrian game plan. And now ah, they've got the ball back. Oh, oh the ball yes, now. real yeah, chance here that. in. Yeah. No, there was a free throw no, called just throw. before. It was called for, for pushing. pushing Attacking equipment. Attack Dark equipment. Free throw. Oh, that's a shame Attacking for equipment. the Vienna team. Dark free throw. <laughs> just since there's a curse. <laughs> Who does everyone in the chat go for? So far, no live chatting here for the Austrian and Zurich game. Is that because the... They're getting ready for their own game as well, so... Is it already off bounds? Out of bounds! Okay. Dark free out throw! Bounds. Out of bounds! Dark free throw! Do you think the fact that no one in the chat is supporting Vienna has anything to do with... Uh, what do you say about you them being here? not very friendly? <laughs> <laughs> Too honest. <laughs> we were talking early on um, about how apparently uh, that Vienna. Was that was a holding as well, I should hope. Yep. Ref saw it. Holding this time holding. against Zurich. Night free throw. Holding. Let's see, Vienna will try and steal the basket. Yeah. I'm, of course, very much non biased commentator <laughs> here in the booth. Thomas would just like everyone to know that Vienna was voted most livable city in the world in 1742 or something. Every year except for <laughs> the last 20 years. What about the years when they had the plague? <laughs> we didn't have the plague. Oh, here, real opportunity oh, and it goes in. on. There oh, is the game plan. A fantastic pass. Executed. Pass. That's how we get replay of that. You can see Kinderman. <laughs> yeah, the back was there late. Ooh. Just first textbook. Off, yeah. Underneath, then over it, and then well done by Vienna. Matthias Neuntreifel. But good assistance from his teammates from the other side. Matthias, good. nine devils. Is that what it hmm? means? Nine devil? Yeah. Nine trifle. What a name. You can see they try the same play yet again. Boy is locked up on the surface. Can't really tell who has the ball. Zurich player wins it back, but can't down. get it down. Kinemann trying to snatch it up. That's what we Here we go. Number 81, Youthman goes into the goal. Yep. He recently made a jersey order, but um, triple XL apparently is for people who. <laughs> use <the laughs> oh, here we have yeah, a great opportunity. No back. Trying to go for it. Couldn't push oh, the keeper up. A little bit slow to pass the ball on. Uh, the ref had the ball. Yeah. The ref had his hand up. Yeah. Did you see what that was? Was that holding on to the goal or shoulder? Up. Sure, Can we get a replay there? Holding the basket. Holding the basket. Holding the basket. Holding the basket. I'd the guess basket. he had one hand yeah. on the back side and one hand uh, at the hand side and the hand on the back side was a bit uh, locked with the ring. Yeah. Number so is that number 81? Kinderman. No? 57. Kinderman. Taking a penalty. Ready? I think it's funny how it's always called shoulder in the basket where the official term is wedging. <laughs> It's creating a force lock with uh, the ring. But a good defense here from the from the yep. against the Anki Naman is trying to come in. Only using his leg and his knee very much successfully. Nice and job from Yanki Naman to stress the goalie. Now they come in from from both again. Let's Number see. five goalie. Trying to get that the is move around the Clements. Body, good movement. Really so good work yeah. from oh. Nice job from Clements. Neumiller. Oh. Clemens Neumiller. Oh. 
you can really see how much of a difference it makes after you stress the goalie go up for air and then you come back down it's almost like half the life force from the goalie yeah. <laughs> has left them Zero lead. We can already see Janowa Wiesner patiently waiting for his opportunity. Montaigne get through it, try to get the ball down. That's for at the old time veteran. Get his drop a lot, hold on to the goalkeeper. Oh, here we go, another opportunity there. Mm. And then how they approach the game here. Not an early morning game. Now around lunch <laughs> time. Where the game plan is surely a bit more consistent and fluid than it was early in the morning. Very slow grind on the surface here. Can't really tell who has the ball. It's just locked up. So it doesn't look like anyone really until half time. Half time! Change sides, half time! So, we are here together with uh, Rias Balek from TC Stuttgart. Hello, how are you? So, you had a tough day yesterday. I saw you lost versus the Orcas, a tough match versus Austria. Now, how do you think about the next match? So, we basically tend to plan for match to match. So, yeah, we had a really tough match against the Orcas, we our first of the tournament, so we just always struggle in the first of it. Um, so, yeah, but long day yesterday, but we're fully prepared and we guess we're gonna put some, some serious pressures on New York and then we see where it takes us. The last time Stuttgart played at the Champions Cup, they won. What do you think about this year? That's the plan overall. I mean, well, you can, don't come here as a German champion but not to win. So, yeah, that's generally the plan. Um, yeah, and we see where it takes us. Cool. Thank you very much. a bit of a game preview next upcoming game will be uh, Orcas versus the Vienna ladies and um, <laughs> tight and hot. so we have 12 seconds to go during halftime and um, 
Don't see think what Freddy. Zurich can bring against Wien here during the second half. Let's see if Vienna tries to step up the game a little bit more. I think I think Vienna is uh, is going to continue what, they, what yeah. they were doing so far. They will try to be more secure with their passes, maybe be a bit more precise, have a little bit more on the ball present. But they will try to build on what they have done so far. And usually, uh, yeah, usually when you're kind of winning already by two goals, you just want to focus on the fundamentals. Doing the basic things right and better. Yeah, Here we go. No nice. Oh, no support there. Passing the ball back. Now it's in the corner. Just going to chat with that for a little, little bit. I mean, I do sometimes find it a little bit annoying when you're chilling with the ball and you, you want your team to have a break and then someone, you know, is very eager waiting at the goal. You're like, no, let's have a break, guys. Yeah. Also, he's missing the rotation afterwards. Yeah. But this as well. Exactly. So it, also de it always depends on what the call is, but usually if you're chilling in the corner like this and you're waiting, you want to lure the opponents away from the yeah. baskets to be able to... Uh, strike, but then again, you have to be able to hold on to the ball as well and not give it up to your mm. opponent. So, kudos to the Surrey forwards who came in and uh, tried to get the ball away. Taken away now, they have a bit of fast break opportunity in the middle of the pool. The forwards shooting in, exchanges came in. Pushing down on the head, blue free throw. Pushing down on the head, blue free throw. It's a shame YouTube doesn't have a uh, translate function for the comments. It would be very nice to yeah. know what some of the Spanish players or Colombian players are saying. The one that is in the video description, there is the schedule. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is why you learn, s learn Latin in schools. <laughs> <laughs> this translation up and ready to go. Roman languages, everybody. Um, so, Vienna now defending pretty much for the first time this game, actually being back on proper defense. Not for very long. But we'll see, they are already there we go. trying to move forward. Coming out of nice, the excellent counter-attack. Three players around the goal, passes pass the, ball. The, left, bounce the ball. They get it Under in. The back of the goalie, but defender in position. Not there we go, another the again, good opportunity. Ooh. Into the exchange of the goalkeeper, but the goalkeepers. Good Ooh. job. Ooh. between the, the legs. Ball. That's very weird, couldn't hold on to the ball properly. To move back out, and now we have a fast break opportunity. Defender on oh, two goalkeepers. It's a very strong Another player from the Zurich side. Ooh, and this might be a penalty. Yeah. Goalie. Goalie. That does oh. not look good. Andy, stop that. Are they going to call it? Uh, this is an upward sound from the okay. referee. just broken. Oh yeah, I think you've been very team. honest. That uh, <laughs> that was a good stretch of luck there for Vienna. Oh, he was expecting his player to be yeah. uh, to be on the right and pass through middle, but into the arms of the defender. Can hold on to the, to the ball though. Came on coming in again. Oh, nice! He's doing his on his own. Oh, 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 what a save! Away. There <laughs> we go. Second wave. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other? He was number six over there, flexing. There. Okay, number twenty. Just yoinked yes, it. Diego Dersh coming in. Okay. Slam nice. Dunking it in for Vienna. Yep. A little bit of a flex. Yes, Diego. That was, a, that was a team goal. Yeah. Full on team effort. Uh, and there we go again. Lando picking it up. Yep. Trying to go for one more again. Five minutes played in the second half. Wiesner coming in and they. Move back into the corner of the pool again. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Thomas is just uh, taking off his shirt here. He says it's too hot and tight. Okay, so we have a Vienna player. Just... <laughs> being called for pushing, which seems very reasonable. Blue free throw. Did you see which player that was? I had to, so Blue free changing, throw. changing up uh, <laughs> gear. <laughs> so free throw is for Zurich. I think Zurich has been doing, done a great job, uh, has done a great job of defending here against Vienna for the most stretch of the game. And comparatively to uh, to uh, the game of Vienna against Bratislava, I think they actually played really solid um, underwater rugby here throughout this game. Uh, uh, they had had a game plan, and um, so I'm very aware of what they wanted to do, and I think they did execute it quite properly. This one. This one, though, a bit of a mistake by the defender, but nobody available on the other side. Hands for it. Can't get the pass, pass forward. Now, fast break again for Vienna. Marcia coming in. Well, left pass back to the right. Play available on the left. Can he get the ball underneath the goalkeeper? Better angle of the camera would be pretty great, but it's still a goal for Vienna. And those are the opportunities that they want to have. And I think seven in the this one again, very well seven. executed. Peter Maracek. Coming in with the fast break. Yeah, they should be happy with all the goals they've made in this game. They've all been goals that um, have involved a lot of teamwork, yeah. coordination. And I think it is very important, especially after a very disrupted game, first game of the day, where you couldn't really properly execute your game plan. Um, it is important uh, to have a solid game going into the final games of today. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to play or wait? <laughs> <laughs> What's okay. going on? It's a timeout, Manuel. Respect the timeout. You want to play? <laughs> What can I, do? I think Manuel's hungry. <laughs> Someone, I, want, I want to go to lunch. <laughs> Someone get that man a smirgos. <laughs> Did you just do a German accent for a Swedish referee? <laughs> Angry people or such. <laughs> Coming in for one more, Balloon Landl. Oh, shoulder in the basket there. That's very dangerous on the Zurich side. And why would you have your shoulder in the basket when there's not even that much pressure? In some players, they, they have this tendency to wedge the side of the back into the, into the goal. And if they slip in too much, yeah. then... Um, yeah. I think some players also, they, they want to tilt their head so they can keep track of what's going on. And some of them, if, they, if, if your shoulders aren't broad enough, then you slip into the basket. That was a chunky boy. The one on the Zerg side, he had a shoulder in the basket. I think he was a chunky boy. Not chunky enough. <laughs> Depends on where the chunk is. <laughs> Depends on where you put the chunk. Okay, we have a good counter-attack. Yeah, yeah counter good goal scoring. Can he pass the ball? Why doesn't he pass the ball? Vienna, okay. He <laughs> No. This time, no teamwork. <laughs> I feel like some of the Number defenders on the Zurich team have kind of given up. They're not kind of uh, doing the hard yards, swimming back. I think uh, at this point in time, we had it yesterday uh, during some games as well. Um, we've reached a point where um, teams uh, stop playing for full defense because yeah. they can't go for a tie anymore. 
and to try to do the best as can as, the, uh, as possibly offensively. And um, I think personally, from a coach's perspective, this is the right thing to do. Oh yeah, but I, I mean, like, it looks like they've just stopped trying altogether when it comes to defense. It's not that you know they went so hard on the offense because that offense didn't last very long. I mean, they tried, but if mm. you're getting a fast break against you having four yeah. players uh, underneath your own basket, there is a. Yes, it's a valiant effort to have your defender come Ooh, back. Ooh, we have an uh, injury, possibly. Yeah. It was just... No? no was <laughs> he just was just curled up. He was just going up and he tried Hit to avoid uh, oh, right. getting hit by enemies. Or yes, it was a bit of a scrum. But yeah, he looked very defensively. Mm. Uh, it was in the fetal opportunity position. Opportunity against the goalkeeper coming in from above. Get pulled up. Pass. Being tossed down, 20 seconds to go in the second half. Vienna leading 5-0 against Zurich. And so we maybe want to go for one more, 13 seconds to go. But none of his teammates are having game is over for them, mm. <laughs> apparently. Yeah, they will. Are they going to go for one more? I mean, they, they did try, they attempted to go back and forth, but a little bit late. Good game, good goals from the Vienna side. Some uh, solid defense from Zurich in the first half. Now we'll get some replays of uh, goals from the game. That was the last game. Andres being happy. Okay. And <laughs> we are going to have another Vienna game coming up this time. Vienna and Orcas. Against the Orcas in blue. And I'd love to have a chat here with Morata, but I can maybe hold on a sneaky one. So we can, of course, communicate with our lobby chat. We hope everything else is working fine for you as well. <coughs> we have a bit of technical issues here with our laptop, giving us the opportunity to see the lovely people in chat. Try and take a photo of the Guazabo match. I think the entire internet broke down here. It's not loading the stream. The wireless line is on the cell phone as well, and not loading as well, yeah. Internet connection. So I hope that everything of the stream is going well. So we are live with uh, Jan Kindermann from Vienna. 5-0 versus Zurich, are you happy? Oh yeah, absolutely happy, yes. We got a lot better into the flow of what we want to do than uh, in the first game tomorrow. Uh, so very happy about that, yes. But was it a surprise for you that you were winning so high or did you expect it from your like improvement versus the other games? Yeah, no, could have gone either way because we know that um, uh, Zurich is able to defend against us pretty well sometimes. Uh, so it's really a question of if we can get going if we can get a little bit into their head and make them worried about whatever's coming. And today that work that happened and then they sort of fell apart a little bit uh, towards the end because they were too stressed out. That's, that's why we have three, uh, third, fourth, fifth goal. But really it's about getting the first goal. Thanks, Jan. Thank you. Interviews, but the game has already started between Orcus and, uh, and Vienna. And uh, we need uh, some dear, dear crew, the game visuals on the border. Can we get the camera on the border, please? Deck crew.
All right, sorry, we had a little technical issues here, but the live stream apparently is working properly, so we are into the game, Orcas versus Vienna, but um, we are already sorry that we might have some camera issues underwater. So the team is currently checking what is going on. So sorry if you, we cannot give you proper live stream from time to time, but for now it seems that it is working fine so far. Don't want to curse it, can take curse, it can be real. One thing I'm very surprised with is that the water quality is still very good because I think we've had some problems with that in the past. Uh, yeah, the, the pool has been cleaned the days before the tournament and it is also being cleaned every day in the evening after we stop Ooh. playing. Very strong four checking Clement team wins the ball back. Uh, Colombia with the oh, great opportunity. Steals the goal. Ball. Basket stolen away. Oh, a little mishap with the pass there. Can now the basket still stay on the goal? Get in between ball carrier and goalie, mm. and you can see the Orcas with their extreme stamina. Just oh, there we go. Ball coming in. Yeah. She was down there for a good 20 seconds, I think. Yeah. She has spent too much time <laughs> on the Austrian basket. And this is something that the forwards, if there is a player the on your goal, an opponent, in yeah. this case specifically, you lock up the ball yeah. carrier. You do not give, you don't just interrupt the pass, you lock them up and you do not allow them to move or pass. Get a hold of them. But you love giving advice from the armchair. Hmm? <laughs> love giving advice from the armchair. <laughs> it's the best comfortable <laughs> position to give advice from. It's often easier said than done, but it, it should be your goal yeah. as a forward. And uh, yeah, Orcas. Very well known for stealing away your goal if you give them, if you give the team a chance. All good opportunity here Sweet for ball. the Vienna women. <coughs> nice support. Four forward, big pass to the left. They kind of just need more players underwater sometimes. Oh. By Vienna nice. To move the ball over the middle, oh, the up. support's a little bit too far away. It didn't get proper support from the teammates. Couldn't nice. Away, but still Doing a hold, good job. Hold on to, well done. That was a nice exchange back and forward there. Good intensity from the Vienna team to match the Orcas. Is coming in again. Player underneath the oh. basket though. Ball onto the hands of the goalkeeper. Can she hold on to it? Two Orcas mm. trying to get away. Goalkeeper now. Second one in position. Well done by the goalie. Oh, Two no out. back. The back's not in position properly. And now do we see if the forwards can do their job? Defender now back in place. Oh, defenders left as well. Effort from the Minis team. And I, I actually also do really like the the angle of the moving camera here yep. in the middle following the, the action of the game. Surely wants to see this Ooh. one. Nice pass to the back side of the goal. Well done, but nobody else there to play. Oh, <laughs> 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 waited for the goalkeepers to exchange. Yeah. <laughs> Tried to toss it in. And there, yet again, a player lurking to... You can always see some of them just swimming to the goal and yep. then moving into the over to the teammates. And Always approaching from the left and then moving over to the right. Yeah, they really know how to use the angles. And uh, very good back and forth yet again. Back to the left oh, here. There oh, we go. Goalkeeper open a little bit. Can you? Oh, okay. Does have somebody on the left? Oh, good opportunity for the Orcas as well. Defender just getting in position at the left. Oh, got a kick on the head as well. But now the ball back out. Austria now trying to move forward. Immediately attacked by two Orcas, and we know how physical this team can be from the last World Cup. Yet again, good effort. Sofia Vela getting the ball immediately back for her team. Player available underneath. Tries to move oh. to the right. Uh, can the defender move on? Yes. But player still going, and we love to see the underwater presence those Orcas uh, ladies have. Their their underwater time is just so insanely high compared to all the other teams. Their stamina 
surely the best, one of the best, if not the best, on the entire planet. And we can see them coming in over and over again. Yet again, three players oh. and only finding plays. Okay. Shoulder in alone. the basket. There yeah. was shoulder in the basket. This might be a penalty, yeah. I think it's always a difficult situation when you are yeah. a goalkeeper and your shoulder is basically getting pushed into the basket by the movements of your opponent. Especially, especially for female basket. players who are a lot... Uh, but that wasn't the case just then. She, she twisted herself yeah. in there. But I mean, what can you do? There's three players against one. Sometimes yeah. it's better to, you know, at yeah. least with the penalty, you have yeah, a shot. Yeah, of course. The penalty is always better than getting scored on in the, at the end of the day. <laughs> Only not for the goalkeeper who has to do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's a, think of it as a development opportunity. Okay. <laughs> you have to see it as a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Time out. But there are no challenges, just yeah. opportunities. Oh, sorry. The okay. thing is, um, Time out white. or one difficult is, Time out uh, white. is especially for the women, the, the goal is the same size as for the men, yep. whereas a lot of the female players are, of course, quite a lot slimmer. Yeah. Or, uh, not especially as around as the shoulders. Men, especially around the shoulders. So um, dropping uh, into the basket while shifting is a lot easier for female mm. players than uh, for male players. Uh, but then again, uh, scoring... Uh, there was there was a question: Should we make the female ball smaller? Because yep. the female ball is already smaller. Yep. So, in in general, scoring should be in terms of ratios easier, easier yep. for the female teams. So you have a bigger basket, you have slimmer goalkeepers, and you have a smaller ball, yep. which is but mainly for ball handling. But then again, the the games are still extremely even, uh, just like on the men's side. So, uh, no real discussion there for now. We'll approach it again if it should be a problem in the future. Looks like the Vienna team's so doing good we'll spirits. We'll see who will defend for Austria. We have what number? Didn't see yet. Hmm. So the question is is it a. Can you recognize the fin? Ooh! First attempt, good defense. Nice. Well done. That should have been an attack on the head. I would have called that as an attack on the head. See, she grabs her, not behind the neck, but right yeah, on the head. She had the, uh, yeah. that she had the entirety of the cap in her left hand. Ah. And I gotta be honest, uh, Vanessa Putriago here with the score. Well defended also for Austria. And I think especially during a penalty where you have two referees yeah. specifically focused on very closely on a one versus one. A grab like this uh, should be uh, noticed. But we can check. Oh, really quick, sorry. So on refs with Bigot, Kai and uh, Rafael Tito de Mores and Bigot was the deck referee though. The deck referee? Yeah. He was not on the water. No. Bigot was the deck referee? Yeah. 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 So, and there's a bit of a difference, a different approach uh, in refereeing philosophy where, um, let's say, Scandinavian referees, mm -hmm. they leave quite a bit more leeway when it comes to attacks on the head, where usually the head is off limits, whereas uh, the neck is allowed to be yeah. kept. I whereas that too. German and Austrian referees usually opt for a more, let's call it, conservative approach, because the rules do leave a little bit of leeway when it comes to this. Grabbing the, 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 the cap is out of limits. So yeah. in this case, sorry, but Orcas, but he should have been called off. I think but even in Scandinavia, like, you know, that was very obviously the head. Yeah. And especially if you get a hold on, to the, on the cap yeah. and pull the, pull the head, that is that is surely off limits. So we have 30 seconds left on this first half. Vienna's done quite well defending. Oh. Ah, no, Mara Vogler was defending for Austria. 66. With the pink fins. Yeah. 
defense. Not this one. <laughs> the other ones. The entirely pink fins. I think they did a really good job there. Yeah. Also, I mean, the, the attack, the forceful shove from the, from the Orca player was a really nice play, but yeah. the grip. So, I think we can... Might be able to get back into the chat. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Is it live? Should be live as well. Yeah. After I'm break, yep. A bit of a 20 seconds delay, but still. Is it a 20 seconds delay? Victor, did you just curse Vienna? Ah <laughs> <laughs> no, he said Bama's Orcas initially. All good, all good, Victor. Wait. Sorry. Does that mean you thought Malmo were the underdogs against Hasu, Victor? To be honest, I think they were actually coming into the game. I guess with a team of 10. Yeah, with a team of 10. But the quick score from Malmö totally shifted. Because we saw he, uh, Himmel and Superthai yeah. being really pressing at the beginning of the game and trying yeah. to force the goal. But yeah, this is how a goal can change the our history of underwater rugby. The Malmö, Maladari, Edwin Mortensen combo. So we see the Orcas have to break, discussing the game plan a little bit. But I think not very many teams are so well in sync as the Orcas already are practicing so much. Mm. Back home in Colombia. Colombia, sorry, Orcas. Colombia. <laughs> then we. I think Vienna so far did a very solid job of defending. They had a couple of stretches where the defender was missing um, at the last point. They had to swoop in the last point in time. But then again, uh, teams like the Orcas, it is basically their specialty to create a lot of uh, chaos and disarray yeah. in the defense. And it is um, a significant, um, how, do you, how, how do you call it? It's a very good sign to so speak for a team to be able to overcome the, this chaos and then get back into your to recover and, yeah to recover from uh, it's it's when you're defending like wave after wave of like high pressure attacks it's almost like interval training right you know you have to like cycle up your heart rate and down very quickly and do that over and over again yeah and it's who does not love a good interval training <laughs> Aren't we all hit aficionados? We love it. <laughs> yeah, we're not just wa waiting for the for the opportunity to strike. They want to give um, adequate a head, start. A head start to make it a fair and square game. Yep, Victor, you have gotten the Viennese game plan totally right. That's a very nice start there, but I gotta be honest, the, the teams on the female side, especially they very on the even on the men's side as well, mm. but on the female side especially, they have uh, gotten closer together, and um, very interestingly, also compared to comparing the um, World Championship now to yep. the Champions Cup here, and the difference in pool size, you can see a totally different game um, in terms of coordination in a small pool compared mm. to a huge pool in uh, Montreal. Shout out to those underwater rugby players who really like to swim. I think the problem with uh, coordination in a big pool is that the you know you have a difference in terms of physical fitness or swimming fitness within the team itself and that difference really um, comes into play, becomes really evident in a big pool. Some people can just push so much further than the others in the same team. Yeah. Now free throw for Vienna, shoving and the other thing is, it feels natural to use the entirety of space that a big pool provides. Yeah. Whereas in underwater rugby, you have to artificially uh, keep your players together. Oh, and that's interesting. We, sorry, we have a. I just noticed there's a player with a ponytail, a braided tail, hanging out. I don't think I've seen that too many times before in an underwater rugby match. Usually, everyone has their hair, you know, all tied up. Yeah. The dots and knots. Oh, Orcas oh, coming in, taking the oh. goalkeeper, tried to shove it in again from back. Good cover Good by the goalie. Good cover, though. 
Well done by the goalie, trying to get a hold onto the ball and moving out, shoving. And now again, coming back for second wave coming in. No defender. Second ah, breakfast. The defender just moving up there, and but the goal is still holding strong. Mara Fogler, the one who defended the penalty, good effort by her. Now we can see defense back in position. Jotkas, two minutes played. Coming in again from above, attacking the goalkeeper over and over again. That is for team. Um, as a goalkeeper, nice. you are at the mercy of your forwards most yeah. of the time. And uh, good in backs. the backs. And, and backs, of course, but uh, forwards are usually your main wall of defense when somebody is trying to straight up attack you as a goalkeeper. Then again, Orcas coming in again. Yet another way from left and right. Solid defense from the Viennese. Really yeah. not making it easy for yeah, the Orcas. Absolutely. Having defenders in position. Moving back left and right, having a forward in between wherever the Orcas want to go. And it's not easy to have players in between mm. all those passing options. We see always. Ah, oh, oh. there, there it was. Commentator's curse. Commentator's curse. Yep. The oh, forward was missing for, for just a short point <laughs> time, and there we go. Replay. And what I want to talk about is those are those triangle setups that they have, which the male teams use yep. as much as well. And a lot of teams opt to have players really close Outside. to the basket, whereas the Colombian teams, yeah. whereas you noticed, have one player on each side of the basket, but one a little bit higher up yeah, uh, on exactly. around ring height, and they are trying to pass the ball really quickly from yeah. left to right, not giving the defender enough time um, to move uh, efficiently from yeah. left to right. So they draw them to either side, and then uh, they try to bring the pass ball around back to out. the other side. Yeah. And then once the player gets on the other side, they can just you know have that little bit of momentum to swim. Yeah into the goal with. Yeah, they use the three dimensions and the angles really well so that they can, you know, get off passes, you know, quite close to the goal. I mean, one thing's for sure, the Colombian teams always win when it comes to the quality of swimwear. Like the design, I mean, I'm wearing a Guasabaro designed thing right now. You want to start the swimsuit discussion? <laughs> <laughs> what? Two men talking about female swimwear. What could go wrong, Bobby? <laughs> oh, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, cancelled. I'm right talking about my it. own wear yeah. as well. We only talk about the shirts that we are wearing here in the commentator's <laughs> booth, and we support every person's own personal preference and choice of swimwear. I did say Colombian teams, yeah. plural. plural. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas please trying to please cancel, don't cancel me. Us. <laughs> <laughs> we might have sooner or later be cancelled by the CMS as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some spicy unreleased recordings. Yeah. Do we bring an announcement this weekend or don't we? We're not sure yet. Maybe oh yeah. during the finals. Thomas and I have uh, secret projects that we're working on to get ourselves cancelled in uh, <laughs> other ways. <laughs> Cancel us or die trying. <laughs> right, Vienna now trying to set up. Oh, okay. Ooh, referee. A lot of, ex <laughs> lot of, <laughs> lot of exchanges. <laughs> oh, it looks like referee got, got hit in the head. head yeah. <laughs> a lot of exchanges on the Colombian side. Yeah. You see there. Three the Colombians out. Good support from the Vienna team. Yeah. I think we are doing a really good job, especially against the strong yeah. team. Oh, that was risky. Yeah. Commentator's curse. Commentator's curse. <laughs> Instant. I should stop commentating on my own. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just not good for me, for my heart rate, and for my team as well. Yeah. Oh, come on. Can we move out? Yep, pick up the ball. Oh, that was a little oh, bit slow. And now this is a good opportunity for the Yorkers as well. Underneath the back of the goalie. Okay. Oh. And also something that we've, see we've just seen, we've seen the second goalkeeper moving in yeah. uh, to help out. And oh, good effort again by the Colombian forward. Can she put it in? The Vienna, they're really good they're at just, on, in, just in time yeah. defense. Five minutes played in the second half. Something that you really struggle as a goalkeeper who's coming in to actually exchange for yeah. your goalkeeper and you see that the defender is missing. Do you pick up the spot of the defender and spot defense for the moment? Or do you help out I your goalkeeper who's been under, under no, the uh, duress? So it's almost I think a it tight decision. It depends. Like it depends. Um, 
you know, whether you think you can get that ball, lock nice. that ball up. Nice effort there, uh, Adamini's forward. I am impressed by how the Viennese girls, um, how well they support each other. They, you know, almost always, they're giving each other a passing option. Yeah. Coming Ooh, again. Oh, oh yeah. they, uh, that was that, very that, smooth. That was a textbook of actually yeah. for them. Just came in. Let's see how she created the ga that gap. Proper setup. Moving in. Push off the floor. Two players in parallel. Defender. Oh, yeah. Coming Ooh. in a little late and then pushing the goalkeeper up. Yeah, they both had the hands on the ball and they kind of both pushed on the goalie at the same time. Yeah. Not to be devil's advocate, but I would <laughs> love would have loved to see the other angle to see what the second player was doing in the meantime. Yeah. Well played by the Orcas. Uh, does the chat know how many how many players on the female Orca squad um, have been playing in Montreal. Do you know that? I'll just pull up the team from Montreal then. <laughs> I'd like to give Chad something to do. Yeah, Victor, you, you Victor is worse than, worse than the commentators, of course. <coughs> Trying to set up their typical game better pattern. Nice Better support. Out, yeah. Creating some space, moving forward. Two awkward immediately onto the forward. They're trying to bring the ball into the middle. Oh. Pop out, play available though. Well done. Keeping it. Keeping the ball amongst the own. Good passing. Good passing, yep. Number 10, I think that's Steffi Pop. Wood's trying to get herself Ooh, an opportunity there. That was, they got the goalie clearly off the goal, had got a gap. The goalie off, but she was locked up mm. by a forward. Second attempt from the side, but the ball now in the hands of Colombia, of 40 Orcas. It's good to see the see them fighting on the team surface. creating this much pressure. In the forward, Orcas. pass available. Nice, oh, well using the legs. Disrupted. Ooh. Second time's charm. Oh, and now they have the opportunity coming in from the left. Do they have a second player available? You can see him already Good. to the left. It's quite interesting that the Colombian teams play so much on the surface, on, on the open side of the, on the open side, on the open side of the pool. I mean, it's not. It's that they just move a lot around the goal. Yeah. They never get stuck in one corner. And. Uh, that makes it very hard for the back to sort of... Because once you get the back's attention on one side, yeah. they don't know when someone sneaks up behind them on the other side. Yeah, and you can take up a lot of space and yep. block them from yeah. moving efficiently to the but other side as well. You know, you can't do that with every team because, I mean, like, you need the fitness and the condition to be able to pull this off. Oh, coming oh. in and get for a moment. Oh, nice oh, pass. pass. to the back. Does she Push get... pass again. Push, oh, the Mala. To keep her off. Mala position. <laughs> Mala Merlin coming. Yet again, the pass oh. underneath the goalie. Oh, blocked by well the fin. Done. Good defense Goals again. Like defending. The I attack think. from above and from underneath. 33 seconds oh, to go. Oh, where's the Four support? Zero. 40 Orca so far. <laughs> nice. It's always really good to see people staying. Oh. oh. Yet again, one more chance for the Orca. 17 seconds to go. Oh, good job Defender from the forward. Just at the last second. Perfect. Well done, Number snatching 30, it away. 33. Ajay. Now we're putting it out, putting it forward. Bisnik trying to hold on. One second to go, and there and we go. Time. Keeping the basket, basket clean for the later minutes of the second half. That was a very impressive game. I think the Viennese girls can be super proud of themselves here. It is in a oh, beautiful goal here by number eight, Sofia Villa. Coming in with a happy push. And the penalty. 
penalty there again. Attack on the head. Attack on the head. Not being called. You the second time. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just show it. There we go. Another score. I think there's going to be a little interview. At least it said it's going to be prepped. I'll take a little bit of a break and we'll be right back with the next game between God Germany and the New Jersey Hammerheads. Super quick, no worries. Okay. So, so, no worries, no worries. Anzeichen. So hello, we are live here with Nessa from the Orcas. Nessa, you won 4-0. Are you happy? Yes, very happy. Very happy. You scored even twice if I saw it correctly, right? So would you say you're the top scorer of your team or my was it a team, team effort that you did? My team, please evacuate. So you're quite happy with the scoring, right? Yeah, and your team supported you doing this. Is there something you want to say, maybe on Spanish, to your friends and family? Eh, saludos a mi familia, mis amigos que me están apoyando. Acá la estamos dando toda. Orcas. Thank you very much. Blue free throw, attacking the equipment. Blue free throw.
So we're back in the game here with uh, TC Stuttgart versus the New Jersey Hammerheads. First, first five minutes played already in this game. So we can see a, a tough one from both teams. And we can see in blue the German champion, Tauchklub Stuttgart. And in white, team from the USA, New Jersey Hammerheads. And here we can see the an intense team attack initiated by Stuttgart. A couple of players under the water, but here in the corner, the ball is scrambled. And then, yeah, might this be an opportunity by number 10? Tanja Ringelmann here, the coach captain, with a free spot, but well defended by the New Jersey Hammerheads. We're going on. Stuttgart here playing around. Keeping the ball close to the basket. Regina Pavlovic here. And there's Cardi available on the other side, but also here well defended, well blocked. And there's a free spot. Mm, unfortunately, not a good opportunity executed by Petra Köppe. And there was really a free opportunity. Could have been better executed. But we still see here quite so far dominant play from Stuttgart here hanging around playing close to the opponent's basket but here it's New Jersey now able to get out of their own half still struggling the forward the attacking part engagement here from Stuttgart very very intense number 80 here Getting the ball, getting forward. And we can see here, 1-1 one, one opportunity, well defended by New Jersey. Pass down and here the free throw, but New Jersey is struggling here a bit to get out of the own half at this moment. Three minutes left here in the first half of this match. And it's always the same pattern, but here now, the breakthrough. Number six, Steffi Nusser, but holding on her leg, not free in swimming. Still waiting here. So got still waiting for the chance. Maybe here now with Lena Rossmann here having a block, stealing the defender position here. But again, Kati Filov not able here to get through making a direct pass. But we still will see here now a referee call pointing on the player. The call is holding the basket. And it's a streak throw for the New Jersey Hammerheads. New Jersey. In white, white free bring throw. the ball to the surface and now getting ready. Two minutes left here, first half of the game. Immediately here, intercepted, attacked by Lena Rosman here on the surface, but still here, the ball possession. We see number 32 swimming downstairs. Team list, unfortunately, not actualized. So we can find it, so 200 team list at the moment but we see now an engagement offense engagement here from New Jersey Hammerheads here well stolen the ball here and blue free throw ball referee call blue free, blue free throw blue here in the right spot now getting in favor but still one minute twenty left first half of this game. So here we go again. A lot of scrum here on the surface. We see number 24, Andrea Arenas, from New Jersey here in the fight. And now Regina Pavlovich here. One versus two, swimming, grabbing the defender, pulling up, and there's a free spot now. Anne, but ball intercepted here. Well done, stolen, but going back down to Petra. Now Anne, again from above. And the pass here on number 10 and executing. And then we see the goal. Tanja Ringelmann here with the 1 0 straight right before the halftime. Tanja Ringelmann here from TC Stuttgart scoring for her team. The German champion, TT Stuttgart, 
1-0 lead on the scoreboard. And New Jersey here starting with the ball. 10 seconds left here, first half of the game. Is New Jersey able here to maybe start their first proper team attack? But it doesn't look like that. Time is over for now. We're going into a three minute halftime break. TC Stuttgart, Tanja Ringelmann, number 10. Two minutes penalty, blue team. Oh. Two minutes penalty, blue team. Oh. Exchange fault. There's such a news for the halftime. What happened? There's an exchange failure. So, obviously, Stuttgart with seven players in the water, which means three minute halftime break. And right after the halftime, Stuttgart is like understaffed. Just five players in the water while the New Jersey Hamads can start with six. And this for full two minutes of the full 10 minutes of the second half. So, New Jersey Hamads down by scoreboard but in advantage starting in the second half let's see what the team can do about it it's so far quite exciting to be honest but we saw an also quite dominant game here from new jersey eh, from stuttgart starting here versus new jersey just checking a bit the results just giving hands up so yesterday new jersey hammerheads they won one zero versus vienna and on the other hand, we also saw an exciting match yesterday from Stuttgart versus Vienna with a 2-0 victory. So both teams are on a similar level, still with a kind of advantage, of course, for Stuttgart. So on a paper, if I will be a betting man, as my boss used to say, I will, of course, um, put my money on Stuttgart. Just from a paper-wise, they are in favor. However, even here leading one, one goal, but now after the halftime break of another minute left, there is a power play, immediate power play of two minutes for the New Jersey girls. Can they use this momentum to score and equalize? That's what we're going to figuring out here now in second half of the match. Checking the team list, just giving you an overview about how's playing in the water as well. In blue, we can see Stuttgart, and there's an exchange that it's immediately receiving us from the signal machine. So what we can see here is Katila Roosevelt might go out or in. This is what we're trying to figure out, but also highlighting the referees of the match. Robert Glock, the deck referee, Tommy and Caesar under the water. Teams get ready. Half time is over. And you see it on the time clock, two minutes in orange. This orange bar highlighting the two minutes time penalty for Stuttgart. And we are back in the game. New Jersey, we can see it. Engage to get the ball here. Making all the way, rushing through. The Stuttgart goal, however, well scrummed and stopped by, you can see here, Stephanie Nusser with number six in the scrum, in the fight, surrounded by three New Jersey players. Now here, ball is down, but again, a two versus one fight. And we still need to remember New Jersey here with six players in the water, while Stuttgart remains with five. For another minute and 15, ball is out, 28, Julia Gomez passing down, and here we are. Number 10, Anna Blaine in the corner. And there's a fast pass. 28, Julia Gomez intercepted here, but still in favor. Number 11 here, Luisa Gomez, swing from the side, pass back to Anna. And still scrum. So for New Jersey, it's a bit too slow. They need to be more engaged if they want to really play out, outplay here the, the Stuttgart defense. What they're doing is, is the right idea, but executed far too slow, and therefore it's easy here, as for Lena Rossmann here in blue, to get a hand on the ball and stopping the attack engagement. 30 seconds left for the power play of 
did New Jersey Hammerheads, but Stuttgart here still with a 1-0 lead. And still, pass down, 11 Luisa. Swimming around, have an opportunity left and right. Where she's gonna pass? Is she gonna pass? Pass down, but here, intercepted. Unclear pass, there was a hand between. Stuttering ball. Intercepted here, we see Lena Rosman again with the yellow fins here. Crabbing, and the time is over. So, Stuttgart now again with six players back in the water. Power play done. And here we are now. Is New Jersey here able, the USA champion, to keep the pressure up? Or will Stuttgart make it the way out of their half? We're gonna see this right now. And then we see it, Regina. Might it be going out here, making the fast break, passing left. To Steffi Nusser, passing back, but intercepted here. Well done. And we can see again, New Jersey here in the corner with the ball possession going out of their own half. Seven minutes left on the scoreboard. Right. There we are, number 15, Anne Passing back. And here we are. We can see Kati Filov, you know, on the open side now, waiting for the pass, but very well again defended here by and intercepted by New Jersey here. Number 33 here, Johanna Vargas. Fighting one versus one, keeping the ball, passing it in. And here we can see number 24, Andrea here, passing through, making the side pass. But very well defended here. Germany's always in the way. There's no free spot, no free way for New Jersey to rush directly towards the basket. Everything's blocked here, the ball in the corner. And six minutes 30 left here for the remaining game. So far, so good for TC Stuttgart. They are here right now in 1-0 lead. The points are important. Every game needs to find a winner. The result overall is not important. You're not going to take your goals to any next group stage or whatever. It just matters that you win here. And every game needs to find a winner either during the game or in overtime penalty shooting. And here the pass again. Stephanie Nusa, number six, swimming. 24, Andrea Arena just letting her swim through, which is still not a bit mistake. With two players here from New Chase are already waiting at the basket. So no issue for them. All playing around now. Stuttgart, five minutes, 30 seconds left. They're quite relaxed right now. We do not see heavy engagement here right now. Of course, they can play, taking time from the clock. You see it here, they're going to the corner, swimming with the ball out of the corner, passing the next person, waiting in the corner. And here we see Ria Spalek with a fight through, but then again. Stuttgart here going close to the basket, but not putting too much effort here not willing or wanting to lose the ball by an effort to score a second one. They seem to be all right with the current. But here now, we can see Kadia spotting an opportunity, passing here to Lena, but intercepted here. Well intercepted, well seen by New Jersey attacker. Marcela Bulla, who intercepted here, gratefully the ball and ball falls down. And Tanya Ringelmann here. The scorer got the ball, but outside of the field, it might be bad possession for New Jersey Hammerheads. Even highlighting White attacking the mask. Attacking the equipment, attacking the equipment by Tanya Ringelmann White might be go. not a big deal. Just a free throw, four minutes left. That's quite confusing that New Jersey are taking such a time. Like the time is running, they're super relaxed, but. Just need to highlight, they need to score. Oh no, referee was not this giving. White free throw. White free throw. Time, the referee was not giving free this pass. So again, number 28, Julia Gomez needs to wait. And now there's a signal, passing down. And Luisa Gomez here, making all the way, rushing through the basket. Number 28 here, Julia Gomez waiting for the pass. But the attack comes from above. Not well executed here again, intercepted by TT Stuttgart. But still, New Jersey, ball possession here, in lead. Having the momentum, can they use it? 
3.30 left. They're going on. 28 passing over. And here we are. You can see number 10, Anna. Going from above. Seeing a teammate on the other side. Trying to pass. No, she keeps the ball. It's too risky for her. Makes sense. But still, as you see how well she's executing the 1-1 situation. Not letting the attacker crapping her ball. Well done here. And next wave. We see a player here trying to install a block, but Stuttgart team blocking everything away. And another wave from above. Before she tried to pass down Anna, she was intercepted by Petra Köppe. And again. Tanja Ringelmann here, the captain, with the captain man here, bringing up. And here, swim through. Andrea Klimach making here important meters in the pool, bringing the ball back in the opponent's corner. This is where they want the ball to be. It's far away from their own. It forces the other team to place two players at the basket. So their last attackers in the water remaining them and makes it much more easier to keep the ball possession here. Here Andrea Klimach here in a clinch. But Ria Zbalik here in blue are supporting her teammate and bring the ball out as well as to the surface yeah no the jersey are very passive to be honest they need to score so there needs to be a momentum where they're giving up their own defense and focusing and 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 winning the ball and then trying their own game again because at this stage if they continue like that stuttgart would just play down the time and one zero is like totally enough here to win at least the scoreboard that just everything that matters pass down Petra Köppen here again passing backwards you can see here Andrea Klimach again waiting passing down Kati Filo with number 15 and we are calling already closely the last minute of this match one minute left here Kati Willow going back to the surface being attacked here such an opportunity right now but here again Lena Rossmann supporting her teammates in the scrum bringing out the ball we can see here Tarina Techert same pattern ball bringing into the corner Anerea with 14 waiting for the pass getting it attacking like blocking their tagger giving the next wave and this is what they're going to do Petra Köp in here next to Andrea, Gli uh, Andrea Glimach touching a bit the defender 30 seconds left but then a horn another signal attacking the mask 20 seconds left on the scoreboard and there we are last 20 seconds it's the last chance for the New Jersey Hammers they might execute fast do they or not 15 seconds left they need to give it ball back and immediately attacked by Lena Rossman this is a pattern that we saw like several times here New Jersey has not learned out of the mystics from the first half so there's always a player waiting behind the receiver and that's it 1-0 winning for the Stuttgart team and then I'm giving away and trying to rush to get an interview for commentating that last game and giving Thomas and I a break. A quick one, a quick one. Deutsch or English, Tanya? Du willst? Deutsch besser. Und? So, ich habe hier Tanja Ringelmann, die Kapitänin vom TC Stuttgart bei mir. Ihr habt gewonnen, wie fühlt es sich an? Super, damit müssen wir heute Abend nicht spielen. Ja, ihr müsst ihm eigentlich nur spielen und das hat eine Mannschaft auch dir zu verdanken. Also, wir hören da drüben gerade die Party. Also die Mannschaft hat auch dir das Tor, also als Kapitän zu verdanken. Du hast 1-0 gemacht. Beschreib mal, wie lief das ab? 
Das war einfach eine super geile Teamarbeit. Gewinnen kann man nur als Team. Anne hat es vorbereitet, ich habe es reingelegt. Insofern geht der Dank auch eher an Anne als an mich. Super, dann äh, wünsche ich mir heute Abend auf jeden Fall einen schönen Abend, weil ihr könnt, wie gesagt, heute Abend nicht mehr spielen. Ihr seid dann morgen nochmal dran und wir sehen uns morgen wieder. Zwei Finale. Danke. Okay, coming up, we have the female game between Akarin from Norway and Barcelona from Spain. Interesting fact is that Barcelona has a player there who's also from Norway. And uh, she is also one of their strongest players on Barcelona. So it'll be interesting to see um, what she can bring to the table against some of her own kin. I'm not even going to try and pronounce her name. Alcaran looking very relaxed there on the bench. Barcelona looking a bit more concentrated on their Eine side. Noch. One minute. Torsten's just, I mean, uh, Thomas has just re-entered the commentator's booth uh, and he's uh, bought himself a nice little piece of merchandise. And it fits. Blue team, ready. White team, ready. Okay, we have to start. Both teams getting to the ball at just about the same time. I can't off to... First attack on goal, getting straight into it, no messing about there, <laughs> into the corner, grinding away, trying to pass the ball back out again. Barcelona looking quite confident in the defence, okay, now pass man back and the back reacts, a little bit too slow. Okay. I'm almost touching my lips. <laughs> 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 We've been breathing the pool air for way too long. And it's only half past <laughs> one. And we're streaming until 10 p.m. in the evening, Bobby. 14 hours of streaming. And we haven't even started using the chat boxes yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Barcelona come in for the first attack, but they get the ball stripped off them. I can't. Karen looking very confident uh, with the ball possession. Come in. Really? Oh, there we go. First goal. Blue goal, number 17. And I'm going to be quite interested 17, to see seven, if Akaran, compared to yesterday, can Blue kick goal. up their uh, game play or not. I just saw that uh, they lost to the Black Mermaids yesterday. Akaran was... Sorry, Akaren. A bit underwhelming yesterday. Mm. It is not what we are used to from our Norwegian champions. And um, I am going to be interested if they are going to show us their old former self uh, today or if they show us that they are just old. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's a bit harsh. Yeah. I think, uh, to no. the contrary, Akaren has a uh, lot of new yeah, younger yeah, players. Yeah. They brought a lot of young yeah. players. Um, and uh, yeah, so. It's going to be interesting to see how they develop the game plan uh, over the weekend. Mm. They have a really good mix of young and old, uh, young and uh, veteran players. Yeah. Uh, old, <laughs> but veteran players on experience. the experience, <laughs> players. Um, we're just so used to seeing them each each year uh, Dominate, over and over yeah. again. So, um, and we're also used to very assertive 
Molde-esque play style from Akaran as well, playing very similar, very yeah. open, uh, just leading the ball in one hand, being very fast, having those quick back and forth passes, mm. usually coming from above to onto the goalkeeper, trying to disrupt the game plan of the goalkeeper and passing downwards. So it's going to be interesting to see how oh. they approach this game against Barcelona, who <laughs> won oh. against Amaga yesterday. So, yeah, it's a, a, fun it's a really interesting year yep. uh, here at Champions Cup because, I mean, most years you can kind of look at the lineup and most of the places uh, you can kind of predict yep. with like 85% certainty. There's a few curveballs usually, but this year has been uh, yeah, just filled with curveballs. But what else I was going to say was that uh, we've been in Champions Cup for about 13 years, so since 2010, and I don't think our current has ever lost against Black Mermaid Five in that time. Five people under exchange. Bank. And they've played each other a lot, at least you know six or seven times in that period. So yeah, yesterday was um was an exciting win <laughs> for the Black Mermaids. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Them taking away the first seed from from Akaran yeah. in the group stage is certainly a big task they have accomplished. But Barcelona also playing really well yeah. this year. Having such tight competitive games and uh, also like a team against uh, Akaran where they are playing forward um, here against uh, certainly one of the top contenders mm -hmm. and last uh, year's title champion. I think you were absolutely correct before when you said uh, that the women's field this year has like really kind of closed up on itself yep. um, in a really oh good yeah, way. Again, a good Ooh. opportunity yep. for Akaran. Move the goalie from left coming in. Blue goal coming number in. 17. Number 17, Eli Haugen. 17, one seven. By Akaren. And I think what the female teams also have done very well this year is um, they have, um, especially the, uh, the not the top contenders, but the um, upcoming teams, um, they have learned to play more aggressively against yeah. those top teams, not just sitting back and defend. Mm. Um, fend for themselves, move into the half, give them a harder time uh, recovering the ball, um, just as well as um, learned how to neutralize uh, the effectiveness of their game plan to yeah. stop those fast break counter attacks that we usually like to see from Norway. Yeah. And also like we've seen in the last game, Vienna against Orcas, the Orcas, they're used to so playing their ball so fast around left and right and having those uh, plays that revolve around the triangle strategy moving across the pool and um, to be able to interrupt those game patterns that they have practiced yeah. so well and that were so efficient over the last years also is something that a that forces the top teams contending for the title to be more creative to yeah. evolve new strategies and to seek new ways of approaching game and keep the game evolving so in for the overall uh, development of the sport um, the teams uh, coming closer together and have more contenders, more teams who can move a bit of a lucky punch, take away a game. Is Ooh. superb for the game, but oh, and a good attempt here from Makaren. I think it's better like to that. to come in from above. Um, Talk, talking about creative strategies for scoring goals, I really like the one where you just slam the goal yeah. <laughs> down and hope there's a gap. <laughs> uh, you know the uh, Colombian uh, shoulder punch? Oh, yeah. One out of four times, yeah. Bobby. One out of four times. That's pretty good. Just take the ball, swim as fast as you can, and punch it onto the neck of the goalkeeper. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you might win a world championship with this it's technique. Hector Escobar, shout out to you. 2019. Is it a shoulder punch? It's more yeah. a ball punch. You punch the ball yeah, into the shoulder. Yeah, you punch the ball yeah. in the hole yeah. that is There's uh, no the in the non-existent hole in, <laughs> in the beginning yeah. of the goalkeeper. And... Yeah, it is certainly uh, the Orcas certainly have been one of those teams forcing others to be more creative over the last yeah. year. Ooh, there's Nakarin a gap. A good opportunity. Oh. One-on-one is the goalkeeper, but the goalie can get a hand onto the ball carrier. 
Moves up, good effort. Sneaky I think it was number uh, 30. 30. It was 38 then. There's a sneaky little push on, uh, on the goalkeeper from the other side as that player went up. I think uh, another big reason for why the field is kind of uh, tightened um, is that a lot of the mid-tier teams um, on the women's side, they really kind of uh, brushed up on the, you know, the basics, the fundamentals. Uh, just, you know, closing those uh, gaps and uh, silly mistakes uh, can really make a big difference. Uh, as well as um, getting those pumping irons in yeah. <laughs> week after week. Also certainly helps close those gaps up. Yeah. As the Australians can certainly tell a story about what's the Australian story? Pumping irons for one and a half years. <laughs> 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 Basically, on the one side, well done again by Akaren. Blue goal, it's number seven. Goal was Samurai's basket, Samurai stolen away, but it's an opportunity created. She could bring the ball up to Beladitia, winning, and then <laughs> nice. <laughs> with a little bit of a booty shove. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the hip it's smack. It's interesting when the goal is like semi stolen because, like, you know, where do you cross the line between pushing? Because yeah. you got there first and then they lay on top of you, and then you just kind of like the only re way you can stay down there is because they're on top of you. So you're kind of exerting a little bit of pressure on them, even though you don't have the ball. I think. Oh, oh there we go again. Another one. Yeah, another one. Lisbeth Hawksball coming in. Number six. The strike. Blue goal number yeah, six. You can see them now heavily attacking the goalkeepers, yeah. just ignoring the defenders underneath. They found their weak spot. And this is something the, the Norwegians really love to do if they if they see that the defense is solid, but the forwards, yeah, the forwards are aren't. now the ones that are really under pressure to support the goalkeepers. Yeah. And if you notice that the forwards are a bit of the weak spot, because yeah. quite often, um, especially on, on uh, upcoming teams, you put you your put inex most inexperienced yeah. spears as, as a forward position because um, you, if you want to defend properly, yeah. at least your defender or goalkeeper has to be solid in place at all times. And um, experienced teams certainly know how to. Uh, there's the halftime break already. There was a fast first half. Yeah. Experienced teams certainly know how to take this as an advantage attacking your goalkeepers. Yes. And usually against very strong teams with uh, very effective forwards. As an attacker, you don't get a lot of time attack attacking the goalkeeper. Mm. So the forwards are usually very quick to just shoot you down and yeah. uh, rip the ball away from you. Because the ball is also very exposed when you're attacking a goalkeeper. Yeah, but I think uh, there's two schools of thought on this. Because like teams, uh, they either always put the newer, less experienced players on as forwards or as goalkeepers. Yeah. And uh, you know, there's downsides to both. But um, I think if you put the inexperienced players as goalkeeper, it can be a little bit more obvious to mm. the uh, opposing team. Um, whereas the forwards, you know, if you have a strong defense, they can kind of cover up the gaps. But against a good team, you know, they, they work these things out eventually anyway. They, they're going to find your weaknesses. Yeah. Let's uh, have a look at the chat. Any interesting comments or questions? Maybe did Victor curse somebody? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can safely say that Victor is our super fan in the chat. Uh, Victor, what is your occupation <laughs> other than watching <laughs> underwater rugby if available? <laughs> Um, yeah, so shout out to everybody who's watching on the Water Rocky Wave House <laughs> throughout the entirety. <laughs> ha, we just saw a referee uh, try to make a uh, basketball shot with the ball and then he misses and he, uh, he shakes his head at himself. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> Another one. Again, another attempt. Is he going to go behind the line? Ball. No. <laughs> That's only a two-pointer. So, shout out to Jürgi Mutta <laughs> from Finland. Give it us a bit of a show during the halftime. There we see. But no cigar. 
uh, Karen very casually discussing a little bit of their, their game plan throughout the game, which so far has been working out really fine. And I think Barcelona as well. They will, of course, try to defend, but they will also be very aggressively now if they get the ball try oh. to move forward we see a, a so wales cap six players from in the water, australia please. or more the norwegian players where could that be from <laughs> in the water please A strong attack from McCarran, but Barcelona yeah, get the ball back. Barcelona, Ooh, good first very break. Quick fast break. Coming in, Go under one yes. for a moment. Oh. Defender coming in straight after her. That was doesn't have anybody else, but strong fast break for Barcelona. Very good attack. Mar Lesmeda. On the water, referee call. Oh, did this be a penalty? Ooh. What do we know? What do we see? What do we get? Exactly. <laughs> see the time. Tampa Bay is getting yeah. to me slowly. We see free ball white. Oh, free throw white. For wedging. What? We wedging? <laughs> free <laughs> white ball. Okay. That wedging surely should be a penalty. That is a very interesting call what? when you have a one on one situation. Yeah. Fast break. I've never seen that before. <laughs> uh. <laughs> shout out to all the other referees. Uh, <laughs> you might want to have a talk about this. A little bit of holding. <laughs> oh, Barcelona get the ball back. But... <laughs> okay. Can Akaran take the ball out and take it for a fast counter-attack here? No, Barcelona. Four checks are back. Oh, and it's a loose ball. Okay, Barcelona's just going to get it. If they can pass it off, they might have a good chance to attack a goal. Here we go. Let's see what they can do. Number 77 passes to number 14. There's a player waiting below, but she can't get the ball off. Oh, oh the goalie comes off the goal to grab the ball, but is intercepted as well. This is quite a bit of pressure that Barcelona manages, is managing to put on Akarun. Okay. Yeah, so Barcelona. Last, I can get some free space. Yeah, so we can okay. see what we've been talking before. Defense, not the main priority focus now. You're basically going for the last last stand defense and um, try to play Ooh. more offensively, gaining possession in, this, in, in your opponent's half. And you see Akron able to execute a, a fast break, but then again, if you swoop in the last time, Maybe sometimes it goes wrong, sometimes it works out, but... <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> so sometimes it does work out, sometimes it doesn't, but at the end, those times uh, it works out for you, you have a really good feeling coming back into the game. Again, Haaland trying to move in, fast break opportunity yet again for mm. Norway. Holding on to the ball in the close corner. Nice Good pass. pass to the right. Defender in the back goal, gets position it. In the back, yeah. Oh. Yet again, on the left of the basket. Does have a... Uh, does have oh, a... Oh, now dangerous very good moment. Opportunity no for back, Norway. and it's in. Yep. Good success. Good session. Of Blue goal uh, number four. Attack waves from Norway and... Uh, Blue goal Norway number Ireland. four. I think Coming we're... What happens sometimes when uh, you get these waves of attacks is that um, Time you create chaos with the backs white. and then the backs instead of staying down for like, you know, Time 10 seconds, out they go white. up after 5 seconds because you put so much pressure on them and then that's how you create these gaps in the defense that allows you to have like these one-on-one -on -one attacks against the goalie. But also, um, something that you can see like in this case, like this, situation like this, like this, you wouldn't have your player be, if your player be, player be positioned uh, a little bit differently underneath and have a strong single push up on the goalkeeper rather than 
pulling her up yeah. uh, around the waist. Ideally, but that Ideally. was a one on one. We see a few players on the bench of Akaran. You can tell that just from looking at that. Um, it's a much younger team than in previous years. So I guess 2023 is a year for renewal for many of the European teams here. Timeout's over. Yeah, I think it is, we've seen so many teams with a very similar lineup over the last, mm. I'd say, five to ten years. Yeah. Um, especially on the very successful teams. And um, now more and more, we've seen glimpses of um, the new generation over the last years. We have seen Morgan yeah. bring a couple of new players and young players in. And now we, for the first time in a, in a longer stretch of underwater rugby, really overall feeling a little bit of a, a, a time of renewal where teams mm. bring young new players in who are, but who are competing on a, on a high level, like you've yeah. seen Alisson, for instance, yeah? who's got, I would love to see um, how old the Alisson lineup is um, on average, and then on average, if you take Marius out. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Marius, <laughs> we love you. Um, <coughs> So this is always quite an interesting experiment to see how well can a team compete. Um, Ooh, another goal once again from an attack on the goal. Blue goal, goal on the number goal. four. Blue goal, the goal. number it four. And it was the goal at the end, so. Might have been her own, actually. Wait, how, how do, where is that fin coming from? <laughs> I can't work it out. There's too many arms and legs <laughs> waving around. Finn's coming from Finland. <laughs> oh. Oh. Cringe. Yep. We need a soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been talking. We, do we don't have a soundboard yet, and the uh, tech team, we were a bit disappointed here in the commentator's booth. The soundboard is still missing, and we would love Water to have our flipper call. sound for the next game. And some uh, standing on the ledge. Some sounds for jokes and that fall the flat. And white free ball <laughs> standing on the ledge. Maybe a tiny violin sound as well. Yeah, or um, like a um, cicada surfing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. This that's the proper <laughs> one. That's the proper one. Go back white. Yeah, but summing up, we really appreciate teams bringing new younger players or new players in and. If you see a team that has a very low average age competing on a very high level, yeah. that's that is the best sign you can have for your for team and for your nation to be successful over the next decade. Yeah. <coughs> Especially in the water rugby where play players do play up into I just want to say their 60s. Some of the players uh, here are in the 50s and 60s. So <coughs> keeping yourself fit surely pays off. Akaren. I think Akaren also showing today that uh, they have brushed up their game plan quite quite a bit and they look way more solid than yesterday. Compared to when they played the Black Mermaids. Yeah. I mean, it is it is a... We've now seen quite valid comparison between having teams that all, all go 1-0 against each other, yeah. having open games. Um, <coughs> but then again, something that we al already also discussed uh, a couple of times in other water rugby specifically, um, as soon as a team reaches a certain difference in competitivity, um, scoring becomes comparatively easy. Yeah. And the difference between going 1-1 one on one one as a result and going 5-6-0 is actually not that big of a difference. So you often notice as soon as a top team, a contender for the title, is not playing at their best and at their strongest, yeah. immediately some other teams become rather competitive yeah. against them and can take away a game from them. I think they down, shouldn't be able to do if playing with the team. I think Malmö Vienna could be a good example of that. You know, if you have Malmö on the best day and Vienna, on, you know, on an OK day, you could see like a 5-0 score.
the mystery of a missing coffee pot. <laughs> Akeren, one and a half minutes to go against Barcelona. Akeren, clearly the more pressing team, going up 6-0 here against Barcelona. Leave your hands alone away from the, key, the opponent's head. Don't touch the opponent's head. Okay, yep. so we have Free a ball white. Don't touch yeah. the opponent's head. Finally, ref saying it. <laughs> There's a bit of a difference in philosophy on um, where the head begins, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and where I mean, the neck ends. <coughs> some players have longer necks than others. <laughs> yeah. And some players have bigger yep. heads. <laughs> some necks extend up yeah. to uh, extend so far. But then, uh, as you were saying before in the other game, like you know, in, in German rules, the referees like they don't like it when you touch even the cap. But, you know, some players have much bigger caps than others. Like, some players' caps go down to the neck, other caps, you know, end uh, a lot earlier. So, it's I always, th there's th always a lot of interpretation there. Yeah. I'd say the difference maker is if you use the cap uh, to get a grip on the head. Yeah. And uh, it is starting to look a lot more oh, like Nice fast equipment. break from number 13. The current team from Aurora Haglund. But Barcelona still in the last minutes of the game doing a very good job yeah. defending against Akkara. End of game. I think another End thing game. you notice is that the scores don't blow out as much as, I mean, we already said this, but um, what used to happen a lot between you know, teams that were one is stronger than the others, it takes them, you know, maybe five, six minutes to get the first goal, but after the first one or two goals, then they start getting goals yeah. every minute or two. Um, so this didn't happen in this game. Uh, I think the goals came quite consistently and, yeah. uh, and the Barcelona defense held up um, as well as it could throughout the whole game. So props to them. And they were competitive in the midfield and uh, even went on the attack and had some uh, very uh, good and dangerous moments too. So well done to both teams. The most sophisticated hairstyle here at the Champions Cup. Arvid of Torte going for an interview. And basically a shout out to everybody here at the Champions Cup who is making this tournament uh, possible <coughs> over the entirety of this weekend. See how many people are watching. Yeah. Trying to solve the mystery of the missing teapot. <laughs> going across the pool. But we have, of course, the next game coming up. And it is. I think it's still the last game of the group stage at this point. Let me get the result check in. We are having 2 p.m. Amaga versus Black Mermaids. So this game, interestingly enough, Amaga won 6 0 versus Barcelona. How do you feel? To um, Akaren. Then uh, Akaren lost to uh, the Black Mermaids. And now we could have a good old love triangle. <laughs> I just wanted to interview Eli, but she was too shy. She scored the first two goals and was immediately, so like you could see that it opened uh, the game. To, uh, you came Barcelona. into it, so you started a bit weak, but then a 6 0, was it expected or is it also a surprise for you? Uh, no, we, we played against uh, Barcelona and also Spain uh, a lot from the national team. And, and we know that we, when we can have that high intensity, we can, uh, can get a lot of goals. Uh, but we talked a lot about it, the mentality and get the brutality and Eli is the number one on our team there. Very cool, very good. Thanks a lot and congratulations and see you soon. All right. Um, there was a little bit of an interview here with uh, number 21. From Akaren, Christina Nergaard. Now we're moving into the next game.
should be starting in a minute or so. Do we have the right numbers here for Akaran? No, oh, sorry, for Amaga. Hmm. I think there should be uh, we have somebody 33. Well change to cut number, I guess, from 24. And 95 to, well, it might just look like a 20. Minus. Danish numbers are difficult, you know. <laughs> Danish number systems are so different. Danish language is difficult, Danish numbers are difficult. They just don't like easy peasy lemon squeezies. Yep. Denmark is surely known for the toughest uh, lifestyle you can have. <laughs> Hola. Did you already Hola. post our uh, Monster Energy application? Sponsoring application? <laughs> I think Anika might have. Got to check with our social media crew. What was uh, Winnie doing there with the bucket in the water? <laughs> that was <laughs> oddly inexplicable. <laughs> A very valiant attempt of cleaning the pool out <laughs> from the water. <laughs> Okay. Looks like we have moments in the start of the next match. Yeah. Ready? So, ready. game starting up. Teams are getting ready. And off we go. That was instantaneous. <laughs> so, this game in blue. Amarga on the border rugby from Denmark versus in white the Black Mermaids from southern Sweden. There you go. Inside knowledge by our very own Bobby Simmons here in the commentator booth. Oh, looks like a dangerous situation there. Created by Margo. The forwards, Black Mermaid, kind of struggling to lock up the ball. Yeah, I think we have. Possibly Tina there on Black Mermaids with the ball fighting against two players in Malaga. Now it's one on one. It's very hard as a defender to kind of know what to do in these situations because um, you don't know which way the ball is going to go. Should you stay in defense or should you go out and support? But Malma, or sorry, Black Mermaids, they've chosen to uh, play it safe in defense. which means that the forwards trying to win back the ball aren't getting as much support on the surface. But maybe it's time to push them out, do a cow falc. <laughs> they tried to do the <laughs> one on them and then um, give them the ball and then okay. give them a reverse, Uno reverse card on the sideline. Here we go. They have the ball now, almost. Something I'm always surprised about is uh, the Marga team, they're not the biggest uh, players, but they're extremely good at wrestling for the ball. We have An Sophie, I believe, taking the ball out to the side. And now we have a very dangerous situation. Could be shown in the basket, possibly. Good attack by Elin Strand <coughs> against the Amarga basket. But Amarga is so far able to defend. On Sophie coming in hot. 15, I believe that's Lynn Anderson. Well, 
Melma? I mean, <laughs> I keep saying Melma. Black Mermaids, um, which has players from all over Southern Sweden, not just Melma. Um, but they do have a core of the is team. That is it a bit of a mix, mix club? It is, yeah, because um, there's not that... I mean, yeah, it's a mix of players from um, maybe three or four clubs in Southern Sweden. Ah, um, okay. That's why they couldn't decide on the city. <laughs> but what country is Black Mermaid? <laughs> It's its own principality. Yeah, it's the Swedish piracy club, yeah. I'd say. <coughs> Southern Sweden okay. Pirates. Okay, Amar gets the ball back. Amar now with a fast break opportunity against Sweden, but defense in place, forward already here, but had to move back from the entire other side, and now uh, losing ball though in front of the basket, so giving them time to exchange. Opting to keep the ball in their own ranks, trying to set up a bit of a gameplay here. At your opponent's half. Yeah, good punch from the backside. Slap. Slap. That's the being called for the punch now. Hmm? Attack in the head, wide free throw. Yeah, okay. Attack in the head, wide free throw. Maybe packing a bit too much for punch. Yeah. It's been what, like about four years now since they changed the rules so that punching is not allowed? Yep. Something like that? Uh, punching, uh, punching the ball specifically, uh, often uh, a bit of a tournament regulation as well. So there are some tournaments that are specifically allowed, like the yep. Amateur Rugby League. Um, but in general, on the CMS ruling, um, punching the ball not allowed anymore as it poses way too much of a risk of injuring a player in the process and also very hard to judge for the refs mm. if the player was going for the ball or not. Yeah. I've heard that uh, this rule in particular has gone back and forth throughout the years. Like it's yeah. at least twice gone Hold back and forth. Why free throw? Uh, it was Holding. very common when players were carrying the ball very openly and yeah. holding it up front so punching the ball was just a very easy way to get it out. Then players opted to put the ball uh, more closely um, uh, and tuck it in very tightly, like a bit of a football grab. Yep. And um, some players even opted to carry the ball very close to their head, so punching the ball immediately, yep. or quite often resulted in a time penalty. So, but I think that's the thing. Like uh, the way players play, always adapts to the rules to try and get the most out of the rules. Absolutely. Oh, here we have a very dangerous attack here for the like the black <laughs> Yeah, there we yeah. go. There is the attempt on Black Mermaid. Number. See them coming Number from above. I think she passes it. Uh, think she Who made the goal, please? Ready. Who made well the goal? Done. Number. Number five. White. She doesn't pass. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just a smash. <laughs> only smash. Yeah. She only knows one button. <laughs> only one direction. Do you feel younger if you're using youth words from 2017? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Black Mermaid's picking up the pace here quite a bit. Um, I gotta be honest, I did underestimate the Black Mermaids a little bit coming into the tournament because over the last years they have not been the most competitive, especially not in Champions yeah. Cup. Often bringing a bit of younger players, um, then missing some players. Yeah. In the meantime, the Gansofi has just come back rather, rather recently yeah. uh, into the underwater rugby scene. And um, so, for me, there was a bit of an X factor. I think that's the story of uh, underwater rugby in Sweden more generally over the last 10 years. Um, you know, there was a real big gap where they didn't have very many youth players and there weren't uh, sort of very much new talent coming through. And uh, that's only kind of started to change up a gear these last two, three years, mm. actually. So uh, the Malmö Triton team uh, on the men's side, um, they have uh, quite a few more young players uh, now. Uh, I mean, Edvin is kind of one of those uh, change of the guard players. Do you yourself consider, do you consider yourself one of the younger players? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the annoying thing is there are young players who are, you know, in their early 20s who have played longer than I have. <laughs> it does happen sometimes, yes. 
I mean, you look at these teams actually look quite evenly matched, yeah. back and forward. But it's sometimes it's just about you know which team can capitalize. You know, I think one of Amaga's biggest weakness is their team coordination. Right. Um, they have very strong individual players, yeah. physically tough players, and they've seen it over and over again. Those single players can take over a game. Yeah. But as we've seen, especially during this Champions Cup, um, individuality and individual strength has taken a step back, and especially Ooh. the mid the mid tier teams have improved a lot in terms of team coordination. Yeah. And not being able to match this kind of team coordination um, and still relying on a more heavily um, sole player yeah. uh, approach, even if you don't want to, but it might be a lack of practice. It might also be that you're only practicing uh, with the men's team together, so you're yeah. not really used to play as a full women's team. But uh, or it might be a lot different. Uh, yeah. By team coordination, do you just mean the players you know, aren't supporting each other? You know, in the right angles at the right time. Uh, it ti in timing is one one yeah. big issue. The other thing is um, taking respons responsibility at the proper yeah. time. And I think, especially for upcoming female teams who do practice a lot with men, a lot of female players opt to take a step back when it yeah. comes to offensive yeah. responsibility. And then when they play in a women's game, they have they do the same patterns. Yeah. Yeah. And. So when, it, when they play as a fully female team, yeah. they have a bit of an issue to initiate the plays, yeah. um, have players in proper positions because they are so used to practicing with men who take up yeah. those slots on their team. They're used to passing to the player who's going to score yeah. rather than being the player to take the ball in themselves. I mean, you can see here on both teams, possibly more so on the Black Mermaids than the Marga team. Uh, in the Black Mermaids, there's only really three or four players who uh, go in for the yeah. ball, um, whereas on the Amaga team, I think there's slightly a few more players in that team who are willing to go in for the ball against a, a full defense. The, the thing is that we also try to teach uh, the, the younger players is you do not have to be the superhero that does everything on their own. Yeah. And especially when it comes to um, attacking a goal, quite often the first attempt does not result yeah. in a score. The second and the third wave and the consistency and being able to come in again and again, this is what uh, gets it yeah. forward. And especially for young players, what you can teach them is try it once. If you don't succeed initially, don't keep going and get locked up and yeah. uh, by the defenders. Go in. If you get get a slot, try try a pass, try a quick movement, pull out again. Yeah. And then get the second wave going. Keep the ball amongst your players. Get back to the corner. And then keep it going keep and try to get into a rhythm, get into a flow. And um, quite often, uh, this way, you get a very good uh, feeling for when an attack is successful, when you can deliver a ball to a certain slot, and when you have to remove yourself yeah. from defense, and when you have to rotate, get back to your team rotations and uh, playing and circling the ball around. So, those are. And also for those watching who might not know the sport as well, those are some really important fundamentals of underwater rugby, um, how to structure your offense, how to be able to dominate uh, an opponent potentially. And we see it on the top teams very, very easily. If, if you look at them, like, like the Orcas women's team, for instance, who have a very significant, um, very visual passing patterns where yeah. they pass the ball and cycle the ball around to keep them amongst their own players and how they support each other and uh, those things are the those those perfections of basic game patterns in the end are the most stable fundamentals you can have for a team to be successful i think what we were just saying about you know being able to go in with the ball not necessarily score but just you know create a lot of chaos around the goal and keep hold of the ball while you do that um, the flipper is the only team i know of that you know has specialized players whose yeah. role it is to go in with the ball and create chaos. I don't think I know any other team that, you know, Instant has that as a... Yeah. <laughs> like an ass rocket, but on the fair... Fire starters. Fire starters, yeah. Yeah. Fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> Fire starter. <laughs> yeah, we need a bit of good old techno in here. Um, 
Yeah, so Black Mermaids versus Amager, very evenly matched Hola. game so far. Yeah. I'd say Black Mermaid had a bit of a more solid uh, game state for them so far. Amaga Ready? getting scored out, of course, Ready? now on the back foot, have to take a bit more risk. So we'll see how they will approach the second half. Black Mermaid comes out strong. Let's see if they go into the goal straight away. where we put all the big guys into the swim off and just one really fast <laughs> player and he was trying to get the ball get it to a big big guy on the right side and he was just tanking himself steam <laughs> shipping <one>. yeah okay <laughs> we have a counter attack by Margo with three players but the black moment defense is already in place i think black moments are playing definitely a lot more conservative now it's conservatively now that they're in the lead they're not four checking in the middle as much, just going straight back to defense. And it also depends on what your team is really comfortable with. I mean, we've, we see with uh, the Danish players quite often that they are very comfortable letting players approach their goal yep. and then have their forwards picking off yeah. the attackers very close to the basket. And just in time defense. Yeah, and tactics like this also can save a lot of energy for a team. But in yeah. this case, the defender is missing now. For Sweden's I only think goalkeeper. That's the defender with the ball. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Now I'm a little bit worried about the Black Mermaids. There were a lot of players just on the surface before. Yeah. Oh, we have a dangerous situation. Uh, the, the back basket, is blocked off. Blocked oh. Off. Attack on oh. the goalkeeper from above. Trying to toss it in. No goalie no in place. Goalie. Chaos. But she doesn't okay. see it behind her. Ooh. Could have been a great opportunity from number 18, Anna Franzen. But did not notice that the goalie behind her was missing. Could have just slipped it in behind her. But. Okay, now we have a counter by Black Mermaid. Here's the ball. Number 15, Lean Anderson. Now takes the ball to the corner. Forwards are very active, like forward checking very far out, but also doing it quite effectively. So that the uh, Black Mary team. Uh, this is where a lot of trouble. This is where a lot of their individual strength yeah. comes into play. Yeah. As a forward, if you're a power forward mm. who is used and knows how to yeah. attack aggressively, certainly something that helps out the team a lot. Okay, now we have uh, again nice setup yes. for Amaga. Ball dropped in front of basket. Ooh, five answer drops deep. down and yet oh, again a good opportunity. Oh. Goalkeeper's exchange though. Does get a grip onto the goalkeeper. Ooh, couple oh. of kicks, couple of kicks there, but that no arm from the ref extended. So getting a bit smacked in the face with some fins. Who doesn't love it? Just got a casual violence. Yeah. Amaga with a very solid stretch yeah. of attacks onto the Black Mermaid basket. Ooh. Oh, coming in for off. And there we go. And we said it over and over again. Amaga having those individual players who can just come in with a lot of punch yeah. and force and attacking the goalkeeper from above. Number two. Bernil Jensen. What goal? Coming in oh. for Amaga. Goal equalizing number here. Two. Blue. And now we have a tied matchup. So, holy love triangle between the Scandinavians <laughs> might be possible. Though Amaga, I think, lost to Barcelona. So, so, so actually, it's a bit of a problem for Sweden now because the point differential with the other teams would put uh, Akira in the game. But now Sweden coming in. Call. There's no back there. Black 
Marmaid playing it conservatively, waiting for the players. Ooh, Ooh, nice going. pass. Nice pass to the right, defender on position. Linda. Something can she pass it over to Linda? Boards really doing a great job on the Marga team. Panilla again, the ball not going straight for the goal. Wearing the scary shark shirts. <laughs> Coming in again. Yet again, oh, an attack right on the goalkeeper. Goal. Tried to get a good grip, but forwards doing a good job now. Removing her. <coughs> Being pulled up. And second wave coming in. Block still being set, but the defender in between. That's a bit of a basic rule. Do not give your block the ball because the defender is yeah. right <laughs> behind. Okay, Black Mermaids, get the ball back, but instantly locked up in front of the end goal. Okay, number 14 in the next round. So three, about three and, three, three and a half minutes to go. Second half, an equal tie game. Uh, games on the Champions Cup do not end in a tie. They will always result in a penalty shootout. And they will be. Uh, this is a new rule, right? Because in previous years, I think you had ties in the group stages. Uh, yeah, but it does, it does make contention so much more difficult at the end of the day. So. Yeah. And with the just one penalty, one on one penalty rule, it actually does finish quite quickly mm. most of the time. A3, a Marga team doesn't find any support, is alone. That's such a shame. Yeah. <laughs> she spammed so hard to get the ball to the other side by herself. So it looks like both teams are pretty tired by now. Maybe the market team a little bit Ball so out of bounds, referee ball. Ball out of bounds for referee ball. It's a good old classic. Like they starting a <laughs> counter-attack and might exchange. Time now. out, <laughs> blue team. Time out, blue team. Yeah, they're tired. They're market yeah, team. Yeah, absolutely. Out of bounds. And referee you ball. you got to be honest, everybody who's played those tournaments, I think those teams have been playing four or five games now in a stretch of yeah. two days. Some teams starting out very early in the morning yesterday and today. Some teams play at 10 o'clock yesterday in the evening. So, um, especially among those, those games on a high level, they all had close games. They take such a toll on your body over, yeah. over a weekend. And they didn't have 11 players as well. Yeah. And um, one shouldn't underestimate, even though it is just yep. two Nobody times 10 minutes of play time. Um, having so many games in such a short it. stretch of time with yeah. very, very little uh, time to recover. You know, it's so the to warm ups as well, and the yeah. stress and the yeah. adrenaline, and the, you know, not having the normal that you normally yeah. would have. And all the players who've also played the World Championship know yep. having one game a day is, is pretty much all right, but having two games a day at a World Cup two minutes. It really two takes a toll on your body if it, if it happens one two days in a row. So yeah. I think Champions Cup two games today is fine. But World Cup, well, you know, yeah. two times 15 minutes effective time. But at the Champions Cup they have three and up to four games a yeah. day, so... They try not to have four. Yeah. But yeah, if you, if you get lucky or winning groups or losing groups depending on where you were seated mm. during the preliminary rounds it might happen yeah okay. but uh, black mermaids Amaga equal game tie game at the moment it's been very equal especially the full checking part yes Sarah that is Bobby hey Mecca shout out how are you like in Sydney to Aussie out of bounds, blue, free throw. Day for it. 
<laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't think of Sarah without uh, <laughs> saying day for it. <laughs> They've got inside jokes here on the chat. No, it's not, it's not really. It's just a day for it is something uh, Aussies uh, tend to say a lot, but particularly uh, Maka. Uh, okay. Kind of a catchphrase at this point. Pretty much, yeah. Out of yeah, bounds, you have been throwing it. Uh, back, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is so not okay. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. Back into the game, 33 seconds to go, and Amaga tries to push onto the. Mermaids pass go mermaids now. Break away from the mermaids, but no support. <laughs> yeah, we can see <laughs> counter tech initiated, <laughs> but the, mermaid, the goal is going that. Nah, I'm gonna go back to the goal. Yeah. We are gonna go to penalties. I don't care for for <laughs> for my fast break here. And now she's gotta go forward anyways. With this could penalties. have been you the entire time, but <laughs> 15 more seconds to go. Oh man, it's gonna be penalties. <laughs> Penalty shootout. Are you excited for penalties, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> but the most pressing question is, Bobby, who would you support in the game between Australia and Sweden? Uh, we've, we've done this before. <laughs> Do you not remember in uh, the World Championships in yeah. Stavanger? No. Also, also no, sorry, no. Oh, Montreal. Can no. Montreal, no, not Montreal. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up no, when uh, the Aussie ones. women. Uh, played Swedes. Number four in the world, girls. <laughs> <laughs> so you hardly start remember. <laughs> <laughs> but your brain is in Sweden. Yeah, I mean, it's it's when, uh, it's maybe it'll be a different story when uh, Sweden decides to give me my uh, Swedish citizenship. Oh, yeah. They're now, uh, they're now off my game. Still a, still a bit <laughs> hesitant. Yeah. Penalty shootout, please. Blue starts. We're gonna if do you want all the. You have to let him be a citizen. On this side. Yeah. Let's take a little bit back for a bargaining chip. Yep. The attacker. Blue Otherwise attacker, please. Otherwise, can move to Vienna, the best city in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Most unfriendly people. <laughs> White defender, please. Most honest people, Bobby. We're just the most honest people. Number right. two is the one that attacks. Blue is awarded the first shot. Where Number white three is, is the, the first defense. Defender. Let's call it awarded. <laughs> they have to defend first. So we have Pernil, Jensen, and Ready? Strand going against each other. And we'll see who will get away. It's uh, Linda Carlson, actually. It should be. The, the Number numbers were lying to us. Oh, uh, was it? We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, the good old, yeah. good old pull. Ooh. Yeah. I think it's quite funny Goal number two. penalties for women, especially, yeah. that a lot of female goalkeepers opt to go straight onto the basket, basket rather, in rather than in front of yeah. the basket and trying to White use the yeah. blue defender, the legs please. Uh, to block players away. And especially in the early parts of the penalty, defender. as you see right now, yeah. if the other player is just getting the, the basket underneath the basket for free. Yeah. You can. You have all the time in the world to do a White hip 14, pull. Uh, blue 11. The most unflattering oh. way to be scored on. We have an interesting penalty throw here from Ian Strand for Black Mermaids against uh, Mariana Heiden, who's one of the most experienced players in Denmark. And yeah. On the uh, Marga team. Ready. So, and Alien is also one Ready? of the most experienced players on the Black Mermaid team. So this is a real clash of the titans here. All right. There we go. Also, Ooh, yeah, very tricky. My, my <laughs> Mariana opting to, well, I mean, still kicking. Oof, that's yeah, at vicious. this point in time, uh, <laughs> now locking <laughs> around okay. her head. That is a nice, yeah. but well done very by Ellen to keep her free. Yeah. Goal 14. A playing on the limits. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I think the referees would have thought that if it wasn't uh, goal. Number uh, five. Yeah, but white especially defender. in a case like this, lift off your. As a ref, put your arm up if you see something. Yeah. yeah. And 
Five. give the player the advantage signal yeah. at this point in time. Anyway, blue. great job. Well done, right. well Alien Strand. So we are going 1-1. One, one. Ready? Mm. Also, Ansofi opting to go straight up yeah. onto the basket. Oh. Yet again. Oh! oh! Nice! Yes! Oh, come on, Ansofi! <laughs> Ansofi Kaka coming up with the defense. Okay. And there, there we've wow. seen the Danish player who push up against the teams in them. Are we getting the defense? I mean, from this angle, she White was well, attacker. She she wasn't too far away, so yeah. they should be defended, yeah. Oh, that ball. I think it was, it was like half similar. No similar tum similar tumbler, yeah. yeah. One um, more. We need one more. Yeah. Being the player from Amaga. Um, the thing is, and we've been talking about it throughout the last day, yeah. throughout all the penalties, do not take the first attempt no. because this is a trap. And Anzofi certainly is one of those experienced players. Yeah. If they're being removed Number very four, lightly defender, blue. Yeah, or easily, it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> they want to give the chance one. to shoot the ball and eight. then use their yeah. arms and be, use their quickness to get a hold onto the ball and then be able to defend. Ready? Always take the second shot. Yeah. All right. Attacking Monica Grunditz versus Dina Iverson. <laughs> Dina kind of has her shoulder in the basket. <laughs> See the good old hip tuck. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that's nice, that's good methodical. Goal number eight, yeah. why? Why, why Russia? I, I always suffer when players opt to why go straight team? onto the Wait. basket yeah. rather than I agree with using you. their entire body to yeah. defend for the... Because it's so much easier to just use your legs to yeah. keep the players apart. Yeah. And I think a lot of defenders are taught that the attackers will come from above. Yeah. And especially in a small pool like this, I will go straight underneath if I yeah. get the chance to, because the way you have to dive down as a goalkeeper and get adjusted, and the time you need for adjustment mm. is pretty much the same time you have when you go straight yeah. full blast as a forward onto the basket. So, well done by Sweden here, and with, with this they take away the first seed wow. in their group. Who, who do they play next, you know? Um, they play Stuttgart uh, as the okay. second seed from the other group. This is going to be a very interesting... Yep. Uh, the playoffs for the women. happy the Black Mermaids are in the background now. <laughs> Absolutely. This has uh, been a dream run for them so far. This has been a really good tournament so far, yeah. I'm not sure if they, if they came into this tournament um, expecting <laughs> to win groups here this weekend. I think they probably had modest expectations, or given, you know, something... Here with uh, Anne-Sophie uh, yeah, yeah, from uh, Black Mermaids from Sweden. You won! This game, how excited are you? Very excited. You not <laughs> only have three wins, yeah. so it's super. <laughs> and uh, not only you won, you even scored and defended even the final penalty. How's this? Yes, I did. <laughs> no, it's super. Like it's really the team that push, pushes a lot and creates a lot of good opportunities, and then who finally scores? Like it happened to be me, it's but really it's really a game, a team effort. Yeah. So. So we're really happy for you also, and we wish you a lot of luck for your last game and for the group stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Are you okay? Both teams ready. <laughs>
Next game, Milly is starting up. Vienna against Barcelona. Vienna with the first push, but Barcelona back in possession of the ball. Going, trying to get straight up to the Vienna's basket. Defense in position for Vienna initially. Barcelona playing a very strong tournament so far. We'll see how they will match up against the team from Vienna. Barcelona with a very fast-paced play style. Vienna today with a bit more of a controlled, grindy play style. We'll see how those two teams can match up against each other in this tournament. Yeah, Vienna trying to move forward. Barcelona forward doing a good job. Disrupting Viennese players. You can see them coming in. Strong attack from behind by number 28. Daniel Jimenez, but not a call by the ref. And it's against Vienna. We've seen Barcelona with two very quick executions of free throws so far. Steal away the basket. Ah, took the way to defender's position. Now Barcelona coming in from the close side of the basket. Players to the left. Nobody available on the right, but can bring the ball back out. Good attempt. Good first attempt by Miguel Castro. Scrum in the middle of the pool. Barcelona coming out ahead with the ball. Moving in yet again onto the Austrian basket. And going position. Second wave coming. Forward trying to disrupt. Three and a half minutes played. Trying to pull the defender to the left. Barcelona players positioning themselves on the Vinis basket, but when you have too many players at the basket, sometimes it's difficult to bring the ball close enough. We'll see how their game plan evolves. Ooh, well done, Jano Wiesner trying to get the ball away. Now, ah, good, good follow up. Andreas Edmeyer. Handle trying to keep the ball for Vienna. Coming in, Andy Pell trying to go in from above. Hartner locked up though on the left side. Always dangerous to be scrummed up on the left side of the pool. Exchange area very close. Have to bring the ball back to the right. Coming in again. This Pell trying to force something onto the Austrian goal. Austria trying it to, to play a bit more smoothly. Being a little bit more contained and oh, good snatch away by I think it was Captain Carlos, but you can see immediately attacked by Barcelona going for the fast break. Defenders in position. Both defenders underneath. Need to exchange quickly now. Moving out, defender now not in position, has to move in. Oh, the goal stolen away by Barcelona, though the ball being hopefully locked up. Benjamin dropping down, can he pick it up? Being handled back and forth, Kinderman. Holding, white free throw, holding. White free throw, holding. White free throw, so 
bit of relief for Vienna after good attacks, stretch of attacks for Barcelona, creating a dangerous situation around the Viennese basket. How is the volume to this? Heart rate is going up. <laughs> <laughs> might be a caffeine, might be the gameplay, might be both. Not on squirrel level yet, <laughs> but uh, getting close, getting close. Thomas and I are literally surviving off uh, monster energy drinks and, um, and coffee here. <laughs> Listen, not so much in terms of food. We need to do something about that. There, there's more coming, there's okay. more coming. Good. All right, Austria trying to go in. Heinz Rubit trying to force himself into the defense of Barcelona. Ooh, good attack. No, it is not over now. Coming in, trying to shove up the goalkeeper, going for the, the shoving call against Austria. Um, Blue free throw. Thomas sounds skeptical. Interesting call if the guy shoving is the one with the ball. <laughs> 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 but maybe there was something on the other side yeah. that we missed. Missed. It's always uh, as as a a player who's just trying to keep and hold on to a position. If you are having the ball in a dangerous situation on the basket, just just don't. Uh, it, it, the ref see it. It really helps. And now a good opportunity oh, for nice. oh, he for Barcelona. Out. They brought the ball to the corner. The corner. Yeah, defender. Ah, oh. Marcek picking it out. Do they get a fast break? Can they, can they move over the entire way? But good effort by Barcelona, locking up pass. Ah, oh, it's a bit of a <laughs> responsibility, but pass. But he might have been out of breath and just needed to go up. It's a hospital. Pell, yeah. yeah. Do you have that term? Uh, hospital pass? Yeah, it's it actually it's uh, coined by football players, American football players. <laughs> the hospital pass <laughs> when a quarterback does give you a ball and. Mm, Fully knowing, fully well knowing Number that you will be destroyed <laughs> by somebody <laughs> who's just sprinting up to you. Attacking the head. Wide free throw. Wide free throw. So attacking, attacking the head. The head. Wide free throw. And there might be a warning here against uh, Barcelona. But I think it's a very good thing that uh, those attacks on the head and uh, those yeah, unnecessary roughnesses are being called out by the refs, and also. Uh, ah, against number 22 there. And also I think it is very important... Also think it's very important um, for refs to use uh, warnings yeah. um, as, early as, possible. as early as possible and also <coughs> against teams if they see s very small fouls that keep on continuing but yeah. they don't want to disrupt the flow of the game. It's usually the best thing to give a warning, issue a warning against an entire team so that they know the refs are seeing what they're doing, stop the behavior, yeah. otherwise you're gonna get punished uh, heavily I for it. One issue I've had at, in a lot of tournaments, including some World Cups, um, is that the refs can be a little bit inconsistent when they give a, a team warning and when they, you know, it's play warning. Yeah. 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 yeah, even if, if I'm refing myself, um, uh, I usually like to start off with a player warning if you see a continuous behavior, of yeah. course, from a single player. But now, Barcelona moving in. I feel like there should also maybe be some kind of responsibility oh, on the protocol table. Yeah. You know, when they see two or continuous three behaviors, yeah. Breaks. Warning yeah. issued. So, like, could be a, an effective job for a video referee to yeah. have continuous behavior. To yeah, to observe continuous behavior because the refs in the water they oh don't okay. have the capacity to memorize who has been fouling in what kind of way. Usually, that ledge looks a little bit dangerous there. Yeah. <laughs> no player specific oh nice. on left side, but oh good effort by the forward Jan Kinnaman getting he possession ball back really well. Uh, egg oh trying to move nice. ball forward, but good attack okay. by. But Barcelona as well, swarming the forward, plays exchanging now, oh, but the ball taken already the ball. taken away. And it's three seconds to go in the first half. Yeah. Well, that was a very fast first half, holy moly. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's just my heart rate, maybe it's the <laughs> clock, I am not entirely sure, <laughs> but... Uh, did uh, Vienna have any good opportunities? They had one very good scoring opportunity, but uh, it was uh, broken up by uh, the one where they got a shoving called. Oh, right. I only saw the one, I only saw the ball carrier shoving, so non-biased commentator in the booth. We're literally cycling here between drinking Can you fix the basket, please? And 
water. Can you pick the basket? Sparkling. <laughs> Annika, contain yourself. We love you as our social media official, but... <laughs> We see, we see what you're typing in the uh. chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because she did a bike ride yeah. from uh, somewhere in Germany to Barcelona. I think she, she generally knows a lot of the Spanish players. Okay. Yeah. Does she speak Spanish? Probably. At least good enough to play to ride Time Ramos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, half time. And we'll see if there are going to be any exchanges on the teams. Or not. Maybe Vienna will love to bring hands forward. Not sure yet. The Vienna seems to be talking a lot, whereas the Spanish are just. Oh no, they're also talking. So, I mean, the teams have been rather evenly matched. Mm. Barcelona, I'd actually say Barcelona being a bit more in the lead in terms of ball possession and. Um, pressing more pressing opportunities mm. around the Viennese basket whereas uh, Barcelona so far had trouble bringing the ball to the basket whereas Vienna had very one very good opportunity <laughs> um, we bring already had the basket yeah. uh, the ball close to the basket uh, going in Can we a little bit of fun there? so we'll see how this second half evolves what's your uh, one piece of advice for the Viennese team 14 meter. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd say s stick together, um, stick to your game plan. I know their game plan pretty well. What they what they try to do, what they try to achieve. Uh, help each other out as best as you can, especially when moving out of your own half. Support each other, getting over the middle, and then set up a good, good quality play in the corner, and off you go. I said one thing. That is uh, one thing. <laughs> <laughs> One big tactic. Thomas Jufman there in the middle. Then over Gregor der Schmidt is not there for. A very friendly looking bunch. Yeah, totally we are nice. Mm. Just not in the morning. Then we are, <laughs> then we are a uh, very direct and a angry city bunch. of assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Just honest people. Who likes early Monday mornings? Okay. Well, Vienna, Maratek, getting possession of the ball, need some help. I <laughs> see Akko Schartner on the left. This is what I meant. Just you, you say, wasn't you one piece of advice, help each other? Yeah. <laughs> but oh, no. Oh, getting pulled back on the leg a little bit. Had a chance to move forward. Is it called, is it called by the ref? No. Looked like, because the three players so suddenly stopped <laughs> moving, looked at the leg. Ref call. Now Kinnaman in the corner, coming in. Trying to move in from the left. Dresspel waiting on the open side of the basket. Moves to the other side. Helping out. Bringing the ball back out. Good job. And this is something also very important. If you're taking up a position, don't stay in there. Oh, until very good, the job. Oh, good the job. Spanish here. forward. By the Spanish forward. Well done. Number three. Oh. Luis Debreu. And now a good opportunity from the goal for the goalkeeper. One against three, no problem. That was a very hefty attack yeah. by Spain there. And we see again, shoving, yep. But he got caught. <laughs> oh. Don't Shoving hold the on. Goalie? Yeah, he held on. He either held on to the ring or he held yeah. on to the goalkeeper. Either way, bad boy. <laughs> bad boy. We need a, a bad boy sound, mm -hmm. soundboard. More like a bad boy dog sound or more like a bad boy's bad boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take either. Why not both? No, we're not trying to push forward Ooh. as well. <sighs> Yet again, a bit of a Ooh. hospital pass. Okay. I think in general, this is something that some players do, and it does cost your team so much. Yeah. Is to try to pass the ball because you pass it too quickly. Yeah. Too yeah. quickly. If you do not pass the ball, if you're not getting attacked. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Bind one player to you, and then then pass. It's the earliest. Oh, good effort though by Vienna, trying to recover the ball. But yet again, oh no, held on to the ball. No, Dash trying to come in from the left, getting attacked by three players. Nobody there to help initially. Can they move in? <coughs> Dash is certainly one of, one, of the most, uh, one of the strongest physical players uh, on the team. Loves his biceps workouts, but ball getting taken away by Barcelona. And now nice. fast break opportunity for them. Here we go. One and one. Ooh, oh, one good and chance. Two. Good movement. Bring, can he bring the ball into the corner? 
forwards in position. Oh, oh the pass. Broken up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, they take a little break. A big S. Oh, that was good movements by Barcelona, trying to bring the ball over to the other side. Is Colombo not playing on Barcelona? Either I don't know his full name, or he isn't playing, or he's Ooh, playing. Here we go. Oh, good effort by oh, yet again, no. Albert Rodriguez coming in from the backside. The passing ball really well around the goal. Yep. Yeah, Barcelona, one of the teams that it has really improved over yeah. the last two, three years. Incredibly. Coming in again from the right. Getting a technical goalkeeper from above. Exchange so possible. Can Vienna get a hold onto the ball? Oh, shaft up again. Goalkeeper oh. has it. Oh, has to move out. Somebody needs to cover the basket. Otherwise, it might get stolen away. Secondary goalkeeper is in position now. It's a lot of pressure. Ball dropping down. No top of picking it up. Can get he move forward? Also one of the physically strong players on the team, though a bit injury ridden over the last days, has been sick. Now, do we get a fast break? No, ball already taken oh. away, oh, but good pick up by Wiesner. <laughs> does, bring to, does he bring it to Kinema? No, yet again broken up by number 28, Daniel Jimenez, doing so much work for his team as well. Such a disruptive forward. We are now trying to move in from the closed side. Need more players available to pass the ball back, bring it back out. Good job from the Barcelona forwards. <sighs> Again, Very good at getting the ball back. Always take a little bit too long and then mm -hmm. lose the ball to the forwards and cannot set up a second wave uh, attacking the basket. And Barcelona very much going four fast breaks. Very fast paced play style by good them. Passing. And very solid passing by them, going left and right and the ball. Again, popping out. Yeah, nice. Two players coming in, defender in position. Can the forward Ooh, block them up? Legs. Oh. oh, good effort by the forwards though, trying to bring out the ball. Is it again? Yeah, yet again, back in possession for Barcelona. No one to pass to. I think they need to <sighs> slow the game down a little bit, Barcelona. I do not like to talk this fast <laughs> when the team is playing against <laughs> my home crowd, but oh, a lot of space being taken up by Barcelona players underneath the Austrian basket, but ball being held in the corner. Not able to move it, but yeah, we've, we've, we're seeing. I mean, Barcelona and Vienna playing for ninth place, and we see how their gameplay has evolved, getting faster, getting more physical. But now, good attempt there again. Jimenez coming in from the left. Can he bring the ball to the right? Pass it over forwards from Austria, trying to work, work the ball out. But yet again, coming now, oh, coming dangerous. in, goalkeeper. Had to move into position last second. Ball locked up. Oh, oh. does have some of the best to but now. Fast break opportunity. Marotek moving forward. Pass opportunity. Oh, Lando. Oh. To Atna. No. Will, will, <laughs> will, he will slow, slow, <laughs> he'll slow down the game a little bit. But ah, you can't just dive straight up when you know pretty much every opponent is right behind you. It's a, too many rookie mistakes on the Viennese squad right now. And yeah, Thomas dealing out the truth bombs. Hurts my soul. Oh, go. good opportunity now. Oh, it's actual. Uh, can he pass the case? He's Yano teammate. Wiesner, Yano Wiesner just okay. got oh. caught him by the ankle, but now can we move him from above? Number 15, Flung Stefan, Carlos Goalies Santivieri. Off goal. Goalies off the goal. Santivieri waiting, defender missing underneath the basket, trying to lock up. Yeah, just dragged them up. Three and a half minutes gone. Barcelona really stepping up the pace here at the second half of the game. Showing that they will be competing, and we've seen them already competing against uh, Eco Mares, where they had two, three good scoring opportunities, but just couldn't execute properly. Oh, nice no, pass. Oh, nice pass to the left. Number Alberto Red again. Gets locked up. Good effort though by Kinderman, trying to get the ball out of him, but the big boy, chunky boy, holding on to the ball. When you're a chunky boy with number one on your jersey, oh, watch out. Over the ref. Pour out the water. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, we had a guys. That might be a coffee. That might be a timeout. I think actually it would be quite a good opportunity blue. for a oh blue timeout even. I and even have maybe have opted for a timeout as Vienna in this yeah. position. If your if your team is under such pressure, take 
time to recover, talk a bit of what you want to do. Yeah. Get players focused again. Do you think they're gonna put in gonna put in the best six players? Yep. Most certainly. Two minutes left. Sorry. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. I mean, still two and a half minutes is a very long time for you. Still need to change those players, so it's not going to be necessarily your sixth best. Time, is time, through his beard. time out is also good for me to get my <laughs> pump, my heart rate down again a bit. Good thing I don't wear like a pedometer where my heartbeat is measured during <laughs> these games. Squirrel mode activated. It always reminds me on the, do you know the movie? The, I think it's a Disney Pixar movie where there's this squirrel who's getting a, a drop of energy drink. Then you can see laser beams. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically me in a situation like this. All right. Oh. We started two and a half minutes left. Barcelona oh. first to the ball. Oh. Atna trying to come for Austria. He must break it out. About. Oh, oh. Barcelona, but the ball handling has been so much better. Oh, good. Have a line-up right team going in. Can he get the ball away? Nandl. Funnily enough, this Barcelona team is stronger than the national team they had in Montreal this year. Yeah, I mean, it's hard turning a team, your best team, over there. Cause not even, not even good. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. also about a couple of Spanish players who said some of them opted out, some of them could afford it, couldn't mm. afford to go. So they sent whoever was willing to go, basically, to Montreal. Maybe some of the players weren't even eligible, maybe some of them yeah. are foreigners who are not eligible for the country. Nice. You know, Spanish names sound similar being from Colombia <laughs> or from <laughs> Spain. But then again, now. Oh, the oh. It was a pass backwards to the goalkeeper. No. Who oh. the hell? Who oh. the hell? Well cleared, though. For now, Andy Pell to Kinderman into the middle, but being attacked immediately oh. and ball ripped out yet again. And Barcelona pressuring Vienna so heavily. Now, Love fast break, break opportunity break for Austria. Manteuffel trying to move in. Picking up the pace. Jufferman, oh, Anitbasa, Kinderman there as well. Pell trying. <sighs> it might be a little bit too <laughs> Who slow. Who is he waiting for? Who is he waiting for? The last 10 yeah. seconds? Yeah. For those exchange players from Barcelona to come back in. <laughs> Three, four players exchange right now. This was the time to go in. Oh, Barcelona are very good at uh, working. Like when they have the two players on the ball. See what the call is about a ref. Maybe a rough play for having his elbow in the other guy's face. I have no idea. Could be, could be either because there was a mean East player going aggressive for the mm. ball, but then again, he was also being very aggressively separated from the yeah. ball as well. So, yeah, looks like so a like a mean East free throw. And uh, interesting enough, the free throw should actually be in the half of Barcelona, not in the middle yeah, of the pool. Yeah, three meter mark, right? At the three meter mark, so they should be allowed to move forward if it is a free throw awarded. Yep, the free throw for White is already signaled by the ref, but there's a ref time has been a ref timeout during the discussion. Interestingly enough, Here we go. immediately. All right, accepted. immediately locked up. Two players, 30 seconds to go. I think both teams are just happy to. Does my own team owe me beer now? <laughs> What, what was the bet? I thought you said overtime. You overtime. Oh right. Penalties. <laughs> no, I didn't make any bets for this game. Oh, again, again, pass backwards. Locked the ball out. 15 seconds to go. One last chance to move in. Marcek trying to move forward, having a player real bad basket, but nobody else to move forward. <laughs> He's even seen that he can move the ball, but nobody helping him out. And Arkush out for the last three seconds, and we are going into penalties again. Here we go. Is that number four? <sighs> That is number four of penalties. That's just today. That's just today, yeah. But yet again, it's more and more likely if you're going out of group stages yeah. and the teams, yeah. uh, the contenders are moving closer to each other. Were there any yesterday? Uh, I don't think so. I think we had the entire day of yesterday without any penalty shootouts. Very fast paced and strong game by Barcelona here, but Vienna. Able to hold against them. Bautuini. 
Great Paluini. Hmm? Paluini? He's the best magician. So, penalty shootout between Vienna, who, have to, who has to defend first, and I might guess it's either Matthias Neuntafel or Torsten Lütt. Matthias Neuntafel, yep. defending Andre de Paco for Barcelona. Oh, and he's coming from above. A little bit of a, of a knee hook there. Oh, oh yep. <sighs> Got him. Got him with the hook. I think it is just on the neck, good grip on the neck here for a moment, but then just pulling him down. Compared to the one from the Orcas, this yeah. one looked yeah, pretty much fair and square. So see, this Janowa Wiesner is taking the first one. Interesting, so opting not to go for Jan Kinemann, who is usually one of the penalty shooters for us. I mean, it's one one was one. So you kind of have to put those, your best player in up front. Some, sometimes when you have three penalties, you yeah. opt to have your uh, best player go second or third. Maybe yeah. The yeah, yeah. Yeah, no reason. Coming in from underneath does get a, a good grip onto the goalie, but <laughs> <laughs> you can see the difference in two in breaks. Oh, oh, this might be the defense for. Yep, this is the defense for. Uh, for, for Spain. Wow. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Oh. Oh, that was a clean, clean oh, point. Yeah. I mean, he lost the ball. He lost the ball because he, I think, uh, hit the the ring. Oh, when he was trying ball. to put it in. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh. <sighs> Do you need to know that? It's heartening. <laughs> it's heartening. I've got to be honest. Uh, Especially because quite often I myself do take penalties for the team. Yeah. Not the, f not the <laughs> first, not usually not the first, but um, yeah. Hurts. Yeah, and you could see weight um, does make kind of a difference when it yep. comes to penalties. The goalie opting to... But I mean, that was another example where he kind of rushed a little bit. Should have taken the second yeah. attempt. Yeah. And th that this is why I was wondering, because Jano recently usually doesn't take that many penalties for Vienna, because yeah. it's usually some other players, as I concluded, that would be shooting first. Yeah. Young Kinderman especially. Um, maybe he opted out of purpose because he doesn't feel well, or he's got an injury on the wrist or something. Might be possible. But still, yeah, a bit disheartening. You can see the frowning faces from Vienna, of course, after a hard fought game. And now we have Zurich versus Fürs Firenze. Hi! So, so we're here with John from uh, Barcelona, the Spanish champion. You yeah, can say you're the match winner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. So game, so we are really happy and finishing the game with a penalty. It was a good, really good. You defended versus Jan Over from uh, Vienna. What was his mistake? How did you get the ball? Well, actually, he grabbed me from the waist and uh, I could feel the ball close to my head. I hit it a bit and then uh, the ball fell, uh, fall. So I just grab it and then I uh, just stopped the penalty. Very well done. Congratulations for this. See you soon, man.
All right, all right, back into the next game. Jusse Zürich versus Firenze. So, next game, Firenze in white, Zürich in blue. And we'll see oh, Firenze going forward. Going for a, maybe for a quick score against Zürich, but Zürich had a pretty solid defense so far throughout the tournament. And we'll see how those two teams match up. Zurich showing that they can certainly score even against very strong teams, getting a good attack, having the right players in the pool. So it will be interesting to see who will take it away. I'm going to have a guess uh, comment on this. Uh, Potentially. Do you have some volunteers in mind? Or oh, do you just need a break? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some lunch would be nice. Um, I think we'll get Torsten back here into the okay. commentator booth now for one or two games. But maybe we can also have some, uh, some guest stars. Friends get the ball back, but they can't lose it to get out. So it's uh, trying to move forward. Yeah, but they don't have the combination, so you still have a back by the goal. Yeah. So Zurich. Yeah. No. Strong attack from Zurich player number 13. Oh, and second wave. Yes, we have a goal by. So who scored that goal? I can't see the number. It was a good goal. All right, I missed one. We just had a uh, two attacks, uh, two waves, and the second wave uh, attack. Sorry. Blue forty-three. You don't have a oh. <laughs> so good about by. We still don't have a forty-three. <laughs> oh, there we are. Saveri Orozco. Okay. I'm sure that's exactly. <laughs> Give it a try, Bobby. Give it a try. Sabeshi, Sabeshi, Savari, Savari, Savari. You know the sh the, sh the Swiss e? Savari? Yeah. No, but it sounds it should be a bit Polish. It's okay. Oh now coming in again from yes. above. Good attack. Same. Whoa, yeah. The same as before. Strong attack. Going straight for the goalie. Christoph Kozacek coming in from above. Getting a good grip onto the goalkeeper, and we can see it's a little bank, a little banking nation yeah. in Central Europe, putting one into the bank for themselves. A good five minutes played, first half, 42nd game here at the Champions Cup. Probably one of the more experienced. Oh, shoots it in! What a goal! That could easily be yeah. one of the top goals of this tournament so far. Coming in from ball. Wow. Having a little bit of time. Just moving the goalkeeper and then bam! Did you see how fast that yeah. went? Snug it in. Some players you don't have to ask twice, <laughs> especially old veterans. And Shot that in like a cannon. 
Navaido. Well done. Bafirante getting one in for themselves. Trying to find a connection to Suri here. Being down by two, now down by one. And now Suri back in, in France's half. Again, Straight attacking the in. Again. Except now the uh, Rav Shvidetsky with the attempt. Player waiting on the left. Coming in, trying to move the ball. Snake takes the out, slows the game down a little bit. Straight back on the attack against the goalie, but this time it runs forwards ready. And I, th I think one of the most significant differences we can see in a game like this compared to the last one, for instance. Here again, coming in attack. Coming in from the side. Let's see the replay. Maybe not this angle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they set up the attacks. They have that person go in. It was a bit of chaos. They yeah. pass it out. Nice one. Simon Holstetter. So I think one of the biggest differences is the intensity that the forwards bring into the game. Yeah. We've seen it, especially Barcelona, I think the forwards did an incredible job of keeping the game for active for Barcelona. Do you mean defense <coughs> or offense? Uh, both, basically. Okay. Offensively as well as defensively. Tightening the spaces for Austria to move in, as you've yeah. seen, and especially this. Um, on the highest level of gameplay, the amount of time you have to move and to play a pass is increasingly getting Smaller. less and less. Yeah. And, um, on the highest oh. level of play. Arm around the face of the neck. Yeah. Those forwards and power forwards uh, who are pressing and then getting help from the defender can really make a huge difference. Yeah. And forwards being maybe a bit a notch slower uh, or maybe not as agile or not as secure when handling the ball. Yeah. Oh, the yep. bad pass on the free throw. Does make That's a huge difference for the pace of the game, the overall pace of the game. As we see, oh, well um, bringing the ball into the corner. Oh, that was nice, uh, fake pass, and then. <coughs> Trying to keep it out. Uh, in the own team. Yoink. Fritzberg takes the ball. Fritz, uh, trying to fast break, but Locked up. Locked up. By the first line of defense in the middle of the pool. Siri. Having a very composed game now. Taking possession, just having possession of the ball, trying to keep it ball in the team. Very optimistic pass. Now they're coming from below. Pass out. Swim it to the open side. Pass back to the close side. Going straight for the goalie. From above. Causing a little bit of chaos. Bring the ball back out. And then take another bite. Yes, there was a gap. Good defense though by Firenze. The French forwards are really kind of stepping up the game now. Now that they know that Zurich is most likely going to attack from above. And there's the halftime break. Yeah. And we've said it before today, as a goalkeeper, you are at the mercy of your own forwards as much as the mercy of your opponent's forwards. You're at everyone's mercy. <laughs> You're basically at everyone's <laughs> mercy, yes. There we are. Having your forwards help out 
and uh, removing those players to try to attack you as a goalkeeper one of the key uh, jobs um, a forward has when defending Goals, the goals from the first half. Everything on the initial down. shot from France as well. Ten solo effort. Again, a good goal from Christoph Kozacek. So when it comes to final positions of Bratislava, already won against Firenze, now we have most likely uh, Zurich uh, beating Firenze as well, so it doesn't look very good for Firenze. And those are all the placement games uh, for them. But they still have one more game to play after this, right? Uh, Zurich has to compete against Bratislava. I think this, this game is still open. Because they're playing in a in a circle right. in each. But does Ferenczi play there? Uh, I do not think so. Mm. I'd have actually take a look on the schedule. If it's working properly. It's three. So we have. Um, One more game today, Zurich against Bratislava. Hmm. Vienna also has to, oh, they play, ah, oh, okay, they play all around. So Vienna has to play, also has to play against um, the okay, game against France as well now that they lost it. to, um, uh, <laughs> to uh, Barcelona, apparently. At least this is what the time table says for now. But we'll see. We'll be updated sooner or later. Let's see if we, uh, friends can fire back some more of that magic that they showed towards the end of this first half. Right, Suri, going in. See all of them moving forward. We can't see the basket now. Second half already started. Going straight for the France basket. From on the surface, friends are trying to de-escalate and uh, bring the ball carries away oh, from the nice. basketball ball. Ripped out, well done. Coming again, Zurich coming from up. Pass oh, good down. pass. <laughs> that was a smack in the face, always. Yeah. Sebastian was a bit surprised <laughs> by the intensity of the ball coming flying towards him. Nice pass. Oh, good pass to the back side. And yet back again, back oh, into the middle. Nice. Great work. That's the kind of passing yep. every team needs to learn how to do. It's not just passing, it's about being in position. Yep. Player availability. We actually, I was talking to the Australian coach, uh, the coach bit and uh, we were discussing um, key parameters 
for players. Uh, really Ooh, oh, nice. Nice goal. He Very was just Grind. grinding it in. New player 95. Well Nine done. Five. Ruben Oliveira Rodriguez uh, for Surrey. He's a former swimmer. Ah, okay. Very fit. Very fit. So we were talking about um, ways to evaluate players, yeah. and one, one key parameter was always underwater time. Yeah. But then uh, we were talking about it's actually not, because you can spend yeah. a lot of time underwater, but it can be extremely yeah. efficient doing so. Yeah. And then we were discussing impact during underwater time and also availability. Uh, as a passing option and staying yeah. down a little bit longer is one very key uh, feature that a yeah. player should bring playing in the underwater rugby. Which, was, which of the Australian coaches are we talking to? Lila. Lila, oh. Smart man. Yeah. Yep. Gotta get those coaching connections in. <laughs> Shout out to Australia. Now they've done a fantastic job with the Boomers team. Yeah. throughout the last World Cup, so... And, of course, all made possible by the athletes uh, putting in an immense amount of, of time and as work and money as well in terms yeah. of the Australians. I mean, it's about getting a critical mass of base players yep. and, uh, you know, finally get to the stage where, you know, it's 30 women trying out. <laughs> the <laughs> basket oh, <here>. nice. <laughs> <laughs> from left to right. And I think it was number five. Clemens Neumüller. Blue player number just five. Going <laughs> full rampage. Yeah, Clemens Neumüller going full <laughs> rampage on the, the front of basket. He's not going to have it. <laughs> so the basket should be fixed with suction cups on the bottom. but. Um, this year not working as well as it did last year's. Maybe have to change up the material a little bit. Always opportunity for improvement. Best thing, best thing of course, is to have a screw on the bottom of your pool and just screw those baskets straight down. Nice breakaway. Yeah. Very Coming in again. Just going in himself, trying, yeah, yeah, trying to get the pass, pass over, across. over the goalie. And have a second wave. Nice from the friends team. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. Did you know that player? Nah. Couldn't see his number. Good for him. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, Perfect. Good pass over the defender. Martin Wernle with a solid attempt. But cannot get the goalie removed, fully removed. Oh, finally gets the pass off. Just caught on the ankle. Can you see the support he gets on the left side? No, he's going to get caught up. What a shame. It's just that half a second. And it again, they're trying to shove him out of bounds. Nope. Read up. Well, let's see one more good attack of friends. Good answer coming in. Oh, he didn't see the basket was loose. Uh, uh, eyes on the prize. Yeah, quite often, I mean, you, if you're watching out for the ball. Yeah. And the ball is a bit away from the basket. But I think he was... Um, he had the ball, but he was looking out for a pass. Passing into the goal, usually yeah. <laughs> the best pass you can take. Nice pass, though, underneath Ooh. the goalkeeper. Can't hold on to it properly, though. Defender coming in at the last point in time to help out. Now, yet again, second wave. Can he pass the ball? Ah, oh, into the, the arms. arms. They will save it. Ooh. Right in the face. This should be actually a two minute penalty. Yeah. Very rough. It was with the coach as well, so with the fin. Yeah. yeah, with the heel. Yeah. Stop the goal. 
don't think we've got a free throw for the game, is it? I think that's it. player about number about 17, yeah. two minutes. Yeah, two interesting, minutes. yeah. Number interesting last minutes here. So, Zurich, and then clearly the more pressing team. I think that was, I mean, that it was kind of intentional, but I don't think we've done many minutes. It's just a little bit inexperienced. When you don't have the experience, you kind of, um, you, when you don't have the experience and you want to play at the edge. Kind of time, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Giulio Giacci. Perfect, Giacchi, thank actually. you. And, uh, yeah, I think... Maybe an experience, but also sometimes it's just pure panic. Yeah. As a, yeah. But then again, if it's five, five, uh, one already, <laughs> you should have accepted the, the panic the should have faded by now, and acceptance should have set in, yeah. and you should be able to play a smooth game. There we see a referee asleep on the table in the corner. <laughs> I think that kind of sums Hard up ref that refing. sums up <laughs> Champions Cup in one yes. picture. That's harsh probably. We have done that here. Yeah, yeah, of course the refs throughout the day also <laughs> refing a lot of games. Yeah. I mean we have way more referees than commentators to be honest. <laughs> sure okay, okay. keep I mean, ready, we're then we're we have a blue free throw. She's here with us in spirit. Yeah, that was so, two minute penalty for Filelze. And we'll see mm. if Zurich can capitalize. By the way, if there's anyone I'm watching from home who uh, is uh, maybe a family member, relative, or friend who, uh, you know, I mean, underwater rugby isn't like the thing, you don't really know what's going on. So that we can, uh, yeah, we can cater to your needs. Yep. Give us a little bit of a shout out and then, ooh, okay, coming you can go off. Back. well done. Two minute penalty lifted, fire score. Goal, you can see a player 11. just screwing himself in from above, seeing a little bit of a, an opening, and that just well played by him. Yeah, she kind of a little bit of a shot for the mix. Ralf Schwidetsky. A lot of Slavic sounding names in Switzerland. So Frenze giving himself oh, one nice. more attempt, yes. attacking the yes. oh good attempt there, Ooh. moving the goalie. Well done. Fernando Scarano, but here comes the Swiss train. Can he get the ball underneath the defender? Nice. Back didn't see. Back oh. didn't see. Defender had his hand Ooh. on the ball. Did hit the rim, Last maybe. second. 34 seconds left. Ooh, good oh, fast break. Go in, go in, go in. 27. Oh. Uh, Samuel Lemoski. Too bad. But couldn't finish it off himself. That's a shame he passed it. Yeah. yeah. Take the first attempt yourself, but I mean, then again, sprinting the entire pool. Maybe having spent some time down there already. It's the last 10 seconds of the game. You can just. The last 10 seconds of the game, you just try. Yeah. It's either do or die. You don't swim, You don't even swim back anymore. It's yeah. just. <laughs> just you only ever have yeah. to kill yourself once. Yeah. yeah. All right, game finished between Zurich and Firenze, and we're moving to the next game, which I don't think I can take a break. Uh, oh Vienna, no, no, Vienna. Vienna in blue versus Helvetia in white. So again, Swiss against Austria. Okay, what's the game after that? Oh, okay, we can take a break for that one. 
and that was the first one of the game, so we need yeah. new sheets afterwards. Clement! 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 Oh. I do have to take a one minute break though, and I will. So, Clemens Neumiller bei mir hier vom USZ Zürich, Schweizer Meister, Nummer 5, fünf, fünftes Tor, bist du zufrieden? Ja, ich glaube es war hervorragend, wir haben uns von jedem Spiel gesteigert und am schönsten ist es natürlich, wenn man sich steigert und dann auch Kapital draus schlagen kann. Beim 3-1 hast du gedacht, es wird noch mal knapp oder hast du gedacht, das Spiel geht gut runter? Okay. Ich habe gedacht, also mein Vertrauen war groß, es gab White eine gute Sicherheit bei uns, aber da habe ich gedacht, bisher lief es so solide und auch die Spiele davor haben wir uns dazu durch nicht aus dem Konzept bringen lassen und mein Vertrauen war da. Super, vielen Dank dir. Danke. Teams fought very hard, not giving each other very much space or time with the ball. And now we have what seems to be the first attack on the goal from Vienna. Nice organized defense on the Swiss side, forwards doing their job. Now they win the ball back. Okay. Immediately four checked by the Viennese. Using the momentum to take the ball over the halfway line. Passing it on the surface. No one underneath to receive the ball though. Seems to be locked up in the corner. Three Viennese players underneath the ball carrier. Really impressive ball checking efforts by both teams here. No one seems to be comfortable with just sitting in defense, waiting for the other team to take the ball close. Very good setup here by Vienna, but they cut the ball into the center. Oh, little bit of a Missed pass there. Luckily retreat. Okay. Holding call here. Giving the ball over to White free throw. White. Holding. White free throw. Good 
intensity's been quite high so far, but both teams still seem very composed. Let's see if this will keep continuing or if one of the teams will get tired. Floor checking is really, actually, <laughs> quite hard work. It means you don't give the other team a break, but you also mean that you don't get a break. Now let's see if they're able to work the ball into the goal. Bubbles in the corner, <laughs> balls caught up on the surface, pretty much right against the corner. Now it's been pushed back out by the Beanies. Four players from Helvetia close together. Pass it down. Good effort from Swiss for holding onto the ball. But now we'd have any energy left to go into the goal. She's looking around, a little bit uncertain what to do. She's still down there. <laughs> Ray passes the ball out. Very good discipline not to pass the ball then. Both teams are playing really solidly, supporting each other, not making too many clumsy mistakes. But also playing it quite safe, not going into the goal by themselves. But eventually one of the teams has to take the initiative here and go in and create some goal scoring opportunities. Iza get a ball immediately knocked up. Now I think it's the Stingray again, number 47. Just have some chaos created right above the goalie. Okay. Now we have a changeover. Mini's team, single player, can attack. She gets full checked. Can she find someone to pass to? She sees her player as she gets caught up. We have Swiss winning the ball back again. Making her way through on the surface, getting the ball down. Still intense ball checking on both sides. Getting the ball out from the corner though. Flurry two with the ball. Definitely pass into the corner. Ball still in the corner though. Boards, not completely committing themselves to get the ball back, but not making it easy for the uh, Swiss women to get any kind of rhythm. Yeah. And finally, we have an attack on the goal, instantly knocked up by a forward, diving down. Very good read of the game on the, Aus uh, on the Austrian side. Now we have all. attack here. Yes, she's through. Three Viennese women on the goal, but she takes the ball out. She doesn't want to risk the pass around the goal. <sighs> Alright, they can't myself down. <laughs> Thomas has to recover before he uh, watches another game with Yemen in it. It's been a quite a tight game so far, but neither team Come on, has, uh, go in. Okay, Vienna being the first to take initiative going into the goal. I think uh, the forwards on both teams are quite overpowered. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people want it a bit too much, and if they're a bit too eager, or they feel like they have to make a little bit of a hero play, because they feel like the entire team depends on them, yeah. uh, might actually lead to them disrupting uh, the team more than... Oh, okay, depending on position. What we've seen so far is that both teams have been very uh, on 
important when it comes to floor checking each other and um, not giving each other much space to kind of uh, establish any kind of attacks in a calm space. But the uh, Vienna team has been a bit more... Uh, White free throw holding. White free throw. So entertained. <laughs> <laughs> now Here one go. last good attempt. Twenty Ooh, seconds to go. But yeah. Oh. That will get to the end of the first half. Half time. So, half-time break between Vienna and Helvetia. Both teams seem very evenly matched, both in terms of conditioning, in terms of uh, skills. And, but, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating to see that um, neither team are particularly willing to uh, send players in uh, to attack the goal. Yeah, no. I mean, no. They're both waiting for the perfect opportunity in the corner, but that's never going to come because they both have uh, very good forwards in the defense. I mean, both teams showed that they can defend very well throughout the tournament, playing against those tough teams in the group stages. And uh, yeah, now it's on to them to force your opponent to make mistakes. And um, certainly, me knowing the Viennese team and the stretch of injuries they're going through right now, a lot of players playing under very uh, difficult circumstances in terms of health. Um, yeah, it's always rough to see your team struggling. But um, then again... I mean, they don't look like they're struggling. It's just they, um, both teams are missing players that have that extra drive. Yeah, yeah they're missing the, the, the punch, the yeah, extra exactly. mile they can go. The, how much they can uh, pressure themselves, yeah. how much they can uh, draw out of themselves, yeah. and uh, get in, get how much power they can, energy can, they can bring to the team into the pool. I mean, I, I always say it's better to lose the ball when you're 10 centimeters away from the opponent's goal than to lose it when you're in the corner. Or um, because because defending your own basket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if you lose the ball near the opponent's goal, at least you could have created an opportunity for a penalty, for yeah. example. Absolutely. <sighs> so, do we have any supporters watching from the live stream? Please let us know who you are rooting for. So, 20 seconds to go in the half and break. And I'm going to be interested to see. 15 no seconds left. So, 
Going into the second half. Vienna Very to nice. the ball first. Ooh, good great. attempt, moving forward, well done. Swiss four checking like a brick wall. Almost pushes her out. Now moving in from the side, trying to bring the ball to the basket. Trying to open up a little bit of space. Nice. Uh, good attempt, but Ooh, has to bring the ball back out. Schmutz with the attempt for Austria. To the corner. Neither looks particularly keen to go in. <laughs> there. Nice fin into the face. <laughs> That's the problem when you're always coming from the same corner. The fins will always be there. They don't need to move. Good recovery from the Swiss. Good support, both teams. Taking it out, the middle. Oh, now she's missing some teammates just when she needs it. And that gives Austria the chance to get the ball back. Ah, but we have a referee call. We have a referee call. White team, free throw. Free throw. Free throw. For Helvetia. White team, free throw. Attacking equipment. Here off straight into the corner. Will they make something of this? Yep. yep. Play going in. It's quite Can fun to see out? two teams having similar strategies yeah. <laughs> and just neutralizing <laughs> each other every, every step of the way. But these two teams, they don't play together that often, do they? Um, they have matched up quite often during the later years because yep. they are quite often at the same uh, competing spot. Okay. In tournaments, and usually for now, I think uh, Vienna has taken the win away most of the times. Not entirely sure though. But they don't play in the same league. No, no. no. Yeah, I think so. There, 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 there is no league for um, Austria in Austria to play in, as well. Play the, the Czech league, right? So we have the uh, women's team caught up. Oh, that's a very oh. good opportunity for for Helvetia, the but first the real <laughs> high pressure situation we see. She's still, still got a good punch to the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper's off. New goalkeepers in place. Oh, that was the uh, closest goal action we've seen so mm -hmm. far. Okay, now they're ready for another uh, attack wave. Second attempt by Helvetia. I think I, I'm a bit afraid that the Indies women have exhausted themselves quite a lot during the game against the Orcas, having showed us really good at the water. Oh. Good chance Moving here. In. Counter attack. Too slow. Passes out. Pass to the left. We have forwards Defender on Defender now coming in. Hopefully staying down to create a good block. No. Defender on, on the ball. Now, second attempt. Not chance. And again, coming in. Ooh. Good effort bringing the ball in. Another wave. Can she get the ball? Needing somebody to pass to or I mean just an in option. time defense. And it's almost those like one and a half, two seconds, you know, where they have the ball too long yeah. or keep it available for the for defender too long to interrupt the gameplay. Not opting out because they are still trying to look for for an option for to create an opportunity for the team. Good pass. Can I keep control of the ball? Sees the teammates pass down to the corner. Passes to the middle. Back to the corner. Are they going to keep up the momentum? No. Christina in the corner with the ball. Number set, 14 going in. going in, but she's held it back by two forwards.
Now, five minutes to go in the second half. Mina versus Helvetia. Now it's just about attrition. And now it's just, yeah, just a Here we go. Coming in again from above. Trying to take the ball. Any lead. dangerous situations here? Sicily. No. Gives the ball back out. Christina the Stingray. Back out. And it's such, such a difficult decision to make in a, in a tight, close game. Yeah. You don't want to overcommit. Do you commit or do you stay back and play a very solid defense, which you have relied on so heavily throughout the tournament? That looks like a ball out of the water, but it's played on. Too slow in passing the ball there. Okay. All right, yeah, good opportunity now to move in. No forward available. Nice initiative. Rolando by the defender. Should keep the ball. All right, Austria. He's got the ball back. Defender moving out. Pass into the middle. Did we get a fast break? Oh, yet again. <sighs> Ooh, attack from the blind side. Gets the ball down. Ball back. Defense already in place. Martek. We should go in. Got three she players onto her. and uh, creates, She creates some good chaos. Passes the ball down. Gets the ball to another player. Non-tiferal. The immediately attacked. Yet again, Mihan trying to move Ooh, in. Trying to go for the goalkeeper. The, goalie. the back is out of position. Can she pass the ball down? No, the ball is locked up. And we have a referee call. This could be something serious. He's talking to a player on the uh, Swiss Rapid side. Call. Blue team, time out. Blue team, time out. Money. Not sure what Money. happened. Okay. White team, number nine. Two minutes. Two minute penalty for white team number penalty nine. Time. Who I guess is the number six. Could be here what it was for. I did not hear. See what talking about. <laughs> I am sorry, this is what I'm being not paid for here. <laughs> uh, shout out to all the volunteers, we have a little bit in chat as well, who will help him to make the tournament a success that it ha is and has been over the last yeah, decades. So, yes. number nine. Number nine. Not sure, yeah. 15 seconds left. So we have a power play situation for the remaining... Blue players. team free throw. Blue team free throw. So we uh, will bring the strongest six in the pool. And we'll see what they can do. I have a slight video problem here. Maybe we can change cameras. Maybe change the camera. Tech crew. Tech crew. If you can hear us, please change the camera. Maybe that's what maybe they're trying to do. Maybe they're trying, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, now okay. Vienna coming in with everything they've got. Four play, bring four players, but immediately being locked up. Takes the ball out. Gets it. Second Comes attempt. Steffi Pop oh, trying to come in. Yeah! Oh! And there we go. Steffi popped one in. <laughs> Waiting this entire tournament to say it once. Blue team goal, number she 10. She, she, loves, she loves me doing oh. it. Yeah. Very well the done. Is the goalie spot. White team, time yeah. out. She saw it. White team, time out. White team, time out now. So, oval time play. Only a couple of seconds. <laughs> You're in the second time half. Out. And Stevi Pop. Getting Vienna ahead by one, and now we have a timeout by Helvetia. It's uh, probably also worth mentioning that Steffi Pop plays on the German national team. Yep. But she also been injury ridden since the World Championship, has a wrist injury she's been trying to recover from over the last half year now. Also limiting her already during the World Championship. 
And it's always a bit of an issue having your best players injured. Also a bit of a mental, mental challenge left. for them getting to play, but then showing up during the tournament in a tight game. And quite often on just having them available during a tournament yeah. other than missing them missing a tournament entirely can make such a big difference for a team. Okay, but now, two minutes to go. Helvetia and Vienna is up by one. <laughs> and we'll see what Helvetia, what the Swiss kitchen has been coming up with and close cooking with. Nice pass. Trying to come in. Forward, right onto it. Yeah, for quite a forward it out almost. No, it's locked up. Yep. Steffi Pop trying to recover the ball. Leave and yet a good effort from forwards following up. Good. Well done. Very good support there from the Austrians. Still going together. Fogla. Nice. Magic. Ooh, trying to get pass. it back for Paul. Paul dropping good back to the goalie. Goalie, goalie being attacked. attacked. One minute to go. And now, solid, secure defense. Is the way to go. Don't let, don't create opportunities for opponents. For just go straight for the goal. Don't stop. <laughs> Everyone's like, you have it. No, you have it. No, you have it. Oh, good attempt though. Here we go. Here we go. Underneath the back of the defender. I think she's not entirely burnt, but good effort by the forward. Good job, Isa. Ooh, ball still in oh, possession. Takes it up. Pop tried to clear. There we go. Couldn't get a hold on the ball. 40, seconds, 40 seconds to go. Now it's. Dive down and stay down time. Oh, passes straight to the arms of the. Oh, the there we go. Player. Denis Schmutz, good Gonna recovery. Janowski trying to move forward. Don't get the dollar signs into your eyes. Keep the ball within amongst your teammates. Here we go. Here Another we go. attempt. Moving in. Pass to the opposite of the basket. Though forward being available and stopping the attempt in its tracks. But I think just the ball being. Oh, we're oh, the goalie. We're trying the goalie. Oh, the oh. ball dropping down. Can't you get it up? Oh, the defender getting the ball. I think that's it. Yet another nail biter. Game is over. The last two minutes. <sighs> Great job on both teams. I mean, good start with a hater in the chat. How often so have often you been volunteering? Getting a player sent off can be decisive. Yeah. And it's those moments where you just have to get your best six players into the pool. And then it's time to shine. And Steffi Pop showed up for Vienna in the second wave, seeing an opening, just going in. And do I dare say it again? What do you <laughs> want to say, Bobby? She, uh, she was there to pop it in. What did you do? Yeah. Pop one in. I actually haven't seen or heard from Marlies in the chat yet, from her mother, who's usually an epic animal rugby aficionado watching her children play. Chris Pop usually plays for Vienna, but also undergoing surgery, not available for the men's team. Chris Pop? Yep. Who's Chris Pop? Stubby's brother. Oh, I didn't know she had a brother yeah. who plays. She's not, he's now playing for the Viennese um, men's team and also playing right. for Austria during the World Cup, but he's undergoing surgery also for his wrist. <laughs> so uh. Austria set up very well during the Champions the Cup. So the Germans, they do tend to hold the ball to the wrist a lot more than uh, the other countries. I think I think actually hold some people back. Like, I mean, yeah, sure, there's some security, so you want to get back secure, and then you want to hold it to the wrist a bit. Yeah. You don't need to do it all the time. There we go, step up across the screen. I think she's going for an interview. We need up on. So, ganz quick, ganz quick. Is okay, no, no, so man's good of Deutsch. Thank you, Deutsch, it's a very good game. Yeah. See me live? See me live or no? Ah, so I'm here together with Stephanie Poppia from uh, the Vienna Damen. Yeah, ja, 1 0 won. What's going on? What's passiert? Yeah, it was a really hard game. Wir müssen sagen, also die Schweizerinnen haben wirklich Kraft. Die haben unser Spiel schön, auch am Anfang sehr gut kaputt gemacht. Aber wir haben uns dann auf das versucht zu konzentrieren, was wir auch geübt haben. Unten spielen, vorne anbieten. 
Und so haben wir dann doch noch das 1-0 geschafft. Auch auf jeden Fall sehr verdient, weil die Wiener Damen haben sich auch jetzt richtig stark weiterentwickelt jetzt in den letzten Spielen auf dem CC bis jetzt. Also sehr cool. Super, vielen Dank dir, gell? So here we are for the first semi-final of the day. We are talking. First semi-final, we see in blue the Danish champion Flipper versus in white Malmö Ditto. Which is quite crazy and exciting about this match is both teams came already, like coming already with one lost game in this okay. tournament into the semifinal. What does it mean? White team Both teams became second in their group, but were winning against the winner of the other group. So they were eliminating a favor, like a group winner, just to make their way here into the final. It was Flipper beating the Echo Maris from Colombia and Malmö Dritto here today just with 10 players they bet the champion from Finland Hezu. Now we can see here game starting on and we are going to figure out and trying to figure out who's gonna making it here to the final of tomorrow's Champions Cup. The last game of this tournament is the final match who will be then the world club champion so to say here we see in blue now the flipper team in the offense both teams from scandinavia so this like match not only comes with a yeah with a kind of intensity due to the semi-final but also, of course, with it's this neighborhood rivality that we could highlight and imagine. We see a three throw now <coughs> in favor for the flipper team. And also to highlight our referees for the game, we see Kai, or we can hear Kai from Norway as the deck referee. Plus, look down, look underwater down. referees who are Jürki and Robert Clark. First two minutes, Blade. Oh, this was very well intercepted by white number 10. I'm a bit confused right now. No, Just need to find the right paperwork here. A bit off. So we are here, back 2.2. And we can see now the 10 Malmö players here in the offense. And they're trying right now to start implement their game style. We saw it also from the previous game. So the Swedish champion is quite famous for this so-called Meller attack. This is where a player goes around the basket. They try to implement it. But here we see still a kind of domination from the think team. can see now Malmö 
in ball possession. Players on the water. And now we see a free spot. Is it? Oh, they want to give it hand over hand. Intercepted here by number 31. This could have been a chance. It looked very, very, very calm, this attack. Two players here looking at each other, and they want to spend a lot of time to get each other. Now here in the offense now, number 32, passing to Nielsen with number nine. And you can see that the Orcas are going to heat the pressure up, but then intercepted now. And there's Meganold with the number four going all the way. Stopped by Nielsen here with number nine, but passing down his teammate going from the other side. There's a free spot, Nyamar, number 95 here. And there are. And here we are. Still a very tough and intense game. First four minutes, 30 already played. And there's a pass to Andreas Magnus, but he's blocked already. Just to remember. The Swedish team here, just with 10 players and small, like a short interview before the quarterfinal. The captain, Andreas Bergenholz, just informed me that due to some personal and private affairs, some of the teammates couldn't make it here. Oh, this was a great pass. <clears throat> well done, also executed, but intercepted as well. Look down, look down. And we see Nodi, referee coming to the surface. Looking, there's some conversation going on here. It's white three ball, white three ball. White three ball, so three throw, so there might be a warning for the Danish team. Cause they highlighted something. Else. When the referee comes to the surface, there's always a reason for it. A matter of communication, seeing something that was un unhappy for him, is also showing with the finger. And now we can see a player here blocking inside trying to implement the Merla, which is a quite cool move here, twisting around. <coughs> Still seeing here Malmo with the effort in the offense. And there we go. Still pressure. There's Bergenholz here, the captain, recognized with the white armrest. And again, Sweden, Swedish champion for Malmo. Having the ball in the corner, playing here, back and forth. Again, attacked, intercepted. The 24 it is. But here. <coughs> Dennis champions from Flipper, they started quite well into this game. Had at least the first two minutes. We see Rasmus Nibir, number 14, playing now forward. And here intercepted. Well done. Number 31 here. Oh, passing down. This was a fail pass. Intercepted. Heavily on the other side. This might be a free spot here. But it took them too long. Lucky. Lucky for the Danish team. Luckily they didn't execute this here properly well. So now Sweden and Denmark back in ball position. Pass here through. From Philip Mund in the center. And we can see here Junior, number seven, passing down. And now the Danish heading here, the lever. Being now in control of the ball, trying to implement their team attack. Waiting still in the corner. This is a kind of an opportunity, of course, after a certain pressure face from the opponent to just spend some time in the corner to give your teammates a chance to exchange bringing flash players in your attack in your game style or maybe even the right players in place and now we can see here Philip Mundo was 13 in the place also implementing for the mailer uh, it looks like a bit is pushing number 95 here from Malmö but the referees here giving it letting it go and again, game style, a great pass to number 31 here, who's going from the opponent side. Unfortunately, he's making it to the surface. He would have stayed underwater. There might be a, a bit more of a chance. And this is also very, very critical since the Swedish team is also quite effective when it comes to counterattacks. This is something they really need to care about. 
not losing the ball in the offense, into center, because the fast breaks from Sweden are very well known and very efficient at the same time. Again, Mikael Rasmussen here with number 14, going into the one-on-one -on -one passing on the other side. Oh, he's following the ball again. And this might be a good opportunity. And now we see still Flipper here in the pressure position, going all the way in, rushing. Andres Bergholz here, yeah, waiting for the pass. This was very well foreseen. He in, like he was waiting for the clear pass and then to intercept successfully. However, he was not able to bring the ball fully okay. under control. This is a 1-1 one -one fight here. One by the Danish team, and here we see how the forwards, how offensive orientated here the team is. Michael Rush was in the first wave, going down here, putting pressure on the 10 Swedish players here from the very beginning, and then ball down. And again, Denmark with their national champion here from Flipper, putting pressure on it, having still the control now, getting more and more on the lead. 20 seconds left here in this half of the game. And there's a good opportunity, oh wow, almost an empty goal here. There was a gap for the goalkeeper, try to execute it and shoot it. In the gap between the goalkeeper and the ring. Luckily for Malmö, it was not in too open spot. And here it is, the halftime. Half time. Well, half time. well done from both teams so far. I'm quite impressed to be honest by Malmö here just with 10 players is their Thank you. fifth games already so super tough if you can just understand <clears throat> what does it mean to have like two players last in the water just to double check it's it's really really intense um, yeah so we're going now <clears throat> checking what we can see here just giving you another chance to look into what's going on on the field and we see right hand side Malmö just 10 players, as explained by Andreas Bergenholz. Some players couldn't make it here due to the Champions Cup, even the one the championship with Malmö. They're not here representing the team, unfortunately. However, the team made a great way through the entire tournament. Beating up in the quarterfinal, Heizu, and now here in a tie 0-0 against the Danish champion, Flipper. Flipper on the other side. <clears throat> a squad with more than 12 players, so let's see if they're going to make an exchange, bring a fresh player in, or if they're going to continue with the 12. As we can see here in the list, Jens Holt is still um, ready and, let's say, powerful also exchange player. They might come as another opportunity here. However, <coughs> let's see how the team is going to make decision. We're going now into the second half of the first semi-final in the melt or let's say mixed competition we are here let's give it a try looking at some of the highlights but they're not really highlights happening so nothing to podcast oh yeah finally White team ready, blue team ready.
once again. Now we see the Swedish team from Monet's return here trying to bring their game style in the position we can see here. Number 97, Philip Eriksson trying to implement the melee, but there's still a defender between him and the basket. Not well executed. With me right now, back, Bobby. Hello. I was on my break, but I couldn't resist coming to commentate this game. My uh, old team, Mama Triton, them, and the spicy rivalry flipper from Copenhagen. We already highlighted that they are spicy rivalry. <laughs> Both are from Scandinavia. Neighbors, it's always a very, very specific, very, like, unique atmosphere you can find there in the water. Sometimes you even have the feeling the team's not really from Scandinavia caring about <laughs> the total result, but just how the result versus each other ended up. I think um, there's a particular uh, history here because um, once upon a time, uh, Malmo would have uh, dominated Flipper. But uh, for most of the last eight years or so, I'd say, uh, Flippa has probably won about 80%, if not more, of their games against each other. So right, now we can oh, see now Andreas Bergenholz here, number, number four. If he had gotten the ball just then. This will have been great, right? Yeah. But he's also very intense and very long under the water all the time. He's so sufficient and so important for his team in this game. Like we saw in a great interception the first half. He was really waiting for the pass. Yeah. Just followed, look down, look anticipating down. what's going on there. And we see in red. Blue people! In favor for the Flipper. Flipper team. And here we go back. Yeah. So this game is also not only like super interesting, I already said it in the first half, Bobby. Uh, since there are two Danish teams with the, with the spicy atmosphere. I also highlighted this quite unique also the Champions Cup that you find two teams, they ended second in their group, yep. but still making it to semi-final at the same time. Right. So both teams already lost yep. in and their then, group. And then they won the game which they were expected to be the underdogs of. The underdogs, yep. that's the point. So two underdogs here making their way and one of these underdogs will 100% play in the final tomorrow. And which team it will be, like we can see now Sweden here. Passing down here, having it, physically playing around. Oh, uh, drop on the feet, well yeah. intercepted. 24 it is, winning the Frederik Andenberger. Got the ball there on his he feet. Gets the ball back for the and got it. But it's also very well played here by the Swedish. Champion. Here we go, and oh they've stolen stole the goal. Mask. Can he get the ball to the, to the player on the goal? Oh, that was a tackle on the head there. Yeah. It was number six, Jorn Fremlund. Now they have the ball back. Defense in place. He's going to go in. No, he's going to pass it out. And they're going to try and set something up. But no, that loose ball. Look down, look down. Number 13, was he waiting? Stefan Bolandruck. I think they were. Uh, was looking for the call, and ball. here it is. So he was like complaining, holding, holding. and it's getting the Swiss roll. It's quite impressive. We already play here now. We take blue time out. I already highlighted blue it to, out. to the audience. Swedish team here just with 10 players. Blue time yeah. up. So they have Wait. the handicap of also having just two players less and it's changing. And also no like total replacement players yeah. in their hand. We noticed in uh, one of the earlier games that they um, definitely slowed down in the second five minute half. Um, and their strategy was to you know, try and go as uh, hard as possible in the first five minutes of each half and to score that goal and then uh, just you know, play a little bit more safe. But it is very impressive. Um, they do have uh, players there with exceptional conditioning. Um, and yeah, I think playing against a team like Flipper with only 10 and the Flipper having three more players than you. Uh, it's tough, yeah. isn't it? But they're doing a great job. I wonder if this goes to penalties. I wonder what that will look well, like. What's your favor in penalties? <laughs> it's hard to say. It's, uh, it comes down to, I mean, now, now that it's only uh, one, one on one. There's so much more strategy because I think I noticed with the black and white penalty, they need to put the best the sides. first. Yeah. You need to start first because yeah. even you need to, like, if you're losing the first, there's another yeah. round of three where you can put a bit more tactic in. And even every player is just allowed to strike yeah. once and defend yes. once. Yeah. So, where's the point, of course, to keep it? Yeah. If you have a good ball. player in the second, third round, but you're not making it then, because it's decided in the, first <coughs> in the first round of penalties. However, also to highlight here, yep. Flipper might be the team scoring first. 
Do you believe this could be an advantage? Just mentally, how you're gonna play at least in the life, at last five minutes? Would it make sense for Flipper then? I mean, just to make it to the penalty room, knowing that you have an exhausted team of ten that you're going to start yeah. the first. Traditionally, Malmo haven't done great when they come from behind. Traditionally, that's one thing I've noticed. Oh, oh this was a great pass. That was a mail implemented, but then well Tragic intercepted. Miss. Here with the right Carthau, anticipation. About to rip the ball out. Three Malmo players on one flipper player. And they get the ball, but it gets intercepted. Well oh, good retrieval there. He we pass it down to the corner. Gets the ball. It's intense how close even the, the Swedish team gets at least to the scoring point of view. Yeah. We saw Flipper yesterday playing against Alisson. It was also a very tight, close match. Mm. Even it ended in 2 0 in favor of Alisson. But of course, the, the first goal was here. The decision maker because Flipper played more aggressively and more op openly at the end. Yeah. But here again, a very, very well attack. And at this level, like uh, every pass is, you know, a borderline dangerous pass. There are no safe passes, there are also good passes. But also here, Andreas Bergenholz mentioned, mentioned after the, the win in the quarterfinals versus Hesuway and told him, hey, you just played 10, but you made it. And he said, oh, all right, if you have the right 10 players, yeah. sometimes it's even better than have the yeah. wrong 12 players, of course. But it seems like they can really do here, they can really do their magic. Maybe the Swedish champion, Malmö, can they beat Flipper, who ended even Flipper last year's Champions Cup before Malmö. Was it Malmö last year? I'm not sure. There was a Swedish champion. Last year's champion. It could be a different. I'm not sure last if Malmö participated last year. I can't remember. Year. It could have been Pleasen. It's always either Malmö or Pleasen for yeah. Sweden. Attack and stress by the Danish forwards. The Malmö team trying here to implement into the game style. And I'm always super like excited and impressed how long the players are staying on the board. It looks like very calm and very easy even here. Oh, number three, yes, but was already in place, three. wanted to go to the surface, but then staying here, seeing the opportunity, and now again, other, for almost 20 seconds, and still in the place to be ready. Time. Just to also understand that this is a high-level yeah. game, intense game. Oh, here and we here, go, here we go. Number six here now with the... So Andreas Bergenholz was trying to play together with oh. number six, Johan Verlon, and tried to make a blind pass, but he couldn't see it. it. was mainly sitting on the ball instead of just having it in his hands. And there's the fast pass, like fast strike. Philip Munt making here the swim out Bregia of his own half. And then we are again for the first time for a couple of minutes in the first time after the that. timeout in the half of Sweden. So Malmö Spitschow did you really a very powerful game, and this was oh, also nice. an unlucky pass. I really hate it. No, that was an unlucky. Like that was Baron Holtz working it's his magic. It's really this is the <laughs> most annoying situation. You have two players yeah. like looking at each other and saying, "Hey, I got the pace. Say, I have a safe position, but here, take you the ball, and then someone going to intercept you, and the ball got lost." If, if you played against Baron Holtz, you know that it's not all luck. So it's unpity. Of course, yeah, but, but both were like, <laughs> even the Danish players in the situation, they were like yeah. super relaxed looking at each other. Oh, and what was that pass? And they're going blocking each other. Ball that's positioning here by Edwin of the Malmö players getting tired and making these really careless passes. Oh no, it's, it's Tim Jensen here in the one-on-one -on -one now. So we see Philip Mund. Here we go, team. number three, Jesper Larsson. Look down, look down. look down. There's a lot of fights between it's a white free ball. two players. A blue free ball. There's yeah. a blue ball. Yeah. left on the playbook. So, two minutes on the time, running down, and it seems that we might go into penalty. However, from this stage, like in the first half of the game, I saw a bit of favor, more aggressive game style from, uh, from Flipper. But now here in the second half, there was more action so far mm. and more game style, like blending to get closer yeah. to scoring. And now from Flipper Malmer, in my point of view. Stacking their players around the goal. And there again, Andreas Bergman also with a great. Interception, oh, but then he tried oh, to pass his moment, teammate and nervous. But Sweden managed here, and they are now swimming out of their field. So these 10 players are doing an awesome, great job. Where on the other side, even the defense of Flipper is stable. Yeah. So I've not seen a really proper scoring opportunity from either of both teams. So they're really neutralizing everything from each other at the moment. But still the question, one minute left, and it, it seems to be we're going into the final penalty scoring shooting. And then we're going to figure out 
This is what I mean. Now the team here from Flipper might be more inconvenient situation to know we're going to throw first. Maybe this might be the last chance here. Because oh, here we go, here we go. Down. That's an opportunity. Number Can we get the six here. We have all 12 players down around the goal at the same time. Davidson oh, there's still no chance. Mikael Rasmus in here was trying Oh, the defense has completely gone up. Malmö is in a really dangerous yes. situation. Yeah, man, they're struggling now. This was okay. a tough one. I think Malmö, they're just going to try and hold on to the ball. But it was a great counter team yeah. attack, wasn't it? Like, they really looked into it. Like, Rasmus, well, 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 he was in the corner, well, well. waiting for his teammate yeah. to starting a 2-2 situation. And then it was at least like uh, Bastian Davidson in the right spot, getting a great pass, but yeah. he was not able to control the ball. And bring in the it's basket. one of those things that would have practiced a hundred times. And we're running out. Even that's it. Penalty. The goal is stolen. It doesn't care and matter. Okay. So it's penalty shootout. This is the crazy Blue thing. team start penalty on my team. He's breathing heavily. Get he's ready. Done a lot of work here. He's really fighting for his team. But blue now, team ready. That's penalty shootout. Individual fighting. Defense yep, that's blue team offense. start with the ball. Who's gonna be first? Well, and the white team is defending. They want to do penalties right away. They're not waiting one or two. Only that that's point. the point. They really want Only to go that straight. Point. Blue they team, yeah. get ready. White the team, they get always ready. waited two minutes. Yeah, and this gives a bit now. Yeah, making kind of the session, of course. Ut. They try to save oh, some time. Like Andreas, of course, a smart person, going there, yeah. having a discussion, but even Flipper, they're already ready. I mean, okay. the advantage you definitely in this situation is on the Flipper side, because the first attack, there yeah. is definitely a weak player in the water who is yeah, not blue team fully starts recovered. Yeah. So the first one is an almost easy okay. access. You can, you can do this strategically. You can uh, yeah. just first come defender, you don't just let anyone in. You don't put your best defender there. You just accept that. Okay, they're probably you can even keep it empty or whatever. Yeah. But I would, of course, not give away what? the spot. Number just six. having someone <laughs> maybe trying to catch the ball or grab the ball. Rather than have the really best player who might be the 100%, like the best yeah. opportunity to, to defend it. Maybe you try to make it to the second round, but of course, yeah, the you other hand, you need a great striker. The second round or the third yeah. round. That's yeah. it. You need a great striker. Now we defender number six. Ready! Johan Fernlund and attacker number 31. Cast the throw. Who's going to win this exciting semi final? It was a great performance, at least from both teams so far. And now we're trying to go to figuring out. What they can oh. do, oh, this is well executed. Number 31 hey. here. Scoring Blue point. 31. Blue 31. And we see Nielsen, all the pens, yeah? Mike Steen here. Blue. Goalie, Blue, over here. One, zero. So we see Andreas oh. Bergenholz with number four. Over here, Take come on. Next. One of the, what you ready? let's say, most established veteran what national for? players. Who is goalie? Here now. Also well famous for a lot of penalty okay. shots we've seen in the World Championships, European Championships, what Nordic Championships, Euroleague games, whatever, and also of course in the Champions Cup. Let's see, he's defending versus Mikkel Rasmussen. So there are some very, very experienced two players fighting each other, and it seems like they're really enjoying it, but... Nice. Doesn't oh, matter. Okay. One more. Well experienced, well done here. Makes it look so what easy. a make. Yeah, he makes it looking so easy. And he's Which done his number? job now, yeah. so he already attacked. The only chance he has is to defend. Three. Yeah. What, what he means is, of course, he's not Blue going number. immediately to defend because he needs to breathe. Yeah. But I also expect to see him in the third round if there yeah. will be a third round. I right? think so too. Yep. So it's 1 1. Uh, it's white number 4. And we see white number 4 scored. Yeah. And we're waiting for the next. It's like a first round of penalties has been done. Both executed, one, one. And we're going to be excited. Who's making it into Ooh, the final? I didn't expect to be this nervous. <laughs> team scoring goes in. Team defending goes in. <laughs> Who's going to miss this? Oh, we see number and, uh, two Jesper now. Jesper Larsson. Come on, Jesper. Versus Simon Schaefer. And let's go ahead here. That's uh, Christian's brother. And we see, oh, oh yeah, well yeah. done here. Easy exercise. Yes, Carl Larson. Blue number two score. Simply, like, it was yeah. not a bad attack, but of course, from an attacker point of view. White number well, 10. Well, yeah. As soon as the attacker gets underneath you, it's very hard to do. Who's going? It's very tough. So we see. Blue, keep going. Executing versus number 13. Three. Blue 13. Another one. Yep. Ready? Okay. 
Edwin Morton zum Gänse Philip Mund. Philip Mund hier. He's also Swedish, isn't he? Philip yes, Philip Mund is Swedish. Yeah. So he's playing against at least his his nice. club team. Oh, Good but job, Edwin. Well, well done here, Edwin Mertensen. Right who also scored score. in the quarterfinal. He did. Yeah. So Edwin, he made the once here right a like decision goal here defending. in the game versus Hesse. And now here, also throwing the ball into the heart of Flipper. It's 2-2. 24. Well, well done. Also, yep. Number four, number four, white four. White and four. we're done with the second round. Aber das Ding is, ready? Let's continue. Ready? Number 24 in our attacking. Patrick, on the bank. Yeah, but the thing is, when defending the round three. And this is what we expected. Round three. Yeah. Andreas Bergen also now going here for all in. He's the guy with the long arms here, with the long defense, and of course experience here. Is he able on yet? This is what we expected. Yeah. He's oh. dropping the ball out, but no, 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 no. He needs to stay yeah, on the basket. This was a very, very intense situation here. 20 seconds left. This is not the tough. You see the bubbles going yeah. out of his mask, and trying to, to lose this. Oh, I need to go to the surface atmosphere. But he's really fighting. And, and oh. he was so close. Oh. 24. Frederick Andenberg here scoring versus Blue 24. Andreas Bergenholz. They're so dispiriting when you have to almost have the ball and yeah. then they get away and get to go and surface and breathe. This was really like this, how do you say, like this, this, this balanced situation could have been <laughs> the final. It was like almost like caught by Bergenholz. And then in the next situation, he just rescued himself. Oh it, yeah. The goalkeeper is not allowed to get too yeah. far away. They can, but they cannot actively go away. So this was the opportunity here. Third round. And Carl so Falk needs to score, so otherwise Nielsen, he needs to score highly for Sweden. If he's not scoring, number nine here. Oh, oh. what a kill. Nice. Good job, Carl. Wow. That was right impressive. number one score. We would say like, this is like big balls having such a throw <laughs> here in such a game. Like he was pulling it a bit away, but bam. Um. Goalie right next to the face 89. into the basket. 3-3. Three, three. Attacker. Okay. Both 14. teams executed there. He will defend for Malmo next. Three throws. There we go. Eight, and there needs to be a winner. We're going to do well, this game. If it needs to be, it needs to be it until it's midnight it's or whatever. Okay, ready? Right right Jens score. Vestelin. Okay. And one team needs to against score. Mikael Rasmussen. Mikael Rasmussen. Another great matchup. Both this heavyweights. Awesome. Let's do this. Mikael Rasmussen here. Oh, Jens Mikhail gets the back of Jens. He's behind it. He got it. They're holding hands each other, but now... Gets oh. Jens up. Can he get it? Ah. Mikael Rasmussen here. Putting it. Jens Blue 14 score. tried his best, defending it for 3 Jens is not favor. easy to lift off. <laughs> it's very impressive. And you saw how they're fighting each other with the hands. Yeah. So he was holding like Mikael Rasmussen's arm, right so he's not able really yeah. to fix him. He can't get any pulling up. So if you try it like that, you're still flexible as a goalkeeper. So when you're trying to score, you just twist around and then, of course, trying to get with the head or with the other arm close to the ball and to steal it. All right, 13, number three. We have Stefan Portugak. He needs to score. It's Casper. No pressure. Another both national team players. Ah, taking from above, I'm always like, it's a kind of a penalty. Taking from above is always like a kind of a risk. Oh, he's going to rush it. Oh, oh, this was like he, didn't rush he was it. waiting for that situation, but smartly oh, just stopped the attack. Oh, now you see he held it. Oh, heavily he got the ball back, but this oh, no. now 31 is bringing it no. to the surface. Mike no. Steele, no Nielsen, no here. No the match winner. Uh, is the game over? It's over. So That's the winner okay. is Flipper. That's such a shame. The moment. Very well Flipper played. is the winner. Over. Flipper is the winner.
Ready. So I'm here with Nielsen from here, uh, the uh, flipper team from Denmark. You finally made it. You stopped the attacker. How was it? How did you make it? It was just very tough. Hands on the ball. Fighting all. Let's just keep his arm. As long, keep his arm as long as away from the goal. Yep. Win. Decided to yep. win. So now you win. So now you're playing. So now you're playing in this. Now you're playing in this final. Playing in this final. Are you final? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you, are you happy about you? Are you happy about that? Are you happy about that? We are about that. We are super happy. We are super happy. We are super happy. Yeah. Super happy. Yeah. We very. Yeah. We very very happy. Yeah. We very very happy about it. Yeah. Very very happy about it. Yeah. So thank you. Good luck for tomorrow. Right. See you. Thank you. Exciting first semi final, it was, wasn't it? So now we are back here. Just rushed to Quiet, interview please. our kind of match winner, Flom, the flippers. We saw number 31, Mike Steen Nielsen, who defended the final penalty throw versus Stefan Podracek. And now we are here in the second semi final. And this is the other side of the medal. Now, after the game, ready? where we had two teams being White second team ready? in the group, we now have two in favor. It's Alison from Norway versus DOC Krefeld, the German champion. Some people said already, like here in the audience, that this could have also been divided because both teams here have not lost a single game and also made a very very great appearance plus also no way as one of the let's say record champions however it was the Molde team Molde this year not the champion Alessund as we learned today from Mario Scare is the first time ever here at the Champions Cup with a quite mixed squad there are some experienced national player like Mario Scarra and Eva Bjornerim, but also some new players from the block they're going to bring to a high level. On the other side, we have the German champion, also a squad full with a lot of national players, but also a lot of Holding. super experienced Holding. league Blue players. Griefeld. They are kind of a record champion in the last couple of years. In the, in the West League in Germany. There has been just one team there in West Germany that has won more often in a row the uh, West League. But now here we see Krefeld, also a team again with a couple of national players and also experience from international competitions such as, such as Göteborg Cup, U League, etc. etc. And also with me, Thomas Denk, who oh just man. asked for a break, but now being with me here back in the track, and also excited, of course, to commentate Super here excited. the second semi final of the day. Already two minutes played, and we saw like no like super exciting situation so far. The teams are going to neutralizing them very, very successfully, each other. So we, have, we basically have two different strategies. We yeah. have uh, the German strategy is hold the ball as fast and as best as you can and don't give it away. And then we have Alessund, who is more like we want to keep the ball moving as much as possible and intercept our opponent. And those two strategies do compare well to each other. If you will be a betting man, on which team you would here put your money on, uh, I'm not considering the strategy? After this weekend, um, 
I have lost my interest in any <laughs> kind of sport bets. <laughs> and giving any predictions no. up to uh, a game. Um, but of course, I'm coming here with, uh, with some German roots background, so I might be not super biased. like biased, however. 100% um, two different game styles. We see Krefeld, they want to have the ball. They want to keep the ball in the rows. They want to just like, like putting the opponent team all the way on the wall and just waiting for the gaps there. And on the other side, we have a very counter-intensive um, orientated team and move Alessund. Coming into the tournament, I would have said uh, Krefeld is going to take it away. We have seen the national championship and they had an extremely strong showing. They also won the Euroleague. Frankly being said, with a uh, little yeah, bit of people uh, here, with a little bit of support from a couple of rather good players from Bumper, but still the the paper players showed up big time in the league as well. Um, after seeing Gouda get on here, he missed, missed his time slot, and there is the opportunity to pass Janik Pipa oh. to Janik Graf, but there's a block. Graf and no pace there, but still a lot of oh, going on. What's quite interesting, if you look on the table, like Alisson, also the Norwegians, like let's say overall, if the national team or the club teams are very efficient when it comes to scores. They're always like, when they're in the, like the, the topper, like the winning team, they're usually winning with a high score. They even like score twice versus Flipper, the other team that is already in the final of today. So Alisson already bet the other final participant. However, Krefeld camps with an kind of a dominant but also quite jilt game and they just scored three goals versus New Jersey and Austria from the team from Vienna which shows on the one hand side that they can score but they're not focusing that much on massive goals and here it's a quite of a weird situation unfortunately the basket is here moving a bit this might be then corrected in the next break but it shouldn't be like that but it was quite interesting how, how the ball like the basket was swimming on it sometimes it is when there's some water but when they lost the fiction, yeah, um, well, the basket is hard for him. Yeah. It's, it's like, like swimming floating, around here. Floating. But yeah, you see Rafael so far being a very secure team, keeping the ball amongst their own players. And Alisson certainly has been, and also in this game will be, relying up to a certain extent on their capability to have those very strong, very efficient counter-attacks. They've showed us over and over again that they can utilize their speed and if you give them an opening, they will crush in. And uh, yeah, we, use, you know, we see David Kreisig here, who is now on the Diane. kind of spot, oh. making the block for Martin Meskus, but here, Eva Björnerem stealing the ball. This is also a very, very dangerous situation. Of course, if he gets the ball, he's the, 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 the lucky winner here, but if not, Let's see if the referees are using this opportunity now to fix the basket. Be, it might be a punching call. Yeah. It might be important yeah. now here to put a basket yeah. in the right punch. position. We just, put, we just move the basket, just a second. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there's a technical break here to just fix the basket to bring it right back to the place. And here we are still again. It is a call from the referee on the surface, just highlighting who we can see here from a referee point of view. So we have Tommy so from Denmark on the direction? surface together with Esteban from Colombia and Raphael under water. It's a wide free throw. Wide free throw, so it was an out of bounds call. Ball, ball out of bounds. So it is a very, very well so experienced punch. referee team here being with us. Oh, very well intercepted here. Great fortune, but Manuel Gassner here stressed the player. And here now, Martin Meskes intercepting both strikers of both national players and both are played in the final of the World Championship in Montreal. And here we go then. But he must is looking for his teammate. And here we go, number nine. He's going all the way. And uh, Lucas Matias Mesquez here. Martin Mesquez's brother trying then in the pass oh, down. Good opportunity. Number five Four with the opportunity five. here, we see it. Sasha Borges it was <laughs> passing down again ah, to Martin Mesquez. And the game is now in heat. First really, really big chance here for Krefeld. Basket yet again moving, taking away the match from the player. It's just a pity here, but it was a great scoring opportunity here from Sasha in minute seven of this game. So 
Three minutes to go. Oh, empty basket for a moment. And it's also again Sasha here, who is now stealing oh, the basket and waiting for his teammate. Couldn't, couldn't go in. Still However, waiting. Geran here with number 23, spinning around, looking for Mariemeskes. And again, his brother here on the other again, side now, Can he waiting for out? the pass. But there's no free spot. Again here, ball on the other side. You can see the defenders just coming in last Very moment, trying to accept. Right, it's going to be intercepted. Again, and now fast break opportunity for Norway. Axel Nicholson here, we can see with the number 16. And Max Vigar Hansen here in the one-on-one. -on -one. Just shove him out. This is Max Kuyten. Max Kuyten trying to get the ball back, trying to shove him out. There's a lot of bounce still in the game, still hot. And Yannick Pieper here intercepting, passing to Yannick Graf. And again. So it is, of course, something that we need to present like even it doesn't look very very like again. dangerous when we see the Norwegian team in the offense here it can be from moment to another oh, good immediately deal. resulting in score we have player positioned perfectly at the basket trying to open up some space but has to move out now it seems like the Clever team becomes a bit more dominated here. The first chance with Zasha already on their side. So Zara Bogus here, minute seven, with a chance to score from the open side. Prove the ball versus. Oh, oh good fake. A great attack. Coming in from the backside. However, defended well defended here, but this was super fast. Yeah. So well done. And, and again, ball dropping down here. Clever stepping the up the game out. Ellen. Getting the ball possession and again here. Team Pass into the middle, Graf again. To Yannick Pieper. And we see. Ball again. Drops into corner. Yeah, we can see those players, those forwards, and very, very from Graf are doing so much work, continuing to follow the ball. One minute left here. One, One minute, minute left in this half of the game. First half. Very exciting half. Replay is available. Can move in. Kaisik waiting. Keeper also. Oh, yeah, down oh, Kaisik being attacked from the goal. Number 16, Axel. Uh, Axel Mikkelsen. Mikkelsen here. But still, he brought the ball out, didn't lose it. This is also one of the power of the Oscar Vico, good recovery attempt for Norway, going for the ball. And it's something that I really appreciate from both teams. You can see the ball handling of both teams. How fast, how quick their hands are, how quick they're moving, how precise they are. Even the control, are. even they're yeah. being surprised by an attacker yeah. from a ball or from the blind Out side. Out of bound, they're not losing free throw. Immediately, they're really fighting from the last minute, even keeping the control, which is super impressive. Just remembering how massive the players are. They're like pumping on each other. Many killers we see here in the water rushing. And there we are. Martin Meskes going in head first, trying to pass the ball, but there was no receiver available on three. And this is the half There we go. Exciting, exciting. Pure Second excitement. semi-final, three minutes off the break. Incredible. This is not a highlight, it's just bouncing. But there have been some highlights. Just highlighting, this may be a one. We're gonna see here, this was the fake kind of pass from Yannick Pieper, yeah. our receiver. And this might be the best opportunity from Zasha. Getting the ball. Getting the ball, tried to pull it in, and then the basket moved a bit, such a pity. But Sasha Bulgashir in minute seven of the first half with the, at this point of stage, best opportunity to score. Yeah. And so we see uh, the game is kind of rolling, uh, evolving a little bit in the way that we've been talking about. Norway being the more defensive team. Uh, whilst, uh, whilst, um, uh, whilst, um, Krefeld is more on the offense. Uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but Krefeld is the more offensive team, uh, trying to score onto the Norwegian basket in Norway, waiting for their opportunity to counterattack and such good attempts from all the forwards from Norway and from the defenders. So now we can see surface view, like emotional view, close into the corner, into the circle of the cannot hear. 
Thomas, just being in this situation, as a coach of Krefeld or maybe Alisson, what would you tell the team? Uh, in terms of Alisson, uh, I should be focusing on One minute. Stay, stay strong on defense, disrupt them as best as possible, try to get the ball and then initiate the counter attack as quickly as possible, bring the biggest when you get the ball back and try to create those opportunities uh, during those fast breaks. Then on the Krefeld side, um, I think they they have been doing really well so far, trying to set up up to the on oh, my headphones, and what probably means making me crazy. Um, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Um, so on the Krefeld side, i got to be honest, they are doing a really good job. They are very present at the Allison basket, but they are lacking a little bit at finality, a little bit of final execution when it comes to bringing the ball into your teammates and helping each other out then under the basket. So they have a very stable offense so far and they are controlling the ball incredibly well. But so far they only could create one really pressing chance. Pressing so chance. maybe and not even a scoring chance, yeah. it's a pressing chance. Yeah. And they even struggled to keep the ball close. Yeah. So I'd say to the maybe move a ready? bit closer to the basket, closer together so you ready? can move more swiftly. But we'll see how they approach the second half. And here we are, second half now starting. And you will see Alisson getting away Alisson with the ball. Alisson now having the ball. Going to go close to the basket. At this stage, both teams here winning their group have won all their games so far. Alisson, Bet, Flipper, the other team that made it to the final already, won the, se like the first semi final here, the Mascaris. previous game. 1-2-0. Vasquez moving forward. And what, I, what I so much appreciate about those Krefeld plays and what we've seen already during the EuroLeague as well as the German National Championship, them being able to keep the ball moving and keep the ball um, playable and not being able to lock them up, I think, is one of their biggest strengths that those players bring to the team. And it's creating so much opportunity around the opposing basket if you are able to keep the ball uh, available and playable rather than being locked up which we see as a tactic so much but now fast break opportunity for Norway trying to Hansen push away Hansen. and the pass is down Ooh. executed he has in the middle he stopped by Yannick yeah. Pieper so now we see here number 99 who's not on our list maybe he forgot maybe he got a spare shirt a special opportunity here. All right, and Gassner. Here, Manuel Gassner. Getting the ball possession here. Stealing the ball here, going, making going all the forward. meters, rushing here through the Alisson basket. He always reminds me as a kind of an NFL player that just goes all the way against Tank. this massive players. Tank or running back, small running back who's just shoving through. And here we are, David Kreisig, we can see here, passing. Gassner still in the offense and we can see Max Keiting here trying to steal a spot at the defender position at the Allison basket yeah. but but not only no stealing, stealing the spot of defender but disabling the second defender from coming in and the picking up change, right? the proper position um, disrupting the exchange of the defenders uh, which is such an important thing to have a fluid motion from a defender coming from the left or from the, from the open side now Max Keiting trying again Getting to get onto the Norwich basket has to move back to the middle though. You can see left. How, how flexible that would be. Um, yeah. Gasner coming in again, again. Moving the ball to the left. Oh, the get, getting locked up a little bit forwards and ball taken away. Yeah. Good effort again by Norway. And yet again, Oscar V coming away with the ball. Touching the face quite nice pass. And I think Marius Borega. No, it's Eva Björneman. Oh, and I ah. expected the play to be there. This could have been a great opportunity. David Greisig here. Stealing the ball. Oh, and this Ooh, was the ball still in possession for Norway, uh, right above the oh, goalkeeper. Wow, the goalkeeper wow, 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 pulled this up. This is the first really good opportunity here that we can see oh, about attacking there's a call. the head. They're attacking the head. We saw now David Rice in the out. He's normally like a goalkeeper, and in this position, he was like, of course, saw an Eva Bjorner in number seven, like passing the ball on the other side, like a blind pass, and he was expecting one of his teammates. Yeah. David Rice anticipated it, and he took the ball. You saw how happy he was, but he was also not right like like ready for an impact yeah. and then another player from Allison immediately attacked him and got the ball and this made the situation so dangerous yeah so this is really what they need to take care of they're playing more smart even here Yannick Pieper a bit 
too lazy with the ball when he gets the pass. So now Krefeld needs to really wake up and take it more serious than not playing around too much, not taking the situation here, the, the ball control too lazy. <laughs> Otherwise, they will open the opportunities in the spots for Alisson here. And then we can see Yannick Reisig here passing to Geram, double pass, passing back and back forth. And forth. Ball and goes I, down. I wouldn't say lazy, it's a um, matter. Oh, yeah, there was an attack, but the ball was not in, it was close to the basket. Sasha Bogic again, who had the great opportunity in the first half of this match. Yeah, defenders missing there for a short point in time. And I think yeah, it's, it's, here, it's a game around. of who is able to concentrate better, who is able to make less mistakes in this game. And at the end it might come down to penalties if both teams keep playing like this. And uh, We already saw in the first semi-final penalty shooting. Mesquez. Who would you say will be in favor in this? Ooh, it's if we will come with a penalty shooting. It's, it's difficult this to say, to be honest. Um, I would say in terms of how we see that Krefeld is controlling the game, um, in a three-man penalty shootout where you get three attempts, um, I would probably favor Krefeld because uh, Eva Bjornemann can score one. He's the one points. who's taken the first attempt, uh, um, but he's not allowed to defend afterwards. So um, they have to rely on the other players. But then again, I, it's very hard to judge the young Molde players, how they will hold up. In Alisson players. Uh, other players, sorry, Alisson players. So you stayed over the last years, the last decade. Um, very hard to judge how the young Allison players and their mental is holding up in, in a game like this. Martin also Meskes. great here how Martin Meskes holds the ball yeah. in like with his full body in touch with the opponent and still yeah. having the ball like super controlled in an open arm and open hand. Oh, and good opportunity, Kreisig coming, coming in. From coming from above. This was also well. But oh, and there it is. Oh, Alain good here. Alain the with the great Alain. opportunity. Oh, oh. Yannick Pieper. Yannick Pieper scores for Germany by assist that of was a Ellen. Beautiful stretch of place awesome. from Krefeld. We can see the setup for the play. Mesker starting it off, right. keeping the player, the opponent Time under up. control, passing the ball a little bit backwards under his back, then the Blue. quick pass underneath the basket. What a love story here. Yannick Pieper, the youngest player in the team of Leverd. He's just 20 years. He just played doesn't, doesn't this really look season like it, under yeah, right. 21. <laughs> He's massive. I just saw him like a couple of days. I was like, what Incredible, are you going to yeah. eat, you boot then? He says, hey, three times per week. Fruchtzwerge, 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 three times per week. Gym, three times rugby. And he's making me in this shape. And then he's just here. He played at the World Championship. He played also last European Championship. He played international on the Nordics with the German team. So he's even a strong part of the national team. And here now, he's scoring in the semi-final of his first ever Champions Cup. How crazy is this, please? Awesome. As me as a junior coach <laughs> from Germany, it makes me it makes, it makes me so really proud. Yeah. Yannick Bieber, thanks he for gets, the score. He gets too excited. But still, Alisson. This, this, game, game, is is this game, game is far from over. This game is far from over. This game is not over yet. Yeah. So just sorry for this small excitement here. Just having my small. German roots. <laughs> However, Alisson. You get you get your hour of bias ah, today. And we know, we know <laughs> Alisson. They have strong players. Yeah. We know Eva Björneren. He's always good for a goal. So this is 100% not over. And we're waiting and we're seeing him May having know? the ball in May the May hand. In the water? He's waiting now. Going strong. Let's do this. And what can we do here? 45 is swimming. Getting the ball down. Ooh, good stretch coming in. Oh, good effort ah, by the defender. By yep. Manuel, but there's still Gassner. four minutes to go. So now, Graf. Alisson, they need to score here, but they already scored against other trade teams like Flipper, the other uh, finalists. But here right now, of course, Krefeld playing with the physical game. You see now Geram and being it, here. It is always fascinating to me how, how mobile they are keeping the ball, how well they can, yeah, it is just peak level underwater rugby right now. And Max Kaiden here also like playing with his opponent, like Simon defending Reed. it just with the feet. Yeah. And you can see so you can easy. see the forwards from over now moving very far out, and they are just having one player back coming in at the last point in time. The they need to get a ball. Like, good they effort there. The ball, but there's another player, Max Kaiden. His teammate are just waiting. Solabake. But Try of course, now Alisson needs to throw everything. And you can see the, the young players, the there. young forwards going once, yeah. twice, attacking three players in a row, just staying down. And Krefeld now with their game plan controlling the ball, but you see how much trouble they have, only having one player available. There's an, and attack, on the, the there's an attack on the head now. Favor right. yeah. for Krefeld. Yeah. So three minutes left here in the second semi-final. Giving them a little bit of breathing room right now. 
It's the first year for Grefel. Are they going to make it in the final? This is the big question mark we're going to have here. Defensive execution of the free throw, but good interception. Mm -hmm. Patiently waiting there. Our player with the number nine, 99 jersey. <laughs> oh, food, a risky yeah, pass on him behind up. his back, but he's surely it's waiting for a play. Meskis Meskis yeah. To the scorer here, Yannick Pieper with the 68 and LM. And if this game is going to end like this, we're definitely going, definitely going to see Yannick Pieper in the interview right after. <laughs> But still, game is not over. Two minutes here. Two minutes still left. It's so fantastic to see how those And now you see Alisson. They need yeah. to invest getting the ball. But of course, this is a very outfield. Yeah, they are. They see. Going, going, going for and the ball. Call. call by the ref. Oh, you see here, shaking yeah. hand. Of course, they Might could not believe it's still a favor. Could be. Off. I think it's a favor of Krefeld kind because of he punched Holding. the ball. Now, of course, they take Blue the time. Green. But still, I'm also Holding. really happy about it. Krefeld is not just playing here unfair, just scrambling, whatever. But this also, you can always the same issue. You're starting the three throw, there's always a player behind you. How can you be that uncarefully? Like, but still, they're having the ball. David Kreisig here, number two versus number two from Alisson. Two so players. number two deal, Simon then, then David. You can see Krefeld, they, they are investing two players up front, but yet they are having, again. having two players at least back to try to defend a counterattack. So they are not risking anything to let anybody pass through. They are using two to three players to control the ball. Keeper again. He's been surprised. Attacked by two. Still passing. Oh, and there's the interception. Intercepted now. Can this Oscar is Wieck a chance. Go, go. Give the ball. Give Oscar the ball. Wieck. Alisson, Oscar you need to go in for it. Go for it. Oh, passing pass number 17 here. Oysten Winsel. Buddy Janik Graf is getting the ball. Get still. Bounce here. How exciting is this, this match? Favor, favor for Alisson. Alisson still in the game here. 40 seconds left. They need to execute now fast. Go, guys, go. What's time going out. on here? Blue. Time out. Time out. Blue. The time out from the white team. So, what can we expect now? Alisson, 30 seconds on the clock. Last execution, bring the top six players in the water, and then we see it. Such the situation is Now we need to look. 35 seconds, the last attack, the last chance. All six players here from Alessandra waiting there, stealing the basket. And it is Krefeld here. Is Krefeld having the ball? It's an incredible. Six players here around, and then it's Manuel Gasta together with, who is it? Martin Meskes again, intercepting here the ball, just handling it, and then last 10 seconds of the match. to the finals here on the Champions Cup. Congratulations for our first time candidate, Rehfeld. Do you see Rehfeld? First time winning the national championship here for Germany over the last least 20 years. And then superb gameplay from Rehfeld, the pass down the back, the execute from Yannick Pieper. Such a strong game from this incredibly young team. And we are sure, super excited to see them play in the future. 
being the more pressing team here during this play, moving into finals without penalty shootout, beating Alisson, the Norwegian champion, with a very young team as well, showing us such a great underwater rugby over this entire tournament. So congratulations to both teams. Alisson now playing for third against Flipper. Uh, sorry, against uh, Malmö. They already beat Flipper once. And uh, yeah. Yannick Pieper ist bei mir hier vom DOC Krefeld. Yannick Pieper, wer muss ich mehr bedanken? Du bei Alan oder das Team bei dir für diesen Score? Nee, es ist also eine absolute Teamleistung. Also da geht der Dank ans komplette Team. Wir haben hart gearbeitet, die ganze Zeit angegriffen und dann, was am Ende die Chance da war, ist absolut vom Team die Leistung. Mann, du bist doch keine 20 Jahre alt. Dieses Jahr, 20 Jahre, aber noch keine 21. Du hast in diesem Jahr Weltmeisterschaft gespielt. Du hast die Deutsche Meisterschaft das erste Mal mit deiner Mannschaft gewonnen. Jetzt bist du hier beim Champions Cup im Finale. Was ist noch dein Ziel für heute oder für morgen? Ja, natürlich gewinnen auf jeden Fall. Also wir sind fest entschlossen, das Ding nach Hause zu bringen. Ich glaube, jetzt haben wir absolut Blut geleckt und ich glaube, da können wir morgen absolut drauf hoffen, dass das auch was wird. Janik Pieper, ich bedanke mich bei dir und viel Erfolg morgen. Ja? Six in the water, please. Teams get ready. Six in the water, please. That is okay. Light ready, dark ready. Coming into the next game, Barcelona in blue against Firenze in white. And we see Barcelona immediately being the pressing team. <laughs> to from now on only take photos with our new unofficial official sponsor. <laughs> so you have to put the, the shots. We can't be caught drinking Red Bull anymore. All right. Ah, oh, the weather for shot and the weather so high. Balón. 
so far. Nearly 10 hours of un uninterrupted on World Rugby. But there's an interrupted defense. Bringing three players coming in from the side. Good attempt. Bring the ball to the left. Great execution. Not ready. Not positioned properly. Very careful with the ball. Like, try not to make too many risky passes. Maybe it's something they talked about after the last game. But, oh, very good ball stealing from Barcelona. Excellent counter attack, gets past. Oh, almost gets it in. They have really improved their swimming and their stamina speed. You can see a lot of, a lot of their players from Barcelona being yeah. super fast, very mobile, agile. A lot of the big players are also quite fast too. It's not just the small, skinny guys. Here we go. Ooh, got a great recovery. Uh, Samuel Moski, for Italy. 37. He looks like one of the more experienced players. Yeah. You can often tell just kind of by the, the body language, how they move. Yeah. Very yeah, it's, tell. it's the assertiveness that you have and just confidence, the, the confidence and the way, yeah. The way you move the body, how you hold the ball, and just your eyes. There you go. Nice pass. Back again to the... Gets his head under the goalie's head, passes it to the far side, and then the takes the Come on, touch the wall, guys! The three outs here, both teams touch the wall before they start. Reds gets through the four checking, goes in the corner, can we get out of the corner and make something useful happen? Just trying to hold <laughs> the ball, waiting for his teammate to come down. A little bit behind the ball, ball behind the back, and then just pop, pooping it out <laughs> underneath. <coughs> it's, the, it's the butt turtle defense. Yeah. It's also when somebody's sitting on the basket waiting for the ball. To yep. uh, I'll say it's he's trying to poop it in. So coming in <coughs> from the left, Berente trying to set up a play. And I think they looked really solid so far against Barcelona. I mean, Barcelona played a super physically intense game against Vienna today. Okay, in the last game, which ended so in a tie. Tired. So, they certainly, I think, take the speed down a notch here. Play a bit of more of a conservative for the last game against uh, Brent. So far, Brent's doing, <coughs> doing a very good job defending uh, throughout the better stretches of the first half. Showing that they are willing to start for start uh, strong fast breaks and uh, try to bring the ball into Barcelona's half, setting up opportunities for themselves. But again, we can see Barcelona oh, a move with a lot of speed. Just lack <coughs> a little bit in the timing, but that was a very good, good setup. Above the basket. Barcelona. Taking it in the corner. Okay, now they're going to beat the meat ball. <coughs> you can see them not rushing anything. They have all the time in the world there. They can take it a bit more slowly. Have one more game to play. 
there for the Bratislava again. <coughs> oh, no, already here. Me and my boss also cracked a little bit. Here we go. Just trying to get the pass under the back. Manages. And then we get the pass into the corner. There we are. Go for the pass corner. Big pressure. Number 22. Number 22. Three people to attack the goalie directly. for the Barcelona player. <laughs> that was a very strange thing. Good one, two passing, but red by the forward. He's by himself, so he rips out the Barcelona player. Goes straight down to the goal, which he finds one to pass to. It's just a big meat ball around the goal right now, and we have the ball in the corner. The defender of forward on top. Half time. Exciting games in the bottom bracket. And uh, in the first half for them, Barcelona playing it, playing it down rather smoothly, waiting for the opportunities. So well played by them. Certainly <laughs> going to be a flip <laughs> <first Okay>. <laughs> So we and then the bronze players will be at also versus the So we first of all certainly will have a one minute top spot here at the Champions Cup. Danger and then one to Germany or Denmark and I think Denmark has a money at least uh Let's see, let's see how it goes. Because there is the trophy right behind us. So we have... Yep, wait, let's start from the start. Which year? We have... Um, 91. Sweden. Sweden, Duisburg. Yeah, yeah, but we... And then all cross. Yeah. So no German teams, so and no uh, Danish teams. And I think Germany as well. Maybe maybe during the Masters Cup area. I'm not sure about that. Dark ready, Sometimes. white ready. Yeah. Right. So second half, Firenze versus Barcelona. 
start and they get it. Is it going to be a goal? Straight up going for it, but Very cannot. Nice set up. Well done by the goal to shift at the last second, not well, giving him enough leverage. Sneaky last second punch onto the ball. <laughs> Yet again. Good read by the back. Yeah. Firenze holding up strong oh, against Barcelona in this first one and a half minutes. Barcelona, though, pretty relentlessly going for the Firenze basket. I say just pump up your biceps and be stronger. <laughs> no, but that doesn't teach you how you can help your uh, oh, okay. teammates when they're locked up. Just grab, grab the wrist and pull. Yeah, of the other player. <laughs> yeah. The teammate. yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> but no one seems to do that. I uh, know. It seem, seems to be a little bit of basic yeah. physics. <laughs> it seems to be your teammates see that you're, you're locked up and then they put their hand on the ball, which doesn't help. No. <laughs> you see that not even you know, in the middle and even top team. Player teams. removal is the best removal. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> In friendly terms, of player, course. <laughs> oh. player availability and player removal. Okay, so we have a holding call. Free throw. Can't be available if you're uh, removed first. Dark. <laughs> Sorry. Can't be available if he's removed yeah. first. <laughs> Two meters. Right. So we have a free throw. <laughs> Interestingly, a free throw for Barcelona whilst being a, press a yeah. pressing <laughs> team. Advancing onto Firenze's basket. It's a, that is a bit of a mixed feeling call. Yeah, so Barcelona. Taking it really slowly now. You can see them suckling. Circling the basket. Nice. Now, good, good, opportunity. good opportunity. We see a nice block here on the left. Players swimming in. <coughs> well, well set up by Louis de Abreu. Second wave coming in strong. Great job improving them. There we go. One more player coming in. Expected his teammate to be on the other side. Tried to punch the ball through. Nice. Yet again, Gets nice cut. pass. Does he get the leverage? <laughs> they get the pass, but having perfect yes. positioning, but then again being the smallest player available. <laughs> well, there we go. Number 22 swooping in. Andre De Paco. White timeout. They just kept coming. And that's what you got to do. Timeout light. Now there's a white timeout. timeout. Timeout white.
Ikumaris versus um, the next game is Ikumaris against uh, Hesu. Yeah. What was Hesu get? <laughs> it's getting late. It's getting late. <laughs> Uh, and Somiak. Somiak, yeah. So, white timeout coming to an end. Firenze are recovering a bit. And we'll see five more minutes. Five more minutes of pressing on World Rugby, but Barcelona already back in possession of the ball. Frente. Yeah. 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 Oh, but the play in the middle left, breaking the triangle. I think it's quite interesting how Frente is defending because they are having two defenders quite often underneath the basket, rather than opting to have a forward. Mm. Did you notice? No, I two defenders, so it's actually yeah. Might be a forward um, acting as a defender. There's a forward there coming in, yep. Oh, yet again, good opportunity. Ball being passed around the basket. Tries it again. And Aferente coming out ahead with the ball. Moving out. Moving out for the day, having the last game tomorrow. Barcelona playing it down calmly. Three minutes to go. Waiting for some more players to be available. Yeah. <coughs> oh, nice. good, uh, good attack. Ooh. Ramming. Yeah. Coming in with a lot of speed. Yeah, now you can see this definitely two Daniel Jimenez. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> Goal for dart number 19. Yep, number Colombo. 19. Yeah. Or as you might know him as Jose Miguel Castro. Nobody knows him yeah. under his name. Oh, here we go. Castro oh. coming in and they can go bam. Yep. yep. Mind the gap. <laughs> Jose Miguel Castro. Doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't have to actually. <laughs> I think uh, as the night wears on, we're going to end up just saying people's names and funny voices. Aren't we doing already? <laughs> so Barcelona playing a super solid game here against Fiorentina. And it's quite interesting if you compare the game Firenze played against um, Zurich. Yeah. It's so interesting how those teams compare to each other. I think the, those Spanish names might actually be <laughs> a little bit misleading there. Of Player origination and origins, origination, origins. So, but they've done an incredible job of just um, getting stronger while down here again. Goal, who scored? Goal for Dart, who scored? 
Number one. Albert Rodriguez. Number one goes for dark. Yeah, it's just a okay, solid execution on. from Move him. It. Yeah. Twenty nine seconds to go. Second half, game number forty six. Now the ball's just being locked up. Three second now. Coming one more. Four seconds to go. Match powering and through until the last Matt second over. of the game. And there we go. Barcelona beating Firenze with a very solid game. 6 0. In the lower bracket so far. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to move into the next game. A little bit more. On back to the women. Women's League. We have the Black Mermaids, and it's, it's is it still prelimi preliminary rounds for the female teams? <laughs> That's kind of I, th I, I think I think they only they play all against each other. And then if you win groups, you're in the finals. Yeah. And there's no more chance to get up or down. So I think Black Mermaids playing against the Paris Titans right now is their ticket into the finals, Bobby. So it might be uh, Sweden versus uh, potentially Colombia in the finals. So the hi movement. everybody, I'm here with Andreo uh, from the Barcelona champion here from Spain. Yeah. You scored two times. How do you made it? Uh, it was a tough game. We just uh, lost. Uh, we won the last match of penalties, and we wanted to uh, great match. And it was nice scoring, but it was a team effort after all. All right. But you, had made, you made two scores overall. So e explain a bit how you could score here. Uh, we knew that uh, the defense was closed, so we just tried to pass the ball and create gaps. And once that gaps were done, it was just uh, through the basket and just had to make the keeper. You mentioned already that you lost like in penalty shootings uh, in the previous one. Oh, no, you won, you won in the previous one. Are you happy with your performance here at the Champions Cup overall with your team? We're happy, but uh, we were expecting more because we just lost uh, uh, two, two matches at the group phase. And that would just let us uh, fight for the ninth place, which was sad, and we checked it uh, to do a bit uh, better. But in the end, it's what it was. But well, there's another match tomorrow, right? Yeah. So what do you predict for tomorrow? Uh, I think, uh, uh, well, just uh, see we are, who we are playing against, uh, try to perfect our uh, look, look the matches again, trying to see what we did wrong, and just uh, try to do the perfect match. Then all the luck for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Get ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going back into the next game. Black Mermaids in black or blue <laughs> against the Paris Titans in white. 
And we're already seeing the Black Mermaids trying to set a statement here at the beginning of the game, taking up all the space underneath the, the Titans basket. No defender, no forward in position, but Titans trying to move forward, trying to lock the ball up. And I've said it to them even before the game. Um, I think they're, they have shown us a very impressive uh, underwater rugby White as a very new in. team. Even if some of the players are experienced rugby players from other clubs coming into France, but yet again, coming as a new club, as a new team, not competing on this level for maybe a couple um, Yeah, absolutely. A whole different journey. Yeah. And it is, you need a... Oh, there oh, oh, we go. Oh. Opportunity for the Titans coming in. Number three. Number three. It is Daniela Linz. A sword effort. Paris Titans. I mean, they are playing the team that going up. <laughs> yeah, they are playing <laughs> against the team that has beaten Akron, and they are currently happily residing in the Black Mermaid's half. And the first goal opportunity. <laughs> yeah, it's an incredibly close tournament on the female side. back and forth and they, they seem rather happy just having the ball amongst their own for now waiting for the opportunity Ooh, but not number three her bottom time is incredible Daniela Linz uh, Black Mermaid's having trouble finding each other Nice pass under the legs. Get the knock back out. So Sweden, after having a very strong initial attack onto the Paris Titan basket, now trying to set up some more action. Oh, here we go. Oh, that is a very good opportunity for the Black Mermaid's goalkeeper. On her. Already a bit shifted. Nice work, number one. Alejandra. Alejandra Valencia. But there again, remember it's coming oh, in back again. Situation beats the backs. Oh, the goalkeeper already the removed. Off. Basket stolen away. Once again, we have Leandra takes the ball out. We need someone to pass to. Number 19 takes the Mid ball all the way inside, right into the corner. And pass the ball. And on all teams, you know, you have a couple of players, at least uh, from the teams that I've seen so far. Some players, they might not be the strongest scorers, but they are those workhorse players yeah. who will do the most underwater time, who will be always available to bring the ball forward. And shout out to all the workhorse players who will barely get on the scoreboard during the games, but they're doing so much for a team over the stretch of a tournament. Terrible to watch. Like Paris Titans are playing like you know, Amaga. Like yeah. You put the Amaga you know, the swimmer, wouldn't have noticed the difference. Call by the ref. Which is incredible to, show, to see that they're going head to head. Taking the head. Wide free throw. So, have <laughs> the Black Mermaids met their match, <laughs> and is, are the Paris Titans scrambling up the group, making Two it a mathematical <laughs> nightmare? <laughs> Wide free throw, two meters. It would be so fun if the group was so tight that it's basically a Mexican standoff. Yeah. And it's, uh, it breaks the Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. 
the result says error. Amazing ball checking there by first Titans. Really giving them a hard time. Look at moment. But now they have an opportunity. No, oh, but she's pull, but pulling back. back. She had an opportunity yeah. to go for the goalkeeper. Turns back. And you Looks see like the Mermaid's very patient. Maybe even a little reluctant to, to go in here. Oh, but now, good go. effort. Number seven, <laughs> Black Mermaid. Did the commentator hard. curse hit again? Emma oh. Lindstrom. Is it reluctancy That's or are they just. Front. Ring for the right position. Good opportunity now for the mermaid. Can she pass the ball? There's no back. Goalie now. Ooh, in position, but the defender missing situation. for such a long, such long time, and such incredible effort by the goalkeeper to keep them off. Nice work on the boards too. You shall not pass. Three minutes and forty seconds. Call by the ref. And we'll be going to see what he's going to say about it. Okay. The ref is on the surface, so. Number. Okay. White team, two minutes for kicking. One ooh, player, ooh. two minutes kicking. No warning, just. That is. There has been a lot of kicking throughout the entirety of the Champions Time Cup. Timeout, white they were, team. Uh, I mean, Timeout, white team. Game against uh, Austria as well because uh, they also got a two-minute, and that's how they conceded the goal. No, it was Havitia. Havitia, sorry. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm getting that mixed up now. Oh, commentator. <coughs> <coughs> yep. yep. Another team speaking a bit of French. <laughs> close, but not close enough. Yeah, that was a bit, yeah. Do you have a replay? Tech team, can you have a replay? Of, uh, I think it's the too late already. Shows them kicks. So Par Paris Titans now with a significant disadvantage here in the first half of the game. Probably. What would be interesting what the top six lineup for yeah. Sweden will be. Ooh, the forward being very aggressive immediately. Yeah. Just so. want to tie the ball up. Yeah, probably. Let's see if Sweden is prepared for such intricate tactics. Very <laughs> consistent and good bottom time for number six. Oh yeah, and a good idea by the forward to just jump out and let the next player in. Mm. Don't breathe. Just go out and let the other in. Oh, good effort by them. Nice. Recovering the ball. Just hold it. Hold the ball. Alejandro Valencia look, trying to look for somebody to pass <laughs> to, but Come nobody. On. Help her out. <laughs> yeah, it's such a difficult decision to think you have one person down one player down and you can of course it's the right decision to have at least one player helping yeah. out you're still secure with at least three players at the back but then again uh, getting scored on when somebody's moving out and opening up um, uh, a hole and mm. giving sweden an opportunity to go in mm. it's very good they <laughs> They're controlling the situation very well. And uh, Swedish aren't as aggressive as I thought they would be right now. You know, they just have a full defense on their side. Taking any chances. So 25 seconds left on a penalty time. Here we go. Number two, Margot. He's been uh, one of the persons ah. who's been building the team. Oh. 
Du hast was, ja. So, Power Play is over. Power Schmay, my dear Black Mermaids. I think the Titans had ball control for most of that, those two minutes. <laughs> yep, Titanic ball control. Oh, I was worried that there was going to be a commentator's curse just there. And, and it was. Go. Nope, still back. On track. Oh, Ooh. immediately trying to go for it as soon as they're the back with six plays and what? Ah, oh, but yet again, she good attempt. Here we go. Oh, now coming in from there. Black Mermaids. <laughs> oh. being, being locked up. Great job, the Paris Titans. Oh. A little bit of a sloppy pass there. Can they recover it? Oh, big mistake. Oh, big mistake. good yet again coming in from above. Oh, <laughs> this game is a nail batter. Holding. Blue free throw, holding. And that is the end of the first half. <laughs> just had an update to the uh, all right first half coming to man to an end Paris Titan was black mermaids tying <laughs> during the first half that is tighter than I imagine anyone it's tighter than tie <laughs> tie tense yep. <laughs> that's the vibe uh, yep cringe factor increasing the longer we go, we'll take a little bit of a break for our voices, keeping our vocal cords safe and sound, and we'll be right back. Teams get ready. All right, second half, Paris Titans versus Black Mermaids. And we are seeing a tight game during the first half of this last preliminary rounds game and uh, on the female side this tournament setup is a bit uh, more specific so on the female side we have two groups of five and if you're winning your group you're automatically in first place and you're playing in the finals so there's no way for the second seed of a group to contend 
against the first seed of the other group to move up as it is in the men's uh, tournament where you have four groups, preliminary rounds, and then uh, the second seeds of each group are allowed to play against the first seed um, of the other group to compete for, um, uh, for the finals. And in this specific case, since Black Mermaid beats Ak beat Akaren, um, a tie or also a loss against the, the Paris Titans, who've been holding up really well so far, would totally shift up the group because, uh, yeah, you have different goal differentials, but then again, at the end of the day, also direct confrontation may come into place. Uh, and... Uh, so Black Mermaids might be fine as well. But now a good attempt. Number six coming in. Pushing ball behind the back of the goalkeeper. Tried to move the goalie up. Couldn't shift it properly. But now second wave coming in. Titans keep going. Titans being such an incredible first tournament. Here in Berlin. Their first ever Champions Cup. As a French team only having constituted during the later years of uh, during the last three years or so so kudos to them playing throw. really really Good well blue free throw. now there's a blue free throw so the ball getting back into Swedish hands now free throw for the Black Mermaids and uh Titans doing a very good job holding them back so far. Hopefully the commentator's curse doesn't hit. Now, oh, <laughs> straight, straight up, straight up commentator's curse. Bobby, what have I done? Gold blue team number. Uh, excuse me, Madame et Monsieur. Gold blue team number five. Oh man, that is that is that is too bad. I think at this point in time, you gotta be honest. The commentator's curse has to be somewhat real. We've jinxed so many teams so far, <laughs> praising them. Then ah oh, man, and they had such a good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Having your neck being choked, kind of a disadvantage, 99% of the time. And the the one percent usually a fetish. <laughs> Going forward, uh, could get a fast break here. And something very interesting that I've been discussing with the Viennese players after the last game. Oh, good, fa good fast break. Coming in, Enes Rando not going all the way. Pulls back. Something. Do they get the second wave? Yeah, three players positioned at the basket. Will they go in? We'll be moving back out. <laughs> what? Meanwhile, me and my shoulder injury <laughs> are working out with just the bar. <laughs> nice one. Thanks, Bobby. Message received. <laughs> Shout out to everybody with a shoulder injury out there. Now, so something we've been discussing uh, after the last games is how interesting it is that some teams um, are able to compete with teams that on paper should be way better than they are, but then they are um, matching the pace and the speed that the other team is um, forcing onto them. A good attack again for the Paris Titans coming in. And, um, but interestingly enough, as soon as they play against somebody on their level, they will slow back down to their comfortable, lazy speed, so to say. And it's, it's quite interesting that those teams are able to of, um, play on such a level but are not able to um, create this type of game style and speed. It has to be forced upon them, yeah. Oh, yet again, a good attack. 
One on one. Goalie holding up strong. Yet again, underneath the back of the goalie. And Sophie, yet other side again. Oh, and there we go. Third time's the charm. Past left, past right, back to left. And this is also something, and Sophie, you can see, well, first of all, uh, Lina Anderson with the score, but something she tries once, notices she doesn't have the proper leverage and the angle or the force, and passes the ball away immediately to the other side, rather than trying for such a long time that a forward would have time to come in and snatch the ball away. Message received. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been super fit all the last years. So three more minutes to go in the second half. meat grinder on the surface. bounds and um, mermaids like mermaids in black with the two zero lead the Paris Titans going for the fast break they're not gonna let this result sit they're just gonna try and try and over and over again Pass to the left, not an attack. <laughs> have to be <laughs> still going. <laughs> oh, close, close. But solved by the Swedish defense. It's always so fun to see an underdog challenging the first seed of the group in this case. Pulled up. Now there's a fast break. Ooh. One minute to go. MVP for the Black Mermaids, me in the commentator's booth. There we go. You welcome Black Mermaids. Test, test. Hello, 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 hello. All right, next game coming up will be the New Jersey Hammerheads versus 
Helvitia, and I'm making old man noises trying to get up. <laughs> and we'll take a little bit of a break, as much as we're being given, and then we'll be right back. Uh, from Sweden oh. again so hi everybody I'm here with Elin the captain from the Black Mermaids the Swedish champion and captain Elin a tough start of the game what happened uh, well I think we we let them uh, play their scrum game um, there weren't any as I feel like dangerous like points where they could have really really scored that was one in the really very really, like second minute or whatever yeah. like they came with the best opportunity yeah um, and I feel like we had a tough game against the uh, like three hours before this uh, but we decided that we were going to win and we had some good attacks on their goal but yeah they're they're a tough opponent second Second half was much better. What did you say to your team to motivate it and then finally win the match? I was like, let's do a Barcelona game where we score five goals in the second half. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
Welcome back. Uh, apologies, uh, I was commentating on mute for the last uh, minute and a half. Sorry, some uh, amateur technical <laughs> difficulties here. Okay, so we have uh, the Hammerheads versus Helvetia from Switzerland, and the Hammerheads seem to be taking the early initiative here, uh, dominating ball possession and attacking, but Helvetia of four checking very strongly and not making it a very easy pathway for the New Jersey team to get to the goal, we spend very much time on the goal. Now we have Helvetia uh, winning the ball back, working together, getting the ball out, but they have yet to take it past their own halfway mark. Now we have referee call for holding. This gives Helvetia a free throw, a free throw from free throw halfway. White team holding. They seem to be taking the time with the free throw. Still seem very calm. This is um, a relatively young team. I think both teams here are relatively young uh, with lots of players uh, who are uh, still uni students. Um, and a mix of very experienced players and sort of, uh, newer players. But both teams have very strong fundamentals and both teams uh, like to play an uh, intense game. Often for checking with two or three people at a time underwater. Now Helvetia going in to the goalie, met by a wall of hammerheads. Maintain the ball, take it in the corner. The question is, will Helvetia be able to put pressure on the hammerhead basket like the hammerheads had put on their own basket? Got some good wrestling here, and Helvetti actually seems to be more dominant when it comes to getting the ball out of those uh, meat ball situations. Now they're calmly cycling in the corner. Not much resistance from the forwards on the hamhead side. Number 21 finds herself alone. No one passed to. We have a very interesting situation where we have one to two Helvetia plays underwater while there's usually four <laughs> or even five uh, Jersey players under the water. So I don't know if this is uh, strategic on the Helvetia side, but uh, if so, then they need to uh, eventually capitalize on it by sending more players. And how now we have a wave of three, but they've been pushed out into the corner again. Hammerheads have recovered the ball. This dangerous count. There was some good there was some good momentum there some good momentum there but momentum there but they weren't able to put it to use the hammerheads. Now we have an established defense in the water. Number 14 defender. Oh, we have a real opportunity here, but she couldn't get the goalie off because the other goalie was holding the goalie down. That was a big brain move on Helvetia's side, but now they need to be careful and get the ball out of their own half. We have another meat ball. Ball falls down into the bottom. It could be dangerous if Hamheads get it, and they do get it, and now it's going to be three players on one goalie. A defender or forward is desperately trying to get in there. Oh, and it's a goal. That was a solid minute of hard push and pressure from the Hammerheads. Unfortunately, the Helvetia team, which has been, had been very disciplined in defense, uh, was just missing a back just then, or possibly a forward. Let's hope that they retain their fighting spirit and they will try and equalize and keep the hopes of beating the Hammerheads alive.
Number 22 is trying to get in there nice and close to the goal. She doesn't have the ball. Ball comes to the surface. A little bit of a meat ball developing. Passes down. Down again. Forwards are on her right away. She finds a teammate. And they go into the goal, right into the fin of the goalie. Passes is down. Right next to the goal. Will she make something of it? She's pushing, she's pushing. Comes to the surface, Hammerheads retrieve the ball, and they get a good pass down, and there's a fast break. Now she gets a full check by two Helvetia players, but they keep going. Good pass, and she's still down there. She gets first to get to the goal. Only one goalie. Now she gets a pass. Will there be a second wave? Oh, there's no back. Ford comes, knocks the ball out of her hand, retrieves the ball. Helvetia, once again, <laughs> solid defense, just in time. <laughs> Now they swim hard to the other side. And she's going to go for the goalie. But she gets a fin in the face. And she finds the support, passes it down. Where they continue the pressure. Are they going to build? Yes, she's going to go straight for the goalie. She gets dragged up by the back. And then another one. Another pass. That was good pressure. That was probably one of the most... Okay, we have a call from the referee. Holding. So Helvetia get the ball back in a free throw. That was probably one of the most pressure uh, Helvetia has put on Hammerhead so far in this game. They had three to four players in a row who had the ball and who uh, went in and made contact with the back of the goalie. Straight down, oh, but the ball is missed. Goes in between two Helvetia players, gets recovered. Now it's a, a tussle between two Helvetia and one Hammerhead. Now it's one on one, two on one, two on two. We have a meatball again. Hammerheads come out. We have a, break, a fast breakaway, full defense in place. She finds a pass in the corner. Okay, now are they going to build the momentum or are they going to take a break in the corner? Looks like they're going to slow the game down. Gets a pass off. She goes in for the attack. She doesn't find a pass. She stays there, controls the ball. Now she passes it out. Hammerhead passes pass to the other side. And one player stays on the open side. Oh, but she leaves just before she could have got a pass. Recovered by Helvetia, but now it's locked up. Christina, the Stingray, takes it to the surface. Backed up by a teammate. They're now dragging the ball all the way. And we have reached half time. Very close and exciting game here. Now led by the Hamheads after their first goal. But the Swiss Helvetia team have shown that they're determined to make a comeback. By dinner. It'll be interesting to see how both teams adapt the game after the first half. Hammerheads can just keep playing the same game they've been playing, but the Swiss may need to kick things up a little bit, ramp up the pressure. Referees having discussion there. Here are the players from both teams and the referees. 
Jacko Burgett as deck referee, and then Rafa Tito de Morales, de Morales in the water, and then we also have the uh, training referee, Julia Bronek. Now we have Thomas back in the room. Is this one still bucked? Sorry? Blue team ready. White team ready. All right. Second half starting off. New Jersey Hammerheads in blue versus Helvetia. From Zurich in white. Hammerheads takes the initiative, swims around to the ball. And the meat ball rises to the surface. The ball drops down. Gets the pass off, goes straight for the goal, but it's four checked by a forward and another forward. Miriam, number 27, locks onto the ball, but the ball seems to have gone loose. No, it's dragged to the surface, but now it's passed down. Helvetia defense getting ready to pounce as soon as their team gets the ball. Nice tight goalie swaps there. We have One, a, a two, four three, four, four, five. Too many players in the water. The surface. And too many players in the water. Oh, so too many oh. Have that is, yeah. Here. One of you. Oh no, that's uh, unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> that is a bit of a tough one. And we'll see what the Hammerheads will bring to the table. So now we have a power okay. play. Six Hammerheads Three versus five blue team. Helvetia players. Okay. And they're not taking a timeout. Helvetia mm. Hammerheads seem to have stolen the goal. Mm. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, they are good to go for now. But now a goal is missing. Maybe, maybe they've just subbed out the goalkeeper. No, oh, that is that. Oh! <laughs> the defender! Whoa! MVP, right there. <laughs> Ellen Reift, number 22, with the steal. Oh, she gets on the back. That was a hell of a yeah, save. Now second oh second attempt. Goalie gets Julia Gomez. Elisa uh, Gomez. Ah, oh, there we go. It looked like okay. they maybe Number sucked up the wrong player. Yeah. Number 28. <laughs> Looks a little bit like this, yeah. Luisa Gomez with the first attempt. Tossing the ball down to her teammate who quite successfully pin meets her way to, to her goal. <laughs> she, she blocked the way for Julio Gomez and took the ball and tossed it in. So, yeah. So, the good thing about what just happened is you're back in the pool with six players. Yeah. There's less suffering to yeah. the boat. The <laughs> Bad news. A bit more tragic news for Hevitia um, is that they have been scored on a second time. Which uh, will it make very I can't talk anymore. <laughs> will be very difficult now for um, Helvetia to come back from a 2-0 deficit against the Hammerheads. Just like it is difficult for us to come back <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> to normal sanity. <laughs> We've moved on from coffee and energy drinks. To yeah, chamomile to tea. <laughs> chamomile tea. Vettia still fighting strong, took the ball at the Hemhead side. Now, let's see if they will try and continue the pressure they have been putting on the Hemheads in the last few minutes of the second of the first half. Yep, they're going straight into the goal. They already used to be a lot more aggressive now towards the goal than they were in the Austrian game. 
Let's see, we have the goalie down and the press of the defender now, the goal stolen. It's weird, it still looks like they can't oh, play right the <coughs> Yeah. What they were getting called flat a ref. It's roughing. Either roughing or holding the goal. The signal does seem to be similar. So free throw. Oh, we have a interesting situation here. One, one player from Hamhead's by herself, right on top of the goalie. Now they come to the second wave. Three players get the pass across to the other side, but immediately take attacked by the forwards. Who wasn't able to control the ball. Now they've locked up another Hammerhead player. Ball floats down again. Hammerhead takes it. Able pass to the other side, but the player's out of position to get the ball. Now she's thinking about taking it to the corner. The ball is taken to the corner and locked up. Hammerhead play underneath, gets the ball, but doesn't have any free room to maneuver. She has to decide what to do with the ball. She passes it to her teammate. Now they're all clustered together on the surface. But she has momentum and she's going to kick her way through, rips her down, passes her down. They still control it. Now we have two Helvetia players swing towards the goal. Oh, they're getting close to the goal. They passed it. Pass Three players. But the forwards do a good job of keeping them a good meter away from the goal. Can they keep building this pressure? Can they keep going to the goal? Again. Yes, they go into the goal. Can she find a pass? She needs another player closer to her. She gets locked up. It's three against two on the surface. And now it's supposed to be three against three. Jersey, the ball drops. Jersey Hammerhead gets it. She swims out the side. Possibly out of playing area. No, just keeps it in. Now. I have a dangerous situation set up on the other side, but they decide to play it safe. Okay, set up the second wave, but the defense is already in place. Passes out in the middle, takes it to the other side. Very Colombian. Yeah, and you can see the jersey. They have a very comfortable 2 0 lead now, and if Helvetia wants the ball back, they have to move out. Yeah. And, um, Specifically in a situation like this, if you're down 2-0. <sighs> Interestingly enough, I think they have shown that they can play forward really well against Vienna, mm. where they basically killed each other with their <laughs> forwards yeah. throughout the entire game. <clears throat> but then again, <clears throat> playing here against uh, New Jersey. Christina gets the ball, starts the counter-attack, yeah. gets locked up immediately. Stingray get the ball out and pass it to her teammates. Yes, she rips, she rips. Another New Jersey play on her right. Ooh, oh, it gets good pick up. Number 81 gets the ball. Now, fast break opportunity. Should be easier. 87. Passes to 27. Morning star. So three minutes to go, Helvetia now with the first, one of the first times oh, they're setting up a gameplay. But ball dropped down, not picked up fast enough. And oh, Jersey immediately going for fast break. Attack. And they have one some really fast sprinters them. on their team. Oh, <coughs> good, good three oh. passes back and forth, but well done by the defender getting into position. Very strong defense. Jersey keeping the pressure towards the third goal. No, the ball is taken. Oh, number 55. Uh, Cecily recovers it right from the goal. And now they hold it, take it out to the side. Can they work it over to 
The hammer heads half. Yes, they have in the corner. It's me in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly losing my vicinity. 14, Simone gets the ball out. Oh, very sneaky no, good, good from the hammerhead. Good recovery by the hammerhead forward now. That's Drop, good. Just tossing the ball down, expecting her teammates to immediately shift into a more offensive play style, moving forward away from the basket. Now two players oh. again coming in. Nice. <coughs> good pick up oh. again by the defender, but now second oh. attempt. And this is the final nail in the coffin. You can see them coming in from left, player getting their first attempt, being pulled up by the defender. She's even trying to go for the second player, but then... Scores on Sandra oh, Marcella Mala. Marcella Mala yeah. with the execution. Yet again, three players were initiating this attack, so we can see New Jersey Hammerheads doing a really good job. Oh, oh, gets locked out, recovered, <coughs> number 17, gets the ball, pulls the goalie off, oh, tries to shoot, almost gets it in. Anna Sutinova with a good attempt, the ball, oh, floating mid back, pass a bit faster than anticipated. Here we go. Ball goes to the surface, where's the goalie? Let me say goalie on the Swiss side. 55 Cecily comes down. Ball is free, what is happening? <laughs> oh. One more time. Last 10 Onto seconds, the last 10 seconds. Basket. Can they get another goal? On 55, the Magpie. The Magpie saves it. Cecily Mackey. There we go. Clock winding down. Game over. And now Helvetia Here we go. is done with the group stage. And so is Sword of New Jersey Hammerheads. And I, I've actually been corrected. There are. Um, Intermediate rounds for the women tomorrow morning. Yeah, okay. I stand corrected. So the second seeds will get an attempt to play up, as well as the uh, third and fourth seeds of each group yeah. get an attempt to play against each other. So all those teams having two more games tomorrow, <laughs> which I'm sure they will be very <laughs> happy about. More chances for overtime beers for us. <laughs> okay, so. Coming up next, we have the game between Ikemaros and Hasu. I believe this is, is this um, a final placement game or is this? Ikemaros versus Hasu should be a final placement game, yeah. Let's see. I think they are playing for fifth and sixth. It's a, no, it's an no? intermediate round. It's a mid. Yeah. Holy moly. Ah, yeah, 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 so of course. They're playing for the right to get into the fifth yep, and they're sixth. They're playing to the right, yeah. yeah. That's funny. So, that so they're kind of playing for fifth and sixth. So that means only one of them can yep. get into the fifth and sixth round. And New and Jersey Hammerheads, how uh, do you feel? Hammerheads versus uh, uh, Puchovic. I'm very emotional, I'm very happy. It was a game that wasn't easy, but we were very focused. We managed it and at the end a very beautiful goal. You scored the last goal. Was it your first goal and how did it happen? The goal you made. The score. The goal. Okay. It was a shot against golf. Con una de las medios, eh, hice el pase desde la portería, la gané, salimos por debajo y al final un envión al portero. Muchas gracias, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. So teams, please, in the water.
One minute. You have to wait one minute for the live stream. Up next, we have another high stakes, high profile game between EK okay. Matters no, and. Blue team Hatsu. ready, white Maris, team ready. Of the team uh, representing the men's from Colombia, and Hatsu is the team representing uh, the champions of Finland. It's an interesting play from Hatsu where they didn't get the ball, but they had a player go all the way up towards the other goal. Okay, now they are in defense. Let's see what kind of aggression Hasu will bring to this. Are they gonna? These teams, of these two teams, of course, have never played each other before. So you expect them to both kind of, uh, you know, size each other up a little bit before they kind of really commit uh, into uh, possibly a strong attack. But no, Hasu go straight for it. Ihimaras putting pressure on to win the ball back. And they get it, but can they get the ball out of their own half? We've seen very good fall checking here in almost every close game. It is a very small pool, so there is a temptation to just play it safe and uh, go straight back to your own goals to defend. But most of the top and even intermediate teams have uh, opted to fall check all the way up to the halfway mark and more. And now we have the fall checking working out for Hasu. They keep Ikemaras in their own half and now they get another chance to attack Ikemaras goal Ooh. Had a almost potential dangerous situation but we didn't have it has to play in the corner there when the ball carrier needed a pass we have referee call on the surface on the one rugby call Holding white free ball. White free ball for holding. Has to take their time using this opportunity to uh, change the players on the bench. Recover a little bit and then they're probably going to go in strong now for an attack. I think both teams want to establish dominance early and be the one <laughs> leading uh, with the first goal, so they're gonna put no, 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 a lot of effort into this. No, one player has to kind of only going in ways to two at the time, but now, okay, now they're popping up the numbers. But Ikaramaro steals the ball, they take it up to the surface, pass back down again, out to the side. Into the center. Oh, he gets through the defense, forces the goalie down on the floor. Goal almost gets stolen. Doesn't manage to pass across to the other side. Has to recover the ball. That was a very short but very high pressure moment there, forcing the goalie onto the ground and then almost having the goal stolen. And now they're able to get the ball out to the middle again. And Ikemaris four checks right down the middle. And they get the goal back. Yes, they get the ball back. Now they're recovered. Now they're going on in on counter-attack. Passes it up. Ball gets knocked out of his hand and knocked back. Kills the momentum. Now they're going to try and rebuild. Oh, the back is not in place. Oh, we have a magic pass behind the back. Oh, passes over there again, but there's no player. They lost the ball. Oh, yeah, Rick's are getting comes ah. That was some uh, very creative play there. It just didn't seem to work out for Ikemaris just then, but it was uh, really good to watch. Teams taking risks and doing cool stuff. <laughs> Now, oh. Himalina Sukulayat coming in. Ooh. Good grip on good. the goalkeeper. Strong, good hold of the ball. I just love to finish. Oh, games. finish has stolen the basket of the Ikemaras team. But the Ikemaras goalie pushes the finish player off the basket. Here we go. Another counter attack scenario. Passes the ball in. No. Good ball checking by the finish player, stopping the pass and connecting. A 
but so far it's hard to say which team has put more pressure. The Finnish team has definitely had more of the ball possession, but Ike Maris have seemed to have faster breakaways. White free throw. Call by the ref. Strangling. Free throw for his strangling. White Kizu. free throw. Strangling is frowned upon in the sport. It's for one percenters. <laughs> so I think the teams have quite an interesting matchup at their hands. Eko Maris we've seen playing very fluidly or try to play very fluidly and uh, they heavily rely on a couple of players, a couple of key players to be present at the goal to like Hector Ooh. Escobar who's coming in right Ooh, now. Very good, pass. good attack. Amazing pressure being put on the Eko Maris goal right now by the finish. We have another <laughs> strangling situation that was not seen. This time from the Phoenix. Yep. There we got the MMO of grabbed, oh. grabbed the wrists, not the ball. And uh, yeah, Riggs Hezo now. <coughs> Applying good pressure. Very good pressure. Against the Ekumares. A little bit of an attack on the side pass. of the head there. Being broken yeah, up. Called by the ref. Attack so the head. Ekumares trying to have a more fluid, like the, the classic Colombian. Uh, style of game trying to be very smooth and fluid blue and team uh, warning let the, let attacking the head Ooh, it. white free throw that's a good thing team warning i'm a good video referee i don't think i'll be a very good water referee but if i yeah. uh, video good video quality i cut those things yeah should be a thing video referee we're discussing <laughs> it it's actually being discussed during the last room meeting with the cms yeah. at the world championship yeah right. having a video ref if there is video available and the environment that it would be feasible and I mean they've done it at Euroleague yeah but in Euroleague they had they gave the ref too much time yeah we said there should be a limit a limited amount of times the ref can review a, a yeah. certain situation and then he has to make a judgment call oh I think that's a home back is that a home back they're not they're not playing for uh, no, they don't play Me getting my fins mixed up. Just, we'd just love to have an MMA brother here <laughs> in the pool. No, so I, and I think from a Finnish perspective, they are very controlled with the ball, and they are showing us more of a, a grindy play style, where they try to move in and have more heavy heavy attacks on the basket yeah. and are more have more forceful if rather than a super smooth and fluid play style it's uh, more a see an opening bring five guys try to do as much terror as you can and then move back out and hopefully you still have the ball <laughs> i've seen them uh, do quite a few kind of creative passes like even back in the goal and the finish underwater so call Completely out of bounds. White free ball. White free ball. So I think Hasu has dominated the ball position. Out of bounds. Probably about 80% in this uh, first half so far. Although even though it's a few times they've had uh, the quick counter attacks, they have uh, put a little bit of pressure on. At least uh, once or twice. But they didn't keep the ball for very long. Ooh. Ooh. Here we go. Strong first impact. Nice pass to the right, but... It's going to be taken out. Oh, no. Vince keep control of the ball. Giving them advantage. Moving back into the pool. Oh, the goal, Ooh, goal removed. Go basket stolen goal away. Stolen. Ball. Oh. oh, I think he shoved. He actually... He did. He did. But, I mean, <laughs> you would do that strategically. It's better to... Yeah, and the ref didn't <laughs> call it. No sign by the ref, and now Hector Ooh, Escobar trying to move forward, off. losing him. <laughs> Is he going in blind? Well, <laughs> he can't Hec see. <laughs> he Hector, can't see. Hector Honey Badger Escobar. Wow. Yeah, it's good, uh, good opportunity still yeah. for Escobar. It's too bad, he couldn't see anything. Yeah. He had some good pass opportunities there. Who needs, who needs vision anyways? Ooh. Ooh, good effort by the defender moving out. Oh, free throw. Underwater Holding. call. Holding. Blue free ball for holding. Good 
going in. Nice and calm, but instant pressure from Hasu. Hasu definitely have some very highly skilled four checkers here. Yeah, we can see them apply <laughs> a lot of pressure. Maximum pressure. Being and super strong. Oh, but now. Oh, a fumble, yes. Oh, there nice is a good opportunity. opportunity. Oh, he doesn't get the goalie off. There is wow. half time break just in time half for time. Hezu. I think uh, <coughs> both teams are working up now. Half time. That is quite the banger game here at the. Well, not, not, not yet the end of the day, but we're soon approaching the end of day number two here at the Champions Cup. Should we see the, uh, the Columbia fan club in the chat? Oh, we only have a few. Yeah. Where are the rest of the Colombian supporters? If you're in the chat and you support Icamares, please give us a wave. If you're sitting in your sauna in Finland somewhere, or by your lake house, uh, please also give us a wave. There we go. Leo, our super fan. That was pretty savage. <laughs> what um, Hector did without a mask. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to um, probably work on his underwater vision without a mask. <laughs> Who needs? Yeah, can't, can't rip off your goggles if you're not wearing any goggles. <laughs> exactly. It's uh, superb. <laughs> I mean, kicks alpha to the tactics, face yeah. a little bit more. <laughs> alpha tactics. Maybe he needs a honey badger uh, t-shirt for himself. Yeah. Or, um, have you heard of the sea gypsies? Sea gypsies? Yeah, I think Sounds uh, racist. Not racist. <laughs> it's a group of uh, people in like uh, I think around Malaysia, the Philippines. And they oh, one like whole minute, five, minute, five ten minutes underwater. Half time, yeah, 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 yeah. Dive times. Know, yeah. But not only that, they've uh, been diving and catching like yeah. fish for so long that their eyes have adapted so that they can actually yeah. focus on really? water. Yeah. Oh, this is so awesome. We need a bit of genetic manipulation <laughs> with people like this and bring them to underwater rugby. I think they would certainly shake up the meta <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, Anyone feeling like Swiss chocolate at the moment? Pusha. Pusha. Do you already slowly notice your sanity to leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, at first when I started today, I had like, I was very uh, self-conscious about what I'm saying. Now I just have zero... Zero bucks, filter. Zero, zero bucks filter. to give. Zero filter. <laughs> <coughs> And uh, it's quite liberating, actually. Yeah. Yep. Thanks to the Champions Cup organizers to give us all the freedom we have here <laughs> on the live stream. It's good that we don't have any actual sponsors that could get us cancelled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can you say to get cancelled by Monster <laughs> Energy? I mean, <laughs> Red Bull. <Yeah. laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, Ikemaras <coughs> gets the ball back. But they're going to face uh, a war of meat from the finish. Finish meat grinder. Yep. Let's see an Ekromas player being in front of the basket very safely approaching oh, the start of the game. <laughs> 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 we need a soundboard. Holding white free ball. Target, but a good effort by the Finnish team. 
These two have had really good ball control here. Yeah. Oh. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Cassikers. Oh my god. Bang, 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 bang. It's getting faster and faster yeah. in between us saying something and the curse. Mm. White free. Curse struck again. You're holding. Stop the clock, please. Stop the clock. Is there a team warning here, perhaps? Technical uh, out time. These Technical are the games for to separate, enter the please. places number five teams and six. Teams go to your side. So they are Technical playing for the, Technical. for the games between five and six. Yep. Oh, no, they, they're playing for the right to for the, yeah. play in the fifth and sixth yeah. round. So, so the loser is going to play for seventh and eighth, yeah. and the winner is going to play for five and six. Shout out to Colombia. I don't Continue know what a white free ball. French. <laughs> <laughs> and I also don't okay. know how the French, to be honest, because it was a really bad student. <laughs> I can still understand quite a bit when I'm reading it, but I couldn't uh, speak a straight sentence. Maybe say something like, Bonjour, mon ami, monsieur. The team de, de Paris Tatin sont très bon. They have a really good team. This is everything else I can do. A little bit of a technical timeout. Has to once again with the ball. Still dominating ball position in the second half so far. Mm -hmm. But they haven't put any big attacks in yet. They don't seem to be setting anything up. They're just chilling in the corner. Does anybody and in the chat know? I would I really love to know how games between Ecomares and Orcas usually end in the Colombian League. It would be very interesting to know. 2-0, 5-0, penalties. How close are those games? That was another yoink. Oh, and now Hezu. Ooh. Would have been a good chance. Got the ball pushed out of his head. Underwater ball. Guessing it's something related to roughing. Oh, we can see Rami Ritkonen trying to steal away the basket from the Ecomares. No, they've already had a warning. They've already been warned. Warning. Yeah, so we have to send one out. So, blue, blue team, two minutes attacking the head. Yep. You already had a team warning. There we go. Team warning issued. And uh, now this. Time out, blue. This could be a good Time opportunity out, for blue. Hesu to bring in their starting six and see what they can achieve at the Ecomares basket. Ecomares had a team warning for attacking the head. They've been doing it a couple a couple times more than they than it was good for them. And actually a really good call. I like the call from the ref to give a yeah. team warning. <coughs> because it is usually the most efficient way to stop a team from yeah, doing absolutely. certain certain fouls without disrupting the game too much, the flow yeah. of the game too much. And if you don't kind of stop it earlier on, you just let it build up. You know, the tough fights and those kind of things happen. So, very good call. Mina. So we continue. White free ball. Here we go. Power play with an Eco Maris player in the sin bin for next minute and 45 seconds. Hasu is starting off calmly, although they're setting up their players by the goal. And they deliver the ball to a player in the corner. And there's a mess of bubbles. Gets dragged to the surface. 
Okay, so Jordan still in possession. Ball. Getting ready for the second wave. Second wave Moving incoming. Down. That's the player who goes in to create the chaos. And now we have a swarm of other Hazel players. trying to Darryl come in. Goal, goal stolen goal. away. But oh. Ekmaris coming up. Ooh, there was some tech on the head as well. Underwater call. Yep. Yep. Should have been ball. Was it attack from the Hasu player? Or yeah, yeah. I think it was from the Hasu player. But I think Hector Escobar's movements could also have been a bit concerning. Oh. Yeah. I think I think the call was because he was using his elbows quite eff efficiently, let's say, to move out. But I think attacking the head should take precedence, should take priority yeah. in this case. <coughs> Might have actually in a uh, correct call within a ref ball because it was kind of at the same point in time. Yeah. So, but usually, usually you have the foul versus revenge foul ruling, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of a... Is it actually a revenge foul rule? Yep. Usually the revenge foul is the one the ref sees. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hezu, 17 more seconds of power play. Five and a half more minutes to go until we have another penalty have shootout. The they have a play shoot. available. Can he move the ball? Oh, Can he move the ball. chains to the oh, other side? Oh! The play was just a block, and there's nobody else there. But now oh, no more has. <sighs> no. It's interesting seeing the uh, <coughs> getting into the position. I wonder what they have done. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Are we about to find out? Hazel, oh, oh, what a grip onto the goalie. Turn, you can see three, three players play. trying oh, to move with still, him. He's still there. Ball dropping down, but now. Oh. Ball <laughs> back into the hands of oh, Fekumares. Now, fast break opportunity. Oh, can he hold on to the ball? Can he find someone to pass to? The players are too far away. On it, passes it back, but there's no one there. Finally, they get the ball free and tack straight away. Well read by the Finnish player coming in from the side. Lock him up, solid. His teammates come to try and open up the ball. Player Ikemaru's play underneath the meat ball. Ready to catch the scraps. Is it still? There was a question earlier in the chat uh, about whether if it's tied, it's still one-on-one -on -one penalties. Like yeah. Yep. Okay. The even rule in rule the con rule continues, and okay. even the playoffs what and. In the finals, you have uh, overtime and then penalties, as far as I know. Is so the, just, the, just the, the final games. Okay, not the third place. No, okay. just the finals, as far as I know. Right. Uh, oh, that pass could be dangerous. Yeah. Made it all the way through. Oh still, still going. Good. Yes, oh, there we go. We have a first goal. Diego oh my God. How did they pull Number this one off? They have been goalie, not on the basket. <laughs> Coming in, last second, ball moved to the left. 97. And who else? Oh. But number Escobar. 97. <laughs> <laughs> the honey, the honey Colombian badger. honey badger. <laughs> that is on the water. Yeah, yeah on the call by the ref. 80% of the time, it's a power play against the Blue 98, two minutes. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> For roughing. For roughing. Okay. White free ball. So we have Three. one and a half minutes left, and it's going to be play. power play only. There's a. I'm surprised if someone else didn't use the timeout here. Or have they used theirs already? I think they already used theirs. Okay. This is a, it's they a used it before play. the first power play because they oh, had the basket oh, on the Himalina trying really to force it. their way onto the Ecobaras basket, bringing everybody up. It doesn't matter if you... Oh, the ball! Outside. Drop down. Locked up. Goalie already moved, but play on the other side. Couldn't see the ball. The basket now stolen away. Can they bring their play at the ball? <sighs> Locked up again. Needs to down. Force free and pushed away. On the water, call. Pushing the basket for another call. Blue number 77. 77. Roughing two minutes. Oh, and i got to be honest, rough. if Hamlin has a time, they should have taken White free right ball. Yeah. So they should let the was winding down, so. Yeah. Winding down, so. Yeah. 
And so, yeah. Yeah. so can the Ikumaras defend with four players? Back in the border. They will, I think they got the ball. I think they, they can try to wind the clock down now. They will just scrum it up on the surface. Two seconds. Okay, hold on to it. No, the ball is free. The ball is free. Coming in again. One last track. Yeah. Sorry. No. Call by the deck ref. Free ball white. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is... Uh, you got to give advantage in the situation because if the clock is clock is running down. Yeah. Camaros gets the ball. Yeah. He's going to hold on to it. Two there seconds left. This game is over. And they have the game. <laughs> I mean, they had warnings against them yeah. several times. I mean, that is not a Kamara's. Nothing. So, a Kamara's is going to play for fifth and sixth, whilst uh, Emily Sukultayat, who been playing a very solid tournament so far and now playing for seventh and eighth which is a bit of the bummer for the Finnish team here having shown us such a solid tournament so far and always having close games yeah gonna be interesting to see the next game then which is Hammerheads versus Czech champion from Budweis Go for it, Bobby. We have about, no, you should have three minutes, but. Hi, everybody. I'm here with the Echo Maris, who just won in the game right now versus the Finnish champion, Hezu. So, Hector is with me. You scored the final goal, like the important goal of the day. How did you make it? Entré, hice el pase al otro lado, se volvió un mierdero eso, <laughs> me volvieron el balón y un compañero mío me empujó y yo envioné y metimos el gol. Yes. Thank you very much. And the Ecomares, you, you struggle a lot with time penalties, so you get like one time penalty and even in the last minute you have been down with two players. How could you manage the massive attacks from the finish? How did you manage this? Pues nosotros tratamos de nosotros siempre practicamos con una tenemos como una táctica cuando quedamos con jugadores por fuera del agua siempre sacrificamos un medio en este caso nos sacaron dos jugadores pues quedamos sin medio solo porteros y guardas cuatro jugadores cuidando la portería logrando sostener el balón o más bien la, la defensa durante dos minutos aproximadamente. Y lo bueno es que en los medios que tenemos, tenemos a este porterazo. <laughs> Como medio eres muy buen portero. <laughs> y ya. Si quieres saludar a alguien. Saludar a mi novia que está allá. Vea, grábela allá, grábela allá. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no es amigos. tímida, pero no. Ahí fue a mi familia, a Lina, a Andrea, a mi papá, a todos los de Comares, los de Maco, los de Orca, a todos los que nos están viendo. Estamos cumpliendo un sueño. Qué chimba vivir esta experiencia. Y muchas gracias a todas las personas que nos apoyaron. De verdad, muchas, muchas gracias. Thank you very much, guys. Un saludo a todas mis amigas, amigos. Perfecto. Estamos jugando muy bien. A los que compraron toallas también. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, everybody. Yeah. Enjoy. Bye bye.
Hi, I'm here with also one of our head referees from the tournament, Bob Robinson. Bob, this wasn't quite an intense game with a lot of time penalties. How have you seen it as a deck referee? As a, de as a deck referee, I could see that they're using their skills to slow down the game, maybe getting a, interfering with the freeze, but without being told to get away. So they, they were using their skills to postpone some of the time, yeah, get rid of some of the time, yeah. All right. And overall, how do you experience, like, as a referee? How is it refereeing here from a level overall in comparison to the World Championship where you have been as well? The, the, the level of play is absolutely excellent, even from the teams where you didn't really think they're going to be like that, you know? Yeah. It, it, I won't say, you know, for instance, the French team, I, think, I did not think they were going to be like that. And even the, the Greek team, the, re, the, the ladies Greek team, they're really, really good. It's very fast games. Could be sometimes a bit more, a few more goals. But, uh, ready. That's the way it is. Right Everybody is really quick getting onto the goal. It's a brilliant tournament. As well. Thanks. You're welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we're back up with our next game. Coming the New Jersey Hammerheads versus the Czech champion from Budvas, Czech Puchovice. And it's going to be an interesting game to see how those teams compare to each other. Both teams competing to go for place number five and six in this tournament. And we see Check team in white. That's get quite far away to the right. played now first good attempt for New Jersey going on to the basket from the Czech Republic <coughs> good, good. see them trying to set up their game plan in the close corner Circling left and right for the time being. Ooh, first setup of a block. And it's going to be very interesting if the team from Czech Republic can, because Jersey has showed a very, very strong tournament so far. It'll be interesting to see if the team from Czech Republic can hold their own against the Hammerheads yeah. and show us if. Eastern European underwater rugby is up to par. Oh, we said before that. Uh, so it's all about like, how fast those back. It's, I think usually when you kind of go down that journey of uh, the good and new players, when you uh, take a hit for a few years, you know, you yeah. get back stronger in the future. But, uh, Speaking of swimwear, I noticed that the uh, Hammerhead swimwear, Hammerhead men's swimwear, uh, is quite similar to the Ikemaras. So I guess it's probably one of those uh, crazy cool designs from one of the Columbia swimwear companies. We, of course, also promote all other swimwear producers well, said, around the globe. <laughs> One of the <laughs> not just the Columbia ones from all over the globe as well. <laughs> well, we have Libby also here, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one, yeah, the yeah, one of the official sponsors, I think, yeah. for the Champions Cup as well. Now, Czech Republic trying to set up a little bit of a game plan, but really lacking enough players for now. To <laughs> just always having one, one more player yeah. to pick up the ball. 
Oh, the back. Oh, but the back DC. moving up. Yes, that's Good opportunity. That Last was second save by the forward. Enormously close. I think we all saw that the back was like uh, yeah. looking up, being like, can they go up now? <laughs> oh, man. Ooh. Number 88, not on our spreadsheet, but still going for New Jersey. And uh, Jack Boy coming back in. And it's interesting. They have almost one or two plays with Max there, but still create a lot of trouble. Yeah. Like where, are the, where are all the others? I think also the, the basket is being quite far away from, yeah. from the corner here, so they shouldn't move back into the middle of the playing field because the forwards are quite far out compared yeah. um, to where they usually are. But then interestingly enough, the forward is exchanging and coming in from the fresh side here very fast at their own basket. Yeah. So exchanging. Can't get the pass. No. Yeah, very good defense from from Jersey. Still managed to get the goalie off. One man team. Gaps there. Gaps. A little bit too far. Right now, the back is in no man's land. Might also be them looting him into a false sense of security. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Again. Oh, oh, come again. No <coughs> support. Mm -hmm. Tries to pass oh. it to the left. Passes off the ground. He goes and gets it. Ah, still in the hands of the Czech Republic. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're doing a really good job. But now, New Jersey with a fast break opportunity. Having two plays available. All the way through. First attempt. And so on. Now first time Czech Republic actually has to defend. Just punched the ball out a little bit. Opening for the hammer. Scaliano picking up the ball, trying to move in. He's also become quite the chunky boy. Yeah, the captain for the national team. Not the captain for New Jersey. Oh, oh that was there goal. we go. <laughs> <laughs> 88. Inexisting player. Okay, goal see. for the blue team. Scored by Mauricio player number Mauricio Vargas 88. on the left. The goalie. Eight, 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 eight. The goalie off. How did he put the goalie off? I think the goalie thought it was being exchanged. Maybe. Yeah. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Left call. I think he won. Yeah, they correct the basket now. Hopefully. So, interesting chain of events here. So, Czech Republic playing for about eight good stretch of six minutes. Keep it all the way around the New Jersey basket. Yeah. Having two pretty solid opportunities. Complete ball control. New Jersey swooping over once. 20 seconds. Bam goal. Oh, here we have the replay. It's hard to get pulled off when you just leave early. It looks like he left early, and then that's, that's it. One mistake. You thought he was safe. Left early. Yeah. Never, never safe in the shot tank. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, we're ready to resume the game. Ready? Get the two, bo three oh, one situation oh, at the basket. Yeah, can the goalie, yeah. can the goalie get in position? Oh, last second defense for the Czech Republic. Good ball control, but taken by the third person. Picked up. Have a hit. Get the ball free. Yeah. 
back in position, defenders back. Ball is back. Ooh. Not quite out of bounds yet. Mm, good movement by Sebastian Gerardo. Trying to bring the ball in. Now we have C Galliano oh. trying to bring the ball to the other side again. Good effort though by the Czech Republic oh. team. But okay, recovered by Galliano. No, by Steven now. Galliano is back at it. Back. Forward takes the ball. Read that pass like a book. Now there's no back. Uh, good opportunity. Created in the middle of the pool. Gariano trying to shove it back to the other side. Player not available. Back in the hands of Czech Republic. Czech Republic might go for a fast break. Doesn't have a player available. Has to go left and right. That is the most dangerous place <laughs> to take the ball up. Everybody's up. going up to the other side. There we go, 57 seconds to go. go oh, he had the one on one. Yeah, for a that. moment. In those situations, I always go up to force the player up, yeah. and then I hope one of my players comes out to the yeah. pass. Usually, that is the correct play. Some old school players opt to try to push the legs away and then get underneath. But now, yet again, basket was open for a split second. Half-time break sides. between Hammerheads and the Czech Mitrovica, the champion from the National Champion from the Czech Republic. And yeah, the Hammerheads seizing their lone opportunity they had at the Czech basket. A mistake by the goalkeeper during the exchange. And uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, there you get your, your one zero. Picking up your lead. Easy boy. Love this one. Just sneak it in. Yeah. And such an interesting, interesting game. Such an Hello everybody, I'm here with Anton from uh, Waterway. You can see all the products and yeah Anton, you made all the way here with all the products just to sell it to the to the players. Yeah. What is your experience here? Is it a worthy marketplace for you? Well, it's more, I would say, about promotion, because we come to competition so that the players or swimmers, they can test the fins, try their size, and offer an order online. Uh, we listen for recommendations, like uh, the result of one of my trips here in Berlin a couple years ago was a creation of new model, uh, Nemo 20. So listening to the suggestions from the players, we cut the kill, we cut the rails and introduce a new model. Great. What is actually your best seller? What is the most common and famous thing you're going to sell? Well, that's the standard model, the cheapest one, but the most efficient one. Uh, yeah, Colombians play with these spins. Uh, and from the production line, is this self-made by you guys? Is it in-house production or how does it work? Well, we have, a, like, I would say, a more like a family production. We employ mostly family, but we still have uh, standard employees. Yeah. If the people that are not here in Berlin right now want to order some things, where, how and where can they find you? We have 12 websites. We in all underwater sports, including fin swimming and life saving, are uh, like monofinshop.com, finsouthlet.com, uh, freediverworld.com, spearfishershop.com, finswimworld.com. 
like basically if you type to any website that's our thank you very much Anton and uh, yeah. Yeah, good selling then Thanks. Teams ready? All right. Back into the second half of this game. It's been quite tight so far. Uh, you wouldn't know from the scoreline, but the Czech team have been dominating the first half in terms of possession and also pressure on the goal. They had uh, a very skillful One chance is all you need. And sometimes one chance is all you get. Just more general philosophy. <laughs> I've never, ever, ever in my life quote to do a Go so far, I wouldn't even know a single line of lyrics from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a, it's coming in. Oh, Goalkeeper, oh, a <laughs> do a twist, little bit of a twist and turn there, yeah. yeah. I mean, you did say, Thomas, that uh, in some of these high level games, you need to uh, be a bit more creative on how you play. <laughs> Usually not in defense. <laughs> do the twist. Oh, right, coming in, good attack from underneath. Oh, Goalkeeper already off. moved. Did we get a goal? No. no. Locked up. Female player for an exchange. Yeah. Uh, Jana Kralova playing for the Vice. Okay, now, now we see the little reverse where the Czech had trouble getting out there in half. And Hannah Head are showing how well they can pull Czech. Good attempt. Defender initially not noticing the player right next to him. Good pass to the right. one you can just circle the ball around all day long bringing around Rosie with the Czech Republic. Bauern Oash. Yeah it's it's specifically Austrian to be honest. That is that is very much Austrian. Oh there's a bit of a kerfuffle here. Come down watch the referee White free throw, out the bounds, playing out the bounds, white free throw. Time out for the white team, time out for the white team. Yeah, so good advice, might take a time out, get a bit of a strategy discussion going. Time How would they approach another attack? Season the free throw opportunity. I might, I might understand a little bit of Spanish, but I'm, I'm all out when it comes to.
How's your Swedish coming on? <laughs> Time out over, white free throw. Is it more of a vocabulary the pronunciation that worries you? <laughs> good days and bad days. Okay, right. Good days coming in very attack. strong. On the goalie. Uh, he's holding on. Uh, one player is holding on to the goal to the rim. But, yep. Fast break, and they're going straight for the last goal. One on one. Can he move up? Can move up. Keep it still going. I think it was just one. One bus. Defender wants to go up. Holding call, I think. He's chilling. Yeah. <coughs> he's, it's, he's in his sense state. Oh, we have a dangerous situation for the checks. Coming in another again. One, another one. Oh, yet again being punched Bend away. Down. Yep. And there was shoving. And I think it's a white free throw. Attacking equipment. White free throw. Here we go. Oh, here. good good opportunity oh. here for Portvice. Oh. Bit too hesitant to go yeah. straight for the goalkeeper. And now, now, a little bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Another chance for the Hammerheads. Stro oh. <laughs> yeah, the booty defense. <laughs> that was a yoink, textbook yoink, to be yeah, honest. Oh, smush it, smush it, smush it. Smush it, really good. <laughs> Textbook, but defense. Not to be compared to the butt fumble. Quite a different play in the underwater rugby playbook. Ooh, but ball picked off. Pass back to the defender. It's a good ball handling. Where 
free throw. Wide free Open throw. Wise. So most likely the last opportunity they will get two equalers here in this game. Time out for the blue team. Time out blue for the blue team. Gonna recover and then. I'm out of it. Yeah. Just two more hours, Bobby. Yeah, we should, we should uh, have a petition to do so. Bring this food. We're all in prison. A blinking signal inside. Oh, so people will actually come. Yeah, people oh, might actually come. Time out over. White free throw. There were only five of you on the bench. There was only five of you on the bench. We have one, one player from the blue team, one player from the blue team sent off. I have stopped the clock. I have stopped the clock. Okay? One player from the blue team. So, Sinbin time again. Two minute time penalty for the blue team. White free throw. You just send everybody down, and we're good to go. A loose ball floating along the around the pool. Here Game over. So interesting kind of game here between New Jersey Hammerheads and the team from Budweiss. New Jersey now playing for. Uh, where uh, they will meet uh, a surely a bit angry Finnish team, uh, Ekumaras team. Uh, one, someone is meeting Ekumaras, someone is meeting Finland. What do I know at this point? <laughs> it's getting late. All right, we have one more game coming up. Zurich versus Bratislava. See how this game will go. Yep. They're coming up at eight o'clock today, so officially. Ah, 
Hi everybody, I'm here with Giancarlo from the New Jersey Amats. Jersey Amats against Bucevic, the, the champion from the Czech Republic. And you scored. No, I didn't score. Oh, you didn't no. score because I saw it in the scoreboard. Who scored from your team? Uh, I guess it was Jason. 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 So Jason scored. Nevertheless, you are the coach of the team. Yeah. So what did you say your team that just to get in the house of the winner? Because it's a very important game for us because it's the first time we hear going to five for the five place. So the most important game for us. Yes. So you want to go for the fifth place and for this tournament? Yeah, for the first time we are going to go for the fifth place, yeah. So I wish you all the best and good luck for that. See you tomorrow then. Okay, thank you. Teams get ready. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving into the next game, game number 51. And it is for placements in the bottom bracket between Zurich and Bratislava. So both teams have had a victory against Firenze today. So they are playing respectively for uh, ninth and uh, sorry, eleventh um, and twelfth place at the moment. Firenze. Um, We'll have an open game against uh, Vienna today, but um, they are quite certainly not competing, or they are not competing for those uh, spots anymore, I guess, due to score differentials at the end of the day. Penalty, blue team. And we're starting the game off really strong with a penalty. One white, one white defender, one blue attacker. With a penalty for Zurich. <laughs> so, Michael Lindner will be defending here or Andre Scotia, not sure yet who is moving out. Oh, might be Andre Scotia defending the penalty. And we'll see who's going to take it. For Zurich. Clemens Neumüller. Going in. Good grip on the neck. <laughs> Scotia. Did he get a hold onto the ball? Oh, he couldn't reach the ball. <laughs> it's a nice little trick, just pulling the arm up so Clemens Neumuller couldn't move around him. He's moving a bit too far away, I guess. Uh, uh. Ooh, that was close on the edge for Bratislava, but... Is he yep. So Andre Scotia with the defense for Bratislava. And he's going to time. He doesn't have somebody to exchange, so they have two goalkeepers here for Bratislava, so we'll see how this game continues for him. He surely wants his teammates now to do a lot of grunt work for him. Carry the ball away.
so fierce uh, Zurich will surely be now starting to be more pressing <coughs> trying to attack Bratislava basket over and over again so Zurich also had quite an effective showing against Firenze so should be the favorite team to take it away here against Bratislava but then again teams being very close and different styles of gameplay might, might very well um, be matching, mixing and matching up in a different way. So we'll see what they can do against Bratislava. Moving in from above, good attempt to bring the ball close to the basket. So far the defense for Bratislava holding up. See Zurich not giving up possession of the ball. Oh yeah, and there was an attempt from Andres Gotcha to get snatched the ball away and he's been playing with just one more other goalkeeper the entire tournament, so he's gonna be extremely tired at this point, even holding a penalty at this point in time. So oh he's holding on to the ledge. This should be this should surely be a call by the ref. He's standing on the ledge. Ref! Uh, yeah, the video referee should have, been, should have been speaking. Give us a buzzer here in the commentary <laughs> Oh, there is a bit of a uh, bad luck for Suri even getting the replay. Two minutes. And, uh, Team wide number two attacking the head on the surface. Two minutes. Two there is minutes. a two-minute penalty. I think he's been taking the head after they got a free throw. This is a this is a uh, white team. Timeout, white team. Yeah, maybe it might have been some kind of weird mistake, but yeah. So he's white team number two. Got sent out for attacking the head. They've been no warning before. Hmm? They've been, no been no warning before. They must have been bad. Attacking the head on the surface after they have got the warning the free throw. For themselves a very, very, very weird coincidence. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So, white timeout coming to an end. Teams get ready, white free throw Swiss holding, teammates. white free throw holding. From Helvetia supporting the men's team. All right, two minutes of power play, but a free throw for white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a... Uh, well, who are we to judge the judges? <laughs> we are some mere peasants here in the commentator booth. Above the water. Oh, must have been close. Zurich, Zurich is just forcing them back yeah. and trying to hold on to the ball, but <laughs> the player just pushing the button forward. Back. Just swimming casually against him. Back. Nice little scenery. There goes the dab. And something that. More experienced players. Something. He doesn't go for the shot ball. Something that we've seen quite a lot now, and that is a very good tactic if you are in a power play situation. Has to, swim to the side, has to be aware of the. Yep. Maybe 
Maybe he actually should have taken the free throw yeah. to wind down the clock at this point in time. Open basket now. Oh, this from Zurich coming in. in. Second attempt. Like pass, the pass Third over. time. Ball Third time's the charm. No. No. Oh, no. The weight on the bottom <coughs> the yellow weight. Yeah. yeah. Zurich. Oh, are they not? <laughs> That's they want to hold on to the wall time, they it out. 15 seconds to go. Three minutes to play in the first half. <laughs> A fairly <laughs> even match again between Zurich and Bratislava. Now, fast break for number five. five. Clemens Neumüller, one of the strongest players the on the city squad. They steal the basket. They should steal the basket. Yep, basket stolen away. Stolen. Can they get the ball? Martin Brandt. He doesn't see the basket. Show them the basket though. <laughs> yeah. Penalty? No, it is a foul. You, you are, really? Yeah, okay. because you know, he's not allowed to uh, keep himself oh under the okay. surface, okay. but okay, with assistance. On the surface. That two boards for Jack Liam. They lose the ball. Fast break opportunity coming in five. for Bratislava. One and one. one, one. <laughs> it's getting hold up, held up. It can he have any <coughs> and you can also see how tired the yeah. players already are at this point in time. It's the third game Zurich of the day for the most players. Oh, oh and there's the, there's the fast break. Can the goalie get into position? Oh, yeah, can get into position. <coughs> Clemens Neumüller trying to wrestle Andres oh. Scott, but chunky boy Meta here oh, at the Champions Cup. But oh. now, oh, yes. yeah, now it's called. <laughs> so. Fun fact, the player uh, stealing away the basket also not allowed to wedge Blue because Greaser wedging holding. indicates that he's Blue not staying Greaser. under the surface by his own power. And you always at all times have to be able, as a security measure, so to say, to be able to stay in the water <laughs> with your own... Uh, oh, there's an open basket! Oh. <laughs> That's was not allowed to just hold yourself as a defender onto the basket. Fun fact, underwater rugby trivia, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, there, open basket again! Coming in the last second. Yeah, this this should be. Oh, why does he go up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a bit of shoving. Uh. <laughs> the basket still stolen away. Can they lock up the ball oh, on the surface? Go above. <laughs> Going above and beyond, but now the goalkeeper yeah. is back in position. This is this is this is maybe the the worst war of attrition we've seen so far. <laughs> Ah, oh, you can see just both teams grinding each other down, but being so close. Yeah, 12 seconds to go, and if I were Bratislava, I would try to wind on the clock, but now oh, this is the opportunity on the end there. Oh, this is yet again. <laughs> yet again. What is going on? Half time break. Oh, man. They just want to entertain us. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta be honest, this might be one of the most entertaining stretches <laughs> of gameplay we've had so far. Those games, always the best ones. But very entertaining for all of us watching to see those teams going back and forth and just those <laughs> millimeters missing. But yeah, 
You know, Sirusen has a uh, story here, absolutely depressing team being at the Slovakian basket the entirety of the game. And Slovakia only having two goalkeepers. You've seen number 23 and um, 87. Uh, just um, those two guys cycling up and down with each other. Number 23 even holding the penalty in between. Saving it. Yeah. It is uh, quite the feat. Sometimes, yes. Just, just keep you going. At some point, they will Take break down. Yeah. Just to go back, just to. Seconds to go for the teams to lag and take a breather. And uh, then we will continue with the second half between the Slovakian champion Bratislava and the Swiss champion. Bobby already feels his massive biceps burning slowly. Running away. <laughs> Can't lose muscle if you have any. You don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> There's team warning for white team and team warning for blue team for hold those teams. Team warning holding. <laughs> two team warnings. Teams so get ready. Do, we, do we see another chain of two minute penalties for issued team warnings? So yeah. for those who don't know, team warning issued, so every infringement of the same type from now on is resulting in a two-minute penalty for the player. <coughs> Maybe the refs just want to keep the game going. Don't hold on to each other, just swim freely. Be free! To ref being in the way at the beginning. See, so we're sweeping in. Got ball. Hopefully, another holding. <laughs> Yeah, this is a situation where attacking the yeah. head is less yeah. punitive. Punch him! Right, <laughs> Yeah. Grab his fin and remove it. Attack the gear, oh. but just don't hold him. Yeah. Good effort of him trying to hold on to the ball, trying to keep it playable for his teammates, but Zurich taken away by Zurich and Zurich now. Coming in for Clemens Namela. For an attack, he is alone underneath the basket, but doesn't have support. And they, they get a free throw awarded again, being underneath the basket. But no, they, I think now there's the first two minute penalty shoot. There should be somebody exposed if this is a free throw. White team <laughs> number eight, warning, attacking the yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> so Lubomir Schuster is now officially only allowed to attack the equipment. Blue Other than that, uh, <laughs> he is immediately expelled for two minutes. But it's a team warning, it's not an individual No, and it wasn't an individual warning in this one. Uh, individual warning is going to make sense for And the there was a specific it's player, a uh, number uh, eight, uh, who uh, got uh, warning. You may as well just give a team warning in that case, because that means someone else on the team can do it. It's just not that player. Yeah. Red Red Bull! There is a Bosi shop 
here at the pool. Grab yourself a bike pair. Trying to go. They're doing it. They're doing it the sneaky way. They're just <laughs> waiting their oh, opponents out. Yeah, there we go. Fun and enough, white white trunks were not easy to get to up to a couple of years ago. We really had to search for them. We didn't order as a team. But you can see again, the player tries to find somebody to pass to. 78 Jakob Lindner, the goalkeeper. Based off Kozacek now coming in, goalie pass. position. Yes, we have a good chance here. He pushes the goalie out. A little gap and then Ford comes to the ball. Oh, there we go. Ball drops down. No one knows where it is. <laughs> Swim, my friend. He's swimming to the side rather than swimming forward. And this also shows 